Hello and welcome to Two in the Think Tank, the show where we come up with 200 sketch ideas. 200 sketch ideas. Oh, okay. We're already discovering that the audio from the live stream is feeding back into my headphones, which is going to drive me utterly insane. Well, you could just wear another. Okay. Oh, these ones? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's Alistair. So you weren't hearing that? No, I wasn't hearing that. Oh, great. That. So I was already in my own private nightmare. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, intend as you in- begin as you intend to end, Alistair. Exactly. Saying the wrong words in your statements. Well, exactly. So like, like uh, I think that's in, what's his name's, uh, you know, the, the guy with a thousand masks there? Yeah. Always talking about that. Yeah. Uh, you got to bring the person back to where they started. Exactly. And by the end, I'll be hearing my own words feeding back into my ravaged brain. Seconds before the live feed went to air, Andy choked on more water <laughs> than he's ever had. He almost drowned in a glass of water. In my desperation to get ready for the podcast. In time, I took the biggest gulp of water I've ever taken. Water and air, because you need both, That's right. And <laughs> why waste time? Like we're doing right now, when we have to come up with 200, epi- uh, 200 sketches. God, imagine we had to come up with 200 episodes. Hey, maybe that's something for the 300th podcast. Oh. Are, we, are we preempting ourselves? Okay. So, uh-huh. hello to anybody who is listening or watching. Yeah, on the on the live stream. Um, uh yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say. I don't know what you're doing with yourselves. Um, um, but thank thanks you. for joining in. I thank want you, you to see much. that we have our we have about our 16 veggie sausages, the softest food that we could find to eat. Yes, the um, podcaster's sausage. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we have a uh, you know, I guess the, the 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 banana, which is kind of like the a sausage of the tree. Of, of it's the, a tree sausage. Tree sausage. We, we, but it comes hey, from Alice, a herb. Alistair, I think we have our first sketch idea. Yeah. I know it's a it's a gentle start, but I think. We can't afford to be picky. The banana is a tree sausage. Great. Um, um, what does that mean? I mean, you can fry it. Have you had fried bananas? I haven't, but... Oh, yes, I have. So, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I've had deep fried plantains, and that's like a green banana. Hello. Um, the green banana, uh, gr- the green sausage of the tree world. Okay, so the soft start is a place where... It's everything just an alternate... Is- <laughs> everything is the same, except people treat sausages like bananas okay how about this right because it really does feel like because sausage sausages Wait, no, bananas like sausages but bananas are a, no, a non nondescript um well actually how about this mm-hmm. sorry I'm, i mean i've got so uh, my mind is a fizz alistair i love it. we've got to start every podcast at 6 a.m <laughs> after barely any sleep mm-hmm. on a breakfast of hastily purchased McDonald's hash browns. Yeah, where Andy <laughs> the didn't understand <laughs> how to order at McDonald's. I said, do you want a meal? He goes, I don't know. Is this a meal? I don't know. <laughs> what? Do, do I want a meal? I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, I ordered a hash brown and a burger. And she said, do you want that in a meal? I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I'm going to eat it. As a meal? I want to eat it as a meal? Does that make it a meal? <laughs> Okay, wait, we got to go back. We got to focus. <laughs> I haven't been to McDonald's enough to understand the lingo. It's okay, Andy. You know, it's okay. It's, you don't... A, it's like driving a car. I think I crashed and died. Yeah. It's like driving a car. You got to know the lingo. But importantly, Alistair got to laugh at me very early in the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is a world in which, okay, there's a few things going on. Number one, this is a possibility. Sausages grow on trees and you peel back like like a banana and you peel back the skin and there you have a meaty sausage. And I think with it, mm. um, with, with gen- the way gen- genetic engineering is heading, mm-hmm. you know that the banana plum ha- has the most complex DNA of any thing? That yeah. may not be true. But it could but even very be complex. it could be it could be more complicated if within it had ground beef mm. and and sort of like you know <laughs> sort of sausage filling and sort of the skin that artificial skin in there. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but okay, so that's 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 one thing, right? Mm-hmm. But the other thing was going to be well, the sausage feels like it could very well be regarded as like the the fundamental building block of food, right? Mm-hmm. In that it's largely like its shape is nondescript, mm-hmm. its contents are nondescript. It might be possible to look at a sausage and think that this is the sort of the alpha food of which all other foods are sort of 
a variation. Yeah, you know, and and so and so you would quite quite plausibly argue, you know, be be able to redefine all um, all foods as a variation of a sausage. Right, sort of like broccoli with all all those other vegetables. No? Yeah, <laughs> is that all other vegetables? Oh, there's a lot of vegetables that kind of derive from the same sort of type of the brassicas. Broccoli. We're talking about the brassicas. We are talking about the brassicas. I apologize for saying broccoli. Yeah. So, so you're saying like sort of like let's say cereals would now become like, like a, a dried like sausage a, flakes, like a dried sausage flake. Right? Yeah, uh, apples, dried weedy sausage flakes. But uh, apples are a sort of a, 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 a round sweet sausage, mm. right? Yeah, great. Round it's sweet a, tree a, sausage. A crunchy sausage. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's something. A that's... juicy, crunchy sausage with a sweet zing and tang. Are all sausages designed to be eaten cooked? Mm. I don't know. Yeah. But I, but I, but I, you know, and I, 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 it's great that we're going to sausages early on this one, mm. you know, because I was we were yeah. gonna get there eventually. Oh, you gonna eat a sausage already? No, I'm just gonna do this. <laughs> just, just gonna do this. <laughs> oh, just gonna yeah, it's it just about. I'm just gonna manhandle one of the sausages and then put it back in the warm airtight container. <laughs> <laughs> from which we will all be drawing our sausages. Mm -hmm. The reservoir yes. of all things. You know what I realized just before I came in today? What? Because I'm going to be carving a cheese goblet at the end of the podcast, mm -hmm. I have a very large, quite sharp knife in my backpack. Well, that's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> Who knows where we're going to go? The anyway. important thing is that you hung it above the mantelpiece at the beginning of the show mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. we know that in the third act you're going to use that knife. Most likely to carve a goblet, but who knows? It's not that large. Look here, I'll there. put the knife up here. Up there. So, <laughs> so, so there's, there's some accountability. We know where the knife is. Absolutely fill it with potential energy <laughs> so that if, if anything goes crazy, then we know at least it can fall and, and stick into at least you. Into the back of my hand. Anyway, we've broken the ice. We are essentially mm. one sort of sketch in. Mm. We've cracked the top of the creme brulee of thought Mm -hmm. And we're about to plunge our spoon into the soft vanilla goodness of our own minds. That's right. Now, here's a here's a here's a here's a pitch for you, Alastair. Okay, I'm ready, <laughs> and I'm interested, and <laughs> well, I want it. Well, don't be because it's something I already brought up in the car on the way here. Yeah, I iconic. Right. This is this this is this is a word that means yep. both iconic and ironic. Something that is ironically iconic. Yeah. You know, or um, iconically ironic. Okay. Um, sort of like enjoying bushwalks. <laughs> This is a bit kitsch, isn't it? <laughs> Look at us walking in the old world. <laughs> pretending like we have to do this. Yeah, pretending like this is fun. Like there's any reason mm. <laughs> for this to exist. I chronic. <laughs> <laughs> is that a sketch? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Man. Um, oh, okay, I, I, this, this might be bad taste. I don't know. But imagine you go and you meet a... Um, uh, an, uh, a tribe, an untouched tribe. Yeah. Right? Um, and you in, touch them. And you touch them, sure. And then you put them back in the plastic container covered in your disease. <laughs> you wiggle them about it. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, and and, and you're, you're, you're deep in the midst of some sort of jungle somewhere. Sure. Right? I, I'm not going to name a jungle, and therefore it's okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, but you meet them in there, and then you ask, oh, how have you managed to survive, you know, to, to, to remain un, untouched for so long? Um, obviously, you have an interpreter or something, I don't know, or yeah. you do it with sign language. And they say, oh, we were doing it ironically. You know, <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing this as a joke. So every time we'd see somebody, we'd act all scared and yeah. run away. We'd yeah. shoot a couple of arrows. You know, it's it's oh, all of this stuff, the, mm. the, the, the leopard fur and the, you know, yeah. um, bonobo helmet. Oh, you're starting to narrow down where it might be. Uh, I don't think I am, actually. No? I deliberately... Is it, isn't isn't a leopard a South American animal? Maybe. And know. where's a bonobo from? I thought Africa. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I could be right. wrong. Maybe they're both from Africa. So now you're suggesting it's somewhere maybe equidistant between some South America and Africa. Well, as we all know, Alastair, somewhere equidistant between two places is a place where you find the flora and fauna <laughs> of both those places. <laughs> Well, you don't know. I mean, you know, you go, okay, well, there's probably some naturalists mm -hmm. spent a bit of time there. Mm -hmm. And then they, you know, they had a crash. Yes. They, they, like in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. 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 Or Pacific would be in between. Oh, I guess no. Atlantic is also between them. Thank you, Alistair. 
<laughs> Too yeah. early to be calling each other out on that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway. Okay. So, but 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 what that you know? St- well, if you're about to write something down, I'm no- I am not going to stop no, you. No, no, keep just just you know. Okay. Let's develop it. Yeah. Well, um, the idea that uh, statistically speaking, mm. probably you would find both um, leopards and. Uh, or like both pu- pumas, jaguars, jaguars. Yeah. You would find both jaguars and um, you know I'm gonna I'm saying jaguar for your benefit. Thank you know you so I mean much. you know I think it's a jaguar. That's, right? I appreciate that. <laughs> jaguars. Uh, I'm doing this for your people oh, out of cultural you. sensitivity. Oh, you're being so kind. <laughs> I appreciate it. You're not making us cringe. With the sound of that. You are. <laughs> you are. Jag. You are. You are. Um, statistically speaking, you would find both bonobos and jaguars. Yeah. In the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, right? If you were to do some Statistic. sort of, yeah, you know, if you do some like averaging equation mm. to find the place where you would find both of them, that's if, where it would be. If you were to scoop a little bit of seawater from anywhere in the Atlantic and you were to analyze the strands of DNA that you found in there, correct. you would definitely find Jaguar mm-hmm. <laughs> and Thank you would you. definitely find Bonobua. <laughs> um, okay, so. Uh, mm. This this is a new idea then, right? This is ironic, untouched. Yes, um, yes. But I have another idea, right? Okay. Which is now this is the this is the mathematical naturalist, the mathematicalist, math mathematicalist, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, they they discover new animals, or they they don't actually go out and explore uh, the world in any way to find strange beasts. They just um, mathematically work out where they are. Based on known existing distributions, right? Okay. So they do an equation. That mathematicalist. Proves, the mathematicalist, right? They do an equation that proves that in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, you can find both bonobo and jaguar. And I hope people listening know en- enough about maths to understand what I'm uh, saying, but not enough about maths to hate me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that would be. I think you've actually you've actually probably picked that pretty uh, pretty yeah. correctly. In Pitch that. the. Yeah, like I like our, our audience. You know, mm. I, I know there are some that are probably mathematic geniuses. Sure, you know, but I think there's a bunch that are a real mm. bunch of mathematic dummies, or just mathematic know? frauds like us. Yes, right? like us. Yeah, you know, we wear the glasses of mathematicians. You think it's too we early? have the slovenly appearance of mathematicians, mm. and by heck, we fail to do our ironing, mm, just yes. like a. A mathematician. Oh. Did I just spit on you? No, no, no. I was just looking at my, the, uh, the state of ironing on my shirt. Oh, yeah. Um, great. Now, I was just wondering. I mean, we're four sketches in, Andy. Yeah. And Do you want to take I, a break? I, I, yeah, I, uh, I just thought maybe we should just double check everything is running. Uh, okay. Including sure. the, 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 the live stream. I mean, not that we've got any. Um, it, it, I mean, it's, it, it seems to be. Yep. Um, yes, it seems, and, okay, seems to great. be running. I just needed to, to have a quick double check just so, you know, we didn't want to get an hour in and be like, Ugh! yep, no, it's all good. It's happening, Alistair. It's happening. Everything okay. is happening and nothing, nothing is going to stop this now. Okay. Yep. Except, obviously, the death of both members of the team. Mm-hmm. Can we make a pact right now? Is it wrong to, we, isn't it weird that we, we, we never shake hands? Not. Yeah, no, that's true. So let's see. Oh, oh, that's good. Yeah, no, I think it does. You, you actually, do have feel, you do have f- chimp like hands. Really, you've got a yeah. very familiar hand. Yeah, right. Like like I've like I've squeezed it before. Well, you've probably experienced it in other mm. ways. Yeah. And uh, if not in the, uh, I, I smell it often. Yeah. I, I sort of I get you know I I guess I was holding on to your thumb a lot during during the comedy festival. That's true. Individually, you've probably grasped all my fingers. Mm, I've had my but... fingers in your mouth, so I kind of <laughs> I've experienced the inside of your body. I kind of, you know. Have you had your fingers in my uh, mouth? I think for various photo shoots. So. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like something we would do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's not meant. There's not much cause. Probably dentistry. Dentists are really the people who put their fingers in people's mouths the most, mm. right? Yeah, I mean, there's children. Children put their fingers in people's That's mouths true. a fair bit. Yeah, um, but in in the, in the in the scheme of adults, I, I putting... reckon my son's hand is the thing I've had the furthest down my throat. <laughs> is <laughs> there was at one point there, just a short period there where he there was it was a game put. Put Let's my hand in, <laughs> as far down into uh, Daddy's mouth as possible. Well, it's a kind of it's it's a kind of parental spelunking, you know. It's a it's a it's a it's mm-hmm. an exploring a cave. It's a very natural urge, I imagine. You know, hum, humankind is drawn to caves, the warmth, Absolutely. the safety. Yeah, you know. And um, you know, as as we know, he's, nothing, he's nothing more safe 
than a than an open mouth filled with teeth, mm -hmm. <laughs> ready to. I guess it's a parental mouth. So. It's a parental mouth. Yeah. You know, there are those. Um, That's a safe space for children. They lift. It's for lifting the young. It's for it's for masticating food and mm -hmm. then regurgitating it into their mouths. It's a source of nourishment. It's a so source of transport. It's, it's a, a source of important information. You know. Yes, absolutely. It's 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 an information booth. The tr your 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 son gets mm -hmm. gets all all his understanding of the world comes out of your mouth. That's right. Right. And you can you blame him for wanting to sort of look in there, mm, explore? Say, so where's he getting all this from? I mean, a lot of us think that the the you know our ourselves we're behind the eyes. That's where we exist. But I think deep in the mouth, that's probably mm. closer to where we are <laughs> in that darkness. There, that's where that's where the soul resides. Mm. I, yeah, it's crazy that that the eyes being the window got got the title of window to the soul ahead of the mouth. Getting mm. more, I guess maybe the mouth is just the door to the soul, mm -hmm. right? So, like, if you if you want to just look in, be my guest, take a gander at the eyes, take yes. a peek. Right? I mean, it's the lobby. But the mouth it's, is the lobby. It's the lobby to the soul. <laughs> a gobby in the lobby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, a source of food, and then and then I mean. But it, but it, but it would also make sense, more sense that uh, you know the the mouth has an important role in guarding the soul. Then that's mm -hmm. why all the teeth are there. They're very much sort of soldiers ahead of the the eyelids, which really are just sort of flaps. Wait, the, wait, the lips are the soldiers or the, the, teeth? the teeth? Did I say teeth? lips? No, no, I'm not sure. So what was the flaps? The eyelids. Ah, the eyelids are lips. the flaps. The lips are the eyelids of the, the mouth. The lips are the eyelids of the mouth. Yeah. Lips are very much mouth lids. I'm going to start mm. calling. The, even the word it's, lip is very close to 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 lid, mm. right? And I suspect mm. that when they were first naming the parts of the body, yeah. they named the eyelids first. They wrote down eyelids. Mm -hmm. Great, they're never, lids. It's just lid, isn't yeah. it? It's the lid. Or do you of think it eye. should be eye lips? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what? That's more fun. <laughs> that is more fun. So when they were naming the parts of the body, they mm. started with the mouth. They named the uh, the the mouth lips. Mm. The mouth lips. Yeah. Right. And then they went on to the eyes. They named the mouth lips, the eye lips, mm -hmm. right? And then somebody wrote it wrong on the piece of uh, dried uh, leaf. Leaf. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> paper. Paper. Yeah, paper. Yeah, paper. That's, paper that was the paper, word that yeah. I was looking for. Um, are you getting weird sort of buzzing in your ear? No, but I hear little... Like voicey kind of thing. Oh, that's just coming out of uh, the other headphones. So that's just oh, that's okay. Right, right. That's coming from the computer, but I've got I'm getting um reverb, uh, getting some tinniness. Just I think I suspect just do, these headphones are do, bad. Do, yeah, do, I think do we're okay. Do you want to try do. these ones? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I you mean, I, 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 the sound I tested it with was mm -hmm. the sound. Oh yeah. Yeah, in the in the knowledge that it was all going to be okay, mm -hmm. and then if I projected that out into the world, I get back what I was looking It'd for. It'd just be a smooth reaffirmation mm. of everything mm -hmm. is fine. It's weird though that we don't have nose lids, lips, nose lips. We don't have nose lips, right? Like yeah. you can you can flare the nostril, but by default, it's always open to the world, mm -hmm. right? It's, I guess. Well, I mean, I guess we could, we can sort of through this pattern. Uh, see what the next step in evolution is going to be. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it feels like the ear is already getting ready to form a lip. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's folding. You can around. see it's like it's like the flower has opened. That would have been just a small little bud. Mm. You know, those little kind of like those little hippo ears. Mm. You know, just little thick little nubs like that. That just you know, it's a slight concave, but you know, not much. And then. You know, over over humanity, they've kind of spread open mm. like that, like a like an orchid or a, a flower that opens. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now, and now they're ready to to come back in. You know, they've they've, they've and then the curl back, and you can see the beginning of the curl at mm. the top of the ear like mm -hmm. that. And then they're just going to roll up into two beautiful little lips. And I guess somehow in within there, there's going to be like a sort of a. I mean, what? Even is the mouth? Oh no, it's the jaw doing that. Okay, <laughs> I was like, "How is it?" I mean, like, there's a lot of this, this stuff, like moving the lips, like just where you go. Why do I need that? Yeah, but yeah. how is that? 
No, but how is the what, what's the control with that? That's muscles. Just, muscles, right? <laughs> not, not just sort of like magic flesh. No. no. Okay. <laughs> magic, <laughs> magic flesh that just listens to your every whim. <laughs> It's just flesh and it just moves I, I somehow. Think, I think it's How just, can it do this? Has anyone looked into this? This is crazy. Yeah, but it doesn't it doesn't make sense that you can push muscles out like this. Like it? I reckon that's done with pulling. I reckon your You your, push with the pulling. I think it could be one of those situations where you it looks like it looks like a a, a pull, but it's uh, a push, but it's a pull. All right. Well, well luckily to, uh, in about ten hours we've got a tongue expert coming in. Uh do we really? Mr. Nick Mason. Is Master it? of the tongue. <laughs> no, I look. I just thought it would be great if we did have a tongue expert and to to, to you know to, to. But we do have Nick Mason coming in if about there, ten if, hours. If ever there was a there was an expert that we did need on this podcast, I feel the tongue is something that we come back to a lot. Yeah, and, and plus we needed a lip ex expert, and here I am inviting a tongue expert. Ah, <laughs> oh, just. He, he's 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 going to be as baffled as I was about the concept of the meal at McDonald's. <laughs> um, I mean, just just to tie a couple of things together at this early stage, right? Because you clean up as you go, Alistair. That's yeah, the absolutely. secret to keeping a tidy kitchen. Mm -hmm. You clean up as you go. Again, the the, the tongue feels <clears throat> feels like it's 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 on the sausage spectrum. That's you know? true. Yeah. So, do you think it's a relative to the sort of the the banana? It could be. Mm. Yeah. You know? I, I I can I can I can I can imagine peeling back. Some some banana skin and seeing just a prehensile tongue flapping around in there. Sure, yeah. I think we have have we had a bit where disembodied tongues. Yeah, where 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 tongues were kind of are ready to leave the body or correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 idea that they of all the parts of the body were the one that seemed like they were they could make it on their own the most, mm. sliming around, mm. crawling about. Yeah, you know? finding some. I mean, I think maybe that, they'd go into a shell. I they, they I think they'd be like a hermit crab. They'd yeah. probably be because they're used to being in a mouth. They'd crawl into something like a, mm. I don't know, like a, like a, yeah, like a mandarin peel or something, you know. Yeah. Or a ban an old, a discarded banana skin. Discarded banana skin. Yeah. Mm. Just sort of crawl around in I there. I think they'd do really well in a sewer. Mm. The only problem would be all those taste buds. <laughs> oh, no. <Yeah>. But are <laughs> you totally covered in taste buds? Yeah, that would be living in a sewer. Mm. That is, maybe, maybe that's what hell is, mm. right? They, they transplant. Your mind into your tongue. Yeah. They, 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 yeah, they yeah. do this. Well, I mean, they they could come to Earth. Mm. The um, mm. you know, the the people. Well, we'll we'll find out that they are our masters. If they're not, if they weren't before, they are now. Yeah, exactly. If they have the power to tr transfer to move our our soul around into or our mind, of body, yeah, into different parts of bodies. Yeah, they 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 put your mind into your tongue and then they just chuck it into a sewer. Mm. I mean, that'd have to be a a pretty good approximation of what hell is of hell. I mean, it's down there. Mm. I mean, I guess a lot of the stuff in the sewer would be body warmth, mm. you know. So that's pretty hot. That's yeah. Like oh, there'd be there'd be there'd be there'd be fermentation of all sorts going mm. on in there. I reckon there'd be there would be a fair heat developing yeah. in that. Sure. That waste stream. Yeah. And then these people. Do you think that this is? I mean, it's possible that this has happened before, and that's where the story of hell came from. <laughs> it's possible that this has happened before in terms of people's minds have gone into their tongues. Well, you know, yeah, that, that some, you know, some mm. other creature. I picture every, that every story starts in truth, Alistair. Even uh, this one that we just made up right now. Uh, so there has to be. So you know, I picture them. They're people with you know, sort of big heads, big top of the head kind of thing, right? They wear those long robes, yeah, you know, silky ro robes. Oh, this is the people who do this, who come down yeah. and do this. Them. Yeah, the and people. then so, and I, I imagine in the past, mm. um, when was when was hell invented? Do you think it was um, probably before sewers? But you know, there was still sort of shit and stuff lying on the ground. Right? Oh, don't worry, there was. Yeah, yeah thank God, <laughs> there wasn't a time before shit. No, that's good. I mean, there would would have been one bit of time where somebody was born, but they hadn't shit yet. Somebody was born. Yeah, born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they, they came from a non-shitting creature. Those creatures that would die from just filling up with shit. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, it's it's a chicken or an egg situation, isn't it? You know, it's a uh, what came first? Yeah, the non-shitting oh, parent. Yeah, 
or it fills up and then dies eventually from toxic uh, toxic shock or whatever. You know they, what I want to say? I mocked, I mocked you pretty hard at the start of this, yeah. but I think you're probably right. Yeah? Yeah. It was the word born that threw me off because I was picturing people. But birth can uh, take many forms. Absolutely. Right? So, yes, there would have been a time when there was something that didn't shit that just filled up with shit and then died. Mm-hmm. And then it gave birth to or produced somehow from its own DNA something else mm-hmm. that could now live longer because it could shit. It could it could excrete. Mm-hmm. Right? And and that was the birth of shit. <gasps> I mean, you know, in the 199th episode, which people haven't heard yet, but the, we we came up with the uh, you know, we came up with the extent the, the extended universe of the invention of lying. You mm. know that you know, and then we came up with the invention of lining. Yeah, so this is the movie, the 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 Ricky Gervais movie, The Invention of Lying, from probably ten or fifteen years yeah. ago. We hit the zeitgeist yeah. on the head, and we came up with a parody of that about the first person to invent a straight line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they discovered Already the straight line. People are on board. Yeah. Well, now this is this is an, an even earlier mm. prequel of the invention of shitting. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And nobody really invents it, but, you know, the first person is born and is capable of doing it, <laughs> which, of course, everybody would find unbelievably disgusting. I don't think so. I don't, don't think they would find it disgusting, right? Because, I mean, the first shit, it, I think I think the first shit would have been born into a world uh, like a shit paradise. Mm. When, when the, problem, the problem that shit has today yeah. is that there is so much um, prejudgment, right? Mm. We even before we shit out a shit, yeah. we call it shit, right? You know, I, I don't think you know. You, and you say I need to go and do a shit, but mm. if you don't, you before you've done it, like that, imagine what that's like to be that shit, mm-hmm. <laughs> listening because I imagine they can hear, yeah, right through your body. It reverberates, it goes straight down through the vi- spine, because this is what they say, right? They say that you in the womb, a baby can hear its parents talking or his mm-hmm. mother talking because it, it the sound vibrates down through the spine to the to the womb right mm-hmm. but but it can that's, also that's, feel that's, its that's, mama shitting y- yes but also that that what we never go on to say is that that vibrates right next to the colon sort of area there as well so your shit can also hear everything you're saying and it's mm-hmm. about to come out it's you know it's 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 because exciting big first day in the world right and already it's hearing you saying oh, i've got to go and do a massive disgusting shit yep. okay and that is so confront you know, imagine imagine knowing that right and you're coming and out into the coming world coming out into the world and now now you've got to somehow try and make the best of your situation. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's your your lot is already prepared for you. It's like that. So it's it's a very Swedish thing. This would be a this would, they do this in Sweden. Of course, right? They what they they. Sorry, you better better finish. I well, no, not necessarily. But the, but they would just change what they wouldn't they wouldn't you wouldn't be allowed to call a shit a shit until you've done the shit mm. right and you've you've looked at it and you've taken a big sniff. <laughs> Yeah. And maybe you've squeezed it a bit in your hand, yeah. right? And you've tasted it a little bit. And then you can say, this is shit. But until then, you've got to say, I've got to go and do an unknown. And so in in this world... I've got where, to go into the great unknown. In this world where this person first shits, mm. right? How long do you think these people will have to sit with that shit before they kind of <laughs> they get a negative opinion of it? <laughs> you know? Because I think I think these people who... who it all stays within their bodies. They would mm. they, they would consider that a noble thing. I suppose. You know, that they don't they don't waste any and then they die clean, you know? Clean and, on the outside. But again, I don't I mean I don't know if they would consider it a noble thing. It would just be what they do. Mm. Right? Like like I mean, I sit down and walk through hallways, but I don't consider that a noble thing. I know, but when have you ever heard people be just proud of being whatever they're born to be? And then, and then encounter something different, and think that that's weird and scary and bad. <laughs> but, but I don't think they would. I, I understand what you're saying, Alistair, mm. and that's a very good point. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do, and, and Andy. Thank you for everything you do. No, no, Alistair. <laughs> <laughs> but I also don't think that they would have any awareness of that's what they do, right? Like you, you wouldn't say we are the people who keep all their waste inside their bodies until they die, mm. um, because. God, everyone's going to be real hideous in this film. 
everyone's going to look so bloated and disgusting. Mm. We can get Ricky Gervais in it. <laughs> <laughs> he could he could play his old character again. <laughs> Um, all but right, but can you write down separately the idea of the um, the, the the Scandinavian um, shit shit rebrand, uh, right? Shit. Yeah. Because because um, it is wrong to prejudge the shit until you've done the shit. Um, gosh, we said the foul words a lot uh, this early on the podcast, but you you, you know that's where true. I'm going. Yeah, yeah, and they and they they whisper to it as it comes out. They mm, they, they mm, say nice they, things to exactly. it. Exactly. They don't drop it in a in a bowl in order to discard it. No, they, they put do it on a silver a plate. <laughs> on a silver plate, give or, it every I mean, opportunity. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean a beautiful pillow on a silver plate, like that, and then put it, you know, maybe in the sun. In the or... sun. <laughs> They, they have an altar <laughs> built for it. Hello to any Scandinavians listening, and this is what we think. We think of you that you're great people who mm. who who give everything a chance That's to be right. as good as it can be. Exactly. You know, and we call we call the the toilet the throne mockingly. Yes, but, but they actually, but they actually use a real throne. Yeah. Oh, you know what they they uh, each uh, shit uh, is crowned king of Sweden. <laughs> It's so good. That's that's exactly what they would do. That is them. Um, this is the future that liberals want. Um. Okay. Yeah. And here we are again, back at zero. So what a what a colossal come down. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's fine. Um. So you know, you peel a mandarin. Yeah. yeah sure. You know, you peel it. The, the, the smell enters the air, you know, like that. You know, that'll, um, you know, mm. I don't know. Uh, in, do you think there's a country where they hate mandarins? Um, it's one of the brown countries, like like Bulgaria. <laughs> like, no, no, not brown skin. <laughs> I mean, like that that it, it's dirty. No. <laughs> oh, oh I should, Alistair, I'm so. What the hell is this? <laughs> is this where your mind goes? No, I mean, look. I realize all those words meant different things when I when they came out, and I apologize. Mm. But also, I don't know what how clean Bulgaria is. It's probably a beautiful country. Um, I bet you they have a lot of classical musicians. I reckon they've got a lot of pristine, untouched architecture. Oh, you know, yeah. I reckon it's one of those countries that is totally beautiful. You, there'll be a hill there in Bulgaria, probably, mm. and you'll go up it, and the sunrise, the light will catch the the stucco walls of oh. the red terracotta. <laughs> You know, um, the the, uh, yeah. the the old part of the the the, the town there, yeah. just and 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 over by the river, the new city is springing up because they're mm. you know vibrant, technologically forward thinking, mm. you know, and and they've got this this booming um IT thing because oh, of yeah. uh, outsourcing through the European Union. I'm really yeah. excited for Bulgaria. An old man dressed in an old brown suit that he's worn every mm. day since 1942 mm, mm. sips from an. A flying, tiny coffee cup. Yeah, a, a flying, tiny electronic coffee <laughs> cup that hovers above his lips, but only comes in when he wants to, like that. And it's and it's and it's a it's a it's a meeting of the old world and the new mm, world. Like that. Bulgaria, <laughs> land of tomorrow and yesterday, hand in hand with the past. There's a there's a mural on the wall, right? Mm -hmm. There's and there's an old there's the painting of this very same old man, and he's handing uh, a a golden brick. To a to a robot, yeah, right. And the old man is wearing a sign that says "Yesterday," and the brick, and the the, 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 the robot is, is, the is brick is wearing a little shirt, a little <laughs> chemise, a little chemise, yeah. But the robot is wearing a, a sign that says "Tomorrow," and and the and the brick is wearing a a, a boob tube, <laughs> and and on it says "Today," the, this moment, mm, this that's right, Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Oh. <laughs> Is that, is that a yes, sketch? that's a sketch. <laughs> uh, if there is, if there's anyone from Bulgaria listening, let us know how close we got. <laughs> this feels like an episode of How Do Wales Work? Yeah. <laughs> What's Bulgaria like? <laughs> that would be a. I mean, talk about a minefield. <laughs> I mean, maybe it is. We don't know. We don't know. We don't I mean, know. They might have been involved. They might have got caught up in the Second World sure. War. Sure. I mean, you'd be lucky not to. Oh. 
Right. God, it'd be great. Imagine if you just hadn't people just had sort of overlooked you as the as the tr as the various armies mm. marched across Europe. People had sort of just sort of skirted around you without even really sort of noticing you were there. How would you feel about Is that? What that? happened with Switzerland? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, you uh -huh. know, I don't know enough to, to call it. I mean, yeah. you think re remaining neutral would just keep you out of it, but then you think, why don't more people do that? Yeah, but also you'd be like. I don't know. This all seems pretty bad. You sure you don't you don't have an opinion about some of this stuff? You don't you yeah. don't think that some of this is? I don't want to get involved. <laughs> I really? Don't... Yeah. No. I have. You know what? I'm uh, no comment. Um, I really I re realized that the Mandarin mm. is um is like you is is the perfect sketch show of a fruit, right? If any fruit was going to be a sketch show, it'd be the Mandarin, sure, right? Because you think about it. Um, it's easy to, unlike an orange, it's easy to get into. Yeah. It's got a series of, um, segments, mm -hmm. right. Um, that, that each individual segment is a beautiful, um, and holds together and is yeah. enjoyable. Right. And yet, and yet, and yet, um, uh, and, and, and they can come apart just like perfect for posting on YouTube or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Right? They stand alone and yet together. What a beautiful they thing, still hold thing together. they create, right. They still hold together. They have a, they have a sort of a, a working aesthetic. Yes, you know? <laughs> they've clearly picked a, a theme, orange or citrus, mm. something in between an orange and sort of like a, I don't know, like a something that's not quite an orange. Mm. And like sketch shows, some of them are terrible. You know, they're Ooh. absolutely so hit and miss. Dry, filled with <laughs> with uh, seeds and mm. crunchiness, things that you shouldn't be eating in a sketch show. Things mm. that you don't want in a sketch. You show. You don't so, want to consume. I watched, I watched that sketch show last night. It was very crunchy. Mm. It was a bit crunchy, full of seeds. You'd be like, you're right. That is that is a bad thing for a sketch show to be. I mean, for a televisual medium to be crunchy. Crunchy. How is this a sketch? How is this a sketch? Oh, I think it's I think it's somebody uh, I mean, look, maybe as I presented it just then, it was it was more sort of a do you think I mean do you think a pleasing this analogy kind of, than it was a, a humorous uh, But do you think that this kind of would fit as a sketch in a sketch show? Yes. Yeah? Yes. It's a meta mandarin. Mm. Right. And um, you, uh, yeah, so so this would be that this could be very well be, you know, the Lorne Michaels of this particular sketch show. I can imagine so Lorne, I reckon at the start of every season of um, Saturday Night Live, Lorne, Lorne, he gets all the writers and all the actors in, he sits down and, and they watch him mandarin. peel and eat a mandarin. <laughs> He's never explained it to them. No. They all just sit there in silence and they're left to try and work it out. And this is it. I've cracked it. That's you've why just, he does that. You've just decoded it mm. before even seeing Lorne do it. This is another round on the, on the Somebody's how the whales this. work. This is what does Lorne Michaels do? Yeah. I mean, this is, you got to clip, somebody's got to clip this and send it to John Mullaney, ask him if this is what happens. <laughs> Adam McKay, I think he'll respond. Adam, Adam McKay, McKay, well, no, he's, he has a few years under his belt from that place. Wait, 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 wait. So Adam McKay is the frequent collaborator of, is it Will Ferrell or I think Will Adam Ferrell. Sandler? Uh, Will Ferrell. Adam Sander? Sandler. 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 But uh, Sandler would also have an idea because he was on also, also. Sandler presumably being someone who makes sandals? I guess so, yeah. Which is Oh, no, but that would be Sandler. Well... You know. Oh, Alistair, don't and, finish your thought. No, I mean, that's, that was the origins of him, him making the movie The Cobbler. The Cobbler. <laughs> you know, my father was a sandler. Mm. It's a guy who fixes, like, you know, flip-flops or thongs, as we know them. Mm. Yes, us, our people mm -hmm. over here. I hope that didn't come across as in some way made. <laughs> well, 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 I said our people. Sort of humorously including you in us, but of course you are one yeah. of us, Alice. There, <laughs> so it almost—it was too subtle for me to pick up. For oh, me to great! Feel That's the, my kind of racism. For me to feel the yeah the exclusion. something where we can all laugh along, and it'll be a long time before you sit down in a quiet room and go, "Oh, that's that was a hate crime." Yeah, and, you know. But you know, at least at least it's not or recorded or anything like that. For, yeah, you know. God, for somebody who hates people eating on um, on mic, uh, I'm being a real dickhead with this Mandarin. Um, Andy, we have broken ten. Alistair, I almost don't want to know. I'm a, it, it almost. I, I can't. I can't get my hopes up or get no, no, excited no, in any way or feel like we're making progress. No, I feel course. like that's the secret to life. Yeah. Don't at any point 
feel like you've done anything worthwhile, achieved mm -hmm. anything, or that you're even a millimeter closer to your dreams. I mean, does that, in a way, kind of feel like you know? I know, I know, you seem to be a very rational person, except for obviously that <laughs> thing you just said. <laughs> or when I'm confronted with a McDonald's, yeah, <laughs> or, and yeah. I go to pieces, yeah, um, like a mandarin. I start raising my voice <laughs> to cover this poor women, woman at five thirty in the morning. <laughs> Um, she but, looked up at me with such <laughs> vulnerability, <laughs> <laughs> but I was. She didn't realize that I was the one who was vulnerable. I was scared. I know, and that's I knew why, I, had to, I had a podcast to start at six a.m. That's that was why you were on the attack. Hours. You were on the attack. You were protecting yourself. It was an act of self-defense. That's right. No court would have convicted me. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you see, never like this was. This was a clash of cultures, right? You know, because because I was in the McDonald's, her 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 land, mm. right? Trying to order a, a happy land. A, a yes, yeah. trying to order a, a a veggie a breakfast burger, but with the hash brown in it instead of the meat and the and a and, a, and then and then a and then she, and then a coffee. And she was giving me a hash brown on the on the side, mm -hmm. and, and 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 she understands all of this, right? But if I were to try and explain to her why I'm so um, tense and stressed. I've got to say, well, it's because I'm about to go and record the 200th episode of our podcast that's going to go for at least 24 hours. Mm. See, and you see how she's supposed to begin to understand what I'm saying, and like, and, and, and the knowledge of trying mm. to communicate all of that great chasm, gulf between us, yeah, was was um was was adding to my stress. You know, it's just making it worse. That's right. I was. You know, and I'm, I mean, it, it was all encapsulated in in uh, just a yell <laughs> and all that. I didn't yell. No. I did definitely <laughs> raise my voice <laughs> in distress. But I think it. I I think you know. I was I was just like a. Well, I was like a like a like a mm. like a like a gorilla that's found its way into a play center or something. You know, I'm yeah. I'm more scared of you I'm, than you are of me. Yeah, yeah. a gorilla in a play center. Killing all the children. <laughs> Killing. Oh, lucky! No, we're all okay. It's a gorilla in a place center. He's a, he's terrified of all the children. You can really see. Yeah, I mean, how? Lu yeah. Luckily, the children are safe because gorillas are afraid of them. Mm. I mean, we you know I, I think. The only time I guess we have any footage of a gorilla around a child is obviously Harambe. Harambe. Yeah, and we know that he, they sort of grab him by the leg and drag him through the water a little bit, and mm. and I mean it seemed fun for a little bit. That kid oh, didn't get hurt. I mean this is dark, Alistair, but imagine the reverse Harambe situation where the gorilla falls into the play center. Yeah, you know, all is surrounded by all the children. Kids start putting its hands down. Uh, they put their their hands in its <laughs> all mouth. the way down its throat. Try and get to its truth. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you getting this all from? Yeah. Um, what do you got down there? A little speaker box. I think there's a sketch idea in a, in a reverse harambe. Reverse harambe. But then, I mean, obviously, the conundrum is then: do you shoot all the children? Yeah. You have to, I guess well, you could I tranquilize them maybe in the sketch just to make it a bit. Mm, um, yeah, but I think I think people would call you cowards. You know, people watching your sketch would yeah. say they really pulled back from doing the full harambe. I know, but are you at some point mentioning, like, are you are you sort of doing it like Chappelle style and introducing the sketch and being like, okay, now what's coming up is a reverse harambe sketch because mm -hmm. then you're kind of giving away the joke. Yeah, you know. But I think people would obviously get the connection i mean i don't think anyone when you have when you have the the <laughs> i imagine at um mm. at play centers much like at zoos uh the the care carers um in a in a in a sort of a gun safe in the you know in glenda's office down the front they do have you know a, a, a rack of tiny tranquilizer guns that they have to use in case the children get out Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I mean, obviously an individual child is not a threat, but it's like that, qu that, that, that 
question, you know, would you f- fight, what is it? Would you rather fight one horse sized duck or 100 duck sized horses? Something sure. like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you get children in enough, in large enough numbers, mm. surely they're just as dangerous as a gorilla. I mean, we don't know how many you would need to get. Maybe someone would have to do this calculation. A gorilla strength of, of, of children. One gorilla's worth. One right? gorilla's worth. Yeah. So then, I mean, then, then a gorilla doesn't really seem under threat. I mean, when from, it when it falls in, it falls in from you know I guess in being challenged by one gorilla's worth, unless it's a gorilla that's stronger than this gorilla. Yeah, well, I mean, but, but well then, but then we have maybe several gorillas worth, right? And then we work out how many toddlers do we need for relative to the gorilla, the number of toddlers to be 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 are are are, are as strong as a gorilla would be relative to a toddler relative to that gorilla. Sure. Does yeah. that make sense? No, no, I think you're right. Yeah. So we'll have. So we that. might need to have like a thousand or two thousand toddlers, right? The gorilla falls in, mm. right, and they they begin just by sheer weight of their numbers yeah. to really quite distress the gorilla and put it at risk. Yeah. And then the keepers have got to make the decision about whether or not they machine gun all the toddlers. This is so horrible. Well, you see, you. I mean, I gave you a real out so that you didn't have to make no, it as horrible. I know. I know, um, Alistair. I mean, could they machine gun with tranquilizer darts? Okay, sure they can. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, I guess you're still you're still sort of throw, shooting darts at children, mm. which you know probably are going to get them in their eyes and things like that. But you know, maybe in to make it more palatable to mm. people, in the tranquilizers, we could all p- also put a lot of their inoculations. Has anybody tried to make a tranquilizer bomb? Has anybody thought about this? Like you drop a bomb mm. and it just puts everyone to sleep. And yeah. then you come in and you sort of I don't know move them around and but then you don't you, what if you you get put to sleep by your by the gas by the gas well you come in with masks on or something like that presumably so I mean this could be maybe or the when, gas dis- disperses and then you know they're still knocked out for however long maybe this will happen when the anest and there's a the anesthetist coup <laughs> <laughs> I mean if anybody is is primed for this sort of thing mm. I mean what a great uh, Batman villain. The anesthetist. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. What does he do? Puts you to sleep. He makes sure you're comfortable. He mm-hmm. monitors your heart rate. He injects you in the neck. Sure. <laughs> you know, I guess he could do it in evil ways, you know? Mm. Like the, you know, he he puts a plastic bag over your head full of gas. You mm. know? He's, got, he's, he's just got it all over him, like in different places, you know? So he's got some shopping bags there that he pulls out and they're filled with gas. And he's got mm. some, you know, he's got a, he opens his jacket, his lab coat, and he's got a few just loaded loaded uh you know syringes seems, but, seems but you know like what he doesn't guy... do, you know you know what he doesn't do he doesn't do that thing at the at the beginning where he brings it oh, liquid to get all the way to the top so he puts a bit of air in you at the same time uh, straight into the vein yeah because yeah. he don't care oh but do you think that would happen with a tranquilizer dart you know it'd be hard to keep that bubble at the at the top of the yeah i actually don't i actually have absolutely no idea how a tranquil tranquilizer dart works because in my mind, you've, you've, you've brought this into stark relief, Alistair. Mm. In my mind, they are basically just a syringe full of, uh, for me, a red liquid that you then load into a gun mm. and shoot. But how does that work? Like mm. how, how do you have a system that you can then dispense? Yeah, I, 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 I really don't know. Do you think um do they use those at all in like law enforcement and that sort of thing when they've got the situation there's a hostage or whatever someone in a building and they're like yeah take the shot would they ever shoot them with a tranquilizer or I don't know I guess I guess if you're in that kind of kind of situation you you don't have time to wait for Yeah I guess you taser them that to kick in. I guess that's kind of what a taser is Yeah I guess yeah. that's a bit like a tranquilizer Yeah I guess you know could could you could you uh taser a whole country like could you you know let's say you wanted to you know, you're not a violent kind of person, but mm. you want to take over a country, mm, sure, by force. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and but as gent as gentle force as possible. You don't want you want to use mm. uh, as non lethal <clears throat> a, 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 mm-hmm. a force as possible. Is there sort of a a taser for that? Like a you know, like a taser tank, like a sky taser. Yeah, you know, like there's a satellite, mm. right? And somehow just el- electrocutes everyone, but not. Enough to kill them. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how I don't know how they worked out what that line is where you can electrocute somebody enough to like paralyze them and stuff like that. Hmm. I think they're 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 up there close to the edge there because probably riding that some, line pretty. Yeah. Some people do die. Yeah. Um, Sky taser is that anything? 
Sky Taser. I mean, um, it's, I mean, at the moment it's, yeah. So I guess it's somebody who's trying to find sort of broader non-lethal forces. Um, cause, cause can I, can I, can I run this by you, Alistair? Yeah. This is, um, a new squad. Cause you know how they have the dog squad in the police. Yeah. Uh, this is the B squad, right? And they're the division of the police that train and, um, utilize bees in the, uh, in the administration of justice. What a great, what a great phrase! The administration of justice. I'm mm, going to administer like, so wait, some justice. Did you here. say bees? Bees. Yeah. Wait. What was the beginning of the idea? Oh, this is the bee squad. This oh. is the police bee squad. Some reason I kept picturing dogs every time you said bee. It's yeah. really weird. Yeah, it is really weird. <laughs> I did mention dogs. I said, you know how they have dogs. Ah, uh, yes. Right? But then you just latched onto the dog. Oh, you're right. Because like I started trying to write down. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> No, no, don't think about it. Don't think about it. Right. But this is this. So we have a uh, the bee squad and maybe they, they have they are trying to work out like they've got these highly trained bees. They're trying to work out exactly what the best mm -hmm. way to use them is. Yeah. You know, um, can they get a little bit of tranquilizer stuff onto their mm. onto their sting so that, you know, you, you shoot you, you some yeah. honey onto the neck of the, the criminal. Then you release the bees and the bees all swarm in mm. and they. You know, um, sting maybe them if on you the could neck. put a little little bit of glue on mm. the end at the base of their sting, so that when they sting, it doesn't pull everything out. Oh, and doesn't doesn't um, kill the bee. Doesn't kill the bee. So you you create a non you know like because they're a one use bee mm. a lot of the time. Yeah, but like, I mean, think a of reusable the, bee. But that's quite beautiful as well, isn't mm. it? That they have to lay down their lives in the administration of justice. Yeah, sure. And then you have the beautiful ceremony mm. where the mayor's there, the it's mayor. Beautiful. The, and yeah, and then and, and they mayor the 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 bee is getting a posthumous um, medal of bravery. Yeah. The bee's there on a little plate. Yeah, right? or, or or there's trying a little, to put that medal around its neck. It's a little matchbox with the Australian <laughs> flag over no. it. And, uh, <laughs> Alistair. <laughs> then they put this tiny little medal on there, which they wouldn't, you know. Obviously, it'll some you know there'd be a little bit of money in the putting the bits together, but that's not a lot of metal. They actually have to, so it's pretty cheap to do this. Nice. this is you, know? you got to think about that. Could it be possible that the the police officers get to mm. have a a big sort of wooden straw and they put one of the bees in their mouth and they go like that? Absolutely. And they can shoot the bees yeah. at people. I mean, this this does feel like a a movie. Mm. Call it'd be called the Bee Squad, right? Mm. Which already we got ourselves a pun on our hands, right? Is it? What's the pun? Well, the Bee Squad is usually the people who are the B grade. You know, oh, yeah. not the A team. This is the B squad. But then we find out when we get in, and we should have realized this because on the poster it was spelled B-E-E, -E, but mm. we didn't put two and two together. We yeah. just thought, well, this will just be a movie about a squad who aren't quite as good as the A squad. Oh, I, yeah. I don't know what those E's are doing there. Won't give it any thought. Yeah. Right? There were pictures of B's on they, the poster. I wonder if that's in some way related. They just spelt out the B Correct. properly. And the, oh, the B is already a sort of a... A striped animal. You got the pol it, those it, police just, stripes. Those police stripes. <laughs> <laughs> They've already got those regular police stripes. <laughs> and could their car be fuzzy? Yes. Yeah, they got a fuzzy car. The fuzzer here. Hello. <laughs> Hot and, fuzz. And you know what's great is that <laughs> then we can have because the the movie obviously is just you know, at first it's just about the B squad you know it's like yeah. you know it's just them and you I guess you know you could borrow some elements from Police Academy because they've been the B Police Academy <laughs> and you know you get people learning how to deal with bees and they mm. become friends with bees and things mm. like that and then you know and then Bobcat Goldthwait is there and uh, and, and uh, now he'd have a reason for me going like this because <laughs> he's getting he's stung by, by bees, bees. <laughs> right. Um, we're making that movie make more sense. But then, right, so then it's just you see them in action. But then climate change happens. Oh, no. Right? Colony collapse. Yeah, and then... And then um, and then it's the mean street crime goes up. Yeah, but also, yeah, uh, plants aren't being pollinated anymore because of all these things. Yet these hardened, you know, police bees, they, mm. can, take, they can take more than two degrees change in in you know in the sure. sort of average climate sure. so then the the bee squad then's job is to save all you know uh, agriculture <laughs> by <laughs> just buzzing around pollinating flowers <laughs> so sort of the climax of the film doesn't doesn't exactly sort of it's not a traditional climax uh, i mean they're working together so you know the um 
you know, the, 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 the police officers there, they all run in, they're also wearing SWAT gear and they got the bees around them. They're running onto a farm mm. an orchard and the, and the guys, instead of guns, they have little brushes and they take, they take um, pollen from the, mm. from the flowers and then they run onto another. So this is the police humans are also doing it. They're helping it out and they're, they're all working out. They're together. all working together. Hand in tiny bee claw. Yeah. And then there's a guy who, you know, he's the big bad guy and he runs, oh, he runs a coal mine. And a coal fired power plant, mm. you know. Yeah. So you see, I don't know. It, look, it's just an idea, but you know, a, a lot of these movies they always have a message about climate change. Correct. And I don't know if we were going to get this up without the message, Andy. Yeah, no, no, that's a great message about climate change mm. as well. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I think, I think also they could be. Oh, because because this is this is this is the real arc of this film, right? Because it's it's B Squad, mm. right? And there is uh, an established squad of bees at the <laughs> at the police force, yeah. And they're all the tough bees, right? Mm. And then, um, by the way, I'm going to love this Bumblebee character who's kind of like the fat one who's like a bit slow, and everyone laughs at him and that sort of thing. He never he's never able to fly in the small through the small gaps. Yes. He gets stuck. Yes, he can transform into a car. It's going to be great. What? <laughs> but um but so that, that that's the, but there's this the the top flight uh b squad at the mm -hmm. police that's actually the a b squad but then this but then colony collapse happens mm -hmm. they all die off right and then the b b squad who have only just come out of the academy mm. or the b academy they uh they have to come up and try and fight uh whatever yeah. the particular uh villain of the piece is maybe there was a heat wave that wiped out all bees mm. except these ones while they were. <gasps> this is exciting. This is we have our first guest for today, Mr. Jack Druce. J the JD of the podcast. Hey, I didn't know where to come in that wouldn't interrupt. Am I right talking in here? Uh, yeah, yes, you yes. are. You are. But the mic we, is the perfect place. Were we going to swap your seats so that um, people can see Jack's face? Okay, I can do that. I mean, I can look at the stream and people can uh, and and see what people can see. I was looking at the stream before I came here. It's looking good. Oh, here. thanks. You want to move? Yeah, just yeah you go, you go, sit, you go there. sit there, right? And Alistair will sit over here because people don't <laughs> really. Time, boys. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> Is this a um, sketch idea? Is, right? <laughs> is us moving seats? <laughs> yes. I mean. Is is this a sketch idea? All right, okay. It's yeah. musical chairs, we, but we only we've only ever really experimented with musical chairs with music. Right? I mean, there could be so many other things Ooh. defining the period in which you've got to sit down on the chairs, mm. right? You know, maybe maybe we play back the uh, the collected orations of Winston Churchill. Mm. I feel like this is what they would do at like a young conservatives confident conference or mm. something. We play musical chairs, but instead of uh, of music, it's the um, it's the speeches of uh, Ronald Reagan, and when he stops. Everybody has to steal a chair from the poor. Ha ha! <laughs> I satired you at the end there. <laughs> Could you do like um in, in what sort of what this is to podcasts or what like ultra marathon running is to running? Mm. You could do like a an endurance type musical chairs where you're not <laughs> the music not never stops. Or, well, it stops, but maybe a day away or nine hours away <laughs> or twenty seconds away. You don't know, but there's no real time limit mm. in place. Yeah, and it's kind of athletes have to do it. Mm. Oh, I, I, athletes and monks have the patience for it. I'm, I mean, I I would I would actually love to see musical chairs at um at a an at an Olympics. Yeah, I guess if it was an, an Olympic oval and there's sort of like, you know, there's maybe 12 people running, there's 11 chairs mm. just placed around it. So oh, there's the yeah. endurance thing, mm. but then there's that sprint when the music stops. Yeah. It's that, oh, like that to get the chair. You know what? Right. We have the, we already have the podium, right? Mm -hmm. The podium, but at the, in all events, the podium is sort of separated from the event. But why not just have the running race oh and then have the God. podium just there in the middle of the field, and then you finish the running race, and then you've just got, got to run and see whoever gets onto the top of the podium first. Like right. that feels much more uh, relevant, you know. The podium's tied into the thing; it's yeah, much more yeah. dramatic, right? No waiting around. Maybe you've got to grab the medal. 
Maybe you've got to fight the, you've got to fight um Juan Antonio Samaranch and get the medal off him. Now that's a sport. He doesn't want to give it to you. The song that's playing that stops is already your national anthem. Yes. So it's already kind of tied in. Like well, that would have to mean that all national anthems are playing simultaneously. simultaneously. You have to be able to pick out your individual national anthem oh, from so it's, a, so it's a it's a it's a sport of the mind as mm. well. Yeah, yeah. Everything, right? Uh it's got running. It's got listening, it's got thinking, and it's got wrestling the elderly. All yeah. the elements. <laughs> yeah, but then there's also that part where one person's uh, like national anthem stops, mm. and then they get to just go take a position while yeah. other people's... And it feels tough. Yeah. It feels rough. It feels rough. But, you know, sport's not always fair. That's one of the things they tell you about sport. Maybe, maybe the higher your country's GDP, the earlier your music stops. Oh, and then, and then the whole country really is contributing... You know, like mm. at the moment, we all sort of um, we, we 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 feel proud of our our athletes, but we haven't really contributed anything. But if we, whenever we went to work, we knew we were contributing to the GDP that is ultimately going to give our athletes the advantage at yeah, the Olympics because yeah. our our anthem's going to stop that bit earlier. Mm. Think what that would do for productivity. That's true. I mean, this is unless it was the other way around. <laughs> yes, Alistair. <laughs> unless it was the other way, you know, like kind of like. Uh... You know, like you know how, like in Mario Kart, the further up in, in, in front you are, the le the the less good the items mm. you get given when you hit a star. You know, when you hit one of those, you know, when you get yeah, one of those sure. question mark things. I think what you're referring to here is handicapping. Mm. Yeah, so like then, in Mario Kart. Yeah. So like, <laughs> so then the higher your GDP, the further, the the less time you got because you got you know better training facilities and things mm. like that. But then countries would try and lower their GDP, you know, mm. the incentive to... Oh, artificially, yeah, go into recession for eight years. We're also doing this on the um, on the assumption that winning this new event is going to be priority number one for every country. <laughs> <laughs> like, you gotta... Okay, new take on it, right? Yeah. All nations of the world pool their GDP into yeah. one collective sort of bank account. I'm mm -hmm. listening. All right, and then... We allocate the GDP after the Olympics in proportion to the medal, medal tally. I like that. Yeah. yeah? Wow. All in. Yeah. As, as we've established, capitalism doesn't work, right? But right. people hate socialism. Okay. But people love sport. People love and a rooting punt. for their team. They love a punt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a new kind of economic system for the whole world. It's kind of like a, a puntocracy, right? And you just you get allocated your your winnings based and 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 you know this could this could be really good. You know, it might even turn out to be fair. Not it doesn't mm -hmm. probably not, but it mm -hmm. might because countries that have higher populations tend to have higher medal counts, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, and they or, would or, need or, more or money to keep their people alive. I I've always so. said athletes who lose don't feel bad enough as it is as well, though. I think <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they have to come I home really to a desolate, so starving country. War torn in poverty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is, by the way, going to do wonders for their chances at the next Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, when they get everybody... hacked to death and they come home. No, but I'm thinking about everyone not having any food for four years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, and but also getting you know having their athletes hacked to death. Well, like, but but also maybe then we wouldn't have the Olympics every four years, right? We'd have to have it every week or something, or like there'd be like a pay every cycle. Every week, well, okay, every fortnight, <laughs> whatever your pay cycle is, yeah, right. We'll have the yeah. Olympics every every second Friday, sure, right. <laughs> It'll be a bit of an uh, an admin sort of it's thing. A, but it's a weekend a huge thing, yeah. opening ceremony. Mm, new country, no, sure, every... sure. New country, yes, of course. <laughs> like. 30 to 50 Olympic flame relays happening mm. at any given time. Mm -hmm. So so I guess maybe we could just, instead of like, like we could just have one country that we just dedicate to, that's the Olympic country where these happen and we just send our people there every weekend. Every where would we weekend. go? Singapore? Greece. Greece? Yeah, they Greece. used to do that. Yeah, I mean, they need the money. Exactly. They use the money. And if anyone knows better than them the failures of capitalism and of socialism, it's Greece. Exactly. I mean, I don't know about the socialism thing. I know, but they got that guy. But but yeah, mm -hmm. they did, didn't they? Yeah, they. But then, but they also, I mean, how appropriate this f origins of the Olympics, but also the origins of democracy. What a better birthplace for a new type of society. Puntocracy. The puntocracy, yeah. Greece. If you're listening, <laughs> right? Bulgaria. If you're listening from earlier, get onto your friends in Greece. You guys are near <laughs> close, right? Yeah. 
oh man, all that little bit around that inner curve of the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. So yeah. many countries, and I can't like way. It feels like way too many countries. Whenever I hear a new country name, I'm like, I think any yeah. country that I don't know where it is, I just assume it's sort of in that top right hand little bit of the Malta? Mediterranean. Malta, sure. I mean, I think Malta's an island. That's one I feel yeah. more. Cyprus. Like, Cy Cyprus. Yeah. What is that? I don't know, but I know my parents went there and they had Croatia. A, they had a huge schnitzel, and they were and they were <laughs> like, and I was like, that's Cy Cy Cypriot food, and they're like, that's Cypriot food, big schnitzels. You can't eat it all over there when you eat there. But you didn't think that about what, no, what, what no do you, what, what's the one thing you know about Cyprus? Uh, they got big schnitzel. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I would not have guessed that at all. I would have thought that was more of a, you know, a German or Austrian kind of deal. Exactly, mm. and that's. You know, I guess I was imagining they'd be eating like olives and stuff. Like that's a what big I would olive. Mm. Yeah, huge. The bigger big olive that you can eat. Yeah. Mm. Do you think that um yeah. is is the is the band Cypress Hill was that a metaphor for a, a Cypriot um getting, schnitzel getting your way through? A it's it's it basically being this this summit that you've got to climb. Mm. Um, and this is what leads to you becoming insane in the membrane. Mm. Is that you know the that <laughs> schnitzel crumb? You're so filled with it. And it's it's starting to penetrate the the you know the 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 that brain barrier where oxygen can't get through, but but schnitzel crumb <laughs> can. <laughs> well, there's I mean, if you eat enough schnitzel, presumably there would be a concentration of gradient, a, con a concentration gradient in your body where there is such an intense concentration of schnitzel mm. in your stomach versus the schnitzel low pressure system sort of oh, within uh, the membranes of the brain yeah. that forces schnitzel to um, via a process of osmosis mm -hmm. or diffusion um, spread into the brain. At least chickenness would mm. have to go in, assuming it's a chicken schnitzel, yeah. right? Like there'd be such a high concentration of ch chickenness mm. that ch the properties of the chicken would start mm. going into the brain, which I think, you know, w when you see a human start to behave like a chicken, mm. that, oh, yeah. that does come across as insanity. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it might, it's us without our context, it looks to us insane. I mean, with, with the benefit of hindsight, if we took the time to find out, we might discover that actually they're just behaving like a chicken. Mm -hmm. So it's not insane at all. No, no it's I'm, very normal in the right very context. Normal. Yeah. <laughs> They shouldn't be put in an asylum. They should be put in a coop. A coop, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, I had 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 something. Oh, we've, is that we've, a sketch? Do you think? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah Alistair, <laughs> we might almost have to stop asking that yeah. on this episode. <laughs> um, uh, I had a thought, which was about. Oh well, I love that that that, that in that the the, the 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 schnitzel was too big to eat. <laughs> that that was yeah. that that was the feat like that almost that that is the na national dish not yeah. so much the schnitzel but the quantity i think we should have a national quantity is what <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know states have a have a a floral emblem and a yeah. faunal emblem and uh you know they might have a national a toadstool or something like that but what would it, be the national quantity? Uh, maybe about a milk crate's worth? No, I think in Australia it would be heaps. Yeah, heaps. Yeah. 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 yeah and, and probably in Canada it would be a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a whole bunch. A whole bunch. But I, but I, but you know, but I mean, America, the gallon feels something that I don't understand at all. I have no idea what a gallon is. I can't, I can't I imagine a barrel. Yeah. But a barrels have very different sizes. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just I think whatever I'm you can fit in get any barrel <laughs> is a gallon to me. It seems how it would work. <laughs> but, but yeah, well, I, I mean, I think I think then we need to we need to settle on whatever it is, whatever the national quantity is. Okay, so let's say Australia has a national quantity. It doesn't have to be heaps. That's that's pretty uh, vague. It's pretty vague. You're mm. right. Um, um, like uh, you know, m maybe sort of like about eight or nine liters. Feels like feels like sort of about an Australian type quarry. So you're going? Is it like you sit down for a meal? You've just arrived in Australia. You order anything, and you mm. get eight or nine liters. Can of I that. get it in the national quantity? Yeah. So you're just like, I'd like to try oysters. Here mm. you go, nine liters of yeah. oysters. <laughs> I think maybe it a could nine be like, liter jug yeah. full to the brim with oysters. Is that just like? Oh, is that, that what we're discussing? Yeah. Is that what yeah. you? <laughs> 
because that does sound like that does sound like a lot. I think Jack does make a pretty good point there. <laughs> you know, as soon as he brought it into stark oyster based <laughs> relief, yeah, I don't um, think you should have any. I don't think you should ever mention any quantity that you wouldn't feel comfortable drinking <laughs> that amount of oysters. Could it be? You know? Could it be like a buttload? And so then, and it's measured sort of on the prime minister's butt, butt cavity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I think if we, I, I mean, Alistair, I am absolutely absolutely up for standardising a buttload. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So you let's say let's say you take you go to the prime minister, you fill his butt up with foam or her butt and, or her butt, and I apologise, I was just using the current one. Mm, okay. Um, and then you pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be difficult. Wow, I don't think so. I think there's little. It's, it's, it's a flexible thing. Well, this, but this is this is problematic to me. I'll tell you what's problematic about this. Doesn't the foam expand? And wouldn't that stretch the the butt cavity? And wouldn't that, by definition, you know, observing changes the thing that's observed? I'm wondering if it's possible to get an objective read on the size of the what prime I minister's think is butt. What's going to be interesting as well is the the uh, come election time. It'll mm. be a big you like you can fit a whole turkey in there. Yeah. Yes. Like, oh, I've got my vote. <laughs> uh, but I wonder I wonder if that is the ca- if if that would be good if you would want a big prime minister's butt because suddenly all the all the stuff that you bought under the previous prime minister's butt load you will have now in terms of butt loads there'll be like a exchange rate thing where the the size of a buttload increases but the number of buttloads that you have will decrease mm, right. and and maybe that would be bad maybe you'd want a prime minister with a tiny little butt like a like a like a grape in there yes like a, maybe maybe a, a prime minister with a colostomy bag mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know and that was a good standardized point just a pint that's I mean, knowing how things go over time, we would probably eventually do that. We'd go to a system where... Sort of find like something that's just an SI unit or yeah, whatever. Yeah, the, the prime minister, when they get elected, they go to the governor's residence, they sign that thing, and then the governor sort of cuts into their bowel and inserts a colostomy <laughs> bag so that, you know, to, to try and standardise the whole um, the whole situation. Because I mean, it was getting to be unworkable. It's yeah. <laughs> I mean to to have to eat a buttload of food every single meal. <laughs> is that the the way it would be used just oh, for, we, for for serving sizes but other things like mm. I guess instead of I guess you know you could just change all your um all your scientific me- measurements to be based on that you know like you buy you buy petrol by the liter but now you buy it by the buttload. Mm. Um you know a meter then becomes you know the circumference of this buttload or whatever. Mm. I don't know how what the relationship. Oh, oh no, well, everything's defi- everything mm. defined. Like like now they try and get all the scientific units can in in uh, something to do with the speed of light. They're mm. all tied back to like a universal constant. So we tie everything back to the butt. The speed of butt of the prime <laughs> minister's butt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so if you know you take the you take the butt into a vacuum. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't know. Thank you so much for coming in, Jack. Oh, it's, a, it's an honor. I was thinking on the way in, what a if this goes like incredibly well, what a really dangerous precedent for comedy writing you're setting. Of just like mm. that's how you you want to write comedy, get in that room all day, mm. never come out. Well, that's what comedy writing is. Now. We thought at the end of today, because this is obviously this is going to be the end of season one of Two in the Think Tank. Yep. You know, yeah, you know, this two hundred episode, we could we could potentially just live off of these ideas for the rest of our careers and just try to make them. And never have to brainstorm ever again. Yeah. Never have to create and, you know, have, never have to come up with any ideas. Yeah. We, we, we have this set number of ideas and then when they're finished being made, we can just die. Yeah. Which... The dream. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the dream is to die. We don't want to die. Yeah. <laughs> got to get enough ideas first. <laughs> mm. I got to leave a legacy of unfinished business. Um, an idea that came up in... Um, puntocracy that I thought could be expanded into something sure. else that I thought was funny was um, that uh, someone tries to bring about world peace by getting an orchestra to play every national anthem all at once Yes, at the same time, just this sort of what's that, that Phil mm. Spector wall of sound thing, mm. was the wall of nations just mm. all going at once, which would be yes. I don't know, that would bring us together somehow. I mean, and, and, and it would have to be played in every in every city and town and things yeah. like that. So it would definitely be a, be, a, be a big operation. And I think once it got there, it would be very difficult to listen to. Mm. But then 
world peace is difficult. Yeah. yeah. And it's everyone's kind of annoyed at the same thing. that They mm. have to listen to this horrible screeching. Mm. That's right. And then we have a common enemy, <laughs> which is the guy who came up with this idea. Phil Spector. Phil yeah. Spector. <laughs> or Jack Drews. Oh, yeah. And then, um, and then instead of fighting each other, well, all we got to do is kill that guy. And then mm. peace for the rest of existence. <laughs> we kill that one guy. Yeah. I think, I think it would be... I'm. I'm it might. It would be good to have just one person to blame for everything, right? Like if we could, if yeah. we could all agree on someone whose fault it all was, everything, all the stuff, and then, and then, like, what, what would we do? Would we kill them? I think killing is so bad. It is so yeah. bad. Should we just put them in a prison by themselves? And this is the problem: to kill the person, someone else would have to do something bad, mm. right? Either they'd have to kill themselves, or Maybe put um, themselves in prison. Put themselves in prison, or maybe th they they just go about their lives. But whenever we see them, whenever anybody sees them, we get to look at them and go, "You, this is all because of you." Yeah. And they have to go, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was, it's me." Yeah, I think this person can't die or be punished yeah. at all because then mm. then we're just back to square one. We just this person has to just You're be right. around in the world, mm -hmm. and every time anyone sees them, you kind of just go, "Come on, mate." <laughs> That's, oh, yeah. What are you that's, doing? That's their <laughs> sacrifice. Yeah, as that it's just they constantly get those public head shakes. People just go, yeah. "Oh my, that was awful." Yeah, what you done? <laughs> oh, that was not good. Hey, I did not enjoy that. It was just too much noise, wasn't mm. it? You know, there's, you couldn't really pick out a melody. Mm. The bad guy. Yeah, I wonder, but I want you know, I am. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it, it it might it might almost be divert. You you could divorce you could divorce it from the um from the anthem thing and have the anthem thing as a separate one, and then just have it where you know it, it there is there is you know we 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 elect gov you know we, we elect a government who we want to lead the country. And then we also elect somebody who we want to be able to sort of blame. For like they might be paid quite well. Yeah, so there'd be a salary, maybe even an official. I feel like the, the term "shadow government" already refers to this type of man. Into me, you know what <laughs> it I mean? Should. Like, that's, it should. That, that wording sounds like mm, it sounds very an sinister. evil man to walk the earth and mm. to lurk, yeah. yeah, behind in the darkness. Yeah, I mean, shadow isn't really in the darkness, is it? It is darkness. Yeah. Oh, but sometimes there can be a darker shadow. That's true, actually. You can just, have a shadow within a shadow. Mm, yeah. Yeah, because you know it's just a it's just a spectrum of light, right? Of light quantity. Mm, the <laughs> ah, the spectrum, the full spectrum of quantity. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there there is a spectrum of intensity of light intensity. I never thought about this, but all quantities <laughs> exist on a spectrum, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> From none <laughs> up to buttload. Oh, buttload. <laughs> And then the only other quantity above that, I guess, once you have your national quantity, is you can have one buttload of buttloads. Ah, oh, yes, a buttload of buttloads. <laughs> Which, but then you would have to have a small unit of buttload in order to put inside a butt. Well, would you have like oh, a like a coin that represents a buttload? Would you have like a mega buttload and a giga buttload? Oh, and that's, that's true. That's how you could do it—a giga buttload. <laughs> I guess that's how you would measure water. A giga butt, a mega butt. Yeah. <laughs> terabuts. <laughs> terabuts. <laughs> Wait, you're only that terabuts? <laughs> I mean you can, I'm not gonna stop you. For God's sake, we need the numbers. But um has have we talked about this on the show before? The idea of like all those abstract and some I'm sure somebody has done this um somewhere. But like all those abstract quantities, like a buttload, a fuck ton, a shitload. Um, heaps, you know, um, putting putting all of those like r r working them out where they lie, relatively speaking. Mm. You you yeah. you might even be able to do some kind of like Google ngrams type analysis of all the written stuff online, and somehow try and find out what the actual quantities were when people used those various different abstract. Um, nouns or whatever they are to refer to different quantities. So work out what the actual quantity was they were referring to, then find out the average of what those are, and then actually work out like 
how much a buttload, a shitload, a fuck ton, mm. fuck load. I um, mean, this yeah. this sounds a lot like a PhD, Andy. It does, mm. yeah, um, and uh, a very good one. Yeah, and 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 then and then and then you put them all, you put them on the spectrum, the abstract quantity noun spectrum. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the AQNS. Uh, it's what we call it in the yeah. PhD. Business. I mean, it's strange because it probably picked. No, never mind. It's not a joke to me. <laughs> <laughs> Two hundred um, episodes, and you've finally drawn the line. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, the kind of person that would probably do this kind of project might be themselves on the spectrum. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The spectrum of quantity. Absolutely, Absolutely. they would have us there. They would be the one. most person. <laughs> I wonder who is the most person? Probably someone like. Donald Trump is probably the most person. Yeah, well, he's a lot of he's a lot yeah, of person. He's a lot of person, like in so many ways, right? Mm. Probably takes up the most space in the world, right? Like he's, you know, if if you're into man spread as a concept, he mm. is he is man spread across the the entire globe. Like, oh man, if I were into um, if I were a political cartoonist, I'll tell you what I'd draw. Yeah, yeah, and this is what I draw. I draw the Earth, right? And then Donald Trump is sitting on top of the earth, right? And he's got his legs splayed out. Right? He's huge. He's huge. He's got his legs splayed out so they sort of cover the earth. Maybe America is sort of in his crotch area in North America there. And, um, and I would write underneath, I'd just write man spread. And then that would, that would go viral that'd probably. Great. Yeah, that'd be like, a, like one of those cartoons you yeah, see. Yeah, and like you, a, could just, you could draw just whatever you wanted and then write. Just words over some of it. And then yeah, just, just yeah. Tax or labor yeah. on the top of a giraffe or something, and they'd be like, "This is good." <laughs> you wait. You write. You write giraffe. No, you'd have a picture of a giraffe, oh, and then you'd write, you'd write labor tech. on it or something. Yeah. And people would be like, "Yes, yes, yes." <laughs> so someone like, had to say it. <laughs> labor. I think. I think really, what you should. It'd be great to work out to do a drawing that is sort of so generic that that's just like your standard political cartoon drawing. And then each week you just change what the words are written on the giraffe and on the yeah. the sofa bed and, you know, the there'd have to be a bag of money as well, right? Yeah, yeah. P- pro- maybe somebody, there'd, there'd have to be a picture of somebody shoveling money, right? Wait. Whatever the ultimate... Can you explain this to me? I'm, this I'm is like listening. a this is like a universal um, political cartoon, mm-hmm. right? Where you can just change. You know how they write words on things to say what they represent, mm-hmm. right? Like if there's a a bag of clams that has one nation party written on it, mm-hmm. right? And then there's um, an otter, yeah. rummaging through the bag of clams. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah. and the otter has um, a public sentiment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but but you 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 make one that's just sort of like so generic mm. it contains enough generic elements that you don't even have to ever redraw the cartoon you just change what the words are that are written mm-hmm. on everything so i do feel like the idea one of the elements of the image would have to be someone shoveling money into into a, a furnace some, a furnace yeah. great Shoveling money into a furnace, and, and 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 this is we're coming up with the final meme, like yeah, because you know, yeah. right now people s- keep switching and swapping. And I think things we like need that. to pick a meme. I think we just need to pick one that we can say everything with, and then we just change mm-hmm. the words on those, it. Those like Renaissance, they were all into like those perfect formulas and what makes art and the circles mm-hmm. and the the man with oh the, yeah uh, the like, golden ratio. Ra- I feel like we need that like. Just finally, we should just yeah perfect the meme. The golden ratio the golden, of satire. Yeah, the golden. <laughs> what is ratio. the ratio of money shoveling to giraffes <laughs> that you need to communicate the maximum variety of satirical well, I feel intent? Like the um the. The, the guy with his girlfriend and the other girl, and he's like, oh, looking around. That was her. pretty that close, was wasn't probably it? Probably the closest we've got. Yeah, yeah, like like, yeah. What a super universal thing of like the idea of. There's something you should be thinking about, but instead you're thinking about something else. Yeah. That's very that's that's pretty. Mm. The, it is you're not doing what you should be doing. That's the human condition. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe we already found it. What are we yeah. gonna do with this furnace one? I think we're just gonna we're we're gonna mount a challenge to that meme mm. as I go. All right, well, look, we know it's not as funny and not as good, but we mm. think we this just should just be the official one. 
<laughs> and then we like you know you know like the way that they gamed all the uh, the music industry so that you know people with from big agencies could just pay money and then they could just get lots of plays on on the radio and things like that and so that I don't know about this no I think yeah like I think the top 40 is it was very gamed you know it's like it's all uh you know big management companies can essentially because they want whoever their act is or whatever to mm. to be the, it, like being at number one is the point is the is the selling point to yeah. then sell the albums that or the tracks that that should justify you being at number one. Yeah, and so I think I think there's an element in within there in which it's you know it's game like like <clears> that's <throat> why you don't hear any Australian songs on the radio very much these days on sort of commercial radio and things like that because there's just not enough money in the industry here to for, for that kind of thing. You know, there there are some, but not very much a lot of time. So yeah, right. So, so I think, you know, like that, we just game the system to just make this the best meme. We get, we, we're, we're I don't know who we pay to get that to happen. I feel like you've got to get influencers involved. Maybe and BuzzFeed. It's just BuzzFeed. And then. What an interesting trajectory BuzzFeed went on. Yeah. Whether, where it was just like the listicles that everyone took the piss out of. And then they were like, no, but we're also going to do political news. Mm, hard hitting. Like investigative journalism to a certain extent. Yeah, that's just weird. Like, like you, you, you wouldn't necessarily have predicted that. No, I don't think I would have predicted that at all. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, don't... I mean, what other uh, internet phenomena could could do sort of a pivot to hard news? Click hole. Click hole. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. Yeah. That'd be hard for them. I'm thinking maybe one of the porn sites. I mean, yeah. Pornhub is kind of doing some like. <laughs> no, wait, no, you can't tell me. <laughs> well, Pornhub just did a video that is like a porn video where it's on a polluted like beach that's got plastic everywhere, and they're like, "Oh, this is such a dirty beach." <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know who else is a dirty beach? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> me, me. Yeah, and then and then I think there was you know some stuff about raising you know about like you know a message about raising the, erections raising erections mm. and awareness of don't throw plastic into the ocean when they um, that is that is a, that is amazing to me mm. was this on the news yeah it was in the last few days i mean but now I, they now they need to open an investigative arm yeah yes yeah. yes <laughs> investigative pornography yeah. <laughs> okay so that's the sketch <laughs> right so like you know, there is there is the, the there is the stream of pornography that is people going into like having sex in public areas, right? But what about having sex in areas that should be public but that are kept behind yeah. closed doors? So they have to like actually break into the records mm -hmm. department of the Australian Federal Police, mm. right? Rip out some files uh, <laughs> that no. that you know reveal the covert surveillance of Australian citizens, and then have sex on top of them. That's, but then oh, the yeah. the mm. money shot, which is you know in the background, is in focus, and you can clearly see the <laughs> the correspondence from the minister in question. Yeah, just the documents. Mm. They're, they're resting their buttock on it, mm -hmm. and while there's a, a lot of media action happening in the top of frame, mm -hmm. down below you can see all these people keeping their money and shell companies yes. <laughs> you know um, you know because because you're doing this in the place where they got all the paradise papers <laughs> you know and then and then they're lifting their butt and turning the page mm. and then, you know things like that and you so you're you're you know you're getting it you know, mm -hmm. you're getting eyes on, on 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 the porn but then you're also getting some eyes yes. on some you know WikiLeaks could go in this direction yeah, absolutely <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a crossover right it's I mean, very good it, it, it's it's getting people to look at what they it's i mean the, really we've we've collapsed the um the meme that of the guy looking at the girl when he should be looking at his girlfriend because at the moment the world is looking at pornography mm, when they yes. should be looking at the powerful they should be scrutinizing the powerful not scrutinizing penises that's right right and <laughs> and so really we've folded the meme over and now we've put the girlfriend mm. over the other girl there so when you're looking at the other girl you're also looking at your girlfriend when you're looking at the penises you're also scrutinizing the powerful the powerful yes yeah. and holding them to account oh we folded the page over mm. it would have been like a transparency it would have been a photo printed on a transparency though right 
Um, yes, or else you're just yes, looking at the back, of, the the back of a piece of paper, you wouldn't see anything at all. Um, and that's not what this project is about. <laughs> no. <laughs> Unless there's good information on the back of the page. Looking at the... Fr oh, that's interesting. What's on the other side of oh. all the memes? Yes. <laughs> oh, very interesting. I mean, I wonder if you know... What? <laughs> I'm just going to write that down because that yeah. feels like it's very deep. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know no. what it is. I think, but anyway, okay, Alistair, because I mean, all we like have all it... deep things, it feels like it also could just be screamed at you at a bus station. <laughs> 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 it could be coming from a place of deep oh. wisdom or just true insanity. <laughs> Which reminds me of last night, because we did a podcast last night to release this week, because this one is going out the following right. week when we actually release the 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 thing as opposed to the stream that's going out now <laughs> anyway um as we were driving home for the podcast last night to go and try and get some sleep to do this one today we we're in the car and i said <laughs> going back to alistair's place because i was staying over at al's and i said to alistair are the shoes on the bed <laughs> and and he didn't understand what I was saying, and I just kept repeating it to him. And he genuinely started to shout at me, and he was really worried that we'd lost the ability to communicate Cause, meaning. Because he was saying, "Are the shoes on the bed?" And I go, "What shoes? What do you?" And he goes, "Are the shoes on the bed?" And I go, "I, I don't know what you mean." And he goes, "Are the shoes on the bed? Are the shoes on the bed?" Like that. And then my brain literally clicked over into. Okay, I don't understand people anymore. <laughs> and I'm driving a vehicle and I, I may have just lost my mind and this is really dangerous. And like I, I like I felt like I was in a dream state. The point is that last time I was at Alistair's house, the spare bed in the bedroom was covered in shoes because <laughs> Al's partner is selling some shoes. And I wanted to know if there would be shoes on the bed when I got to his house. But but it it out of context this this question are there shoes on the bed is is is, is, is like is, what's on the other side of the meme yeah. yes exactly but i was going to say this that we do only ever look at the front of the internet right the very nature of screens is that you only ever see the front exactly mm. right but i want to know what's on the other side if you could turn the internet over what would be on the back mm. Mm. secrets you think Maybe secrets. Yeah. Maybe publishers' information. Yeah. Maybe just a nice pattern. Do you think coding could be? Code or, or do you think you have to take off the actual front of the screen <laughs> and then just turn the screen around? Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah and when you see, see like someone using the internet and they'll do like you're looking for something you can't find it, and then they'll be a user and then they'll press something and it'll just there'll be a box will open and it's just like code and stuff mm. and they'll do something and then it's there. Yeah. I feel like the, the fact that I live in 2019 and I don't know what that is, is so mm. I, I just can't live in the world really. Well, that like, is, that I should is, be on whatever that is. But that is very much like, you know, when your car is making a weird noise and your dad opens up the bonnet and like, turns something or fiddles with something and then puts it down and says, give it another go. And you start, you do it and it sounds, it's fine. You're like, Oh, well, I don't understand anything about what's yeah. under there, and it's the same as I don't know how to but, get yeah. the but JPEG I, file off the Twitter page. Oh, you to, know how to do that. No, not always. No, but um, I think the future will be that window, mm. but like let's say for food and stuff. You know, you're eating a meal. Mm. And like, you know, you're, you're going to be eating a meal here at a restaurant, and then you see the guy next to you, and he's like eating his sandwich. He takes a bite, and he goes, hmm, like that. And then he just kind of, with his fingers – Opens just a screen and in, in, in a screen in the sandwich. No, no, just a screen in the air. In the air next yeah. to the sandwich, and he goes like this, and he goes like that, and the sandwich will just kind of go like that, and it'll just change a little it, bit. A little bit of a glitchy kind of thing, maybe some pixelated stuff like that, and then he'll go. Mm. And I think we'll just have that instead of salt and pepper. Oh, yeah. this is great. That's an area of like imaginary future technology that hasn't really stepped up. Is just food being magic mm, that's you, right we have <laughs> you always see like in the future will be sort of like flying cars and it, there's a lot of stuff that sort of has kind of happened a bit mm. where there's no magical like you just have a little pod and you press mm. a button and you've got a whole huge meal mm. well i mean they did that a bit in the fifth element with that uh put the put the little droplets of something or other in the microwave and then you get out a full chicken yeah but but i think but i think you you're right and that, that like and this can be 
I mean, this could this could be part of our augmented reality future, where mm. basically the the chip that's in all our brains doesn't just um, you know m give us a heads up display, right, mm. of things that we can see in the corner of our eye. It gives us also a, like a mouths up display of things that we can taste in the corner of our tongue, right? And you, so you can you can sort of you can get a little taste feed into mm. your tongue at any time of whatever particular thing you want. Oh, to Oh, we we'll definitely have to have that. Mm. Right? You know what I think it is. You know what I was just. I was opening up there. This is going to be the, it's the back end of the universe. Mm. So we figured out how to yes. access the code, the source code. And then at some, any point you can just kind of go, Oh, my eyes aren't working properly. And you go like that. And he goes, Oh, there we go. Yeah. And you've, you've fundamentally altered the universe mm -hmm. in such a way that your eyes now work, or you've altered the universe so that your eyes, that the universe has changed so that what you see is actually what the world is now. So the world is now blurry. You you were seeing things blurry. Maybe this is this this could be this could be great. <laughs> you go to you go to a magical optometrist, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And okay. and you say, I'm, uh, I my uh, my vision is blurry, and I would like to see the world as it is. And instead of giving you glasses to fix the world, he just makes the world blurry and says, There you go. See, and and now the world is blurry. Everything's sort of fuzzy oh, around the no, edges, oh, right? Man. But 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 yeah, that's the risk you take when you go to a magical optometrist. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you should have been more specific when you you know how you go to an opt optometrist and you say, "I'd like to yeah. see the world as it is." Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, you've chosen the worst possible phrasing for that. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, I mean, alternatively, he strips the scales from your eyes completely. He or oh, there she, are scales on your eyes? Yes, the scales mm. fall from your eyes now. And now you can see things as they truly are. You can see the corruption in the heart of man. Oh, no. You can see the strings that are pulled by the powerful to keep the poor subservient. Is that what you want? <laughs> You're still short-sighted, though, mm. as well, though. You can't see. It's still a bit blurry. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. You can't quite make man. out the strings because yeah, yeah. they're quite thin. I feel that's corruption. i got to get closer <laughs> to have a look. i got to squint. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out the world is now short-sighted. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I mean, and, and then, then this, this, this is another version then, which is the satirical, the, the, the optometrist who makes a satir, a sat, tries to make a satirical point. Right? <laughs> the magical yeah. optometrist? Oh, it might be a different one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this is the satirical optometrist. Uh, for you to be a satirical optometrist, you would have to offer such a discount compared to just a regular, for me to consider you as opposed to just a medical optometrist. <laughs> <laughs> the difficulties of being a satirical <laughs> optimist. There's some there's some things that like adding an element of comedy can really really help, as mm, we know. So you can sure. get an idea across <laughs> with a little joke. You know, I feel like medical science is not there yet. So no, where... <laughs> no, you're right. You don't need to soften it with yeah, comedy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe clown doctors, but uh, yeah, they clown doctors need to have comedy added to them. Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, sorry. So, what, what does the satirical optometrist do? To you? Um, well, uh, <laughs> it, it, it felt close to my mind when I when I pitched the the concept. Um, you know, they they uh, they sh you know how they show you a picture on a wall. Oh yeah, right. Um, uh, it, it's a picture of um, you know a um, a, a a person. Uh, a, a a a rich a rich person holding giving some food to a poor person. Yeah, right? that's um, what's in the glasses. That no, that's what's on the wall. Okay. Right? they show you that on the wall, and they and uh, uh, and you look at it and you go like, oh, you t what? and they say, what do you see? Right, and you, you 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 tell them what you see, and they say, okay, and then they put a little lens in front of your eye, right, and they say, can you see it more clearly now? Right, and now you you look and you see that the rich person is actually taking the food from the poor person and adding it to a huge pile of food that they have behind them, mm. and you say, <laughs> "Yes, yes, it's much more clear now." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That will be two thousand yeah. dollars. Capitalism is theft. Oh yes, and then you have to pay them <laughs> yeah. a huge amount because nobody wants to buy these kinds of glasses. <laughs> But you can go to a website and get them for like $20. Mm -hmm. You just have to have the courage to ask me 
for your prescription. For your prescription, which no one has the courage, do you? No, is, I'll take your if money. If you're wondering what this is, this is how I get my glasses. Versus how I get my glasses. I go to an optometrist, I get the test because you get a free test on Medicare. You then you have to ask them for the for the prescription, and then you can just get really cheap glasses online, or you can go walk through their shop and pay four or five hundred dollars for mm, glasses oh, in their mm. shop. Yeah, be tricked by um, their riddles and schemes. <laughs> Um, have you written down satirical love topic? Of course I have. Alistair, yes, I love it. Yeah. I love it how I love it how easy to get it is to get onto the pad on a 200 step <laughs> day. You know, the 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 gate the doors to the pad are are, are wide open. Mm-hmm. You bet. What do you guys think about um like those treacherous genies? Mm. Like for the optometrist, where they just you know really dig in on a, the way you've phrased it and yeah, give like, you some bullshit mm, wish that you clearly yeah, make, didn't ask for. Yeah, make me a sandwich. And then yeah, he makes you a sandwich. bad sandwich. <laughs> no. Turns you into a bad yeah. sandwich. Oh, no. I just wanted to be turned into a good sandwich. <laughs> he gives you a sandwich. You go, I said, make me a sandwich. <laughs> you got to be very... <laughs> Turn my body into a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> no funny business. <laughs> so you, you, I love that you go, you go to a, you go to a genie and say, "Make me a sandwich." He turns you into a sandwich. And you say, "Thank you very much, genie," <laughs> and you squidge on out the door. And then you come back, and, <laughs> and the then... genie goes, "Oh, I didn't say a talking sandwich." <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, you, you got me. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's really fun. Have you got that down, Alistair? Yep. Yes! The genie who misinterprets a guy who wants to be turned into a sandwich. <laughs> that's exactly right. God, I'm going to have one of these bananas. And that didn't really need a god in front of it. I'm sorry for the blas blasphemology. If there's any if there's any religious people, do you think we have a lot of re religious fans? Um, yeah, I think so. Wow. Yeah, I think we our, our, our demographic skews um, pious. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have picked that. Hmm. Do you feel like it's because you get sort of bogged down in scientific concepts and then you sort of confuse yourself with mm. them so much that they can kind of be like, mm. did the science know everything? These yeah. Guys <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These guys think they know science and they clearly don't know anything. <laughs> Therefore, science isn't real. Mm. Um, what about, you know, sketch where we find out that science hasn't been right at all mm. and that... Everything that has worked based off of science, um, planes flying, mm. sort of coffee becoming good, and mm. things like that, it's all been luck. Have I already done this? I think we've done that in oh. coincidence or something okay. like that. Yeah. But but then it could be we could find out that there was there was another field that explains everything, mm. you know, another field like cooking or ballet. You know? Sure. Mm. Everything's actually based on ballet, not science. And it wasn't until ballet went away that everything crumbled. Mm. Mm. Ah. That's mm. why the government spends so much money. Uh... It is it is <laughs> crazy that the government spends so much money supporting the opera and ballet. Mm. But you know, not, not a lot of people are going to go and see it. But but that's one of those. Sure, it's one of those <laughs> art forms that got it. A, it got in early, didn't oh, it? Yeah. It got in early, but also has enough money around it. To lobby the government. Mm. You see, if you want to, like, you know, if you want people who play like uh, petanque or, you know, or, you know, sure. or, or bocce. Tr Trugo? Yeah. Is Trugo if, clubs? If they want more support from the government, they all got to come together mm -hmm. and create a bocce lobbying group. The bocce could lobby. It, the bocce lobby. Could it be something like um, people who do need money from the government have to do ballet to get in the mix of who gets mm. funding? Yeah, so like it's like this drought is really giving the farmers some trouble. So we got to band together and mm. do a ballet performance worthy of government subsidy. You know what? This sounds to me like the perfect feel-good movie mm. for yeah. Australians to make right now. It's a sort of a full Monty, but a political full Monty about drought and ballet. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bunch of farmers. They're down and out. Right. And they realize that all the money um, is going to art. You know, they, they, they no, and the government doesn't spend any money on the farmers. They realize the only way that they can qualify for a subsidy is to put on a performance of Swan Lake, and um, 
and they, you know, and then they'll get those rivers of gold, all that cash that's going to the the arts, and it's the um. Yeah. The, also, it's like a, it's a cool, like it's a right wing feel yeah, for the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's nice, and because then it's like it supports the, it loves the mm. farmers. Mm. I mean, this would I think would do really well in Australia. Mm. And then it also it, it sort of it hates the arts, mm. but at the same time, a, a presents the arts that conservative people do like. Yes. Yes. Being done by the people that they love, the real Australians, mm. although they probably haven't ever met them. No, that's right. But and wouldn't like them mm, if they did. But it's easy to love them, yeah, especially yeah. in a tutu twirling. Yes. And then it's, yeah, men in a tutu. Now that's comedy. See, yes. That's also, comedy. that is yeah. what conservatives, it's weird. They don't like men in dresses, but they love a man in a tutu. That is, mm. that well, is. They do funny. like men in, in dresses, but on a stage. And that's, that's mm. their safe space. On a stage <laughs> saying, look, I'm a woman in a yeah. dress. Yeah. But not really. <laughs> not really. I'll take this off when I go backstage. Yeah, but they only like it in, in fiction, in performance. Mm, sure, sure. And they wouldn't like it if it was on the, like a street performance, probably. That would be. Mm. No, know. it'll be in a beautiful old theater mm. that was shut down, but then they used, uh, they pulled themselves up, up by their bootstraps and, and remodeled it. Yes. The local carpenter who was also out of work. But because... without ever taking a penny from anybody. No, that's right. He did it out of his own uh, whatever. Inherited wealth from his father's mining empire. <laughs> yes. Yes. <Wow. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, it wasn't, it wasn't going wasn't to happen. Um, um, have um, you got a new guest coming in soon? Because I... I don't want to make them feel um, it's, weird on it's the all way good. out. I, uh, um... I can't remember if Evan's coming in at eight or uh, or, nine, or nine, maybe. But look, um, there's, there's still there's still no. minutes. Well, if it's Evan, I'll just kind of hang out till Evan gets here. That's well, sure. if, if he's coming nine, in at nine, that, that will be a really good. long time. Yeah, yeah. And we and, and and Jack, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but we did also sort of think that we need to have some depressing time where oh, it's absolutely. just me and Alistair and you're not here. I agree. Um, we so we that, were specifically thinking of times when you're not yeah. here. <laughs> as being the, de the depressing, you know, 23, 24ths of the podcast, yeah. the Jack Free period where um, we will try and... Um, <laughs> Try and try and drive ourselves slightly more mad, and I hope that doesn't sound mercenary. Like we're deliberately trying to go insane. We just know no, that we no. will, and the sooner we do it, the more compelling it I will be. Like a lot of the people tuning in are just here to see you go insane. Mm. I think that's the main appeal of it. Yeah. Have you got any guests coming in at like four in the morning or something? Uh, we do have one guest that we're calling. Yeah, got a couple of people from overseas skyping in at oh, great. three a.m. Yeah. yeah, and uh, we do have somebody coming in, Martin Dunlop, at one a.m. Right. Mm. I mean, there's a chance we might not make it that late. Alice Who knows? <laughs> You'll be done in like I, I, thirty I, minutes. Yeah, <laughs> I can't dare to dream. I can't be optimistic <laughs> in any way. You know, it's it's. Oh, so well, then I won't tell you what numbers we're up to. I don't. I, I, I genuinely don't want to know. Yeah. All right. Well, I might scoot off then. Jack. Um, Jack. We we apologize so for, much. for limits. Oh no problem. Uh, you know, one day we will do a two hundred episode, a two hundred episode episode where we come up with two hundred episodes um, in the episode, and and it'll be it'll be a two hundred. Jack Drew uh, sketches. I would love that. <laughs> I would love to, like an insane emperor, watch the live stream of you talking about me for 24 hours. Well, I mean, I thought you'd be, be here. No, 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 no. Jack's no. not here. I would be here on a on a throne in silence, watching and kind of grinning. I drink. <laughs> Nod. Thank you so much for coming. Nice. No worries. Good luck, guys. Thank um, you for being guest number one. Mm. Mm. Do I need anything? Do you need any um, no, I think we've got enough soft things that yeah. don't make too much noise and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're good. Much appreciated, Jack. Thank yeah. you so much. What do you think the liquid is that's the closest to being a food, right? Because drink, well, what's the, like, do you, mm -hmm. do you, can you consider a drink to be a food? Like, would you consider smoothie to be food mm. or drink? Are there things that are both a food and a drink? Or do you think that, it, you know, if you can, if you can, Basically, if you can suck it yeah. through a tube, mm -hmm. is, is, it, it, is, is it, it a food? Or is it a liquid? Um, look, I think soup is obviously... 
Super is a really intriguing one. I think if it's in a bowl, it's a food. But I think if it's in a cup, it's a drink. So maybe it's the receptacle mm, that well, defines the distinction. But would you have a smoothie in a bowl? Oh my god, that sounds awful. Does it? You could. I mean, what about what about this? I'm I'm selling it to you as a breakfast bowl smoothie, or a breakfast. How about this? It's a breakfast soup, and it's just the ingredients of a smoothie. Right, but they don't blend them up. No, they do blend them up. Right, breakfast soup. I mean, this is. I think this could really be something. Yeah. Right? But I do think that, like, you think about the stuff that you like. If you go to Boost Juice and you get one of those blended ice fruit drink things mm -hmm. that are so sweet and it's quite a large volume, like almost like a liter in one of those big things. Yeah. Right. If somebody did give that to you in a just a bowl, just a porcelain bowl with a spoon, and mm -hmm. say go away and eat this. I think that would be disgusting. You think so? I think I think, I think it would taste the same. No, right. I think it would taste the same, but I think you would be so, I would feel like I was so much more conscious of the fact that I am just having basically a big bowl of flavored sugar. Well, I think I think but it, but the flavored sugar is just fruit and stuff, right? Yeah, but so it's I, not that f difficult. Not not <clears throat> that different from sorbet. What about if you're eating a bowl of sorbet and it melted? Would you consider it a food? At some point, it's, it's got a, it's got a transition, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I but I think there might be a sketch or something or something in the in the smoothie in a bowl, mm -hmm. right? And and but because because I I do genuinely think mm. that like I I think there is a huge amount of sugar in those smoothie drinks yeah. right and if that if you look at the analysis of it it's like it's more sugar than there is in like a coke or something like that sure um and I but think, also there's some fiber in there I think yeah but I also I think the processing of it and the, but I think but I think yeah uh, the 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 blending of it down into that sort of that mush does remove a lot of the value of that fiber and you're not getting any of the skin or whatever of the apple and all that stuff that's actually yeah, right. like potentially the good bits i do think it is i don't think they're good for you necessarily yeah I think and i'm sorry fruit, if you're from the boost juice corporation and you're listening i think fruit overall is not as good for you as it's kind of presented mm. well also I, I i i guess a lot of that is because of the way that we have um, changed them. changed the fruit, but then I think they were completely valueless to us when they were just little hardened nubs <laughs> of, of sourness. <laughs> oh yeah, but uh, oh, this is good. Yes, it's going to make me shit for eight hours. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I think there's just a there's cyanide in the seeds. Is that right? There's cyanide or arsenic? There's something maybe in arsenic. There. Yeah, I feel it... like my ears have popped in some like in some weird like like. Mm. Are we on a plane? I think the uh, we're in a higher plane, Alistair. I think the, because the pressure, mm -hmm. something to do with the changing pressure in the room. Yeah. Maybe the pressure's off and your ears have popped. But I think that there is something to be said for mm. the fact that because when they give you that smoothie, they give it to you in that non-transparent um, cup, mm -hmm. right? The lid is on it. The lid's opaque, right? You can't even really see in to see what's in, in there. And you just suck it through a tube. I think, I think they are deliberately like got this kind of almost black box kind of attitude to the stuff, so you don't see it and you don't you don't connect with the reality of it as much. And it's uh, you, you know, you do, you don't you don't. Uh, I, I I I would I would not be surprised if there weren't some marketing or uh, some thought behind that. That is wait. Is so this is just there. a genuine conspiracy. Not a conspiracy, yeah. <laughs> just just a just just well, like is it a, is it a conspiracy? I can't think of an example. No, but, but like, but you think about this with smoothies. Yeah, like yeah. you think looking at a smoothie would just be too too hard on you. I think I think looking at a smoothie would would make you people too aware of the potential that this isn't actually a a health thing that they're drinking. This will there's this a will... huge amount of sugary water. That you're yeah. drinking. I think they're just putting like, I think maybe like I know you're not gonna love this, but I think there is a sketch in in a person who thinks that this is this is a a valid theory. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I so, think this is a sketch. Not what you're saying, like, but <laughs> but you saying this. Is the sketch like the fact that you think this is a is a thing? Yeah, that's the thing. Like it's a guy who stands next to Boost Juice mm. and tries mm. to convince people. Like the fact that they why are they hiding it? 
right? Mm. Why do they hide it in a container that sure. you can't see through? Sure, sure, yeah. Um, I just the think smoothie I do, look. Guy. I just think that it's suspicious that you suck it up through a tube, right? It's really like they're hacking into your. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't let anyone else put stuff into your head through a tube without looking at it. But the smoothie people, they let you do that. You don't even get to see the stuff in there, right? Mm. And 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 you trust them to just put it all together, and then you put it into your head, right? It's it's like like in the Matrix, okay? In the Matrix, they do it through the back of the skull, yeah, right, via that spike, that right yeah, tube and, there, and and we think that looks crazy, but that's exactly what you're doing with that smoothie, except you're just putting it through a hole in your head that's already there. Yeah, yeah, I think. I think this is perfectly insane for it's the smoothie conspiracy guy. <laughs> I mean, there are some places that do put it in a, um, in a tra- yeah, you're in, right. in a plastic cup. And probably so one of the it. reasons it's that it's a, opaque is that it's got to be sort of because it's cold. Yeah, it's cold. And it's got to it's got to have like a thick. It's got to be like polystyrene or something. Yeah. But there's no reason for the lid to be so opaque. <laughs> Why is the lid so frosted? It's a frosted lid. What are they doing with that frosted? What are they? What are they got to hide? Is there? What is it? Um, I, you know, and, I, I, I think I'm onto something, and God, I wish I could look at the live stream right now and see how much people agree with me no. or aren't watching. <laughs> either or, either people agree with me or they don't exist, Alistair. Yeah. I can't lose. <laughs> or if they are watching and they disagree with me, I just won't tell you. <laughs> you see, I can't lose. Wow, you are, yeah, you're really in a good position. Yeah, right I've got now. this sewn up. Um, I mean, just the idea that there, there's something that they're hiding. And also, even if there was sugar water in there, mm. you wouldn't look at it and go, look at that sugary water, because mm. sugar just disappears in water mm. when it dissolves, right? Mm. So you'd look at it and go, oh, yeah, when you look at it, I mean, mostly I just see that beautiful mango golden color. But that water just looks a little bit sugary to mm. me. Yeah. Thanks, Alistair. Well, no problem. Thanks for agreeing with me. No problem. <laughs> Not 100% sure that's what I was doing, but... No, no, no. God, water's soft. Mm. Probably the softest thing there is. Yeah, do you I think? I think we've talked about that on the show before, though. Right? There's got to be something softer than water. Do you think you could get water? But water as a foam, mm. right? Just, wa- just water. Just water, mm. but as a solid, but not ice, mm. right? Somehow... You you you, put, you you just turn it into like a sort of a, like a surface ten- like you just increase its surface tension. You increase its surface tension somehow, mm. right? And then you aerate it, and right, and then it's a, just a water foam. So right? you aerate it. Uh, yeah, and then you just you just eat it in like chunks of water. But you know, there's those there's those things that people have made that are like bubbles of water as an alternative to, um, to water bottles, and they're about mm. you know, a mouthful of water, and you put it. In your, it's just a bubble, like a little bubble. But what put, is the bubble? What's it made it's, from? It's something that just dissolves when you put it on your tongue. Do you, do you reckon it's a bit gross? Do you think it tastes a little bit like gelatin, a bit like fingernails or something when you eat it? I think it's going to taste like grotty fingernails. <laughs> and that's the only reason why you haven't seen it in shops yet, is we just can't get that grot flavor out. Ah, the fingernail grot. Yeah, no, unfortunately it tastes like mud. And um, so that's the only problem with it. But mm. have you seen that? You haven't seen that? Mm. I mean, but you know, maybe we could. I might have seen it. Is it colourful? No, it looks like water, like yeah. a bubble of water. Yeah, right. It's kind of like what you were describing. Well, it's the opposite of the um, it's the opposite of the boost juice situation. That the smoothie, they li- really let you see it yeah, and hold right. it, yeah, <laughs> and then put it in your mouth. Yeah, mm. but maybe that's where they're. You know, you can hide things in something transparent, like can you? sugar. Yes, and salt. It's true. Yeah, I and thought about that. LSD. Mm. So, you know, you, that's, that's the thing is that the, the first mistake this uh, insane smoothie conspiracy guy is making is that he thinks that you ha- in order to hide things, you have to make things opaque. And he also thinks that in by seeing the, the liquid, you'll have awareness of what its constituents are, mm-hmm. which is just fundamentally not the case. <laughs> which are probably some mind control things, right? <laughs> it's got a computer chip mm. that tracks you. Mm. Um, uh, the softness thing. Yeah. No, but I mean, I don't think I don't I don't think that's necessarily a. I don't think it's necessarily a sketch idea, Alice. Yeah, and softness is good, and that it uh, you know feels nice to the touch. Hmm. Hmm. But you know, I guess you, you always kind of want more. You want 
when you, when you feel softness, true. you know, you kind of, you want softness, but then you want it to envelop you entirely. Mm. But then once you're completely enveloped and warm and a nice, you know, a nice mm. temperature, you know, that, there's almost nowhere to go from that point. Mm. Is there a, is there a place that you could go for more yeah. comfort there? Well, well, I mean, you 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 think about um, eating foods, right? Mm. Just eating soft things is not necessarily satisfying. What's satisfying mm. is eating soft things that then have a bit of a crunch in them, right? That mm. have a have a have a crunch that have an outer shell that you can sort of bite through that sort of cracks like the the that um, chocolate on the outside of an ice cream pole, mm. icy pole, yeah, right. But and yet, when it comes to um, blankets, blankets exactly, or lying down in a bed, mm. suddenly we just want the softness. What mm. I think we should have is that all beds should have a layer of crisp the, something on Doritos. top of the mattress. <laughs> I think one of those really <laughs> soft blankets, but they're filled with Doritos, and yeah, so that you can so lay down, crunch. and then you can go, and you don't that have to feel nice. like you're making a mess. Yeah, you know, because they're just, inside they're the inside. thing and they reform overnight as oh, well somehow. Be they can, right? Self-healing Doritos. But I think that would be nice. It would kind of like be like sleeping under a drift of leaves. Mm, right? Yeah, like that. But but without the without the chance of, that, you know, feeling like a centipede under you or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, centipedes I guess, really look like they were designed to crawl into your ear. Yeah, yeah. Like, if anything's going to crawl into your ear, it's going to be the centipede. Fucking hell. Too many legs. Anyway, um, <laughs> but I think... Uh, but yeah, adding texture to blankets mm. that is more than just softness. So like, so if, if you would do that with texture and food, what's another thing that you kind of add to uh, food? Like, I guess there's also like the alternative is like those kind of chewy, you mm. know, like, um, like stuff like uh, the, the pearls in a pearl tea or whatever. Mm, or like, tapioca beads yeah, or whatever anything, they are. Anything like that in there would kind of... In a nice, bed? Like in, inside a blanket, you know, a little... Mm. Little beads of gel that kind of Yeah, it could be. I'm picturing a puffer jacket, right? Mm -hmm. But it's somehow being lined with um with hard spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Right? So when you pull it on, mm -hmm. it goes well, like as you you know, stick your arms through yeah. and pull it over your body. Mm. I think that'd be really good. I think it would be very satisfying. Yeah, yeah, yeah like climbing into a shell, mm. you know, and you're hearing all the cracks and the creaks as you you know, shove your arm through the through the sleeve. All the all the stuff is snapping. You know? mm. it, it, it have something. You know, I, uh, I, I, you know, that'd be really living. Oh, I'd love to have uh, something. I'd love to be really living. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it'd be great to be able to find another level of texture that you could add to to the softness to complement it. But I mean, this crunchy blanket, soft and crunchy blanket idea, mm. is genuinely so good and feels like something that you would you would, you would try out in Japan and people would love because it's like the bubble wrap. Mm. It's like getting to go. If you mm. had like self healing bubble wrap mm. um, that you could just keep popping, but then it comes back. Yeah, I think um, I think I think I think you could probably invent that. I think that's a thing. Mm. Self healing infinite bubble wrap. Mm. Maybe a little electronic thing. All right, this would be like the vaping of bubble wrap. Okay, it's it's a little electric thing that mm. just like it, it it looks sort of like a like a little triple A battery, uh, double A battery, mm -hmm. right? And it has a little bubble on the top, right? And there's a little motor, a little compressor in there or whatever. And you basically you just can just keep popping that bubble, right? Mm. It just it just reinflates it. Pop 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 pop. Just like four. You think there needs to be, yeah, no, you're right. And then as you work your way around, they're refilling. Mm. Yeah. Um, it just be like, because you, you get that with like knobs and different things that are just satisfying clicks, mm -hmm. satisfying pops, like buttons that you can pull apart that are like mm. snap, snap buttons or whatever. So you use that kind of sensory joy, mm. but you put it into a. This could be the new fidget spinner. And what about this? You could put some some of those kinds of things onto your body to to enhance sex with other people so that they had other things to touch <laughs> you know so much grabbing and pulling mm. and uh and, and scratching and pushing mm. um, oh, i mean but absolutely but what about clicking well, you, well well let's just think what are like sex what's it about satisfaction mm -hmm. what are some other things that are satisfying popping bubble wrap why mm -hmm. that can't that be exactly a part of the sexual experience? And it's like, why can't a condom be covered, be made from bubble wrap? Yes. So that every time you do something, you thrust or whatever, 
the bubble wrap pops and then it refills itself mm -hmm. again. Yeah. You um, see? You could have like little, like, like, like nice feeling light switches on the side of your oh. rib cage like that. So people can be like <laughs> flicking them. Yes. Yes. Like that. And maybe it does something. Maybe it doesn't. You know, that's mm. a surprise that people only find out mm. when they get you in the bedroom. Yeah. Turns your nipples on and off. You know what you else know? is satisfying? Seeing servicemen reunited with their dogs when yeah. they return from Iraq. <laughs> maybe there could you be. You open your mouth. What do you see in there? Oh, it's a serviceman and it's Rover. <laughs> um, also, you know what's satisfying? The sound of the vibraphone. If you had one mm. along your back and the person just dangling from a wire is a little like a uh, little sort of nice mallet. Mm -hmm. And then while you're, you know, in the, what is it? The grasps in the, uh, in the throes, in the throes, in the throes of, love of lovemaking. I suppose you have to not be laying on the bed. So you would have to be on top. People can go. Boom, boom, well, this boom, could be boom. some sort of doggy styles type situation. Could be a doggy style. Mm. Yeah. Um, no, oh, I mean like body and see, and these and this is taking body enhancements to a nice new place where people aren't getting bubble wrap put in mm. under their skin or anything like that at the moment. But it's weird that doggy style that mm -hmm. explain that that descriptor doggy style. Dogs do so many things in their lives, and they do them in their own inimitable style, like eating food um, with a without closing your lips from a big bowl. Right? If I were to, you know, if you were gonna. <laughs> If you if you were to hand me a bowl of pasta and mm -hmm. I were to say I'm going to do this doggy style, you'd think I was crazy. But all I was going to do was put my mouth into the bowl like this and go. See, a perfectly legitimate thing for me to have said. I mean, you could sort of kneel over it, and yes, and, and hunch <laughs> over that bowl while you're doing it as well. Doggy style. Doggy style. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, but yeah. those, um, sorry, I kind of missed a lot of that, but you're just talking about doing other things doggy doing style. Doing other things doggy style. Did you write that down? I haven't yet. Yeah, because I think that's that's a fully, not fully, but that's a valid, that's a partially valid sketch idea. Um, there is, of course, and, and, and I, I guess dogs are the only animal whose, an, style. whose style we've adopted for mm. sex. <laughs> You know, um fish style i'd love to i'd love to uh, adopt the the uh the chicken style mm. because it's <laughs> the chicken and rooster who who both have cloacas yes and they do the cloacal kiss mm. right and so uh, what happens is the i guess it, you know at the moment this is how it's done but i think it could be done we could do it both ways you could do a reverse chicken style mm. but i believe then the the female or, you know, uh, mm. bends over and is sort of kneeling with her back to the ceiling. Mm. Like that. And then the male stands on her back mm. and then lower his butt down. Mm. And then I guess we would just do it with butts first. But then we then our and then our butts kind of inter they inter they slide into each other. You know like what that, this sounds like and to they me? Kiss. This sounds exactly like when a shuttle docks at the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if they use this terminology at NASA or wherever, mm -hmm. but I think they should refer to that as the cloacal kiss, mm. right? It's just orifice on orifice, sort yeah. of interlocking like that. I mean, they just, call it docking, yeah. but but really but it, that's it a is. a different thing. That is a different thing. They're wrong. Mm -hmm. They're wrong. No, that's not docking. What this is is a cloacal kiss. Mm. But I guess docking the sex act mm. isn't that far from a cloacal kiss. Mm -hmm. Because in a way, it's kind of just a coming together of holes that can't really do much to each other, mm. but just for the joy of it. Mm. You know, I mean, you're not, I guess in a real cloacal kiss, you are exchanging. There is an exchange. There is an exchange there. Mm. But here, there is the a back exchange and forth. is emotional, mm -hmm. you know, and in the knowledge that you've adopted the, the chicken style. Yes, and in the knowledge that oh, the supplies have arrived from the launch pad um, in Houston. And, you know, why, why couldn't you exchange things other than, you know, obviously you're exchanging, uh, you know, you're exchanging an emotional experience and things like that. But why couldn't you, you know, like, when you when the two butts, you know, make contact, 
you could hand the other person a handful of jelly beans. See? You know? <laughs> it's the complete experience. Yeah, I mean, you could put jelly beans in the butt and do it like that. but I, it's Sure, not, of course it's, you it's, could. It's, it's not Everybody that. thought that, Alistair. It <laughs> I, didn't need to be said. No, but 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 you also don't need to. It doesn't need to be that level oh, of complexity. You're right. Mm. You're right. The all, all the elements, like a deconstructed um, burrito, you know? Yes. It's a, it's a deconstructed <laughs> cloacal kiss. Where mm -hmm. the elements of the cloacal kiss exist separately, and um, you know, and and you can appreciate them all more, perhaps. But yeah, like, yeah. I just, mean, I mean, you don't even need to stand on each other's backs. You could just both bend over and back into each other, or you know, sure. one is one is like this. I think you have to kind of go. I power think, but for, I think, I think for me, for, for <laughs> if you are, if you if you tell me you're going to do me chicken style, yeah, right, yeah, I, I'm I'm expecting somebody to be crouching on somebody else's back, yeah, okay. lowering their butt down. Sure. I don't, I don't. But think what about this? Back, <laughs> just backing together like two trucks. No, but but I I don't think you can quite back together because I think I think you kind of have to get the. The, the cheeks interlocking. Like right, they, they, and this I, is the fundamental difference between think, the human and the chicken butt. Yeah, see, see, I mean, you could do it like this, but that doesn't get anus to anus, mm. you see, uh, when you when you interlock the cheeks. I mm. mean, that's one thing. I think that you have to go parallel, yeah. know, per perpendicular. Perpendicular. To, like this. And then so if one person is bending over, and the other person is wheeling themselves over on a hotel tray <laughs> like that. <laughs> so I think maybe they would have – they would either have two paddles – or, or big chicken wings that they kind of use to drag themselves along the ground. Chicken wings, yes, good, good. And then, and then, and they could look like just a chicken being served on a platter. So it's like one's <laughs> okay. a chicken and one's a sort of a more of a like a culinary chicken, mm. like a dead chicken carcass. Yes, <laughs> but with its with its cloaca <laughs> intact, like that, and its and, and its wings, <laughs> and then it just and maybe it's just been freshly hunted. It's been freshly hunted. But then this has a kind of a necrophilic element to it as well, which, which I, I love. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's only, it's, it's, yeah, it's necrophilic, but, you know, in the animal world where it's understandable that maybe you don't understand death as much. Now, uh, a chicken necrophilia, I believe uh, in the lingo, that would be called a chick fillet. A chick fillet. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Which is apparently one of America's most popular fast food places. Sure, and also one of their most homophobic. I feel they probably wouldn't agree with any of this. Yeah. Well, it's, but you know. it's good of them to lend their name to this newly invented... Well, I want you to know that the way that we described it, even though I, I don't 100% don't agree with us doing this, was entirely uh, heteronormative. So I think with as it stands... I'd like to clarify that the way that we did it was the way I don't agree with. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been taken... <laughs> Any, anyway, but after this, I'd just like to make it clear that we were doing the wrong one. Yeah, I and see. we don't, we didn't, we don't, we we weren't enjoying that. We're, thought, we're ashamed. It could have been more inclusive, you know. It, it was, Alistair, until you said that it wasn't. <laughs> right. Until you said this right now. Until you said it could have been more inclusive. Nobody knew it wasn't. No, you're right. Everyone was included. Everyone was there. No. Well, and picturing it exactly and having a great time. Right shooting in it has changed the way i uh, like i'm mostly in the mm. moment but the uh, the awareness of the stream has has like brought into stark relief some of the insane things that we say ah uh, look i don't i mean look maybe our families are watching and they wouldn't normally they wouldn't normally listen to the podcast and so <laughs> but let's not <laughs> think what? about that that was actually an element that i had thought about <laughs> Much like the the non inclusivity of the previous bit, the inclusivity parent wise of this. I mean, I did also say, you know, oh. to, to you know, I said, I said maybe my, my sons are watching. I said to yeah, to my three year old, I said, well, you can watch with mama later, and uh, you can hear as we talk about two people reverse their chicken butts into each other. Mm. We need a dump button. No, we don't. No, we can't everybody... afford to dump anything. Okay, right now. well then, everybody else needs a dump button. Okay, and From what this is this this is this is this is this this is the idea, right? We all know about rehypnol. We all know that it has the power to stop memories from being formed, mm -hmm. right? Now, why can't mm -hmm. we have like much like is it implanol the thing that is the, the the women have that's like a little implant that releases um the pill uh hormones or whatever is that a thing? Uh I'm not sure. 
I but think I'm, that maybe it might you, be called something else. I think maybe you could do this idea with just a, like a like a button that is connected to the information stream that's going in between short term memory and long term memory. Yeah, maybe. sure. Rather than having the drug or hypnol included. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, okay, sure. I mean, maybe but just a button behind your earlobe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But but I'm trying to make this more realistic, Alice. I apologize. I okay. apologize. I apologize. And so what it is, something happens. Whatever it happens, something embarrassing, something excruciating in mm. your life. Right, and you just tap your button. Yeah. Right, and then you know that memory is never going to be formed. I think this would help people live their lives a lot with a lot less baggage, mm. you know, and probably learning a lot less lessons and doing much more awful things to themselves and others. Right, but still, mm. I think the dump button. Yeah. Um, is a sketch idea. Sure. Um. um yeah, and I think I. Je- I, I I, I, know, I know we're saying this as a joke, Alistair. Yeah. I know I am. Mm-hmm. But I also feel that this could very well happen, mm-hmm. right? Like I don't think it's it's 100% outside the realm of possibility that within the next 100 years people won't have a dump button. I mean, if you if you have um, the right to be forgotten on the internet, you know, we've, this has been the court case in, 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 the, in Europe. Google now, you have the right to be forgotten. If you want yeah. stuff taken down, Google has to take it down, yeah. right? But you don't have the right to be forgotten inside your own brain? That well, seems crazy to me. The, you don't have the right to forget? The right to forget. Yeah. That should be something, right? And so you have a bad time, mm-hmm. you tap your button. That's not, that's not going anywhere. That's going to fade like um, um, picture. Like the memory of what I was going to say. Um, Correct. The, um, I think there'll be a great moment there where like in the future where somebody, you're going to have witnessed somebody do something you mm. know, and or you will have had a date with somebody and you went, oh, that was awful and you'll dump it. And then later on, you'll meet up with that person and... I think I've just started describing the movie, The Eternal Sunshine, <laughs> Sunshine. of the Spotless Mind, yeah. which I think is exactly what we have just <laughs> invented, isn't it? Yeah. But ours will be called Dump Button. It'll be a movie <laughs> called Dump Button. <laughs> <laughs> it just dumps like 15 minutes, but like, but the but the other person's like, hey, I know you. Mm. Like that. I mean, I'm, you know how you you introduce yourself when you see someone, you say, hey, I, I know, know you. you. No, but you know, like, is that hey, like that? And yeah. the other person's going, sorry, I don't know what you're talking mm. about. Yeah. Does that happen in the movie? Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. The dump button. I think, look, I think we can put it in different contexts. It doesn't have yeah, to be. Yeah, but also it's only it's only like five, ten seconds the dump button like mm. interrupts your memory for, which is a very different thing to, yeah. the, to the movie Eternal Sunshine and Spots Mind. Like you're not removing somebody from your life entirely. You're just removing a moment. Mm. And but then is there a way that like you, you don't want people to, I guess, the button on the ear. The problem with that is that somebody else could push your button for you. Yeah. And then, no, you're absolutely so then they right. could do something bad and then they could Well, maybe the button's button. inside your mouth or something like that. Or yeah. um or it's or it's just a thing inside your brain. Or you just have to something think you a can word. activate. You have to think a word. Think a word, a safe word. Yeah. Right? Um, and then what's a word that you never think? Well uh, the problem is that when somebody you, tells you the word, you then have to think the word in order to mm-hmm. know the word that's going to be your safe word. And then in the act of thinking the word that's your safe word, you would erase that word from your memory. So they'd have to tell it to you again. Well, you'd have to like, it would have to be something that you would like say three times. Sort of like Beetlejuice, oh, Beetlejuice, that's Beetlejuice. that's very good. But it makes, yes, it, it makes yes, it disappear. Yes. But it would be like Farnsworth Gargantuan. Like that. So it's too long to sort of picture very mm. easily. By the way, Farnsworth Gargantuan, that's our first um marker point if you've watched the stream <laughs> or you've listened to the podcast thus far which i believe we're two and a half hours in are we right? really yeah i think so yeah two and a half hours if you if you if you if you've made it this far into listening mm. to the show farnsworth gargantuan just tweet at us or something let us know that you're two and a half hours in yeah. good on you thank Bloody you Bloody good on you good on you're yours. all right yeah it's crazy if you're already two and a half hours in that's <laughs> that's <laughs> Well, no. I mean, it's not crazy. Yeah. If they are like, like if they're lis- if if they're listening, the fact that they're two and a half hours in isn't. No, like, it's not crazy. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's just the idea that people have watched the whole two hours, two and a half hours. Sure. Yeah. Um. So, what what can we do about nose hairs? Nose hairs. Do, 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 when you pull out your nose hairs, and I assume you must. Yeah, I think, I think we have had that discussion where we yeah. like, grab it and then yank it. Yeah. Does it make you sneeze? 
Uh, I think it can, but I think most of the time I don't. Makes me sneeze every damn time. Every time. And I love it. Yeah. It feels real good. You know where I sneeze? If I ever pull out a hair in between my eyes. Oh, yeah. I have that as well. Yeah, I get yeah. a sneeze there. And that's a weird one. I wouldn't have expected that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that 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 feels like it's 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 close to being like a body hack or something. Like that's mm. close to having a, a dump button of a sort, right? That you can... Um, dump the contents of the pipe, the air exactly. pipe. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, the body doesn't have many things where you have to externally manipulate it to get it to do one mm. of its functions. Yeah. Maybe sexual type stuff. Well, yeah, there's that. Maybe we just don't know them yet. Right. There could be there could be more triggers all over the body. I mean, I guess that's that's probably the basis of some Chinese medicine is like sure. pressure points and things like that. Yeah, but this is a specific one. This yeah. is about pulling out hairs. Yeah, and I like I like that the idea that there's like, you know, you could Open the, up your palm and press like. Open up your palm. Open up your palm. So you what do you slice you, down the no, middle no, no, of all no, okay. the fingers? So you open up your your hand like this. Oh right, you just have an open and palm, then, and then you go. Sorry, we do so much body modification on this podcast that just the suggestion of opening your hand <laughs> made me immediately think we were slicing yeah. into it. <laughs> Although a hand pocket, you know, the palm isn't used that much. You don't yeah, imagine your... being able to hold things in your hand, yeah, but without <laughs> closing your hand. This is good. It's just a little zipper here. Little. This is very good. I think that'd be so cool, especially if you're playing poker or something like that. If the card, you could slide the card into your mm -hmm. uh, your little hand pocket. Yeah, that's great. We're, we're a perfect place to keep things. Mm. Oh, I know. For little little zipper, little, little zipper, zipper, or maybe one middle. of those clippy ones, like on a Ziploc bag. Yeah, right. Because you want you you want to be able to seal it somehow. Maybe Velcro. Yeah, but Velcro it feels like <laughs> like that every mm. time you open it. And Velcro does wear out. It'd be hard to fix it. Yeah. You know, getting in there and sewing it up. I think the one problem would be like getting... magnets. We do it with magnets. Oh, of course. But you do want something, you want it to be waterproof though. Because you don't want it to like be opening up and and then while you're swimming that it kind of like creates a drag. Mm. Maybe you know? there's a little sort of sphincter then. That'd be good. Yeah. Like then... a little sort of little handhole. Yeah. Like that. You can just maybe, and you stretch it out like one of those like kangaroo ball yeah. bag pouches there like yeah you know yeah. Like or, a, like, the, or just a kangaroo pouch you know yeah. they, they uh oh is that i guess is I that guess, like on a drawstring it's got some kind of like must right yeah. it, it, i guess it is does it have a sphincter around it the pouchal sphincter or i don't i don't know kangaroo pouch or the pouch lips the pouch lips <laughs> yes <laughs> i wonder if they can close their pouch tighten it up mm. like that consciously yeah. yeah, or if it's an involuntary thing. Not yeah. sure. Pouches slamming shut. Um, I think a uh, hand Wait. pouch is an idea, Alistair. Yeah, all right, hand pouch. I mean, I mean, you, because because people, people, people are getting stuff implanted into their body, like they're getting chips and that sort of thing yeah. implanted into their wrists so they can tap on that kind of stuff. But I think if there was a little pouch, you could take those things in and out. I think be, for it to be, be for it to be like a sketch, you kind of have to picture how it goes wrong. Right. Um, is that is that what sketches are? Is it? Well, I think in People my mind, an idea it's like you think it's wrong. a great idea because I mean, or else it's just a great idea. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's almost it's, the problem is it's almost hard to imagine this going wrong well, because it's such a great this? idea. How about this? Um, on the edges, the it starts the skin kind of starts to tear. Oh yeah, this yeah. does sound like funny. That. Yeah, and then it tears all the way around, and then the whole top of the hand skin comes off. Yeah, and then you're like, ah, oh, this happened. Like yeah. that, you go, oh, yeah, that's going to happen sometimes. Yeah, all right. So then, you've just got like skinny bone, like skinless bone fingers. Yeah. Yeah. And like, well, there's also the flesh or whatever that's under there. Yeah. I guess some of it that peeled, you know, that didn't stick to the skin as it peeled as off. As it peeled off. Yeah. And then, um, and then you have to kind of get like a, like a, I guess for a while you just have to kind of wear like a, like a, you know, those gloves that you wear to do the dishes. Well, I think a good way to, um, to sort of, dry run this and see what it would be like mm. before you take the plunge and actually get the implant would would be we could just make gloves that have that little pouch they could be fingerless gloves yeah. right and then they have a little pouch in there and just a little thing in the in the hand i mean and it could be could a just, palm could... glove that doesn't even go it just goes around the fingers yeah sure but... sure sure i well, think that's great it's like a vest for your for your uh hand. yeah it's like a sleeveless vest yeah like a like a like a a fishnet sort of uh, string vest around mm. the back there. Yeah, and then and then a little little slip type pouch on the on the inside. We got ourselves a product. We've got a product on our hands. Literally, Alistair. Literally, yeah. the product <laughs> is on our hands. 
Wait, what were we talking about when we were talking about um, these slits and stuff? We're, we're, like something before we went, went to pouch, hand pouch. We were, there was something else we were. It was a bigger idea that led to the hand pouch. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh well, you were talking about opening up your hand. Oh, no, that's right. You open up about... your hand and. No. no, I was talking about, yeah. So I was talking about, um, we were talking oh, the about the, the ideas of like uh, making your body do things mm. just through out, outside of, you know, like you do, pu pull here and mm. then it makes you sneeze. And I thought maybe if you did like pinky, pinky, middle finger, thumb, thumb, index like that. Oh, and then combo. You, combos. And then you like, you, you, you output a fireball. <laughs> You know, body combos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That we just haven't discovered well, yet. Well, I mean, what we what we have at the moment is that you know you use like a computer keyboard and you move your fingers around and press them in different orders mm. to actuate the keyboard. But what if the keys were under the tips of your fingers, right? And then anything can be a keyboard, right? You you and and the way you move them around or whatever you do with them mm -hmm. becomes uh any anything like the, the interface is. Is in under your fingers. I mean, um, this seems like something that people are probably already looking into. Um, God, I hope they are because um, because the world doesn't have an end many problems, and it's it's good that mm. science is focusing on this kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, you'd be able to um, tip tap, tippity tap, tip tip tap because because the keys are under there, and then and then after a while, people would start to get retro ones that are like still clicky clack finger oh, yeah. fingertips. That'd be satisfying. Be satisfying, but also a little bit irritating. That after a while, you're like, "Oh, I'm not actually satisfied. There's still a hole in my life." Yeah. You well, well but I thought okay. I thought the hole in my life would be filled by this clicky clack click keyboard. <laughs> and I thought the hole in my life would be filled by adding this hole to my hand <laughs> um, that allows me to put stuff in there and fill mm. it up. It turns out you can't fill things with holes. I mean, you can, but they're still empty. How do you fill them. things with holes? Well, like if you if you. I'm going to fill them full of holes, you know, and you shoot somebody with a machine mm. gun or something, and you know, full of holes. But it actually, in a, way, in a way, he became more empty. He became more empty. I thought filling him full of holes would fill him, and yet somehow he is more empty of blood <laughs> and mm. matter. Yeah. What a what a what a what a what a what a, what a, what a, I mean, what a journey to go on. You know, you um, you 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 you're meeting with a mob boss, mm. right? And he says, "I'm going to fill you." And just at the end of that sentence, you're thinking, oh, thank God. My life has been feeling so empty. Here mm. is this man who is going to fill me. And mm. then he goes on to say, full of holes. And you think, mm. oh, the crushing irony. Yeah. This teaches me a valuable lesson about, about leaping to conclusions. I think these holes that he's planning to fill me with will make me feel more empty. I mean, what if he thought that he, by filling somebody else with holes, was going to you know, like kind of get, you know, that revenge was going to mm. fill him up and make him feel mm. better. But then he found out that it actually made him feel as empty as he was filled with holes. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, the way you even said the word holes then, I felt like you were beginning to embody this guy. I, I, I love that, Alistair. Yeah. I, love, I thought that filling him up with holes was going to fill the hole in my life. I'm just repeating back to yeah. you what you said, Alistair. But oh, this is, I, I mean, I love that this happens. Um, so this moment of introspection happens to this mob boss so quickly after using his Tommy gun to shoot up uh, Mickey the fish, mm -hmm. right? He, he, as he sees the body slump to the ground, the mob boss... Um, his, he turns his, to camera. He turns to camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he turns to his sidekick mm. who's near the camera. Great. Right? Just off camera. Just so it looks like camera. an interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over the shoulder. <laughs> And then we cut back and we get the noddies from the sidekick. We do film those afterwards, obviously, because it's easier. Um, uh, that's uh, that's 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 very satisfying. But uh, yeah, I I was a fool. Um, I called him uh, a rat um, before I shot him up. But it turns out the only rat was my own low self esteem um, chewing away at me and making me doubt. That I had anything to offer other than bullets. <laughs> I think that's beautiful. I think it, it would. We could use all of the lingo and flip it. <laughs> Flipping lingo. I love to flip some lingo, Alistair. I see a lingo. I flip it. I'm flipping. I'm flipping lingos like a flamingo. See, this is going to be one of my raps. Mm. <laughs>
I'm I don't flipping know. lingo like, like a, a flamingo. flamingo. I mean, I don't know why a flamingo would be flipping lingo. Yeah. Uh, um, but I guess that's just the way pink things go. It's really beautiful. Um, I'm flipping lingo like a flamingo. I don't know why a flamingo would be flipping lingo, but I guess that's just the way pink things go. Is that a rap? And Andy, absolutely. I guess anything's a rap. You're like you're like Jay Z in that you, mm. you you know you don't write anything down. You just keep it all in your head, and then you walk into the recording studio and you lay it all down. Is that how he does it? Yeah. Doesn't write anything down. I don't think so. It's crazy. Yeah. Must write some stuff down. Nah. Well, you know addresses and stuff when he sends oh, letters. Sure. <laughs> you know? No. 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 Post-it Keeps it notes, all in his head. Post notes for his family and things like that when mm. he's going to be out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just leaves little messages on their pillows. Yeah. But um, not when he's going in to record. Anyone do prose rap? Does rap have to rhyme? Like, can you do? Could you do? Could you do sort of prose? I, I I'm sure that there must be prose rap. Like there must yeah. be right rap that doesn't rhyme. I don't know if it's prose. Does prose also necessarily mean um, that it's a story? Don't think so. Can no. it be like technical writing? Uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> I think that might be. Are there any technical writing rappers? <laughs> yeah, technical rappers. <laughs> So what they're just like delivering specifications for like a, I don't know, a, a, a new filtration unit at a at a water reservoir, yeah. but they do it via the medium of rap. Via the medium of rap. I like it. I uh, like that every 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 company has a, at least a couple of rappers on staff, mm-hmm. right? Because think about it. Before we had um, writing, before we had printers, what did we have? We had the oral tradition, right? And mm-hmm. What do um, <laughs> what you know? And 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 back. So back in the day, if an if if an engi- an ancient engineer mm-hmm. wanted to deliver some information, how would they have done it? You know, maybe through via the medium of an e- an epic poem in the vein of mm-hmm. Homer yeah. or something like that. And so we're bringing that back now, yeah. right? And we are, we we when when we're building the um, mm-hmm. the retractable roof at the. Uh, uh, La news. Prana Stadium. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we're no lo- longer using b- blueprints, which is good for the environment. That's we're not printing stuff out. Exactly. Right? We do it in the form. We of start a-, a big bonfire, <laughs> and then we, yes. we we put on a big feast of boar. Yes, correct. And, and then the poet, the company poet, yeah. <laughs> the bard, gets out his lute mm-hmm. and he sings us the tale of the retractable roof. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, technical writer and the. Rap writer, technical rap writer. Um, the um, technical oral tradition mm. engineer. Alistair, this is this is great. This is very us. I'm enjoying holding this jug. By oh, the way, oh yeah, and it's very sad. it's so clean, and then the water mm. looks so nice. Oh, the water looks you know, so you clean. Can, you can tell there's nothing dissolved in there. Yeah, you know? I'm safe. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> nothing. I can't see could ever hurt me. Yeah. Um. Imagine though. Imagine if germs were bigger, right? Yeah. So, so imagine that the cell, the mm-hmm. the funda- you know, the fundamental unit of life, the cell, yeah, is about the size of a sort of a raisin. Okay. Right. Yeah. So our hu- our bodies are made out of those. And right? so we're just kind of a little bit more like lumpy, pixely, pixely. Yeah. yeah. So lumpy. there's like you know we've only got like ten thousand of them or something. I'm probably still more than that. Maybe like one twelve thousand. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then also germs, single celled organism. Mm. There, you can you'd be able to see them in the mm. water, and you'd be able to pick them out. Yeah, chuck them flick away, them. flick them, and flicking then, germs. Yeah, and then you, and then you wouldn't have to wash your hands all the time. You just have a look. Yeah, and if you like, shake them off. Yeah, stamp on them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd be great if you could kill germs by stamping on them. Well, I think we've talked about this in the past, right? The yeah, idea I mean, that you should be able to clap your hands. That's gotta kill that's gotta kill some I mean, germs. Yeah. You know, Has anyone not, looked into this? They're not all surviving that. No I mean, way is, are they all surviving that. This is one of the oldest ideas that I've been carrying around since my pre comedy days. Mm. Is that idea. It's a like, legacy idea. Hey, God, like you know, right before sur- surgery. Mm. I'm ready. Yeah, I think as I've said in in the past, the difficulty bit is sort of clapping in between the fingers. Look at this. <laughs> Just yeah. it's got to get, it's gotta gotta get them. It's got to get them. Or you right? rub it. You rub it really hard. Get it so hot. You know, when you mm. rub your hands and it gets hot, it gets real hot. Yeah, it's real hot. Ah, oh, there we go. All clean. <laughs> and it, real. I guess you would use soap for sort of like 
around sensitive areas of the body, mm. you know, soft tissues. Before and you're stuff. about to perform surgery. With your junk. <laughs> yeah, doggy style surgery. <laughs> I don't know what that means. No. Well, well, what would be doggy style surgery, right? Yeah. Like, um, I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess, I guess, okay, I guess you, you could remove. St I can imagine removing stitches doggy style. Yeah. Which is to sort of lick them off yourself. Yeah, or, or like you know, pick at them with your yeah, teeth. sort of gnaw at them. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not on yourself. It could be on somebody else. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm go I'm gonna remove these doggy style. I mean, that's the only that's the only part of the surgery that uh, the you know this mm. span of surgery. Well, I guess I the picture. surgery itself could just involve licking the wound over and over oh, again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I just feel sad now for dogs that they think that's the best that they can do. I think that's probably is the best that they can do. You well, no, exactly, and yeah. that's why I feel sad, Alistair. <laughs> yeah, but. But I guess it's, it's not the fact that they think that <laughs> that's sad. <laughs> it's the fact that it's that's what that's what it is. They're, you're you're right. It's not that dogs think that that's good. <laughs> dogs are medically ineffective. <laughs> Anyone ever say to a dog, "Well, you really think this is good?" <laughs> is that's this, what you this... think? <laughs> Come on! I mean, look at yourself. I mean, can we can we just write down dog doggy style surgeon? Sure, yeah, let's write it down. I mean, hey, who are we to um to judge the quality of the sketches? That's what the audience is for, and what <laughs> because, God is for. So first, we're going to so first we're going to lay you down in a, sort of a big open field away from where mm. everybody is, and um, go and find a quiet space. And then we're um, then I'm gonna. It's going to be a long surgery, three, four hours, and then I'm going to lick the wound mm. um, just over and over again, mm. taking little breaks to sort of just taste. Um, and uh, Yeah. When I, when I went to that genie and said that I wanted my ultimate fantasy of a doctor doing me doggy style. <laughs> 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 this is exactly what I had in mind. You nailed it, genie. You nailed it. You know, I was worried that there might have been some other way this could have been interpreted. But once again, that genie, that all-magical being, I mean, one of the things about being an all-magical being would be presumably you would be able to understand intent. What's the point of being all-powerful if you mm. don't understand intent? Yeah, you're starting, I'm starting to think that they're, they're willfully misunderstanding me. Yeah. I mean, you've dedicated your life to granting wishes mm. and yet you get so much joy from seeing it. i guess they're not so different to mm. us yeah you know yeah i think i think that's probably it's probably like um you know comedians how comedians laugh at, at jokes going wrong or something like mm. that like after a certain number of eternities of um mm. you know manipulating all reality mm. to the whims of people who just happen to have rubbed a lamp you would develop a kind of a perverse sense of yeah. Uh, yeah, they have yeah. the. They probably have the highest sense of humor. Oh, maybe. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because well, they also get to like, they actually properly get. You know, with us, we we get to say awful things or whatever, but with them, they actually get to do them without consequence because they're immortal. Have we have we talked about this? Uh, has, maybe Seinfeld's covered this. Does Superman have a super sense of humor? Has this been talked about? I'm not sure. I feel like it's there's that kind of idea has been discussed. But if yeah. you have some idea with it, we can. Well, I mean, what what would what would that be like? I mean, I guess if you did have a super sense of humor, mm. in a way, kind of, you would be always laughing, right? Because you would be able to see the funny side of everything. Is that what a sense of humor is? Maybe a sense of humor. Maybe, but I guess people who. Probably have the most developed sense of humor. Maybe they laugh at the least stuff, yeah. or laugh at things that people don't find funny. Yeah. I mean, the problem with Superman having a super sense of humor would be if he showed up at some terrible event where a train has derailed and crushed a nursing home. Mm. He he would he would he couldn't help but laugh. Well, he would see the deep see, irony. The deep it. irony, exactly. <laughs> These people were so close to death, and yet mm. they didn't realize. You know, to, yeah. to die this way. 
And he well, would be laughing and laughing and <laughs> slapping death, his thigh. Death was coming so slowly for them. Mm. And then they got hit by this express train. <laughs> 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 Now that's comedy. <laughs> and then he flies away. You know, <laughs> that'd be great. And of course, having super hearing, he'd be able to hear everything everywhere, people telling jokes all over the world. Mm. You know, there'd always be something to tickle him. The difficulty would be processing it all. But I imagine he can do that as well. I wonder whether he could sort of see this funny thing about to happen, say, with the train and the old mm. folks' home. And he could laugh oh. along the way and then stop it from happening. That would be nice. Because there is that kind of thing like of, um, you know, you you laugh at near misses kind of to indicate to you. To yeah, relief. Like, yeah, relief and stuff. And I guess for him, everything is happening so fast because there's so many things to do. Mm. He must be getting all these huge amounts of relief, you know, the kind of human-y part of him or whatever. Yeah, the um, the emotions quite a bit of water onto my crotch it's okay it's it fine one of the parts that's not visible to the um yeah. to the viewing public they might have seen the globules falling sure. down yeah. out of my mouth i mean yeah and i guess they could probably hear you talking about it slobbering now. yeah uh, well yeah dump button i'm hitting my dump i'm, I'm hitting, hitting dumping and i'm dumping and blump yeah I believe in miracles. So this is a problem. Mm -hmm. This isn't a problem, Alice. Oh, no, this but is I just want something that's occurred back to me. Um, was uh, the when you when you were talking about insane in the brain? Yeah. No. Insane in the membrane. Insane in the brain. Insane in the membrane. Is that's not in the same song as psychosomatic attic insane? Is it? Because they feel to me like they're mm. in the same song, but they're not. I don't think so. Because I think one of them is The Prodigy. Yeah, yeah. And then the other one is Cypress Hill. I mean, God, so many mashups must have been done of that, I imagine. And because I, th I think they, like, in my mind, they fit together quite well. That's very good. No? God, you're good. No, but it's not, it doesn't actually sound like that, but mm. it's like that. Remember when they did it with the orchestra on The Simpsons? That was fun, wasn't it? Mm. Do you guys know Insane in the Brain? Like that. And then they started playing on the orchestra. And mm. they go, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. Uh, anyway, that that didn't lead us anywhere. But I did write down earlier when mm -hmm. we were talking to Jack Drews. I wrote down unfinished business. Yeah. Right. Because I think that's quite good. And if that is a loophole that allows you to come back as a ghost. Yeah. Right. Your unfinished business. Then mm -hmm. why ever finish any business? Right. Why not? Mm. Why not all like, um. If you know, whenever you've got unfinished business, you have to come back as a ghost. Then that, then what that means is like you're having a, your dinner. Mm -hmm. You've got a nice sort of juicy little bit of salmon there that's still got some, some, uh, some butter and a little mm. bit of something or other on top of it, right? Yeah. Like I'm not going to eat that. I'm going to leave that unfinished. Yeah. Right. And then you get mm. to you get to uh, heaven or whatever. And, uh, God says, Ah, oh, well, you're stuck here now. Ha <laughs> ha, sucked in. You say, No, God, I've got a loophole, unfinished business. I've got to go back and finish all that stuff I didn't do. Then you get to go back and you get to eat that bit of salmon, which I imagine is probably still good. <laughs> I, guess the, the I wish I hadn't picked something so perishable. <laughs> I guess the ghost of the salmon would sort of still be fresh. Mm. Yeah, do ghosts eat ghost salmon? Well, I mean, are you eating physical salmon? Me? Yeah. Yes. Because isn't it like when you go back? <laughs> I mean, because that's a funny idea is that when you go back, a lot of the time, aren't you, you can, the only way in which you can finish what you needed to do, um, which what you didn't finish, is to convince a living person mm, who, to, can who can communicate, commu yeah. like who can communicate with you who can physically manipulate <laughs> things to do it for you. Yes. And so you have to get them to go and take the salmon. rotten salmon, or either, find it at the dump. <laughs> I guess so. Or they have to go find the salmon and then take it to your body and <laughs> dig up your body and then put the rotten <laughs> salmon in your mouth and get you to eat it and swallow it. <laughs> I mean, both of these are great, a great, no, nightmares for that person, right? The the one where the the medium has to help you by digging up out mm. of the landfill some rotten salmon mm. and eating it, or the one where they have to dig up your rotten corpse and force feed it the rotten salmon, yeah. and then presumably so many other things that you never got around <laughs> yeah. to doing, writing letters to grandparents and 
the, you know, the, the, the 9,000 projects that you started yeah. and didn't finish? Like, well, yeah, I did. They've got to do all of this with your corpse. I mean, technically, all of these sketch ideas that we haven't completed into a, an actual sketch yet. are all going to have to be acted out by a medium manipulating <laughs> our rotten skeleton, flesh hanging skeletons. Using- Whoopi Goldberg, I'm picturing. I don't know who you're picturing, but I'm picturing Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, I'll picture her. I, I, I hope we outlive Whoopi. Mm. And if she hasn't then that now forms part of her unfinished business that another medium is going to have to dig her up and use her body to finish our unfinished business. It's like a curse that never stops iterating. And you know how I love something that doesn't stop iterating, Alastair. Oh, if only I could iterate forever. I would iterate things. Anyway. Non-stop. Non-stop. Non-stop I would iterate things, that is. Mm. Um, I'll be at, back to iterate you later. What was the non-stop iteration thing you were referring to? Uh, just there was a period of time in the podcast where I would try and end every sketch with infinite iterations of like, you know, we would just keep looping that particular sketch. The example that springs to mind is the one of the toilet bowl, uh, the toilet bowl brush holder ha- needs its own little toilet <laughs> brush to br- clean the inside of the toilet brush holder. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, that brush would need a holder and would need another one. But I think um, I, I didn't get very far into it before you stopped me and said you can't just infinitely iterate everything and pretend that that's a punchline. I think that is a sketch format. It is, yeah. Oh, I sure. think it's like an ending format. No, you thought that was your phone vibrating, whereas that was my belly. That was your stomach. That yeah. was the exact note of a phone vibration. I... No, that wasn't it at all. No, it was pretty close. It's good. Is that your phone? No. No. no I can um, see you doing it. Oh. <laughs> oh, there's nothing. No, no passing. I'm getting anyone. Mm. I can't. Don't know how to say those words. <laughs> <laughs> getting one past you. No, getting one past you. Yeah, that's right. Fucko. Hmm. Oh, that's the first attack. No, no, no. No, there's it's been not, others. <laughs> I've already attacked you with the. I mean, I turned your genuine insanity earlier oh, into true. the sketch idea, and I think it's a much funnier sketch as that, rather than you know a conspiracy I think right. about what I think the you're right. um, smoothie people are up to. All right, okay, Alistair. <laughs> it's fine. I, I'm. No, no, I, I agree. We're both going to degrade a lot during this sure. episode. And anyway, if anything, I'm just winning by degrading earlier. <laughs> that's right. Well, I think a lot of people see you as, as you know, the better of the two. <laughs> and that, that also is like like Superman and his super sense of uh, humor. <laughs> you have a super uh, capability to, do, to degrade, degrade early. Sure, even I'll pre, take it. Even pre-pod. Yes, that's true. Last night, things, uh, yeah. We didn't sleep enough and we didn't eat, like, uh, we didn't eat well. We didn't prepare well. Like, you know, eating... Mm pizzas and garlic bread last night and then beginning the day with uh, mcdonald's yeah it was just because i i had prepared poorly by not getting any milk for the house and so then we mm. couldn't eat any cereal oh well i i could have i could have contributed to that in some way i'm sure alistair if i you could have produced some milk i could have oh. probably now somehow. is there a sketch in filtering men, my blood men producing milk um well isn't that what farmers do male farmers do you know <laughs> thank you alistair is, do you think? Do you think that that's why farmers produce uh, become like because dairy, farm, farmers, dairy because farmers? Because it's like because it's like a compensation. They have for, a sublimated desire to be able to, to to be able to produce milk. Yes, and really, like you know, we we give a lot of credit to the cow, but um, really, the farmer is the mammary gland through which the milk passes to our mouths, mm. and we suckle on his teat. That's true. <laughs> do you think? Do you think that we would still drink cow's milk mm-hmm. if um, the farmer got the milk out of the cows and then put it into a large udder in the middle of his belly and we had to suckle it from that. So you can ha- still have the milk. You can still have the milk, but you've got to suckle it from my belly udder. And what he would just be in, like, just in the city and you would... <laughs> yeah. And, and would he have, like, a... Would he just... So to have a tra- a trailer behind him, like maybe he's got a big backpack full of milk. Yeah, and he comes into the city. Maybe that they, they, they go to each um at, uh, each. I mean, and, and this is a way to um reduce pollution again. You know, mm-hmm. this is much like the rapper who 
um, wraps the plans for the retractable roof. This is um, we're avoid avoiding plastic bottles, mm -hmm. and what it means is we each farmer yep. milks their cows, and the milk goes into a big backpack, and then they walk into the city and walk <laughs> to the various coffee shops and that sort of thing. And the milk is milked out of a teat in the middle of their belly. So the yeah. pipes come around their shoulders down so into the teat. In the middle, and how do you how do you get it out? Do you just put, tug on it? You tug on it. Yeah, yeah. You have or to can sort you, of massage you, it. Yeah, you can. Or do you, you, I guess you can suck on it. You can, what if you push your head up against it? Like that, yeah, that's that what gets the up? milk coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that. And I guess you could just he could just stand there all day instead of um, being somewhere else and doing something else. You know, but like you know, instead of them using containers they just yes. have him there and then he just right. stands next to the machine mm. so it takes up quite a bit of space behind the, the, yeah. the cafe counter he's got a hat on yeah <laughs> yeah and then at the end of the day he takes off his big teat and he sort of hoses as it hoses it out and he mm. hoses out his backpack and then he hikes back to the oh, so he um, hoses it before he hikes back because i guess he doesn't want it to like start fester or stinking in yeah. the sun or whatever of course he's not stupid mm. right hikes back to his farm in the in the Dandenongs or wherever it is, and then he goes to sleep to get up at five in the morning to do it all again. <laughs> you know, Milk the cows, fill up his backpack. Um, you know, you know what I, what the detail that I picture, and I don't know why I kind of picture you as the farmer in this oh, scenario. I, but, I was picturing a, a, a hefty no, oh, man. Oh no, he is a big hefty, hefty man. No, that can be but, me. But no, it, I picture when he hoses out his his um, <laughs> his thing that he just uses somebody's hose on their front lawn. <laughs> You know, he just sees it there, and it's yeah. just that kind of like farmer thing. Well, we're from where we come from. We share, we share stuff. Like you know that. that farmer thing. They love to share. <laughs> they share with each other. You know, you know, amongst the community, we help each yeah, other out. Sure. So, then, so then people come you out. You look of their out house. the window, and there's a there's, you so see good. milk running down the the gutter, and you look up, and there's a farmer using your hose. What's going on? Yeah, no, that's great. Um, but I think that the element that we sort of missed from that, which I think is a is a separate element. And I would like to pitch this as a separate sketch, Alistair, mm -hmm. is the psychological need of the of the farmer to produce milk. Yeah. And maybe I, I think this would be a good thing to see in a kind of a in a in a psychoanalysis type sketch where a farmer is visiting a a, a, a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist is 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 getting to the, the 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 fundamental root of why they are doing it. You know. Yeah, something I've, about. Yeah, I've got that here as the one who does it because he's a. Uh, yeah, but is that a separate sketch? Can yeah, it's a, a separate, separate sketch. sketch. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Great. No, I'm not. You know, I, look, I think there's there's too much there's too much visual stuff to this mm. other farmer sketch. There's too much meat on this bone. That's right. On this really, dairy... really separated into two different bones. We'll separate the meat from the bone, sell the meat separately, then sell the bone as dog food. Maybe yeah, or maybe put it on a bone that doesn't have a lot of meat, like one of those tiny ones that's in the ear. Mm. You know, put. Just take some meat from, carve it off that, and put it on this, those bones. Yeah, I know those are kind of dangerous bones to be putting in meat because you're probably less likely to see them, and then you end up ch choking on them. What if those bones do have any meat on them, or do they just sort of sit there in the open ear air, getting dry? Getting feel... dry. They must be. They must be. I mean, whenever you see them in like a three D rendered mm. animation explaining how the ear works, they're sort of just sort of hovering there, sort of highlighted slightly. Like a mm. like an important object in a point and click role playing game, but mm. I think in the if we were to get into the head, which yeah. we may well do later on, Alistair, <laughs> when we're trying to get to the ideas. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we might cut our way open, cutting into our braids. Um, uh, I th this is this is this is a this is a callback to a joke on the podcast we recorded last night that hasn't been released, and people who are watching the stream won't get. But anyway, we we're talking about the idea that by the end of this podcast today, we'll be so insane that we will we will cut open our own heads to try and get to the ideas. The ideas are in there. Yeah, we know they're in our heads. Well, we may as well just just let them out. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> when you try to talk, get them out through the mouth. No. Well, if we get more holes, we can get more out quicker. Exactly. Before we get too tired. The mouth is holding out on us. Um, anyway, um, the, yeah, when I'm cutting into your head later on, mm -hmm. Alistair, with this knife, um, this Chekhov's knife we have uh, uh, on full display, um, we will, um, we will. Uh, I'll, I'll take a look at those bones and see if they're surrounded by flesh or maybe just membranes. Maybe they're just sort of encased in a membrane or stretched by. There must, mm. must there'd be muscles of some kind or tendons, maybe. Or look, you know that knows? you know that that's how do ears work? You know that that's furry skin that's kind of like on antlers? Mm. It's like a thin, it's almost like a felt or something like that. 
Well, I think that's called satin. That's think satin. That, or or velvet or something. I think that... Is that what uh, velvet is? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we've talked about this before. Or we talk, I think we had a big debate about what's satin and what's velvet and whether, or, you know, so on and so forth. But... Uh, I think that one of the ones one of the ones is named after something on Antlers, or the other way around. Alistair, I'm so sorry. I remember when I was in um, when I was in uh, Taiwan, mm-hmm. and I was going through the the alcohol on the sh- at the shop. There was like a Antler alcohol, and I wonder really? what that is. I, d- I don't know. Can you ferment Antlers? Like like, but how do you know it was actually Antlers? It just looked, and it didn't just have them on the logo. No, I'm, I just just I like, couldn't you, read it. You're talking about Jägermeister. Is it Jägermeister? No, it wasn't Jägermeister. It was no? something. That, it just looked like they were making alcohol out of the antlers. Now, Alistair, I, that that doesn't seem like something that something could look like. I know. I don't think seems, a thing could look like that. I know it seems like it's not true, but then I thought maybe I must have I must have asked my girlfriend at the time, and then she said, "That's antler alcohol." Mm. Anyway. Somebody Google it, and then we'll see at the end of the 24 hours of this podcast whether or not um, that's a real thing. What's your bet? What's my bet whether antler alcohol is Mm. going to be a thing? Yeah. I think it might be a thing in the way that, like, that toe alcohol that you can get in Alaska or something is a thing, and that they just put a toe in there. I think that maybe they just put a bit of antler in there but i don't think it's like i don't think the antler ferments i don't think it's made okay. from because then that would be like then and this might be something we've talked about like making meat alcohol like is that a thing that you can do can you mm. can you can you make alcohol from meat doesn't yeah. feel like it would be a good idea but it might be possible yeah i mean that's a good idea it sounds like a good idea all right write have it we, down then have we done meat alcohol i don't know that we wait, have wait, so what do you need for alcohol you need sugar mm. you need Bacteria, yeah. I mean, you need like the yeast. yeast, yeast. Maybe yeast can't feast on. Um, well, what's this? Like a sweet, like that, like a sweet sausage. Mm. You know, <laughs> like, a banana. Like, <laughs> um, I think there are some sweet sausages, but that are like kind of like like a Chinese sausage. It's like a, you know, it's like red and kind of it's got a sweet. It's kind of like a cured meat, but it's got it's got the sweetness. Well, they sweetness. do talk about sweet meats. I don't mm. know what those are. But yeah. That's a that's a that's a that's a phrase. Sweet meats. Do you think that's what you need in order to? Maybe. I mean, could maybe. You... I mean, maybe the way the way that people eat so much sugar these days, anyway, where maybe we are laden with sugar. Mm. I I remember watching a documentary, or at least a part of a clip from a documentary that was made from some movie that they were making in the Amazon, and they were interviewing two guys who had lived in the Amazon their whole life mm. as part of some tribe. Maybe maybe they were undisturbed, but then at some point. They had gone down on somebody who was from the outside world, and they were both talking about how salty that the person was. <laughs> Do you think that in our natural environment, we're not that salty? We're not that salty. Like yeah. in the, if you're living in the tribes, I think if you're living with the tribes, you're not that. That salty. was the thing. That was the thing that they were commenting on of all the all the wonders of the modern world. Yeah, yeah. They encounter a new a new man. Mm. Oh, was, never seen anything like this before. He's got a satellite phone, right? Yeah. Yes, but I wonder. I wonder if his jism is salty. Yeah. No, oh, well, I mean, you know, that's curiosity, and who am I to judge? Yeah, I think it was the, it was a woman. So I think. You know, yeah. I don't... Sure. Yeah. But I mean, the the person they encountered. Yeah, the person they encountered was a woman. Oh right. Okay. Mm. Right. Um. Well, female jism, whatever that, whatever right. that's called. Thank you. I just Shism. wanted to get it right for our families <laughs> that we're not. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so what, what, meat alcohol? Are we running that? Oh down? yeah, meat alcohol. So, so you think that's a thing? What, what like, how would you do it? No? Well, uh, well, I mean, here's one way it could go, right? And this maybe. I mean, it could t- just be a guy. It's a it's a story about a guy trying to make the first meat alcohol. I mean, I, I think how big that would be, though, if you mm. could, right? And I'm not talking like some bacon infused whiskey. I'm no, talking no, meat no. alcohol. Okay. Fermented I'm talking you're boiling up a big vat of chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is something you can market to men. Finally, an alcohol you can market to men. Yes. Now, that, like, and then it'll make all the other alcohols look just, just so weak. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if you can make a rock alcohol, that's the that's the ultimate steel. Oh, sure. Fermented sure. steel. Yes. Oh, if you can make one just from the wind, you know? Mm. 
Yeah, or from frowning. Drink. <laughs> it tastes like oh, frowns. Tastes like grimace. Mm. Repressed. Mm. Um, or made from the weak. Oh yeah, sure. But I mean, th I think we all fundamentally are weak. Oh, except for the strong. Yeah, no. The, what uh, about the they're strong? They're doing okay. Yeah, they're doing the, really well. The mighty and the powerful. Oh, the mighty. I hadn't mm. thought about the mighty. I mean, I, th I hadn't even thought about the strong. So I hadn't even mm. started to think about the mighty. Oh, or, or you could, you know, it's a. So I guess it starts with meat alcohol, mm. but then at some point they they realize that there's such a market for ultra masculine drinks like this mm. that eventually they they start making alcohol just from fallen bodybuilders you know bodybuilders fallen yeah so bodybuilders you know they need a lot of money for for you know to cuz it's not that profitable of a business no i don't think it is at all and they need money for you know potentially steroids or for whatever they need to egg to whites egg whites and broccoli and, mm. and and you know things like that so they can get an advance while they're alive mm. so that when they die like a reverse mortgage yeah like a reverse mortgage so that when they die, their body goes to this alcohol company. Yes. And you can make the most masculine drink. You know? Sure. Yeah. It's it, got testosterone like, it's in it. Testosterone plus testosterone injections. Plus they, they promise to not eat any soy or anything like that mm. that was going to lower any estrogen. Part of the contract. Like that, yeah. And that's actually what led to their early death. <laughs> yes. Um. Uh yeah, fallen fallen bodybuilder. Like well, I mean, but I mean, making it making anything from the bodies of fallen bodybuilders is um is something, you know. I mean, you could you could have an apex bodybuilder, mm. right? Like an apex predator, and mm. it's somebody a bodybuilder who only eats the bodies of other bodybuilders. <laughs> no, that's the best. Yeah, right? this body is built from bodies. Yeah, and uh, and then you you do like a single batch kind of. <laughs> Single batch, you know, like s short release series of bottles that you could sell of this alcohol oh, for right. like forty five thousand dollars a bottle. Right. So, so now we're we're making one from that apex bodybuilder, yeah, we? from the bodybuilder yeah. who only ate bodybuilders. Yeah, I think, but but can can that be a separate sketch? No, an apex bodybuilder okay, who sure. only eats bodybuilders. You know, like they they're they're the um the the what what would you call it the performance enhancing protein pack sort of thing that uh what is, what is what do you call that protein powder yeah right but it's it's a protein powder oh i mean imagine, imagine protein protein powder you could you could you could market mm. the fuck out of this it's a protein powder and it actually contains arnold schwarzenegger's skin flakes mm. you, oh, know? you could definitely sell you that scrape <laughs> some of those off there and they yeah. go in there Mm. And there's only a microscopic amount, say, but you're getting a bit in every you know batch. The they would is, love I reckon this. he uses lotion. Yeah, probably. So you'd be getting some lotion, but maybe you could get him to use lotion made from like, um, you know, like, like <laughs> Sylvester Stallone's hair grease, mm. you know, his linoleum and his hair mm. like that. Not like fake linoleum, but you know, you actually rub your hands through there and then you kind of. You extract the oils off your hands through some acetone. So Arnie is wearing a sort of a, a lanolin um, lotion. Yeah. From the Italian Stallions lanolin lotion. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and uh, and then when he scrapes his body down at the end of the day with a squeegee, mm. he wipes that off onto, the, onto a, uh, a glass, a vial of some kind. Somebody mm. comes around and takes that and... Um, yeah. Puts that into the process of making their um, their powder, their powder, yeah. enhancing powder, and um, sure, which is mostly yeah. just like you know whey protein or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's um. I don't think it's actually a good way to to bulk up. What is that powder? That powder. I think the it's one with the Arnie because it feels like you're you're. you're oh, sure. the one with the Arnie's. No, that's great. But the just in general, I think those mm. powders are a little bit of bullshit. Yeah, right. I've seen people bulk up whilst they do it, but maybe it's just because yeah, they're also it's, working I think it's out. It's probably all the working out and all the mm. other food that they're eating and that yeah. sort of thing. Wait a um, second. There's a rumble at the <gasps> door. Oh, this is special. Evan, <laughs> what is happening here? Hey, He's brought well, coffees. Coffee. Oh, thank you well, so Evan, much. You can come into this seat. Oh, thank you. 
Um, and then I will also use this opportunity to go to the bathroom. Perfect. Um, thanks so much, Evan, for joining us. Oh, that's okay. uh, are you? Um, hey, everybody, this is Evan. I don't know oh. if you know Evan, but uh, if you're watching this <laughs> on the stream, the chances are you do. Evan Munro Smith from the Gamey Gamey Game podcast. Well, thanks so much for having me. Um, and 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 everything, man, from um, Stupid Old Studios. Um, you're looking for you want your headphones to work. I was going to plug my headphones in, but then nah, I, was, I couldn't find. Don't worry I'll about use, it. I'll just use. No, nah, you don't need that. Um, yes, yeah, maybe some of them were. I think those ones had a little crackle in them or something. Oh right. But um, quality equipment. Yeah, exactly. We're we're working with the absolute best here. <laughs> Um, no, we actually are. Everything's been working well, I think. Have yeah, you, did, you, did you watch the stream at all? I've been watching the stream, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's working really well. Congratulations right. on uh, getting it going. <laughs> well, we wouldn't have been able to do it without you, Evan. Evan <laughs> set everything up for us last night, and we were like feeble, elderly babies, if such a thing is possible. <laughs> People who not only yeah. don't know anything about the world, but have also um, grown up. Like if you could be old and a baby, that would be what we both because we we have we all we we're set in our ways and yet we also don't know anything. Yes, the worst of all possible worlds. And I'm gonna tell Alice to write down the idea of elderly babies. All right. Um, when he comes in, I don't quite know how it's a sketch idea, but it could be something. How are you faring? Surprisingly good, I yep. think. Yeah. What's the um, count? I I haven't been asking Alistair. I don't know. Oh, and okay. I don't want to know. Because I can um, see a forty. No, don't tell. What did I just say? But I don't know if that's got any. That might have nothing to do with anything. <laughs> I think we have come up with a lot of sketch ideas. I think it's been very prolific. I mean, the problem is that we could that could potentially undermine the entire project. That can't if we be finish. forty-five. There's no way you've done forty-five. That's I've, insanity. I, well, I don't. I, as I say, I don't want to know. But I All think right. it is possible because we well, have been churning. I think the people, the people at home, would might be interested. Um, just okay, because, you can you know, tell them. So yeah, so we have done forty-seven. That's amazing. Yeah, I that's... thought this was going to be a twenty-four hour stream. You're gonna have to slow down. Uh, um... I mean, that's kind of crazy, <laughs> but I think I think there will be automatic slowing down that will occur um, in the. It ebbs and flows. Yeah, it's yeah. gonna ebbs and flow because I think I think you know we're only three hours in, and so I think we're gonna get more tired. Yeah, and that's um, a good bet. Yeah. Um, uh, Evan, uh, I was I was explaining to Evan how bad we were at setting up the equipment last night and how we needed to do everything. And uh, I Thank pointed you, out Evan. that we were like, um, we, we 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 were like babies, <laughs> but also like old people because we don't know anything, but we're also set in our ways and refuse to learn. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think the idea of elderly babies, um, <laughs> sure, <laughs> being probably the hardest people to teach. Maybe it is the idea of like that babies come into the world sort of set in their ways and refuse ref refusing to change in some way. I mm -hmm. mean, I guess kind of a lot of the time that's where tod toddlers hit that point mm. where they they have expectations, yeah. but they also don't know how to do anything or yeah. know anything about the world. So it's a baby that's not learning, right? It's a baby that's not learning, and then these people take the baby to the doctor. Yeah. And then they go, why is he not? He's not developing at all. Mm. They go, oh, I can see what's happening here. Yeah. You have an elderly baby. <laughs> it's set in its ways. Yeah. And unfortunately, its ways are being a baby. And it doesn't uh, doesn't wish to, yeah, to change. But it, it'll, it'll grow it'll, into sure. a big baby. <laughs> and then it'll be like a man. But yeah. it'll still just keep, stay. It'll just be stuck in its ways. Yeah. It's, this it, just sounds like someone with learning disability. Sure, but it's not. It's not. It's not. Yeah, right, it's right. very different. They're stuck in their ways. And, and I, they're stubborn. Yeah, and, and I think that they I have... Like they can probably learn new facts, right? Mm. Just not... Just Sure, but they don't like any of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and they you can see that they can understand sure sure <laughs> but they it's it's a it's a stubborn rejection yeah, of reality a refusal to learn <laughs> and then sometimes you catch a glimpse of them doing something normal or proper and then you see them go ah no, i don't hold with any of this yeah. and then they lie back down on the ground yeah. but when they realize you've seen them mm. <laughs> it's a good idea i think it's, uh, look it's an idea it's i think confusing. it's a <laughs> it's confusing yeah um, have you introduced Evan as the man from Gamey Gamey Game? I have, yeah. yeah. Great. I've done all of this. I've explained everything. Have you said his last name? It's Evan Munro Smith. Munro Is that Smith. important? No, but I mean, you know, people might want to track you down. 
Mm. You know, think about it. Somebody might be listening to this in 20 years. <laughs> no, they're not going to be. But <laughs> Maybe. But even in, in 20 days, no, that it will oh, it will be released by then. And then they'll be like, where do I get to find that fun guy? Is your name a hyphenation from your parents' two surnames? Uh, no. So, oh. no. You inherited Munro Smith from your dad? He, your yes. dad was a Munro Smith? Yeah, but he wasn't born Munro Smith. He really? Was, yeah, because um, so the story is my dad's dad was, um, his name was Robert Smith. Bob mm. Smith and felt like they, they, as a family felt like that was too boring, boring. So they really? married and had kids, like had the two kids. Um, and wait, and wait, who did? Who married? Your grandfather this is, this and is his me. wife and your yes, grandmother. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So my dad's parents uh, and uh, and they decided to to merge. Um, uh, he was Bob at Munro Smith. Munro was his middle name, and they merged his middle name with his last name. Must be galling for the wife to be like, so you're going to take two of your names and not one of mine? <laughs> wow. Wait, so uh, wait, Munro was his middle name? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The decision was made. Um, what was her last name? Do you know? Goad. Not as good. Goad Smith? Uh, I think that's interesting, though. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's a weird name. Where's that from? I don't know. Oh, they're, they're Maybe from Dutch? England. I, England. Not, but it could be. I don't know if it's an English name. Yeah, right. What language did they speak? English? Yeah, great. Yeah, right. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Correct. Good on you. Um, um, but do you, is, is there a sketch idea mm. in, in Evan's obnoxious grandfather? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, I, when saying to his wife, I'd love to, when we get married, I'd love to hyphenate my surname. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. It's so progressive. You're wanting to take my name. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to take another one of my names. Yeah. I'm going to keep it in, very much in the family. <laughs> There's going to be more my name. A name a name that doesn't even need to continue through time for any reason. Middle names are, are, are sort of the appendix of the name. You know, they're a superfluous name that can be. What, I mean, what, what is the middle name there for? I don't know. It's 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 to be a bit more of an identifying feature. Mm. Make it easier to get an email address. Is that it? I've got <laughs> mine and mine. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because I've given I've given my son a very unfunctional middle name, you know. And I think that's you know that's where you should be putting your dangers and your you know <laughs> like you know uh, Thelonious Monk's middle name is Sphere. <laughs> You know, that's Sphere. Great. That's a great middle name. Od Otis yeah. is Augustus. Mm. You know, just uh, put a bit of power there in the mm. middle name yeah. like that. It's sure. sure. Yeah. It's got, like you, that. You, you've got a little something there that people don't know. You know, the, one, mm. the secret to acting is to um, just to know something that p other people don't know about your character. And kind of your middle name could be that. Right? Mm. If you didn't just go telling people or, or having your dad tell people on the internet. or Do you think the thing I could do when I act in the world is I could just know the hard crime that Evan's grandfather pulled on his grandmother <laughs> on his <laughs> like that and that's what, what, what I kind of use to sort of shape my personality and who I don't know maybe yeah enough. no no I think it would be a real interesting subtle detail mm. and I think it would be something for the you know people who watch closely your career mm. might be able to see that as a through line oh, he's doing that thing again I know what that is you know you know what I think I, I heard that Anthony Hopkins in uh, Silence of the Lambs did that, had a secret, but his secret is that he was a lizard. Wait, what? You know when he played in uh, Silence of the Lambs, he played um, the bad Hanna guy. Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, Hannibal Lecter. Lecter. <laughs> mm. And I think he was like pretending to be a lizard. Right, that was his technique to, to get into that character? Yeah. Okay. I think it's like that. that's one of those oh, things. That puts his... And like that makes his performance look a lot worse because he was nothing like a lizard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think he was still trying to come across as a human. Oh, right. You know, like a human lizard. Yeah, right. oh, sure. But I guess maybe you could, I guess that's the different lenses through which you could. Mm. Um, I wonder if he could, if, if now that we know that, if it would be possible to, I imagine he got an Oscar for that role. <laughs> Probably. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. I wonder if it would be, <laughs> I wonder if it would be possible now that we know his intent was to be a lizard to critically re-examine his performance <laughs> and be like, you know what, I actually don't think this is that good. Mm. Right, well, if he was trying to be a lizard, this is terrible. And then we can take his Oscar away. Mm. Well, I think it was telling that he didn't win one of the lizard Oscars. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
best lizard in a yeah best lizard <laughs> in a in a human film yeah uh, I, wonder, I wonder i wonder who would win that maybe hmm. that one that um crocodile dundee killed right <laughs> does he kill a lizard I think he kills a lizard in like a real does he really kill one don't think he Does would he put really a knife good. in the top of a sh- of, of a crocodile's, crocodile's head? head? Wow. Yeah, it's full on, isn't it? And he does do that. Stabs it through the skull. Wow! He <laughs> turns it around as well. I think. Really? Yeah, like you like it like you're you know, trying to like blending the brain. I guess. Yeah, or just trying to spin it around, or <laughs> just trying to spin just... it around. No real reason. <laughs> just seeing if I could. I yeah, just <laughs> break some of the wires in the back that go to the thing. Jeez. I guess you want to disconnect it from the spine so that you mm. know that like this croc isn't going to do much mm, the reptilian part of its brain mm. which is all of it yeah. <laughs> um, um but but uh do you think that retrospectively removing sure. anthony hopkins oscar that could potentially be a sketch i wonder mm. if anyone has um i mean we could start it as a campaign but yeah d- does does um has anybody ever had an Oscar taken away? I mean, like, well, under what circumstances would you would you you know watch somebody's performance? Everybody thinks it's good, and then something else, some information comes out that makes everyone go, "Wait a second, you were cheating!" Like, is it possible <laughs> to cheat at acting? Uh, you know, maybe if maybe if you uh, if everyone everyone thought uh, it was a it was a it was a film, but it turned out it was actually a bloody documentary. Right, mm. and everyone was just—they yeah. were just reacting. They weren't acting at all. They were just, they were just reacting. Yeah, just living their life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe there should be one—a special category for when you do kind of do those for when people do those roles that are a bit, you know, uh, contentious these days. But when you do one of those ones where you play a disabled person or somebody from another race, there should just be a separate <laughs> acting award for that. Yes, and but it's only. A punishment award for if you do it real bad. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think often punishment we awards. I, 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 often, <laughs> of, often we don't know until many years later, right? Like you think about something like was it Mickey Rooney in Breakfast at Tiffany's? Yeah, and you every know. like at the time, everyone was like, "This is a fantastic comic performance." And then, like, probably quite soon after, hmm. everyone went, "God, this is actually very not okay." Like, 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 I think maybe there should be a lag where we go around and do another round of negative Oscars sort of 10 <laughs> years after all the films came out. So this year we could do all the ones of 2009. I think right? you want to give it like 20 years or something like that. Sure, 20 years, <laughs> right? So we'll do um, 99. We're, this year we'd, we'd do the 20, uh, the 1999 mm-hmm. Oscars, which are the not Oscars yeah. for people who have done um, crimes against acting. Or um or just general regular crimes, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and maybe if you maybe if you get an Oscar for you get an Oscar for the uh what 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 an Oscar is is it sort of a a gelatinous blob, an opaque gelatinous blob, um sort of like shaped like just like a a, a cylinder, which has a cavity inside it the exact size and shape of an Oscar, right? And that way, (laughs) if you get an Oscar for a performance Mm -hmm. and then 20 years later you get a Noska, you place the Noska over the top of the Oscar and it it cancels it out. Yeah, nullifies it, right? Right. No one can see it and it's it's concealed in this opaque gelatinous blob. And then people come around to your house and they'll just see a a gelatinous blob on the shelf. Mm. And then you start to treat acting sort of a bit more like wine, you know, like yes, yes. Of, you know whether or not it can age. Yeah, you and know because because is... that's what you you do with wine. If you kind of taste something and you go, it doesn't have any kind of much of a body, much acidity. You go, mm. oh, this is for drinking now. It's a very kind of easily drinkable mm, thing, consumed. but it but it won't age at all. It'll just go. It'll turn I feel to like vinegar. That's, that's like um, didn't Gwyneth Paltrow get an Oscar for Shakespeare in Love? Yeah, they have to yeah, take that yeah. away. No. I'm really? sorry. You're also just, you're mostly losing this for goop or whatever. The name <laughs> is, it, is that what it's called? Yeah, it goop? is goop. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Goop. Goop. Those are, I mean, that the, the you know what those that's her initials and her two middle initials are names that start with O. I Oswald. Believe. Oh, I okay. that's one of them. Yeah, Oswald oh. Oscar. I have. I, wait, I know. Oh, oh, I know an old lady's name. Wait, Odessa. Do you think name. Odessa would be there? Sure. Mm. Ophelia? Ophelia Odessa. Oh, yeah. Ophelia, man. Ophelia. <laughs> Gwyneth Ophelia Odessa Paltrow. It's a good name. 
Yeah, thanks. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Okay, it's you and me, Evan. Okay, I want you to know that so far I feel like Andy has been doing a lot of heavy lifting. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what do we get there? Characters, characters that build character over time as they age. That as you, yeah. Well, I guess these, um, as you're referring to for these, these, what the the not, are, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah we're definitely kind of looking at at actors who, I guess, upon looking back, they, um, they have, uh, they've, you know, the, the way that culture has changed makes their performance look bad, and also makes us feel. It, it depends on whether or not we feel bad with the fact that we liked that movie. Yeah. Okay. You know, because there are movies you look back. And like like No Country for Old Men, you go, oh no, that was good. I really like that. Yeah. But then there's some that you go back and you go, how did? What's one that was bad? <laughs> uh, I watched recently Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. And sure. Uh, and that and when and when that won the Oscar, <laughs> <laughs> now we look back and we think that was maybe crazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Kevin Smith has gone downhill since then. I mean, I think he has actually. I mean. I think he might have actually gone downhill since then. And in what way? Like, Creatively? Maybe. <laughs> since Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. I think that what he must have started going downhill before that film came out, I think. Okay, yeah. Because I, I think maybe he was he the one who did wait, no, he did the one with um Bruce Willis and uh, it was called Cop Out. Ah. Wait, Bruce Willis and uh, you know the guy from 30 Rock? Um, forget it. Anyway, I, I think that was universally panned. Okay. Uh, so he had a lot of, but but you know, I think that's the problem when you start out in a films and then you get loved with Clerks and things like that, especially these independent films, and then you get more money. Yeah. And then you get more opportunity to kind of just do whatever you want, but then also you don't put as much scrutiny on yourself because people tell you that you they love you. Yeah. If there was a what what needs to be created is a boundary for all people in comedy. Um to overcome this problem of thinking you're funny because thinking of what you're doing is funny because people love you and then, yeah. then you don't doubt yourself as much and there needs to be a, a shield put there so that people who evolve in comedy can still make things that are good. Right. Forced anxiety. Like a forced anxiety, maybe. Oh, well, maybe if we could get that as a drug, right? And it's just, it's just called, it's a drug that's called self doubt, right? And then, and then it's as like the you... opposite of Valium. Oh, yeah, like maybe, yeah, mm. yeah, an anti anti anxiety drug, right? And yeah. as time, as as your career progresses, you can you can performance enhance your 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 career by taking this drug, which makes you still think that you need to prove yourself. To everyone at all times, <laughs> even though you've done it many, many times over, and everybody agrees that you are like unbelievably talented, right? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's 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 a sort of a it's a career a, a body of work dysmorphia in um, uh, engaging see, supplement. See, and finally, you can you can never feel happy. <laughs> Even more so with success. Yes. Yeah. You could just stop taking the drug. And then you can enjoy. Well, that's true. Yeah. In between success. projects. Enjoy. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. And then you start a new project, get back on the drug. Yeah. And maybe, you know what? I mean, maybe this is what the world needs, you know, because I think part of the problem is that in a way there's too much confidence out there, you mm -hmm. know, from a lot of our leaders and that sort of thing have that certainty that they're doing the right thing. Yeah. Well, how about you take a little bit, a little hit of this before you, um, you press that button, right? Yeah. And just question things. In the sixties, in the sixties, I think they dreamed of like, you know, you know, sneaking at some UN or something like that, and then slipping all the leaders like some LSD so that they could open their minds and, man, see, yeah. and see what they were doing to the world, man. Like that. But now I think I think you're referring to um the movie Ali G in the house doesn't <laughs> no, he put a whole lot of I think he put some weed in weed the tea. in the tea <laughs> yeah but but I think there is a film that was like right. that was LSD and from <laughs> ages and ages ago but was yeah. Ali G in the house was that a seventies film I mean it was pitched like that it was a yeah. it was a it was a seventies exploitation. Mm. <laughs> 
when they exploited the 70s. Uh, one of my favorite suffixes has got to be the word sploitation because <laughs> it's got the sound sploit in it, which <laughs> can we? <laughs> what a great yeah. sound. <laughs> Feels like, like I mean, th that suffix feels like it's it's ripe for having or yeah, for having the word man at the beginning, man exploitation. Yeah, but, but it's not really a thing what? because. But maybe there could be. I guess. I guess you know that that tickle movie, that tickle documentary, mm, yeah. where they get guys and they and then and then they kind of trick them, but then they also give them lots of money. That's kind of like man exploitation. Mm. I wonder if anyone in, in, at any point in that film says, uh, "I thought I was just going to be." Tickled, but it turned out I was trickled. Do you think anyone says that at any point in the film? I've seen it. I've seen it, and I, I don't remember. No. Mm. Oh, but do you think it's maybe in the director's cut? I reckon. Yeah, I reckon they. Somebody obviously said it. Yeah. If yeah. they made a, a dramatic recreation of the documentary. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Sort of like the um... James Franco does it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um... And he could play that New Zealand guy because he loves doing a different mm. accent and stuff oh, yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. Great. Right. Right. And. Um, um, they probably that probably is happening. That's probably in the works, right? A fictionalized version of the the tickled movie. I Maybe mean, it would be pretty interesting. Everything's in the works. Right? Everything's in the works. Everything's in some point of production or yeah. development, or the rights have been purchased by people. Warner Brothers love to throw a bit of money at something, right? I'll throw. I'll I'll throw one hundred and fifty grand at that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> drop drop one fifty large. Mm. Um, I had an idea while I was just outside the door, and it slipped from me. Oh. And I'm just going to try and work out what it was. You guys carry on. Is this is this is this is this obnoxious to try and remember what my idea was? No, <laughs> no Andy. It's fine. No. Okay, wait. Maybe there was something in what we were just talking about while like, Andy was out. Yeah, but wait. Well, when he came in, and then we during that block of talking we just did. Which I've already forgotten what it was. <laughs> I have to tomorrow. Yeah. About exploitation. About, <laughs> uh, about what were we doing? Anti anti anxiety. Oh, the putting the things oh, in the, the, the leaders and the leaders, the LSD. Yeah. Right? I mean, but imagine if you got the opportunity to do that, mm. right? To put drugs into all of the things, but instead you were like, ah, oh, I think it would be funnier to give them all um, laxatives. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then what you did was you made them all shit themselves, but then really. It was them all having to shit themselves in front of each other, like all crouching mm. up on that big round desk that they all sit at, shitting yeah. down onto the ground there, onto the picture of the earth, right? Mm. That's on the ground there. They're and all, all, the, all the leaders are shitting on the earth and wiping yeah. their ass with the flags, right? Yes. And it was that that made them realize what they're doing to the planet. And actually, you got that effect in the end, even though yeah. um, you, you, you just went the comic angle of, Giving them all laxatives. Yeah, I think that's. You didn't open their minds. You opened their assholes. Mm. Um. To, but then their that opened eye. their yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> their brown third eye to um to see the truth of what what um what the UN has been doing, man. Agenda twenty one. Read about it. It's real. <laughs> yeah. It's um mm. anyway. <laughs> the UN are quite, quite keen on saving the environment. Like they're yeah, on climate they change. Yeah. yeah, I mean the UN's. A, uh, yeah, I like the UN. I got to say, I'm a I'm a big supporter of the UN. I'm not um, that against the idea of a world government. I'm. I got to tell you. I got to <laughs> tell you. Every time somebody, every time somebody's like, "Oh, they're gonna get a one world government," but you're picturing a, a good leader. You're right. Scenario. I am picturing quite a good leader. <laughs> a good yeah. government. Yeah. And I guess I am picturing also a democracy, but I guess it could just be, I guess the majority of the people are not in a democracy. They're in a totalitarian state. And maybe yeah. they they would vote for a totalitarian state, maybe. Do you, do you think the totalitarians <laughs> would let them vote for? <laughs> I mean, I hope they pick totalitarianism. <laughs> oh, fingers crossed. Yes. Come on, totalitarianism. We really shouldn't have put this to a referendum. Didn't sausages? show faith in our own concept. Yeah, they're a bunch of veggie sausages. Oh, veggie right. Sausages. Is that for lunch later? It's the, pod just... it's the podcaster's food. Mm. I was, I was um, listening to the stream earlier when you were talking about Superman. Mm. Yeah. And I was wondering, do you think Superman has a, a, a super sense of achievement once he's mm. saved the world? Mm. Yeah, super smug. Yeah. Right? Would it be smugness or would it be mm. – I mean, he, he might also have super humility. Right, so he would say, "Right, yes, I did save the entire world, but, but I'm sure you do lots of great stuff in your job as well. What is it that you do? Oh, you're a, 
you're a, a systems admin. Well, you know, you save the world of the f from, files that people save from um, on the on the on the from chaos of those messy desktops yeah. and all that. <laughs> oh, yuck! Those I hate that. And you know, and he's really good at relating to people like that. Yeah. And but then I think yeah, I think there would be an element in which he would have super good feelings. Like he'd be like on. Indoors. On pingers all the time. I don't know. I think Superman would be like is a lot chewing the inside of his mouth, which, he, <laughs> oh, which fortunately is super strong. Super strong, can't. so it doesn't actually mess him up. Mm. Um, <laughs> and then, but then he would also feel when he felt shame. Mm. Oh, it would just come over yeah. him like a he'd just be like, oh. unless you can have like be shielded from that. How does the body know what's bad and mm. what's good, and how does it like? You know, he gets protected from bad stuff, mm. like bullets, mm. but he gets good stuff like lasers in your eyes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> How does the body know to put the lasers in the eyes, but to put the bullets on the ground as little flat discs? <laughs> How does the body know where to put those different things? <laughs> If what, ha what what happens uh, has this been covered in any of the Superman fiction? What happens if he does bite the inside of his mouth, right? Because he's super strong, and his teeth, I imagine, would be super strong. Mm, and yes. then he's, but then, but then, I think I think relative to his own strength, mm. he's capable of injuring himself as much as we are. So would he? Would he? Could he bite the inside of his own mouth? Mm. And would it hurt? Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, we say his only weakness is kryptonite, but what if what if it's also that? <laughs> Getting yeah. ulcers and you know that lumpy bit that you keep biting by mistake. Can he mm. chew his own lips? Yeah, because if he if if he bites the inside of his lip, then it's gonna super puff up, mm. and then super you, puff. Yeah, and then yeah, one of his powers, and then he can't stop biting that because it just keeps getting in the way. It just your teeth keep hooking on it. Have you ever done that? You just keep biting it over yeah. and over again, and it's like the war. It's like oh, and then like sometimes I have got my teeth so deep in. I'm like, this is this is the deepest wound I've ever had. Like, it's like I'm so far inside myself yeah. right now. <laughs> I'm not on board for this. I've not. No, no, I've not done no, that. I think Alistair bites his lips a lot. Or like his the inside. I just of his go through. A lot more I go than... through phases. It's and where it's like you go, oh, it's the worst. And I... and you also think, how am I ever going to get out of this cycle? Because mm. every time I bite it, yeah. it makes it swell more. What I do is I push it and I push it really hard to try and flatten it out. Do you think that works? Well, I'm not in the cycle right now. That's true. <laughs> hey, baby! Okay, what about this? It's a Superman cartoon, and all it is is Superman at home. There's no dialogue. It's just him eating food, and he occasionally he goes, ah! He bites his lip, and every time he bites it, it swells up more and swells up more until his head explodes and he dies. <laughs> and that's like a 32-pager or something like that. <laughs> so it's a, it's a single run. It's called The Death of Superman 2, right? It and, gives <laughs> and he fights the enemy within, his own teeth. Mm. Right? <laughs> I think it's it's a great way to explore all the side effects of being super. Mm. Um, all of them. <laughs> Every single one. Does he feel pain? Does Superman feel pain? Super pain. Oh, wow. Maybe. That's unfortunate. I mean, a kryptonite can't be that feel that bad, but he seems to be crippled by it. When he feels pain, he really feels it. Yeah. Mm. Other know, people around him are it, fine. Because, yeah, he looks like he's experiencing, like, period cramps. <laughs> <laughs> That could be what it is. Oh my god! Yeah, because you see him and he's bent over and he's like, oh, like that. Mm. Maybe that's right. a metaphor. Maybe he needs a hot water bottle <laughs> and some chocolate. Yeah, <laughs> and and some trash TV. Yes, <laughs> just a, just like you know, watch a season of Drag Race. And you know what he needs? He needs to, <laughs> he needs to be left alone for a bit. Yeah, you know. He needs a day off. You know what he needs? He needs. He doesn't need somebody trying to fix everything all the time. Can't exactly. you just listen? <laughs> Feels like I'm making this about something. <laughs> I no. absolutely am not. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay. Um, I wonder if this is going to be over so soon we're not even going to get to eat any of these sausages. That's a risk. They'll just be fallen. They will have just died for nothing, all those. All those vegan Soy, sausages. Soybeans? All those soybeans. Um, it was something, when I, with my idea, I mean, it's, it's, it's a fool's errand to try and chase this thought that I had just outside the door. Something about acting. 
You know, we're, talk we're talking about the Oscars oh, yeah. and the Noscars and losing your Oscars for giving a bad performance. Yeah, yeah. And you guys were talking about something just related to that as I left. Mm. And, um, oh, boy. Oh, boy, I'm chasing that high, you know, man. No, I get it, man. Trying, get to, it. trying to catch it. Do you think a dragon could ever win an Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, maybe in that lizard category we were talking yeah. about before. <laughs> what, yeah. dragons? Hey? Dragons are fictional, though. Oh, you're right. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. going to say no. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay, interesting. But what if, what if it's, there's like, okay, so there's one dragon and it's real. Okay. Yeah? Yes. And? And it's chosen acting as a profession. Yeah, it's a profession. Has, yep. So I think that would probably be where it would thrive. Yeah, sure. Yeah? Um, Has Kermit the Frog won an Oscar? Like, I feel like there is one or maybe two examples of things when an Oscar of some sort has been won by a non-human entity. Oh, I think I do recall maybe at some I, point. I could, be, I could be wrong. I'm not sure if it was like, I remember seeing uh, some Monsters, Inc. people at a podium. I'm not sure if they won it or whether they. Were they people though or were they characters? No, like Monsters, Inc. characters. Yeah. And I'm not sure whether they won it or they were presenting an award. Right. How would they have done that? I think they would have to know in advance. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, they planned this. Yeah. Feels like a, yeah. And this is a setup. Um, anyway, and that did, um, that's really Yeah, killed, no, I'm killed, sorry. I'm sorry really, about my dragon idea. It's really that killed was, uh, the vibe. Fuck, man. Okay. Um, well, then let's go back to finding something in Evan's family history that we can turn <laughs> into a sketch <laughs> and make fun of. Uh, um, I feel like there's a lot in there, probably. Yeah, yeah. there might be. Um, Do you, does your family camp? No, no. Mm. Not, have you no, ever not really? Hmm? Have you ever camped? Like, has your family ever gone somewhere and put up a tent and stayed in the tent at like a campsite? Not that I. No, I don't think so. That's so interesting. Yeah, I would love to be like that. I did school camps. <laughs> well, I not have camped. Or... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you would love to not have camp. Yeah, I would just love to not camp. Like, I think hopefully I can provide that for my children. <laughs> it, it does feel like it is one of those things that passes down through families, like a like a sort of a blood disease or something like yeah. that. Mm. Like my my mum went camping a lot with her father, mm. and um, by all accounts, very often they had a truly horrible time. Yeah, um, and there would be a lot of crying. And a wow. lot of things going wrong, and he was quite, but he was determined, yeah. like <laughs> dead set on dragging his three small daughters to the middle of the wilderness in Tasmania. Sure, in the middle of the night, very often. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then and then she, you know, she perpetuated that onto our, us, and mm. we 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 did a lot of camping with our family when I was growing up, and I haven't really felt the urge. Until recently, I've started to feel like I should be camping with my kids, mm, and yeah. you know maybe it is. It's 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 a bit. It's almost a bit like a religion, you know, in that it has these mm. routines and these rituals, and you know has special clothes that you wear and special, I don't know, things things that you do, guys. foods that you eat, you know, and you pretend are good. Well, like what? So, what? What kind of things do you eat when you're there? Like dehydrated, um, you, you know, stuff that you fruit, dried fruit. Yeah, you eat a scroggin and that sort of thing. But like you, you'll eat the you, you, trail you get a, mix. Yeah, trail mix. Sure, same thing. Okay. I like it. Isn't that right, scroggin and? I don't know what scroggin is. Scroggin is trail mix. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't that is that what it is? <laughs> well, what is it? Oh, well, it's trail mix. Yeah. Well, okay, okay. Now, hang on. Somehow, I'm coming across as the bad guy here, but Evan was the one who both suggested both those words. And I am I wrong? No, no, you, no, said you, that, you said scroggin. That originated with you. Really? That's, that's yeah. your word. Yeah. Ah, you're right. I, I the said bad trail mix. You translated that into scroggin. Yep. Or I think maybe yeah. <laughs> I mean, no. I think I think he said scroggin, and then you said trail mix. Not knowing that it was Scroggin. Yeah. Mm. And then he went and you went, ah, yes, like that. Mm. And you go, and then like, and I thought maybe you thought that it was mm. related. I'd love the, uh, the anyone watching the stream, if they can comment and just say, who do they think is the villain of this piece? <laughs> no, I know uh, my hands are clean. <laughs> <laughs> ah, look at them. I don't know. No, I think, I think possibly it is, it is Alistair for sitting idly by <laughs> the Switzerland in this scenario mm. and pretending that there's not, there's nothing wrong happening. Um, 
Sorry, what were we saying? Food. You know. eat food. So camping. Just, just camping. camping being it's a, a ritual. Well, yeah, you know, it, it, a thing that a thing that is inflicted on by one generation on I the next. I think it's a, it's a good thing, though. I think camping is is good. Well, that's what we all think, but maybe it's not. Yeah, I think it's not, but I think you kind of want to make your kids experience things like that because mm. you want to ex- make them experience something different. Mm. So, so like I think, but the problem is that we don't extend that to to other things. Like you don't kind of go like, all right, well, let's. Um, I'll take you over to this place mm. where, um, let's say I can get, I'll take you to this neighborhood where we can get a bunch of kids to racially vilify you, mm. you know? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> it's a different experience. Mm. What it is, is like, um, camping is kind of like a socially licensed form of deprivation or mm. mild neglect to your children. The idea right. that you could force them to walk long distances, make them ki- sleep in like sort of cold, unsafe um, mm. conditions in the, you know, in the, in the, in the wild, mm-hmm. feed them substandard food. Mm-hmm. Like if you, it's, it's, it, you, you are, you have a license to do that. And when you, when you do experience that kind of deprivation, you know, things seem better relatively speaking. Mm. So like you're, you know, at, at the end of the day, your measly meal um, yep. you uh, w- will taste like a feast. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, relative to, to the bad time that you've had around it. Uh, but you, but you're not allowed to do that. You can't just say, "Well, I'm not going to feed my child today, and I'm going to make them walk around the house, and then they'll enjoy their meal more," because mm. that would be considered um, abuse. But you camping, it's allowed. And so, yeah, like you know, if there were other forms of of camping, you know, a camping where you don't actually go anywhere, but you take a holiday from whatever other form of privilege you enjoy in your life. Yeah. Right. You know, it's a it's it's a, camping is 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 a is a sort of a a uh, it's it, well it's play acting homelessness I suppose yes. really isn't it? Uh, it's cultural appropriation of the homeless. It's bush homelessness. Is, is, bush that, a, homelessness. is that a culture? Um, yeah, okay. yeah, it is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, but you know, you, you package it up as an adventure, mm, and yeah. so and so I think that's how you know you can we can just apply this to other places in which. Mm. You can raise your kids by, um, let's say, you know, they they know all about entertainment being great, you know, mm. things like that. So you take <laughs> them. Entertainment s- is good. Yeah. Mm. You see, entertainment is good. And the quality of entertainment that you get now is is very good. And so yes. now you've got to take you got to take them back to when it- entertainment was worse. Yes. You know, time travel. That's right. So right. you take them to the flip book museum. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. like that, and they, and, you know, and and sure, there, there there are some aspects to it. It's got a, mm. you know, maybe there's a, it's got a great lunch spot there, so mm. that kind of makes it seem like you're not entirely inflicting bad things mm. on them. Mm. But then they got to flip through these books, and each book is over uh. too quickly, and the you can't, you can never flip all the way through each <laughs> pa- individual page. Like big clumps kind of fall uh. at a time, mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. And pages there's no sound. Stuck together. Exactly, yeah. pages stuck together. It's um, the camping theory of raising children so that they can appreciate the life that they have. Exactly. I think that I think the the flip book museum as well is is just a is just a good thing on its own. Mm-hmm. Like a sketch about the flip book museum. You know, like like when I, I remember when I went to um the the the, the powerhouse museum <laughs> Sorry, when I was separate thought powerhouse. Uh, well, hold on to it, Evan. Oh, all right, I will. I went to the powerhouse museum. Look, in fact, Evan, do you want to just tell us your idea? And I can. Sorry, no, I interrupted idea. you. No, no. Okay. We only we only have limited time with you. <laughs> uh, all right. No, I was just thinking why the pages of the flip book stuck together because mm. someone's been jerking off to the flip book. <laughs> <laughs> so it was flip book pornography. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I I think I think flipbook pornography is a an absolutely valid sketch idea, Evan. Um, and I, I, you know, as we know that every new form of um, what have you, uh, technology, media, yeah. media is in some way appropriated for. Um, there would absolutely be flipbook porn. Surely there would be. I'd, there has to be. There has to be. Yeah. There Please to- don't. don't I don't think I can live in a world where there isn't. To be honest, it, that's a that's going to be if you created that now, that's going to be one of the most successful Etsy stores. Because mm. I mean, you bring people into your house, you're a modern sort of you know man child, woman child that 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 exists around. People love little nifty little things that you have on your shelf. People yeah. are looking at your books, 
right? That's the only reason to have a book these days is mm. so that you can flip through it and see some <laughs> porn like that. And so you sell it on Etsy like that and you just see yeah. some penetration or yeah. some cloacal kisses. Yes. <laughs> now, the problem the problem is really that the flip book requires two hands to operate, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And yeah. sometimes <laughs> other activities would require at least one of the hands. Sure. Um, but, you know, you could use it it could be a two person thing. It's something you do with your partner. Oh, it brings that's nice. It brings, mm. you know, brings some spice back into the relationship. <laughs> you go Someone's bring it back to the middle bit again. Just play that bit again. One of these jerking off, the other one's just going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the pages get stuck together. And then eventually the pages get stuck. But that's what and happens. That really drops the frame rate. Mm. It absolutely does. Yeah, it goes from 60, which is almost like the, the frame rate of reality. It's almost like real life is happening. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, would you do it with real images or drawn? I guess no. I, I kind of picture just like outline. I pictured a drawings. drawing. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that a director's cut of a flip book, you, the director would glue some of the pages together to cut out various scenes and try and... You know, <laughs> you know, splicing scenes together. Yeah, well, you know, to to, to cut certain mm. sections out of the the story to try and right. tell it, you know, tell their version of the story. That, I mean, usually a director though would try and make their cut longer. Like, I don't know if there are any director's cuts <laughs> that are shorter than mm. the theatrical release. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's kind of your only option when it comes to editing a flip book is to is to do the. You could do some real tricky stuff with editing, like you know two scenes at the same time that are playing where it's like kind of flips mm. between the oh, two. Oh, cuts and you... back. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, I wonder what the world's biggest flip book would be, like how long it goes for. I think I wouldn't be surprised if you could create a machine <gasps> that flips through the book for you. Yeah, right. and it's like an endless, <laughs> an endless sort of, um, not endless, what? but like it could go for hours and just yeah, like. It could be a circle. Mm, yeah, and maybe it's done instead of doing. <laughs> maybe there's sort of the pages are sort of slightly transparent and the light shines through them and you watch them on a wall. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we're getting close to just movies. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. But I can see how the technology evolved mm, through mm. that. Someone I mean, else had the same idea 100 years ago. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's a great idea. And then finding ways of adding the sound so that the so that flicking sound, that <laughs> like that turns into something that you give you give the the pages a bit more heft. So it gives mm. it a deeper kind of maybe it sounds like a wet sound, you know, like a Oh, now that's erotic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, turn up the volume on that page. <laughs> I'm done. <Whoa. laughs> Your turn. <laughs> Swap. I want there to be something in this for you. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe. Okay, and now how about this, right? This mm -hmm. is a flip book that is the full erotic experience. Right? Oh, I love so what it. you do is 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 is, is, is you um, you rest the back cover of the flip book against your genitals. Okay. So each successive flip of a page mm -hmm. is a minor vibration that brings yep. you some sort of erotic pleasure, mm, okay. right? And then. You maybe maybe you do make the pages slightly wet so you get that sound that you're looking for, and then and then and then also though maybe I wonder if this would be possible. You yeah. you cut holes in the pages mm -hmm. so they so that the wind whistles through them almost yeah. like a note, and maybe you can make it to get to, to mm -hmm. get it to make sounds that are kind of almost like a kind of a moaning. Oh, oh, right, oh, you get it to or play a tune. Oh, yeah. Da, da, da. <laughs> See the full erotic experience. <laughs> you'd have to blow through it, right, to get that sort of a. You'd hope that the just the the wind passing through as it <laughs> flips like that, the strength right. of. You could set it outside mm. in a sort of like in a horror kind of an old. Sure. <laughs> the wind whistling across the moors. <laughs> <laughs> whistling across across the. The breasts and mm. testicles. So maybe these could be called fat books instead. Oh, okay. Advanced, advanced mm. fat book. It's like a 4D flip book. Mm. Technology. <laughs> 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 yes, and then there's someone running around pinching your ankles, <laughs> squirting you in the face. Uh. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I want. I wonder if. <laughs> I mean, this 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 is we're taking it away from the the erotic angle, but mm. the idea that like after the invention of flip books, there were 
people who you know ran flip book cinemas where you would come and sit into a chair and they would flip the book for you but then they would they would enhance the cinematic flip book mm. experience by you know squirting you with your little jets of water or putting out the mm. smell of like sodden earth or something or whatever it is to to enrich that experience i mean this is something you would come back to constantly on this podcast <laughs> i mean or the person just like does all the voices and the sounds themselves oh yeah like let's say it is they're going oh fuck yeah oh, fuck you're, you're, taking, yeah. <laughs> you're taking it back to sex oh, oh yeah i thought we were okay but it could oh. be it could just be like <laughs> <laughs> Give me all your money. Yeah. Oh, no, not that money. <laughs> <laughs> now, hang on. Now, Ever uh, Alistair, you, the criminal, ask for all the money. All the money. Okay. And then somehow there is exists some other money <laughs> that falls outside of the category of all the money. I'm yeah. intrigued in the story. Yeah. Oh. Yes. They, when he broke into the house, they were playing Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst also behind the scenes, there were people packaging drugs and counting money. <laughs> and when, and when the person broke in, screeched to a halt in their car yeah. br and, and came in and asked for all the money. Yeah. The the drug dealers playing Monopoly offered this person started putting the, the Monopoly the, money into the bag. That's a presence of mind. You know, I mean, they just you know they were they were reacting on instinct. There's a gun in their face. Sure, sure. Not that money. <laughs> um. Especially the guy. He's just he's just landed on free parking. He's picking mm, up that oh, middle pool, sweeping. Give me all the money, and he starts going. Oh, but then mm. he's just got it. He's, he doesn't, you know, he's just trying to not be in danger anymore. Mm. Just a drug dealer playing Monopoly. <laughs> I wonder if drug dealers play Monopoly with real money, you know? Ooh, and then, and then I wonder if at any point while they're playing Monopoly with real money, one of the people playing says, Imagine if all this money was fake money. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll end on go to jail and they actually go to jail. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Go to jail. No, not that jail. <laughs> hey, I might get out of here and leave you to the... <laughs> Evan, I can't believe it's gone by so fast. That, yeah. was, that was real good fun, though, Evan. Thanks so um, much for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for contributing. That's thank right. you for Thanks allowing for us me. to make fun of your family. Mm. Thank, you for, mm. uh, thank you for uh, the coffee. Oh, that's right. oh yeah, that was that was huge. That was... A, that was um, I figured you'd need it. Game-changing. Um, the game um, is no longer what it once was. What it once was. It's a mm. different game now. What was now. the game? Um, Monopoly? No, not that Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good luck with the rest of your show. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'm playing Monopoly. Put down your gun. No, not that uh, uh, miniature um, Ca artillery cannon. On, on that boat. Mm. Um, oh, isn't there one that's just a gun though? Yeah, or is it's it, probably is one just just a cannon. I'm a sorry. Cannon. cannon. <laughs> Whoa, Alistair. Oh, good save. Yeah. But then fucked up rolling scenario. Um, that's okay. I mean, there may have been a. Uh, yeah, mics are still working. Everything's all right. Everything's good. Mm. All right. What do you think? Drug dealers playing Monopoly. It's kind of like, but they're playing with with real money. But mm. then. Someone says, imagine if this was fake money. <laughs> I mean, it's not quite a sketch, but it's not quite a sketch, no. But but I think I think drug dealers playing Monopoly, I think there's enough elements there um to uh to 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 make it um ent yeah. entertaining. Yeah. yeah. And then you know, Evan's bit about the jail, that sort of thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously uh the corners would be more valuable, perhaps. Because that's where you can sell your drugs. Like, why do you want to get the, you know, these various different streets? Maybe mm. then the the cheaper streets. Your um, your uh, Northumberland Road. What? Sure. What? Something? What? I kind of gr I grew up on the American one, so I don't the know. American one. What do you have in the American? Broadway. One? Yeah. Are they all just New York? Mm, no, Baltic Avenue. I I don't know actually. Yeah. Right. I think it's probably it probably is New York. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where where Baltic Avenue is. I don't know. They Coney don't have, Island. They have Coney Island. I don't think so. No. I mean, that's an island. It's not really mm. a street. Doesn't fit no. into the sort of. No. I mean, it's not really realistic. People don't buy whole streets, do they? Oh, some people might. 
I guess maybe if you kind of had enough money where you could uh, have a monopoly mm. on, on something the, on the streets. Yeah, but also yeah. on the, um, you know, like you know, just if I guess if you're rich enough, like if you're a monopoly guy, let's just even that outfit that he wears is pretty expensive. Mm. Mm. You know, top hat, mon- monocle. What is the monopoly guy's relationship to the game of monopoly? <laughs> Right, like, yeah. like, like. Do, I mean, it seems to me that he doesn't own any of those streets. Well, then they're all for sale. I mean, unless he's selling them all. Right, but then it seems he's to me that, out. that he he looks rich, mm. but I I would I suspect that he's an undisclosed bankrupt. Right, like the fact sure. that he has to sell all these streets. Mm. I mean, he dresses fancy. He yeah. wears that top hat. He's got that monocle, that mm. sign of wealth. Yeah. The monocle. You're gonna. F- <laughs> Maybe that was the that was actually a warning sign. This guy can't even afford whole glasses. Whole he has to glasses. buy them a lens at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I suspect that the uh, the monopoly guy himself isn't doing that great. No, I think you might be right. Um, Thank you. Let's see. What we God, I wish I could remember that idea from before. Um, Something about. But I think the relationship of the monopoly guy to the monopoly board. Mm. It's worth you know. It's at least the kind of conversation you would have in a film. Mm. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, like a Tar- it's not a sketch, but it's a Tarantino esque kind of bit of talking. Bit of talking. Yeah, I mean, there could be a sketch in it. It could, it could, you know, it could be something that incongruously plays out as something else much more interesting is happening. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, but like he, you know, he might be. Is he one of the players or is he a facilitator? You know, because the middleman often is the guy who really mm. makes all the money. Mm. You know, the person who's like, well, he could be the real estate agent. Mm. I think that the, mon- yeah, maybe the Monopoly guy is just sort of a, a figurehead, mm. right? Who, um, who you would, you would, you would get something on someone who looks so stereotypically wealthy and, um, and, uh, and, 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 uh, privileged. Yeah. And you, and you would, you would dress them up in those clothes and you would push them out in front of the Monopoly thing so that. You can, they can take the fall basically when it all goes wrong and people realize what's been going on. Mm. But but some other people are making all the these shadowy figures are making all the money behind the scenes. He's the he's the face of this shell company. Mm. Yeah, and I I think um, yeah probably he's been pretty uh, he's he's been set up, he's as much a victim in all of this as the rest of us. He's just a patsy. Maybe almost more so. Could be. Yeah. I mean. Arguably not, but yeah, I mean, at least he's getting paid, I presume. Let's hope. Yeah. He's just some I mean, that small suit, time actor. That suit could be a rental. He could just that be the guy. a rental. <laughs> the guy could have just invented the game, board game. Maybe. Yeah. Um, really, um, ironically, Monopoly has um, have spread themselves a little bit thin with all these different versions that they've done. Mm. The the monopoly the original monopoly has by no means a monopoly on monopoly, mm. um, although they're all still produced by the same person. It's an ob- observation I've made before. No, that's true, but also it definitely keeps people buying more versions of mm. the game. Mm. Like a pharmaceutical company releasing minor variations on a drug. Mm. You know, am, am I right, Bernie? They release these um, minor variations on the drug so they can keep it in patent, which keeps stops. Stops the you know the the, the people from um, from being able to afford the medications that they need stifles mm, um, like um, insulin yeah Are they doing that with insulin, insulin right now they're doing they're up to something with insulin yeah you know, the guy who invented insulin I think he just gave away the patent right but then somehow so other people sort of have have cornered it somehow I don't know I don't know enough about insulin mm. I imagine I would know more if it was you know more relevant the body produces it anyway yeah i mean really we should be able to um grab everybody right yeah. in a van them. shake them okay yep <laughs> extract the, the insulin from their body put all the insulin into a big tank yep right and then the government distributes the insulin um, so is that we, something we talked about on this podcast or was that last night shaving everybody's hair and weaving it together mm-hmm. into into cloth. No, that was last night. That was yeah. last night. Was last okay, I thought podcast. I was doing a callback, but it turns out this is just a a call to nowhere in particular. No, no, we did the... we did do that on the podcast. Yeah, but last night. Yeah, right? last night. Yeah, no. okay, so the sorry. people watching on the stream have no idea what I'm talking about. But that's the right. people listening may may. That's right. Unless this is the first episode they're listening to. Yes, unless they they listened to the other one but weren't really paying attention. That's true. Yeah. yeah. 
Boy, there's so many, so so many scenarios. So many scenarios. All of them. This could be the last podcast people are ever going to listen to. Well, I think if you hadn't ever listened to any podcast and then you listen to this one, you might well think I don't actually like podcasts. Turns out they're not not the thing for me. Yeah, there's a, there's a real risk of that. Um, I wonder what the short like is there is there a limit to how short a podcast can be? Right? Like, could you release a podcast that's just like two or three seconds or something like that? Like, like. Mm. Uh, does the, sort of does, like, if the files are that small, does yeah. the computer lose track of them? Do they just fall through the the, the mm. holes in the memory board? I mean, it would be kind of like you could if you downloaded a bunch and then you started playing them in your podcast app. Mm. They would just kind of go like, but it, think about it. It's like a Vine mm. but for podcasting. Yes. Okay. You yes. Know? It's this. It's it's a failed. It's a failed Silicon Valley project. Mm. Um, but these micro pods. Mm. And and it's people. They're, they're three seconds. Mm-hmm. And uh, initially, it was just being used by sort of motivational speakers who were just like, just get, to- get well now. Um, yeah. Um, push evil people out of your. Push evil people out of your. Like that. They kind mm. of they don't quite fit it in. Mm-hmm. Push evil people out of your. Life is and then yeah. that'll be the next. Yeah, step. yeah, like an yeah audio vine. Um, I mean, what would be great would mm. be um, each one we try and fit in a Harry's ad, you know. Um, yeah. Well, two Harry's ads because you've got to do the preamble and then you've got to do the main body of the ad during the thing. You try to do it in one. Ad. Yeah, yeah. So you do, you'd have to go, um, Harry's push evil people out of, buy Harry's out of your life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Um, yeah yeah, once you try and monetize it you get you mm, know it's a i think maybe it's like you know it's a guy who started this he started as a podcast thing Mm. people weren't really downloading the podcast Mm. they didn't see that much value in it but then it kind of turned into a thing that you can just put at little street corners and stuff like, you know, mm. attach them to, like, traffic lights. And Whoa, okay, stand. wait, wait, wait. So it's okay. a little... A little speaker. Yep. And it just yells at people. Mm. And it can detect people. And then it yells little ads mm. that they they only take two, three seconds as they walk by. I wonder why this doesn't happen. Why aren't there um sort of, you know, we have billboards. We have visual advertising. Mm. Is, is it illegal in some way to have audio advertising, to have a little... Um... <gasps> Uh, it's not pe- illegal. Uh, They're at the petrol stations. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So you, what you do, what you just have like a thing that detects that you're there yeah, and yeah, shouts an at you to buy something. Or yeah, whatever? yeah, yeah. Have you not had that? No, it's never. The worst thing. You've just invented something that I really hate. <laughs> Did you do it? That was you, Andy. Well, we yeah. we, we were we we're inventing a guy who invented these things. Internet celebrity Beck Petratus. Welcome. <laughs> have you waved at this? <laughs> <laughs> not, not as much as that. Just, uh, <laughs> not with the wide-eyed innocence that you bring to the podcast, Beck. I bought you biscuits too. <gasps> oh my god! They look like they've got like crumbled flowers yeah, over them. They're from mm. across the road. <sighs> I mean, the way people are bringing us stuff, it's almost like we've lost a loved one or something. <laughs> mm, uh, I'm sorry, it's the, not a tuna casserole. God, I would lose a whole family for this kind of. Cookie. This looks incredible. Mm, thank I you. Mean, I mean, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not, maybe I won't eat it right now. Um, but For the uh, sake of the podcast, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But yeah I, I bought there. a very loud thing. I should have bought soup. No, I mean, I mean, it's it's it's. That's it's, what we're telling everybody. Bring us, <laughs> bring us various mush. <laughs> Just stuff you can suck in. Mm. Some sort of air. Mm. Well, I, I mean, you know, what I really need is to be able to be, do circular breathing so that I can keep talking while I eat. Is that is that is that possible for people who have circular breathing? No, it would only be possible if you could talk <laughs> through your nose. Mm. I think you could or do eat that, though. through your nose and talk out your mouth. What about circular chewing so that you can keep chewing while, while you play chewing? the trombone? <laughs> play the trombone. What about? Mm. Can we add like a like a hat to the circle, like some sort of so rather than circular, it's like this? Because I think mm. you can speak with your eyes sometimes. That's true. So okay, maybe, don't do that no. like that. <laughs> yeah, some sort of uh, weird. Mm. I'm going to say like a two-sided shape breathing, two-sided shapeular breathing. Um, yeah, yeah, two th- two-sided shapeular. <laughs> <laughs> what is a two-sided shape? You're mad, boys. Tell me. It's um, early. Well, I, I, think, I, think, I think that would be a planar shape, something that's two-sided, right? 
like like you're talking about like a triangle, but it's like flat. It's like so you can look at both sides of the triangle. What I love about this conversation is it's like you're an actual teacher telling me something, and I, I just remember this happening before me going, yeah, <laughs> not. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That is what I meant. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Well, if, you, if you found logic, if that's what you thought. If you found logic, and then if if that's the correct answer for the purposes of this, if that means I pa- pass, pass rather than fail, then I want <laughs> I I thought the one that means that I passed the thing. <laughs> I was I was thinking the correct version of it. <laughs> I feel like I interrupted your your speaking. I can't voice. remember I'm what sorry. we were talking no, no, it's okay. about. Well, it's fine. We were talking about the. I've, I've decided to call them shouts. Yep. Mm. Right, they're they're a new advertising medium, mm. and they're little disposable speakers that you can sort of they're, they're almost disposable. They're just mm. it's such a, a compact type of speaker that you mm. can just stick them to poles everywhere, oh, and mm. it becomes like a decentralized uh, ad agency mm. that can just pop that there, and then uh, they can just send a single signal out, and it says it everywhere, and it and it ends up driving everybody. Yeah, crazy. I think what we've invented here is hell. Mm. Yeah, we've invented the man on the tram playing music out of his phone mm. but the man doesn't need to be there no more you've got yeah. no one to direct the hate to yeah just yep. just like a i guess it's a small dot that you can't remove either like mm. that feels important like and some it, sort of very sticky adhesive yeah and it allows people to advertise 24 yes. 7 in three second ads so that you can sell lots of them you know like that and you can go and and, and it's all just little things like go to my company festival show with them now imagine this <laughs> Imagine this. Can I go, Beck? Oh, I was or just going to suggest a name. Mm, yeah. Sprookbox. Sprookbox. Because yeah, that really feels good. like very, like I oh, could kickstart that. Yeah, I, you can totally kickstart Sprookbox. Spruik Box. Now, mm. this is this is what happens though, right? Mm. You know, like the deep fake technology. Once it gets out there, people start using it for the wrong things. Oh, no. You know? Like Not remember like... when they made it just so that you could create a legal porn of people who don't know about it? Mm. And then it mm. got misused by people who want to make satirical points about politics. Mm, right. Yeah. So this is you, people make the spruit box, right? And it's got this infinite battery in it, right? And you can make it say whatever you want. And then somebody invents a magnet that sticks to skin, okay? So it can mag- so then you can get one and like you can just stick it to somebody's neck and run away, right? And then it's just shouting these various messages out of their neck, mm-hmm. right? And then they can't get it off. Right, you have to right. go. Like, if you want to get it off, you've got to go get surgery or something like that. And, like, mm. get a huge skin graft, and then like people are trying to go. Like, and then there's this kind of like parasitic type um, advertising module, and people can use it mm-hmm. to like you know undermine what you're saying or whatever it is. And everywhere you go, you've got this thing, um, and people can yeah, you know, dispense audio through your neck. It's like you know when people get paid to put a car wrap on their car. Except it's your body, and mm. eventually you die. Wait, yes. What's a I car you, wrap? You know, like a, a a big advert that is made of sticker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mm, one of them. Like that. So one of the, so these things just block up all your pores. Yeah, and I reckon like you wouldn't have to have as many conversations with people anymore because they wouldn't. Well, they wouldn't want to talk to you because you're constantly shouting advertising mm. at them. Mm. But I mean, I guess if you were willingly putting it on your body, you could be selling ads while you walk around yeah mm. that's true that mm. will definitely happen yeah um i don't want to cut in on the great spruik box idea <laughs> but could you just hire someone to yell things at people mm. i've just realized that people can do that yeah oh but but then you're but paying uh you're paying a living wage to somebody or you know that's not, true. doesn't have to be living vo fees like for doing a voiceover mm-hmm, they're yeah. high that's true. That's no. true. But you could you could just do it yourself. But you just got to be a fast talker. Drink milk, <laughs> and it's got to be messages that can go that can go pretty fast. Mm. Like, it wasn't, you know, can you just do, that was amazing. I barely heard it. Drink milk. Amazing. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um. Buy sheets. <laughs> it's just feel like quite quite reasonable reminders. <laughs> yeah. Uh, long waits. Get phone. Oh, that's too long, isn't it? Long waits get fun. you know, like you know, like you got to get a new phone because sometimes you got to wait for a long time at places, <laughs> and, then, and it's good to have a phone to look at that to pass the time. Yes. Maybe get one. Long waits yeah. get phone. Um, this is from the phone marketing board, <laughs> pa- paid for and sponsored by the phone marketing board of Australia. 
we're getting the word out there about phones. Well, there's yeah. got to be some holdouts, some people who still don't have mobile phones. There's not very many. Not just mobile phones. Some people who just don't agree with phones in general mm. haven't even got onto the landline yet. So um, some holdouts. And how are you going to get to them? Speakers on their friends and family. Do you think that you could... Um, you could, you could get, and you could, you know, you know how there's sometimes like crazy religious people who just rant on street corners. Do you think, like, I mean, they obviously have a, they have a, an audience, they have a, you know, a, a position there, and people listen to what they have to say sometimes, if only to abuse them. But um, could, could, could companies like, you know, Koala mattresses or something like that, you know, sponsor those people and get them to just like at the end of each or in between religious. Um, diatribes, you um, yeah. you know, just mention your experiences with ko koala mattresses. And You're all going to die, but you could die more comfortable mm -hmm. if you were on a koala mm -hmm. mattress. Mm -hmm. I make my deathbed <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a koala I, mattress. I feel like also that would be kind of subliminal advertising because no one is really listening to them, but That's they kind true. of are because you can't stop your ears unless you do You this. can't stop your ears. You can't stop your ears. Okay, I try. So we talked about this day. earlier in the, in, the, in the podcast, Beck. That like you have lips for your eyes and for your and for your mouth, but you don't have lips for your ears. You can't shut them down or yes. your nose. Well, but you can see they're starting to curl over into lips, so that you can go. Eventually, you'll be able to just close your ears, or you'll be able to take a real hot selfie from the side where you're smiling. Because sometimes you take like a selfie <laughs> and it's not quite. You can't see. Mm. You know when you take a selfie where you can't see your face. <laughs> Every day. All you can see is your ear, and <laughs> it's all a gape. Mm. It's not. It's, it's, gape. it's completely expressionless. It looks gobsmacked, right? Mm. It, and this is like smizing, but with your ears. Smizing. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. I mean, this is the next frontier in modeling, you know? you got to be able to smile without smiling with your eyes because people are already, people are onto the whole smiling just with your eyes but not with mm -hmm. your mouth thing. Yep. Now the next frontier, not smiling with your eyes, not smiling with your mouth, mm. you're smiling with your ears. How about this? Sorry. I was just going to say it's great for advertising hats because I think the face is a distraction. Mm -hmm. From the hat. From the hat. Mm. Yeah, what about? the eyes. But instead. The ears. The ears. <laughs> real distracted by that ear smile. Well, how about this for perfume ads? Smostrels. <laughs> okay. Yes. Makes my nostrils smile. Yeah, <laughs> this is a this is this is a perfume ad, right? It's it's Nicole Kidman. She's walking down past an enormous chandelier in a long gold flowing mm -hmm. dress down a high staircase. In the front, uh, she a, makes a fountain to those beautiful objects. Sure, sure. The, the, in the front, a beautiful um, fountain squirts water through the air. Mm -hmm. She stops and takes the hand of. Um, a, 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 a tall, dark uh, man in a in a in a in a tuxedo, mm -hmm. right? And she turns to the camera and she says, "Chanel number five makes my nostrils smile." <laughs> right? And then the camera pans around, down, down under, and looks up her nostril, yeah. and we see each little nostril is a little smiling face with teeth. With teeth. <laughs> <laughs> that little ding. Oh. And then she feeds it a carrot, and then, eats, <laughs> and then she pushes the carrot stick up. Like she she, she pushes it. the carrot stick up, and she keeps talking, and she does it, and she says, "This is so circular eating, <laughs> right?" So, yeah, and, uh, she's, it, and it's everything. It's everything. Mm. And then it's and then it says Chanel number five. It's everything. It's everything. It's everything. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> does she then? And then she coughs, <coughs> and little bits of carrot come out of her mouth. <laughs> oh. This is I'm gonna buy this perfume. Yeah. Is that what I'm buying? And then yes. she gets a she gets yes. a ventriloquist puppet out <laughs> like that. And she then <laughs> continues talking whilst drinking a glass of water, but then whilst also giving feeding a cup of coffee to both nostrils. <laughs> Wait, she can't do both. She does all three, because then she's showing that all of her mouths are, are used up. How is she talking? Through the puppet. Yeah. How is well, she? Well, that's the, that's the trick. Oh, that's the trick. Oh. Right, of course. That's why it's a trick, because it seems impossible. How I would have she? assumed that she was talking through one of her nostrils. But as I can see, they're both drinking cups of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, little... That Nicole Kidman, she really did deserve that Oscar. <laughs> How 
how does she smell the perfume if every one of her orifices is full of liquid? Through her ears. Right, now we're <laughs> And now she we turns around somewhere. and she smears. Why <laughs> 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 um. can't you smell through your ears? Hmm. Mm. Let's see. I reckon there are probably some people who can. I reckon it's one of those things, you know, um, because because it's all connected. Everything's connected, man. But argument. especially all the head holes. Mm, a lot of the yeah, ear, nose, and throat. You could probably smell things with your throat. Mm, okay. <laughs> what would you smell with your throat, Alistair? Eh? What would you smell with your throat? Uh, pus that's back there. <laughs> okay. Sounds okay. like you're, you're a bit sick. Yeah. Oh well. Mm, good uh, thing you can smell with your throat. I can smile with my heart. <laughs> I can smell with my throat. Um, and so on. I know this is nothing. <laughs> I know this is nothing, but I just want to say it while we're while while, while we're still on the smears and smostrels. Um, smut hole. <laughs> That's when you smile with your butthole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or smanus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the yeah. smut hole is a good name for a butthole anyway. Yeah, smut hole. S- smut hole is a good name that. for anything. Let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. Smut hole should be sort of a bar in every city. Or- like McDonald's, and then there's smut hole, which is like adult McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when smut hole became one of those chains? Suddenly there was a smut hole everywhere. Do you know I what- remember when I saw the first smut hole, I said, there's no way this is going to catch on. And yet here we are inside a smut hole. And look across the street, another smut hole. They really made it work. Every quarter. I hope they're paying their workers properly. I think... The- <laughs> Great time for me to take a big glass of water. I think they're... <laughs> Turns out smut hole have not been paying their workers correctly. The smut hole underpayment scandal. <laughs> they're dirty in many ways. Mm. That would be dirty deeds mm. and it'd be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. smut hole. With their, I imagine, penis-shaped ch- chips, which is something I don't know why that doesn't exist already. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess Put some it, balls it, on that. You got a penis. There's that healthy version of uh, like a fast play, fast food place that you find at those petrol stations that have like a KFC and a McDonald's or whatever. Mm. But then they oh, also have that. There's that a name one, of it. It's awful. Yeah, and it's like Arnold's or something like that. Oh, you know? And they know. and they have um they've just kind of like either deep fried or steamed some green beans and they put those in like a container like they put fries. Do you know what I ordered the other day off the Uber Eats app because I just saw it and I went that I will get that. Evan got a Sunday and then I ordered the from McDonald's the cherry tomatoes <laughs> because I went oh there's a button Bang. up here for cherry tomatoes and I pressed the button and then a man arrived at my house and he went here's this. It was just a container filled with cherry tomatoes someone had clearly picked out of the salad because no, no one's ever pressed that button. <laughs> Beck, I feel like this is the government spending time literally trying to work out the only way to get you to eat vegetables. Yeah. Right? You know what, what I think will get to her? If we put a button on a McDonald's Uber Eats app, I reckon she'll be intrigued enough to press it. <laughs> she'll, she'll eat cherry tomatoes as a joke <laughs> from McDonald's. I only eat... Healthy things, ironically. Mm. That's a good. Do you know what? Why didn't my mum try that? She was just like, "Boo, aeroplane!" Why didn't mm. she make it like a satirical point? Oh, look at this dumb food. <laughs> <laughs> well, this sucks, obviously. <laughs> yeah, that's a good look. Mm-hmm. I think that would work. Mm-hmm. Mm. Have you? Do you have struggle with vegetable eating with the with the children? Um, How do you get children to eat vegetables? Look, um, to be honest, we str- like it's. It feels like at the moment the things that they will not eat are are so unpredictable and so random, mm-hmm. right? That that that, that that it's not it's not even settled down on just the the ve- the, the vegetables, right? Mm. That the, the, their random refusal ray is spinning wildly, <laughs> and they they'll just as happily refuse like the porridge that they loved yesterday or the chips or whatever it is, the sweet potato that they seem to always like, and then suddenly they, I don't like sweet potato. No. (laughs) I like no Mm. sweet potato. Like they're trying to convince you too. Like it's like they're, Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe if you play into their game, Mm. somehow go, I don't like it either. It sucks. Yeah, uh, look, definitely don't think I haven't tried (laughs) every variation of reverse psychology, forward psychology, side psychology, psychology. Psychology? (laughs) 
Mm-hmm. Oh no! I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm um, sorry, I said it. Oh, someone... Reverse cowgirl psychology. <laughs> That's what you get. Yeah. Reverse That's cowgology. <laughs> <laughs> what is reverse cowgirl psychology? <laughs> what is that? What would that be? <laughs> um, like in terms of trying to convince your kids to eat their vegetables? No, no, not in that. And let's remove it from that context, okay. please, and put it in a totally fresh context where there are only adults around. Now, okay, okay, let's say that get your elderly parents to eat their vegetables okay great okay. now <laughs> now what do you well really it, actually for from for my family it's more like getting my elderly uh, parents to eat vegan food right okay, great. It's very much the opposite okay. so how do you... i convince dad that um one of the things that he randomly doesn't agree with uh, vegan sausages aren't disgusting say i mean how can i convince him just show him these <laughs> They, they sell themselves. Exactly. If you put milk on them, is that cereal? <laughs> I, yes, Beck. I think I so. I like them. I mm. just I just mean I feel like it's mostly cereal. Yeah, you're right. Like I guess yeah, because it's just grain and sort yeah. of uh, and, and vegetables and stuff like cereal. Yeah. God, that's really interesting. Just a so they would just be floating in a in soy milk. Yeah, it's sort, right. sort of like a a. a Wrong breakfast soup. Mm. I guess especially if you cut them up into those little nubs, like you would kind of yeah, yeah, you know, like, like a casserole. Yeah, <laughs> like a salt, like, <laughs> like a, a hot s- dog casserole. <laughs> <laughs> but for breakfast, oh, mm. hot dog casserole is my favorite jazz pianist. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, wait, a really great name. Reverse, <laughs> reverse cowgirl psychology. Yes, is so, it? I think it's just regular co- psychology, but you're facing the other way. See, I thought it was doing cowgirl. But mm. you have to do it not reverse because the reverse part is with the psychology part of that. Oh, my God. Okay. So reverse cowgirl you rever- psychology. So you're, it's regular you're, cow. You're having sex. It's regular, cow, regular cow, cowgirl. Girl. And then as you're doing it, you're saying, I don't <laughs> think I, you're attractive. And- <laughs> or, or, or I'm facing the other way. <laughs> I mean, look, this is not a sketch. <laughs> but... no, no, yeah, I think reverse cowgirl psychology is totally valid. It's, um, it's a funny tweet. I'm but I don't facing know if the other there. way. <laughs> you can't see my my face. Look at the back of my head. There it is. <laughs> Do you know what, though, Here it is. You were talking about short podcasts earlier. Because, mm. like, TikTok exists again. Mm. Like, well, well, Vine exists again through TikTok and people mm. are making sketches. So really a sketch could be, you know, 12 seconds now. Yeah. And that's definitely at least 12 seconds. Exactly. you, you got to do... set up the bed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. aspect. Oh, right. You don't actually have to set it up. You're not doing different... it on like a sofa couch or something. Yeah. Oh, maybe you could do a it on a sofa couch. But I think, I don't know, reverse cowgirl psychology. I still think you could maybe get people to eat vegan food because you, you get up mm. on the table, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> and and you and you say I'm facing the other way. And then 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 you pick up the food and you sort of present it maybe between your legs or from behind. You're letting them enjoy it from behind you. <laughs> Wait, is this still for my dad? <laughs> Whoever refuses to eat. Some of the food that you guys have prepared. <laughs> and you, what if it was the only solution that everyone knew worked to and you had to, oh. Well, okay, right. look, so how about, it's like this. So you, wait, I don't know why it's psychology. So wait, what did you just say? I just thought it was regular cowgirl. Reverse psychology still goes together. Yeah. Mm, I think, and yeah. then, but maybe it doesn't because it need to be reverse psychology cowgirl. Yeah, I'm probably trying Which is, too hard to get anything else I, after we... But I wonder if there is a reverse psychology element of like, just to take it back to the simple idea of trying to give your kids food. Yes. Right? You know, the reverse, traditional reverse psychology would be to, um, to give it to them and say, I don't, I don't like this. I think, I think, I don't think you can eat this. Yes. You know? But um, <laughs> what about to give them the food and just say, I'm not giving this to you right now. <laughs> the food 
isn't on this fork. Mm. Would that is is like that? There is no is spoon just, matrix yeah. sort of shit. Or is that yeah. just gaslighting? I mean, that's just sort of that's like deep reverse psychology. Mm. I think if you said you can't eat this, and I'm not a female c- person who rides horses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you're putting some stuff on yourself, mm, and yeah. then they're... and you're bringing back in the cowgirl element. Yeah, and yes. now they're too confused to be stubborn. Mm. Mm. Um, when I get confused, I get hungry too. Mm. So this for is vegetables. Good... Yes, um, that's why I got those cherry yeah. tomatoes. <laughs> oh, that's a, out of place. <laughs> I'm buying them and eating them. I think when you go to the um the evil genie and you wish for reverse cowgirl, um. Uh, the evil genie makes you a cow with the head of a cow and the legs of a uh, uh, woman. Is that, yeah. is that something? Because uh, a cowgirl is a girl with the body of a cow. Correct. Thank and you. the head of a woman. Yes, yes. Cow- this checks out, and that's what you were wishing for. <laughs> hmm? Uh, hmm? No? You go to the genie, and I'm just... Oh. You get oh. so much milk mm. that you needed earlier for your cereal you were talking about. Yeah. What about this? All right. Uh, it's a it's a centaur, half man, half uh, horse, but all the all the the half that's horse is the in, all the internal structure, all the bones and the and the <laughs> and the organs and stuff are all horse, right? But then the half that's man is all the skin yeah. and yep. face that has been stretched <laughs> over <laughs> the horse framework. Mm, right? So yeah. it's the inside half is all horse. And then, you know, I, I guess. I mean, technically the outside would slowly become horse because if you, your inside structure is horse, mm. then it would look quite horsey. I think I think you would look quite horsey, but it, but it is mm. still technically half man. It's just been spread over the outside of the horse and, like, you know, obviously the horse's skull bone shape is stretching the head skin of the man. Would you run out of skin at some point and just have bits <clears throat> of horse bone on the outside? Um, I suppose at some I, point I, some, of the, some of the bones would tear through. Yeah. Tear through. I think the hooves would certainly rip through the toe, mm. the flappy little toe skin that you mm. have down there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it would be a good life, but... I reckon you'd get a book out of it, you know? Yeah, if you could you get a suffer through deal. the pain and get a keyboard big enough to <laughs> sort of hook away at it. If you mm-hmm. could also win the Melbourne Cup, that would that would be the ultimate end to your book. You know what? You're absolutely right. Oh, if a, yeah. if a yeah. terrifying horseman. And they say, oh, they, they try and disqualify you. They're in, in the, in the Disqualif- feel-good movie. In, in the feel-good movie. Disqualify you. <laughs> shush. Hey, shush you both. In the in the in the feel good movie about your life, based on the book that you write, that's very successful with your stompy feet on your big keyboard, right? There's a scene where they say they try and disqualify disqualify you from the um from the Melbourne Cup. They say no, the, the it says here in the Melbourne Cup rules that the you, you, you the en- entries are limited to a man on a horse, and you say aha, but I am a man on a horse. Right. Great. I'm a man on the outside Ooh. of a horse. And then you put your name into the Melbourne Cup and it goes. Yes. <laughs> Wait, and oh, it's like the Goblet, it's of, the goblet fire. of Fire. <laughs> All the horses have to put their names in or they can't be here. That's why it's a cup. I assume. That's yeah. the way it works, isn't it? That's a cup because you put fire you put in there. You put fire in there. And then, and then Dumbledore comes in and he goes, horse boy, why'd you put your name in there? <laughs> Melbourne Cup. Horse boy. <laughs> <laughs> With his distinctive delivery of <laughs> dead off, dead off, double door, oh, horse boy, what you put the cup on the box? Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, his wow. wings don't quite fill the skin. Oh mm. my god! That's why when he flaps like this, it's just the, the hands just kind of flap. Do you know what? Mm. Turkeys have too much skin too. That's why they got the gobbly boy. Mm. Well, that's what that's the only thing that's kind of keeping him together a little bit. Mm. Oh really? Mm. Yeah, like because he's stuffed up with skin. <laughs> mm. Yeah, surprisingly, he's stuffed with turkey. <laughs> and the and the movie is called <laughs> Harry Trotter and the Gobbling of. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a double to dump. 
Turkey. <laughs> the goblin. The goblin um, of... Fly, fly up, fly up, because he flies, because he's a turkey. Yeah. He'll still be fine. You know how turkeys fly anyway? <laughs> turkeys do fly, don't do they? Do they? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I don't think so. I think they're a flightless bird. Someone Google it and tell me on the live chat that I keep looking at. Are you looking at the live chat? Beck, see, this is a thing. I feel this is a thing that a generation below us can do that we can't do. You're a different generation, Beck. I don't know if you know that. And we're <laughs> old mean, enough we're to be your years years apart. Yeah, yeah. I know. But I, I, think, I think Beck being tech, tech Beck, right, she can read a live stream and, like, you can consume content and create content at the same time. It's like somebody who can read music and play at the same time. But I don't think I can do both those things. But I think it's like that master of none sort of thing where you can do both, but both bad. Like, I can mm. barely read and barely speak, but mm. I can do them. Sure, but so I guess I don't because everybody's consuming and creating content at all times they're also not able to judge adequately like that's their true. ability to judge the quality of the content they're taking in is as diminished as their ability to create qual quality content going out yeah and so everybody's happy at all times is that an accurate reflection of people yeah, on the internet every day i wake up and i look at twitter and i smile with my ears <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm. um someone asked what type of blender you had earlier and i don't i think maybe they meant the coffee pot maybe oh this thing it. that's just a coffee pot yeah. Wow, that's that's what people are asking about. Someone, well, God, they're desperate for entertainment. Uh, and then someone else asked if you wanted Red Bull. Uh, that oh. wasn't in the chat, but they asked if you wanted some and that they would drop it over. Was it you, Beck? Because you have a Red Bull. No, I just always have Red Bull. Oh, okay. But I, actually, this is my last one. I really should have brought one for you guys. No, it's no, okay. I think... I think it's genuinely a good idea that we don't. And actually, already this this biscuit is probably a mistake because I think that the sugar is going to rush to my brain and... Um, but Kill me. It was incredible in the way that there's like a sticky Turkish delight stuck in oh, there. Oh man, it's that... one of the most delicious it, things I've ever eaten. Yeah, there's, oh, some... it's, oh, there's quite a bit going on, but it's definitely got that. Is it rose rose water kind yeah, of rose... flavor of the amazing? Yeah, but also that it's um, it kind of also just tastes like a homemade cooking mm. whilst also being very fancy. What's what's mm. happening? Oh, someone just said, "Tell them to slow down." Brian said, "Tell them to slow down." <laughs> oh, <laughs> Brian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. because you've got too many sketches. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well you um, could do one an hour and really make it a great one. Yeah. Well, I don't think that that would improve the quality of any of, I think, any of this. I think, but, if but it we, would improve if, the length. If we get if we get this okay. done, I mean, imagine if we got this done quicker than we got the 100 episode one. It's look at the moment. It feels like it's possible, but I, Alistair, I'm not allowed to get my hopes yeah, up because I've got to be prepared for this to kill me. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be, we're gonna crumble. Don't worry, we'll it's crumble. Okay. We'll crumble. And, and like if not, cookie. we can we can start just compressing the later guests in, uh, you know, a little bit tighter. Get them in a bit. Get them in earlier. Sound the. I'm sure. Alarm. I'm sure we we're capable of organizing lots of stuff. I mean, oh, look at this. We're having a five minute break to just talk about what we're gonna do <laughs> later on. <laughs> you know, we're clearly starting to relax. We're, yeah, we're absolutely tortoise and herring this shit. Right. We are gonna fall asleep by the side of the path and um, get run over, I guess, by a, a, a sort of a, a council lawnmower. Is that exactly. what happens to the hair? I think Can't so. Remember. Aesop yeah. wrote about the council lawnmower mm. of truth. Mm. <laughs> that was his fable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? I went driving the other day and every, like, as we kept driving, all along the road in the gutter were just rosellas eating stuff and they were just there. And I in the saying, road? No, on the, like, oh. on the side of the road. But I was like, Evan, just pull over and get us a rosella off the ground <laughs> and then we'll have a rosella. We'll have a rosella. I know we don't need one now, no. but it's one of those things. Mm. It's going to come in handy. We might need it as a prop at some point. What are the rosellas eating out of the gutter? I'm... Um, Vomit? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Discarded yeah. bits of McDonald's Vomit? burger? Mm. There, are no, there are no brightly coloured scavengers, are there? Like all the scavenger birds mm. are, um, are quite dull coloured, you know? I would, love, I would love if we had urban rosellas sort of, you know, squabbling over chips and that sort of thing. Mm. Like I'd be so, I'd be like a pest parrot. I'd, be, I'd, I'd, get, I'd give my entire house to a pest parrot. It's It'd be adorable. a pest paradise, mm. you know, macaws, mm. you know, clawing at you for the for your meat pie. <laughs> that enormous beak mm. taking off your finger. Do you know what I would swap pest parrots for? Ants. You know when ants just appear? You don't get mm. a choice. You don't get an alarm. 
Mm. You just wake up and you're like, I'll have ants now again. Mm. But what if wake up? You come into the kitchen, there's a trail of macaws. Yes! And going they're all... into the... <laughs> trying to get the, the, the little dried bits of jam from around the edge of the jar. Oh, or the table. Off the table, they're, yeah, eating, they're, the, just... they're eating the, 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 the dried wheat bix that yeah. are just on stuck to And they tape. take them one by one. They get they take a bit of wheat bix and then they... They got that little dry tongue. They got... Uh, <laughs> Such a dry tongue. But yeah. birds, birds, I guess, don't just don't have saliva. Oh, birds just, yeah, birds and the birds so the dry, dry tongue. Dry. Right. But they're dry all over. This is a thing that we don't acknowledge that a, birds are so dry. Bye. Cook them juicy. Wow, that's a, is that a paradox or is that a paradox? <laughs> We are all of us in the gutter, but some of us are Rosellas. Eating vomit. Eating vomit. That's beautiful. I've written down here other penis foods. And I do, I think this is interesting. This is from sm Smut Hole. <laughs> smut Hole. Yeah, because. Oh, someone because said something about Smut Hole in the stream. We don't, uh, beg, we're not, we're not. I'm sorry. We don't, don't engage with okay, the stream. I'm so sorry. Okay. And then we can't. <laughs> uh, Andy's worried that we're not going to get enough sketches up um, if we engage with the stream. I just, I Brian, just. Brian was telling us that we should tell people on the stream that we, we, we can't accept donations, but that feels like a, a sick thing to ask for. Yeah. But. If I say it as if Brian did it, then it yeah. feels more acceptable. <laughs> See, it's Brian's fault. Brian's <laughs> begging you to give us money. Yeah. <laughs> Brian <laughs> wants you to save Andy from his financial problems. <laughs> the other thing you could do is you could say on the stream that you think that you should get donations. So you can donate yourself as a, another Brian so that you can then again say that you should have donations. Beck, I've never been more confused. <laughs> I'm a bit confused too. It's okay. Um, so I do donate myself you to donate Brian. Yourself you do not as a Brian. <laughs> you donate yourself as a Brian to say, I also think they should get donations. And then you don't have to say, we should get donations. You say, that person said, we should. why are you still letting me go? <laughs> Stop me. Are you saying like you invent like a mark and you say, oh, yes. I, I'm Mark. <laughs> mm. uh, yes. I am Mark. And I also think that. Mm. Okay. Yeah, well, one day I guess I'll work out what we're talking about. Um, no, but my other penis foods. Oh, penis See, foods, this sorry. is the thing, mm. right? Are there only sweet penis foods? You think about all the, the all the, the lollipops, Carrot? right? There's, yeah, I think they're cakes and that sort of thing, right? That, you know, for like <laughs> food, bachelorette, bachelorette parties. parties oh! Things that are made into the shape of a penis. It's like lollipop. Are there, ex <laughs> are they exclusively, <laughs> are they exclusively um, sweet? penis shaped things and like mm. where is the savory penis fair yeah. you know mm. the, the because because you know on a on a on a big hen's night out mm. or something you you need sustenance to keep you going throughout the night so i yeah. think that there should be a kind of like a a, a, a peanut you know your penis chips that you were talking about beck why aren't right? there penis i'm very bothered by this now yeah, yeah. Well, it's I so think, easy. I think. Well, I, is it though I, I think i think the challenge is probably in the cutting them into the correct shape if you like one of those big like a stamping kind of thing, and it could be meat. Well, maybe they could be uh, like a Sorry. like a, a you know like a meat stick that you put. I mean, it's like a stick, and only in that like it's kind of like mm. a you know that's it looks like a stick because it's a penis. Mm. Um, and then you can dip it in some sort of white sauce. Yeah, like a garlic aioli. Yeah, I, well, I mean, like or a chili it, mayo. Is it getting too graphic? Yeah, too much. Is it because? Oh no! I shouldn't say this. Yes, Beck, tell me. Is it because pe <sighs> is it penises. because penises are savory? That's no, Beck. That's an okay <laughs> thing to say, and right? that's, that's why. Fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. This is a safe space. To this is a safe this space. This is the safest. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I think you're right. It may be an uncanny valley thing yes. where we're we're too close to reality for it mm. to be enjoyable, right? Mm -hmm. But. I think that's a sort of a discomfort that maybe some pe types of people can enjoy that space, you know, mm. to, fi to mm. find, you know, there's an edge there. There's something to, 
to hold on like to. Like a Sado Maca. Maca. Sado Macas. Sado Macas. Yes. <laughs> That's <Sado> right. <laughs> That's a better name for smut hole. <laughs> Sado Macas. <laughs> I, think, I think McDonald's would actually sue for that. Even though, <laughs> yeah, I think they even though they were like, oh, we don't want to be associated with this place. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I wonder what a soda. Is. Well, they'd sell an unhappy meal. That's for sure. Oh, oh, Sado oh, Macas, yes, wouldn't beautiful. they? Right? And um, uh, oh, is, 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 was the unhappy meal line en enough to get Sado Maccas down as a sketch idea? Well, I mean, at the time it was just it was a name, and then and then once there's some content, it feels like it's a sketch you idea. You can go and get a Sado Mac Maccas fish stick. Be so, uh, <laughs> oh my god, fish stick. Fish yeah, because it, it sounds like Sado Mazakistic. Oh, Sado Maccas fish stick, right? Instead of the filet of fish. Of course, yeah, and you have those fish sticks instead of nuggets. Big, mm. big smack. You just get smacked in the face. But someone gets a burger, mm. they hold it like that, and then they mm. push it's it It's a knuckle fist sandwich. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Smell the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that what that is? Mm. Why are you always smelling cheese? No, you don't yeah, have why to. would you smell the cheese? Why would who 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 like what's what's the what's the scenario there? <laughs> Like, why would you be expected to smell the, the fist that is pretending to be cheese? Yeah. No, I mean, it doesn't seem like there's a lot. I guess you could, um, maybe you're a detective <laughs> and Good. and somebody who's been beaten up mm. uh, has like a, a smell residue on their face and it smells like cheese or something. Mm. And then, then you're going around and you... You ask people to put their hand like this, mm. and then so that you can smell their fists. Yeah, I guess you would be looking for blood and things well, like see, that as well. But I reckon the the person who murdered that person mm. would have been like a waiter who offers parmesan because mm. they sort yeah. of do it and then they forget mm. that they're not working and they just sprinkle some parmesan on and they go say when. And the that's when they beat dead. you up. Uh, no, I think they beat you up. They pummel you to death, mm. and then they say, "Say when," and then they put parmesan, on, parmesan you. on you, and maybe a bit of cracked pepper. Mm. Oh no, they'd say cracked pepper, and then the person wouldn't answer, so mm. they wouldn't get any cracked pepper. Mm, yeah. on them. So, so this know. is this is a sort of a, a, a villain or a, mm. you know super Batman style villain called the waiter, mm. right? And they they Ooh. murder people, and then their calling card is that they crack pepper. Onto their dead. Well, I think, I think their they, we got to go back to grading parmas and yeah, grading parmas because that. that's why you smell the cheese. <laughs> sure, yeah, of course. <laughs> See, what a middle class person. I was like, this, that's mm. not right. No, Beck, that's not right. That's, well, that's a craft. That's the, I the, was the green a, craft um, yeah. smelly foot cheese. My, my, parmesan my brother calls it cheese salt, which I think is a better oh. name for it. Yeah, it's probably closer to the truth. Mm. Yeah. I just. The, want, and I, when I say the truth, I mean the truth, the only oh, like, truth, the real truth. The reason we're around. Yeah. I think, so. salt. I think it could be mm. could what be. you go and spend like 20 years in India meditating mm. and things like that for is like in the end, mm. that's the truth you're, you're, you come salt. to. Yeah. Your mm. guru after 25 years of you holding your hand up like this mm. or whatever, he goes, <laughs> are you ready for the truth? And his hands all shriveled up and black. And things oh, like is that. that what they do? Uh, there are some people. Some of, and then and literally their hand does get shriveled up and disgusting. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it because they're asking God a question and he just hasn't answered yet? Oh, no. Yeah, That's... trying to get God's attention. Yeah, oh. but it, it, there's, yeah. there's yeah. multiple yeah. gods, you know. And so I don't know what that means. No, but... it doesn't help, does it? They're no. all ignoring you. Yeah, mm. but then you find out that it's actually having the question that's the answer. Maybe that's oh. what he discovers. Yeah, right. It'd be nice to have the question, which is also an answer and a working hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... But maybe that's the, maybe the answer is you don't need that hand. Mm. Mm. I mean, at some point, I guess you kind of. I thought that the answer must... was the question. <laughs> Oh. Do I need this hand? <laughs> <laughs> um, with the with the penis foods, it was just mm, occurring yes. to me that um, rather than also just savory, is that I would just like to see a healthy food, you know, like a penis salad. Mm. You know? Yes. You know, something so that you and the gals or the guys can Do go Do you up. like penis salad? <laughs> Saladas? <laughs> penises? Penis saladas. Yes. Saladas? Do you like penis saladas? <laughs> the, um, the, the crackers? The, the original soggy sayo. It's for the <laughs> for 
for the for the oh, draw, you know, for like for like people who want to go on a bachelorette party or mm. a bachelor party and have just a nice healthy mm. meal but still be in the sort of spirit of the mm. wackiness of the whole thing. Mm. So you're still you're, letting, right. you're still letting your hair down mm. cuz you got cherry it's tomatoes cuz it's your, your you best got... girls, mm. you know, girlfriend's um, yeah, big maybe, night. Maybe it's like maybe there's some some turkey oh, the cher cherry tomatoes the are cherry the balls tomatoes, and then the, yeah. the, the, the you know the sort of the coral lettuce can be the pews. Mm. Do you know what we could we could simplify this whole thing mm. by just if you have a bowl shaped like a penis then anything could be part of this. Like you You're could right. put, a, put it's some true. quinoa in it there. Could be a bowl of soup. Could mm. be a bowl of soup. We're back to soup, and I'm yeah. happy we're back. Yeah, well, I missed it. I mean, it could be a it could, it could be a special bowl where like the balls are two different bowls, so they, those are filled with um, say a a kind of a, a cream of mushroom soup, and yet right? carrots and so all that, in the yeah, shaft. Yeah, something like that, and you dip those in, or doop, who knows? Um, uh, yeah. Uh, you, I mean, w w w another option would be to sort of make a kind of like something that's almost like a, a waffle iron or a toasted sandwich maker, which has the shape of a penis. And then you can really you can cook anything you want into mm. that shape. I mean, sure, th this this is something that surely exists that would be on wish.com or something like that. It would be a you know, sandwich press for that. But anything exists on wish.com. It's wish.com. Yeah. Anything you wish for. Beck, you know the internet. What is wish.com? Why, why is it like it is? I, I just think I actually do think it's run by genies. I think it that's seems, why I call wish.com. Yeah. And they they go, What is in your search history? And then they give it to you, but weirder. Mm. So it actually just is based off of your 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 design. I, mean, I feel like the ads are they've gotta be. But also I reckon they're very much leaning into the fact people will talk about the ad underneath it. So therefore more people will see it because that's how algorithms work. Because mm. if you get someone talking about the, you know, Penis shaped toasty iron, mm. then it'll you you'll get it. And to then more you people. get money somehow. You well, get people talking about your weird product that no one would ever want to buy, and then somehow someone will buy it mm. just to go. Oh, I bought this thing. Mm. Yeah, think, yeah, that's one of those things where it's like, oh, this is a bad place for the for the yeah capitalism to be at. Isn't I it? think it also the pe the penis shaped food people probably would be trying to find other markets to break into other than bachelorette parties. Like, you know, they should they should be able to get into the bris, the bris market. Oh, I thought you were just going to say vaginas. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wouldn't oh, that I mean, be the obvious? Get, no, I mean, obviously they can get, no, it just, yeah. I mean, what, what's other places that they could sell their foods at? Mm. Oh, U yeah, Urologist course. conferences, mm. uh, you know, circumcisions. Well, I mean, I think in an ideal, a fully enlightened world, you'd be able to get penis-shaped foods at, Something that uh, in any event that doesn't oh, have right. anything to do Thank with the you. with the penis, yeah, in any way. And and I mean, while we're at it, maybe there should be more vagina-shaped foods. Mm. You know. Thank you. Think oh of, thinking about it, you know. Um, yeah. Does the vagina have a shape? Yeah. Wow, and okay. how dare you? Okay. <laughs> but also, yeah, <laughs> that's very revealing. That's yeah. almost like you. Anyway, know. cool. <laughs> I think it could be mostly like jacket potatoes <laughs> and things like that. Okay. I reckon yeah. it could be like. Like a sort of a half a kiwi, like half things, like a half mm, thing. Mm, sure. And you got the shape, mm. but yeah, half thing. Because there are things that are kind of embedded into something else. Yeah. Mm. You know, so you can have like a base, like a muffin. Mm. Yes. Like that, and then the top inverted is where, muffin. Yeah. Mm. Inverted muffin vagina. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's why it's called a muff. That's why it's called a. Oh, I mean, that's that's selling itself, isn't it? It really is. Yes, this muff is selling itself. And uh, widening markets. <laughs> Widening markets uh, and <laughs> selling. Um, yeah, stuff. you know, in an mm. in an ideal scenario, you could go to a conference mm. about you know um, opportunities for selling more um, shares, shares to um, to other conferences. Yes, right. And the food that would be laid on would be various penis and vagina shaped. Um, sort of savory treats. Because at the moment it sounds like what you've created is like a sitcom situation where they've accidentally mixed up the orders no. and you've got a bunch of no. boob, yes. mm. boob, baps, boob rolls, bap rolls, mm. bap rolls, mm -hmm. bap rolls that are actually baps. Baps and baps. Bap, bap, bap. And bap, bap, while we're bap. at it, why, why not? Uh, baps are breasts, right? Mm. Yeah. So then why not male nipple foods? 
Mm. Nipple chips. I mean, I'm always trying to sell this idea of nipple chips. Every day you, you come to me, you say nipple because chips. Because that's a, that's a line from um, Monty Python, The Life of Brian. Do they say that? Wolf nipple chips. Oh. They're selling that at the... Um, Maybe that's where I get it from. Or the, do they just say wolf nipples or is it wolf nipple wolf chips? Wolf nipple chips. Oh, okay. Pretty sure. Is that right sure. on a stick? He's selling mm. rats on sticks, isn't he? I don't know. Rat on a stick? Rat on a stick. But like a rat on a stick <laughs> on a <thumb. laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you could Macaroon. at the moment it sounds like a sitcom situation where you've accidentally mixed up with the sex conference next door. Mm. But in an ideal world, it wouldn't, we wouldn't, wouldn't laugh. Be. In an, no yes. one would laugh. Indeed. In an ideal world, There'd it, be it, no wouldn't, it wouldn't take a sitcom mm. um implausible series of events for this to occur. No. It would take a very plausible series of choices by people, you know, who aren't aren't mm -hmm. constrained. By mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, shame yep. and fear mm -hmm. and, um, you know, other things. And then people shouldn't have to wear clothes at these mm. conferences either. Correct. Or anywhere. Or anywhere, yeah. exactly. Not just conferences. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, that's right. What we have what we also create, along with the foods, is a paint. Uh, yes. Like a, a, like a, like a, a clear paint. It's, mm. like a, it's like a nail polish, clear nail, nail polish or mm. veneer or whatever mm. that you paint on your body that keeps you warm. Yep. Mm. Like that. Doesn't let any heat escape. Mm. Like that. Yeah. Like a glad wrap. Like a glad <laughs> wrap. Like that. And that way you can eat your nude foods. And that's what we're gonna call them. Mm. And you can be nude, essentially, as mm. nude as the mm. body can be. And 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 all the buildings are shaped like big penises and vaginas and all the chairs mm. and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Because we're not we're not hung up on sex like people yeah. are yes. now. Obsessed yes. Yes. with yeah. genitals and that sort exactly. of thing. Exactly. Oh, yo, we can't see this. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is wrong. No. Mm. No, we're we're happy, we're free, we're in big penis sort mm. of houses showing our penises and eating penis yeah, foods. that's right. And like you can tell, if you look at older time buildings and things like that, there was a lot more huts and mm. with the with the dome on the top that mm. looked like penises and more. Mm. Um, or boobs. Mm. Yeah, or, or boobs or caverns where mm. you would sort of build up the flaps on the outside like yeah, that and then the squeeze flaps. into the hole yeah. like that. All the and time. That, and, th and that used to be, but we've lost our way. Mm. Yes. Somewhere along the way we got lost. And we started making everything into Rec rectangles. rectangles. And things like that, which... I'll tell you what the problem was. It was the invention of lines. Oh, that's oh. True. yeah, that was the line. That yeah, the we line. really we, we, we invented went, a line and we, we crossed it. Crossed it and it was a mistake. Yeah, we should never have. Yeah, I think I think this is great mm. because of um, it is you know what everything we just said. Yeah. I, I think I think uh, if uh, I think it would be interesting to, um, if anyone wants to do a statistical analysis of this podcast, and God knows there's nothing funnier than a statistical <laughs> analysis. God, I hope so. Um, uh, then they should. I reckon. I reckon probably every sort of thirty to forty minutes we come back to some full-on genital chat. I think there's a cycle. You could mm. graph it and see the intensity of the genital would it imagery. Would go like that? And it would, would it look go, like a penis. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. would look like one of them. The dips. Vaginas. There, see? To both. Mm. Every Inter graph. Every mm. graph is porn. Have we discussed this? Um, Sign well, graphs, horny ads. Mm. Well, people say, you know, I saw it. It was a bit graphic. You know what else <gasps> is graphic? Graphs. Graphic. Um. Yeah. 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 Graphing, Graphing calculators were the original uh, Playboys. Playboys. Mm. Really? Mm. Yeah. Putting all that stuff you out there. Look at know? it. Yep. Lines. Curves, I did used to have a drug functions. game on my. You had a drug Graphing game on your calculator. graphing calculator. Yeah. A drug game. A drug game. What kind of drug game? A drug game. <laughs> Sorry, it just sounds so dumb. It's the. It was like a game where you, I think it was like Lemonade Stand, but with mm. drugs. I don't know what Lemonade Stand is. Lemonade is that a game? Yeah, Lemonade Stand's like where you, you go like, okay, I've got to buy, buy lemons, got to buy sugar, got to buy cups. Mm. And then you, uh, it, it makes a simulation of the day. Right. And you sell as many cups of lemonade as whatever. But I think this was, you have cocaine, you have heroin, you got to go sell it. Mm. And and you you have to buy the inventory and then also and then and yeah. then the, the prices kind of vary. Yeah, they like they that. fluctuate. I think I played one of these drug games once. It's how I learned about the economy on a graphic calculator <laughs> um, from a drug game from a about weed. I wonder who built the drug game. <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> you know, I think historians think it might be aliens. If UFOs <laughs> came here and uh, they ooh, used slaves. Yes, it was yes, the first was, sign of intelligent life was yeah. the drug game. Mm. Well, it, I mean, some somebody somebody must have taken the time. Or people, like it wouldn't mm. it wouldn't have been a for profit exercise designing drug games for graphic calculators, right? Like, so you it would have been just somebody was like, huh, maybe I will do this thing and then spent probably quite a bit of time working out how to make that work on the platform mm. and that sort of thing and then mm. and then got it into the hands of god knows how many um children sort of, yeah you know Teens everyone now can you can see it ruin their whole life mm -hmm. ah, yeah. i'm falling apart yeah. i'm ordering cherry tomatoes off uber eats help mm. me i mean that is mm. problematic that is <laughs> it's a weird way. i mean it's it's in a it's in a weird way that doesn't quite seem as clear that it's bad yeah <laughs> um, but We've oh. reached a milestone in the podcast. We're, I'm going for you're my first, the first pod uh, sausage. I should first take a photo sausage. and post well, it. Well, maybe I should have one too. Yeah, all right. right um, I'll take photos of you. Ah, um, oh, beautiful. Thanks very much. All this time we've had penis-shaped food in the room. Oh we haven't God. even discussed it. <laughs> You've got the solution in front of you. Look, if you put these two mandarins on the mm. end, mm. you have a sweet and salty delight. I like how rubbery they are. Yeah. Yeah, mm. and they've got some structural integrity that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Mm. These could go on the packet of them. These kinds of... <laughs> yeah, it'll go sanitarium veggie sausages. I like how rubbery they are. <laughs> structural <laughs> integrity that you wouldn't necessarily <laughs> expect. Those are the full <laughs> quotes that we've chosen. For the Put packet. it there for our review. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know how functional and um, airbags are on cars. Mm. But it's it's a it's a like a pillow filled with air, right? Mm. Something like this feels like this could really protect you. Mm. You get a few layers of this if, if like you hit your bumper, and then just like a bunch of sausages kind of pile out <laughs> like that, like that, fill this up, and mm. you hit like a, a squishy thing like this. It'd make crashing almost desirable because it'd sure. be so nice. <laughs> It's Once so again, hard. this is a very long quote to go on the packet, but I think it belongs on there. <laughs> I um, mean, it is, you know, I was, we do need to convince more people to go to plant-based diets for the good of the planet. And mm. if, if these are the kinds of selling points that um, are going to get people across the line, I mean, it's certainly intriguing. Mm. You know, it's better than just, oh, tasty or something like that. It's, it's I actually would like to know what it's like to eat something that would make a great um, crash test um, airbag. Have they tried doing with this with bugs? You know, with all bugs. that bug flour. Mm. I'm sure you could mm. really smash your face into that before it hits a windscreen. Because mm. they but, always talk about with those bug foods, they're like, you know. Good for the planet. Good for the planet. But they always try to like really downplay the fact that it's full of bugs. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel yeah. like there's none that are like the packet says full of bugs. Full of bugs. <laughs> Just bugs. Bugs, bugs, bugs. <laughs> I don't think I've yep. I sh also, should I skedaddle in a second? Have you got a um, because it's 1055. What do you reckon? Um, I think we have some sans pants people coming in. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Um also, thank you to Lou who gave you two bucks. Oh, Hello. thanks, Lou. And Brian, who gave you five bucks. Brian. You're the best. Thank no. you so much. Thank you very much. And while we're doing that, somebody has si signed up for our Patreon while we've been on the thing. Amazing. Uh, I think someone said that on the chat, and I've I've lost it. David Bourne became an eight dollar su subscriber. No, well, this is really lovely. Thank you, everybody, for um for everything you do for us yeah. and um. Yeah, and, and I hope that you feel like you got your money's worth of penis chat. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, before I've... Beck goes, can I go pee? Yeah, sure. All right, I'll, I'll, you I'll cover for you. I'll Thank pretend you. to be you. Yeah. I'm going to do my best owl impression. Okay, Beck, go. Oh, <laughs> what about maths? <laughs> if the maths was on oh. the moon. Oh, fuck, Beck. <laughs> I mean, that's that was terrifyingly good. I mean, it was maybe a little bit too close to me, but um, <laughs> oh, what about if my son is great? 
Yes, and I love good, him. Good, good. But you've got but him on the ropes here. Yes. I'm a great person too. <laughs> oh, yeah, you really no. pulled it back from the brink. Um, uh, can I just talk about maths on the moon for a second? <laughs> <laughs> what is maths on the moon? I feel like that's the main place that they do need maths. Well, maybe, you know. I've, 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 Probably you don't have a lot else. Do There's you? not a lot of air, mm. and you got to work out how to get that air in there. And mm-hmm. I feel like you need maths. That'll involve maths, but yes. I, how, I think it would be great if there was a different maths on the moon, right? You know, if we if when they landed on the moon, maths they had ma- the moon had different maths, right? And then they had to work that out as they were there. So yes. they leave the Earth using Earth maths, and we think that the maths that we have works everywhere in the universe, right? But then they get to the moon, and they're like. Oh, it's good to have all three of the people here, all right? And then they look, and it, it turns out that the oh, all two of the people here. It <gasps> turns out that the one person and the other one person doesn't actually add up to two. There's actually three people, right? Because maths is different on the moon. Yeah, the moon maths is all wrong. You got to get moon calculators. Yes, you got to get moon abacuses, but all mm-hmm. the abacuses are missing one bead. Well, because gravity is different there. Yes. Who's to say that maths won't be different in some way as well? Yes. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Uh, anyway, mate. All right, um, get back in there. On that. On that. All right. Thank you very much, Beck. Thank Apparently, you. people bye are bye, asking yes? how many sketches we're up to. Yes, they are. Oh. You ready to find out, Andy? Yeah, all right. We're on 70. Oh, my goodness. I know. Oh, God, Alice. But, I mean, it's still taken five hours or whatever. <laughs> you know, that's not. Oh, it has. You're right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then we need to at least double that. And double then, this well, rate? Well, 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 we don't need to at least double that. We need to triple that yeah, to yeah. get to the end. Yeah. So that's still we're still looking at 15 hours, and we've definitely been going slower recently in terms of the output. Oh, do you want that Red Bull, by the way? No, we're all good. Thank okay, you so much. Bye. Oh, look. Hey, Kaz. Bye-bye. Oh, jeez. Please come in. I'm going to shift over. Hello. Hello. Come Hello. in. Oh, um, wait, I'll shift over. You guys can sit here so that, uh, so that people have seen plenty of me. <laughs> we'll um, tuck in. Yeah, Thank you so, so much. Hello. So excited to be here. Oh, Hello. Very happy to be here. Hello. Right. Thank you. You guys like a veggie sausage or a banana or anything? Does a veggie sausage come with anything, or is it just by itself? It's itself-like? just a rubbery, a rubbery um, veggie sausage. It's a, oh, it's a loose sausage. I think that is all I can. You offer. bring a single, you you bring a single <laughs> fantail, and in in many ways, this is this is better than is any a, gift. Is that a bongo bag? You know? Yes. Oh, oh no. It does. Okay, so maybe it's it's. Uh, <laughs> Oh, it actually is a bongo. Bag. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, were you asking as a joke? I was asking. I it looked like it like it was from Donkey Kong. Oh, no. and then <laughs> and then then you showed it properly, and I I had only seen the top, and I, I mean, it's a it's, it's a beautiful. Yeah, no, it's very fun, but only if you make a face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was seriously. extremely no. loud. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's for. But um, can, can I'm really sorry. I don't believe we've met. No, I don't think so. This is insane. <laughs> Hi, I'm Zoe. <laughs> Zoe, hello. Uh, what a I feel like we've met online, I'm, but not in person, yes. probably. Or maybe we have met in person at the house once or twice. Once or twice. Yeah. Um, I'm Cass. Cass, as hi well. Cass. Awesome. And, I'm, um, and hi Zoe. Hi, we ran into yeah. each other yes. the other day. Yeah. 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 Amazing. I th- EB Games. At EB Games. Oh, <laughs> very, very lucky. Fancy. Yeah. I think, um, of I think course, I assume everyone else knows Zoe from EB Games. <laughs> <laughs> where I am. Yeah. Where, in my experience, she is at least fifty percent of the time when she's not here. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I've only been to EB Games like three times. Mm. Over there, every time, crouching in yeah. the corner, waiting. Hey. <laughs> that's a one in three chance. <laughs> yeah, I think that's like <laughs> that's similar to the mental health rates for. <laughs> Certain afflictions. That's cool. <laughs> Wait, mental health rates for certain what? Afflictions. No, I ju- for some reason, for I don't know why. Yeah. Um, my first thought was one in three. Wow, uh, that's the chance uh, that a person with PCOS, uh, polycystic ovary syndrome, mm-hmm. yeah. has of getting depression in their wow. life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How fun. <laughs> that's the same rate at which you meet some certain people in certain shops. Like, yeah. Yeah. Are, are, Statistics are, are wild. <laughs> are things that happen at the same rate equivalent to each other? No. Like, are they the same thing mm. then? It's like, hey, I got PCOS and uh, depression, but I did run into Zoe maybe. <laughs> so, uh, so- what's her third? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she's she, there's three chances. Okay, she's she's got the pig awesome depression. Yeah. She's run into Zoe at EB Games. Yeah. Mm. 
What else? What's another one in three? <laughs> the only one I can think of was from like, this is really bad. It was from over 10 years ago and they were saying that the current statistic was that one in three people will get cancer in their lifetime. Mm. Here we go. And, These but are... I will say it's probably wrong because they were expecting that number to rise. <laughs> That's out of date. Hey! <laughs> oh, thank God. Oh, it's yeah. a bad check. Yeah. 5G's coming out and uh, everybody's oh. worried that that's going to give us cancer. And so it's not. Really, yeah. 5G's, 5G's going to be okay, everybody. No, I know. I'm feeling yeah. good about 5G. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Well, so so things that are that pesky four G that's in the end. Yeah, yeah. it's a trouble. What's and three G for us. Three G breathing to... in all that four G. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, like with three G, I think they cancelled two G. So with three G now, four G and five G in so the sad. air. That's so sad. What did two G do? They they, they, <laughs> <wanna>, they <laughs> tweeted wanna... some stuff. That's yeah. so sad. <laughs> These things are going to get cancelled. I think it was it had something. You know, look, I just know people with old Nokia's had to like cancel it, and then they could only use them for a Snake. Um, mm. You know they they weren't being used anyway. Um, things that have like a, a very small chance of of happening, stuff like uh, you know like one in a billion is like winning the lottery. So th those tend to be good things, mm. right? And things that are very likely to happen are things that we don't value at all and are, mm. are boring and 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 also involve us getting sick, like seeing our loved ones every day and the sun <laughs> rising. And <laughs> 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 things like that waking don't, up in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, waking yeah. up every day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's all, yeah. Time with friends and laughter and, you know, yeah, that kind of thing. Beats of the heart. Yeah. yeah. Beats of the heart. And These it's are the, the thing bad that's things. like winning the lottery that are good. <laughs> oh, no. We got locked out. Yeah. And the, it's weird. Winning the lottery is good, and yet it never happens to me, which is bad. <laughs> How does that happen? Wait, but then. This thing is both good and bad. People seem to be winning the lottery all the time. And I'm sad. What's going on? But do you know any of those people, or is it like a whole, like yeah, everyone, conspiracy? every literally everyone I know has <laughs> won, won the lottery. lottery. Mm. And it's just not you. Yeah, that's unlucky. The definition mm. of unlucky. Yeah, that's <laughs> statistically very unlucky. So now, are there sketches in this? <laughs> The unluckiest man whose luck is whose unluckiness is only defined by the severe luck of those around him, Ooh, and it yeah. is severe at this point. It's severe. Yeah. It's almost chronic. Luck. He knows four people. None of them have depression. <laughs> I guess it's like somebody who discovered that they were they were lucky for other people, like at a craps table. Yeah, at a craps table, and people like mm. they show up and people start winning mm. like that. He's our lucky loser. Yeah, but oh, he never wins. That, mm. That's such an unnecessarily mean <laughs> name. I love it. Yeah. Um, Our lucky no, loser. I, I think that's absolutely a sketch idea. Somebody. Right? That, that somebody who's, yes, who's, I mean, m and maybe they have a perfectly good life, right? But it is the intense luck of everyone around them that, that relatively speaking, casts their life into this very um, negative, like, mm. perspective, yeah, right? it's all and about perspective. It is all about perspective. And if everyone around you was literally winning a million dollars a day on the lottery, it would be hard not to feel that you're just sort of your good job that you go to to work with your friends is in somehow in some way bad. Mm. Do and I think if your friends are winning literally millions a day, mm. at that point you could be like, Please. <laughs> May I? No, I, he wasn't lucky enough to have generous friends. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about as, so we're, we're constructing a sketch. Mm -hmm. What if you make it a bit of a long form, which I'm not personally always a fan of, but mm, it's, right. it's the adventures of Perspective Man. <laughs> and he, there are some sight gags with mm. line perspective, two mm -hmm. point, three point, a lot of points. Yeah. Um, and then eventually <laughs> it starts going down a road of like gahoy of oh no, I'm taller than the, the boy who was here. We didn't know because of perspective and it's goofy. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So like, he's taller than people, but you can't tell because <laughs> he's, he's quite far Yeah. <laughs> and so there are lots of gags mm -hmm. around perspective. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden people around him start getting a lot luckier. And the sketch <laughs> sort of ends with him being like, uh. <laughs> it's a bit of an anticlimax, but it gets it. It's like mm. a goofy, 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 goofy. Mm. Real mm. sad, and people love a tragic figure at the mm. end of a thing. Of even, even, yeah, yeah. Even though, and let's be clear, nothing bad has happened to oh, this person. No, no, no it can't. Nothing yeah. bad can happen to him. He's, yes. he's he's thought that some people were less tall or taller than mm. than he than he than he really assumed, and then everybody else in his life is doing well. That's nothing bad. No. I mean, but, this whole thing about maybe you show it to your kids to teach your kids that jealousy is bad. 
or the perspectives are really difficult to learn. Oh, yeah. So it's an educational sketch. Yeah. A sketch yeah. education. Well, and, and maybe in a way he could also teach his kids that in, the, in that same way. And he, he's very actually lucky. Kids yeah. They're kids that are lucky <laughs> to have a dad that's such a great example of lessons that you should be learning throughout and, your life. And also those kids are winning the lottery constantly. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> he, he's, he's one of those dads who's like, okay. I'll get you a scratching just to just to teach you about we oh no my dad actually did this we all we all uh, oh no we, we all went to um uh in we all went to Alice Springs um a place name that is great because no one says the full name everyone says Alice Springs instead of Alice Springs it's too hard we don't do it we Fun say fact, Alice Springs Alice, Alice Springs. Springs Alice Springs yes. is what we yeah. say yeah yes. you're right who is she mm. Mm. Um, and what does she bring <laughs> what does she bring to the table mm. I expected a noise then. <laughs> I don't know why. I've only got fingernails. That's okay, but but I do feel like like a <laughs> pring is like a kind of like a yeah. magical pring. Pring. Oh, it's a harp. You're wearing bells on the end of your finger, yeah. right? so you mm. touch things and make little noises. Mm. Maybe a pring. You forgot. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Maybe a pring's a failure. <laughs> Does anyone, um, when they get their nails like manicured, do they get them manicured to different lengths and then tuned professionally <laughs> to be able to? Get different notes. I mean, it feels Ooh, like something really you would be able to... It's to get into the nail salon and have the piano tuner in at the same time. That's <laughs> true, yes. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. But I, think... feel, I feel like it must be possible to have them done at different lengths and then, like, you know, to be able to wrap them backwards on the edge of a table or something and pluck out uh, different notes to, to be able to, you know, play... You know, you I mean you've got, you've got a you've got a good octave there with your with your four main fingers. <laughs> Absolutely, and look, that's all you really need for most mm. songs. Mm -hmm. Well, you'd, you'd have to have them reinforced, right? You'd have mm. to have like a metallic something put on them. Possibly, you'd want, you'd possibly. Want, I mean, you'd but want also, to. Yeah. They've also got a really thick connection. It's like when you hit a tuning fork, but then you push yeah. it against your hand that goes into the hand instead. You'd have to you'd have to have the nail cut in such a way. That it gets very narrow, yeah, right, and then widens out again, and then it feels like it's going to be fragile, and suddenly your life's going to become a little bit impractical. But you know, you'll always have music wherever you go. That's good. Which is good. Yeah, you no, just hum. Mm. Oh, you could hum. That's <laughs> true. Oh, you get headphones, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you know, listen to it. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I mean, there are. A, yeah. Um. Wait, you were going to buy a scratchy <gasps> oh. in Alice yeah. Springs. In Alice Springs. Um. Uh, we all went to the pub, <laughs> and the pub was also the casino. Mm. And um, my brother and I were um, over 18 at that stage, and my dad was like, well, okay, everyone in the family, himself, mum, my brother and I, he was like, here's $50, go nuts. In the, in in the, the casino. casino. And his plan with this was to show us, without having us um, waste our own money, um, the follies of gambling mm. and that you'll never get it back. Um, I won a hundred and twelve dollars. My brother won two hundred and fifty. No, one hundred and fifty dollars. My mum won some money, and my dad was the only one who lost. <laughs> and we all came back. And we're like, it works. And he's like, no, no, no. no. It's a foolproof plan. No. I love that your dad was also trying to teach your mum this lesson. <laughs> oh well. You know. I think it's time you learned, honey. The ga the life of gambling will get you nowhere. Your dad is perspective man. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Dad's perspective man. Does he have a, dis a difficulty telling how tall people are? It's mm. okay. You don't have to. I, do, oh, do, oh, I don't. I don't. Gotta I, don't I don't know. Well, I actually no. I've had difficulty with his perspective. I always, for in my mind, a dad. Generally, all dads, six foot. Mm, sure. Around. That is a, that is a very dad height. It's mm. a very dad yeah. height. It's not yeah. like six two or anything. It's no. just a six foot. Apparently, yeah. is not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not very tall. Oh. <laughs> and I got confused. Wait, <laughs> you, is anyone taller than you, six foot? <laughs> yeah, I, there have been times where I'm like, you know, there's a tall person. I'll be speaking to someone. They're like, they're not tall. <laughs> You're just not. <laughs> it confuses me. And so, how tall is your dad? Oh. Is that five it? twelve? Five twelve. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, ju just you might need to talk a bit closer to the microphone. Sorry. Just, yeah. I might just shuffle around. I'm so go. sorry. That's all right. I mean, it might. This might be a perspective thing. Who knows? <laughs> okay, it's all happening. We've got two sketches out of this mm. so far. We got Lucky Loser and Perspective Man, which are kind of similar sketches, mm. but I feel yeah. like they both convened at my dad. <laughs> yeah, Perspective Man, kind of. You know, he 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 gets into the multiple mm. meanings of perspective. Yeah. Mm. 
yeah. it's it's a thinker. Mm. <laughs> it's a real one, yeah. <laughs> Do you think there's room to um, invent a new parent? You know, because a it, third a, a third parent, yeah. yeah. Mom, yeah. Dad, Schwum. Yeah, Schwum. Schwum. <laughs> Yeah. And, and so, at what stage do they get in there? They're in the they're in the baby making process. Um, I yeah, guess. I, I guess they could be like an impartial, obs- like like maybe their their role is sort of like as an arbiter or like mm. a, like a like a like a you know the the third voice because it doesn't feel like you know just having two is very like that you know two isn't enough to establish a pattern. You know, with, with 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 traditional parenting, it also well, allows for a lot of fifty fifty splits on, yeah. on issues. Mm. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. You need that majority to teach the child that mm. is what's right. Yeah, <laughs> and so that one person can be sort of uh, bullied, and and uh, you know, you can stack up. You know, you Cor- can, uh, correct. Yeah, yes, you, you can, can teach them about that. On them. Yeah, ganging up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> at an early age. Um, yeah, and then just to sort of like perform basically a sort of an auditing. Uh, role in the it's parenting It's good to know that equation. there's like just a little room in the house whenever there's a disagreement, you come mm. in and see this person. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we've got some cases. He lives in the back, in the in the, in the basement, sort of in the back mm. room back there. And then you, you know, you you pay for them. He was kind of your sex waiter, maybe. <laughs> you know, when you're gonna have, when you're gonna consummate, or when you're gonna start re- reproducing, you, you hire your sex waiter. You have to meet him. You know, you probably there's an app to find mm. him and things like sure. that. And then they they come in and they kind of they serve you. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then you know they also get a lot of. But they also judge you. They also judge you, and they get to mm. make decisions and things. They're an mm. outside eye. They're like a director. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you know? Okay. Okay. And oh, that I mean, that would be great to try and ensure some kind of like narrative satisfaction to your life. Like at the moment, mm. you know, it's really just a series of unconnected scenes. The life is is, <laughs> is much more like a mm. like a like a like a sketch show or something like that. When really, what you want is you want those those peaks and the troughs, and then you want that that structure, and you want that point sort of sort of two thirds of the way through where mm. you know that you confront adversity and you you change and you know mm. so it's somebody who could who could sort of guide you to 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 hit those beats i think would be really well, good i was going to say i thought you know cuz often like let's say as you're going if your life starts to go a bit bad and mm. you start to kind of uh dip down a little bit maybe sort of dabble a lot more in alcohol mm. and things like that you often have the instinct to pull back when you think it's kind of getting bad but the director could come, kind of come in and go, <laughs> well, actually, dramatically, it would be better if you yeah. went all the way down yeah. and then use the ground as a launching pad to, <laughs> you know, to sort of, you know, really climatic, more climatic. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then he hands you a little little thing of meth and you're like, all right. <laughs> this is not bad. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try it. Yeah. And then, I'll give it a crack. Oh, yes. That's the wrong drug. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, I, I, it's, it's like crack speed. You know, I think, I mean, it's crack comes from cocaine, but I feel like meth could be crack speed. Look, I don't forget it. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, I don't, Wait, yeah. I, writes I, down I, crack speed. Crosses <laughs> <and crosses laughs> out immediately. <laughs> Everybody's canceled. <laughs> crack speed is in. Third parent. I don't know. Look, I, like, I'm writing third parent down. I don't mm. know exactly how they come in. Do you think this could be a thing, right? Where we restructure society in such a way that everyone starts out cancelled, and then you have to get uncancelled by doing something good, right? Mm, cancelled until proven woke. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Very good. And <laughs> <laughs> just gonna go down as that. <laughs> but also, maybe you're 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 ca- considered cancelled in all aspects of your life, and then you become woke, sort of only in certain aspects of your life, like earning badges at at, at Cubs. Or scouts or something. Okay, so like so, big you know, life moments, like when you learn empathy, you get like a little woke badge. Yeah, You're yeah. like, you did it. You realize people are other people. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I, I reckon I got that about five years ago. Yeah. What about you? Start off life with a semicircle tattoo just on the on your forehead, and then mm. as you get uncounseled, it slowly forms the top part of the eye to open it. Ooh. Yeah, you're like semicircle baby. Baby's born semicircle. Mm. Them, don't worry, they won't remember. So it's like mm. a half shut eye. Yeah, like yeah. like like a stoned mm. eye. Oh no, okay. Oh no, I see what you're saying. Like, like a, a closed eye, like yeah, that. Okay. Like a closed eye. Yeah. And then as you get like little points, you get little little eyelashes. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. Well, they're becoming a person, and mm. then. One day you'll get the mm. big eye open. You're like, yeah, well, that could be top of the lid for now, but we know eventually <laughs> their eye will open and laser exists if mm. they get very bad. <laughs> yeah, so if, if they have to get cancelled again. The entire again, eye yeah. off. Or yeah. just little scalpel. Oh. Nice square. 
Oh. Yeah, just scalpel the whole thing <laughs> off. You go. Thing. Well, that's cancelled culture because you can never learn. That's right. Yeah, oh, it's, yes. new, it's, it's new cancelled. Yeah. Is actually also because it's like, look, you had every opportunity <laughs> to learn that this was wrong. You proved that you learned it. Uh, you, you had all your eyelashes mm. like that, and then you've made a huge mistake, and then they come. <laughs> just cut it out like that, mm. and then you just got the red. Just, you've got just the just red re that. rectangle on your. <laughs> They do that thing when you're like um, scalping out paper and you like stab the middle bit of it. Oh, and pull it out. Oh, yeah. oh, you can have people who, because with every sort of culture, there comes a, a, a like an anti culture sort of a thing, a subculture that wants to d subvert it. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting it lasered off, you get people <laughs> leaning into it and getting a smoky eye tattoo mm. <laughs> on their closed lid. They're mm. like, it's closed, but it's beautiful. Mm, no new ideas. <laughs> yeah, the, the the I mean, like the alt right has got to find a way of they're like, well, because I mean, to accept all those other things at the top would mm. be uh, would be giving in to the uh, to this uh, weak culture. Of some yeah, sort. Sure. yeah, no, they're not going to like it when we take their babies as soon as they're born and tattoo yeah. on the bottom <laughs> half of the semicircle. There's going to be some pushback. No, but it's definitely you know, a good idea it's, to but take it's people's babies. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it well, almost feels like the bit where you're down tattooing babies. Obviously, tattooing babies with semicircle. Yeah, it feels almost like the moment where you're taking somebody's baby to forcibly tattoo its forehead is enough to sort of lose you your woke status that you've worked so hard to achieve. So I think I think what needs to happen is a robot does it. Oh yeah, yeah no, fun. done, done. A hundred percent. No, no, no. The uh, the schwelm does it. Ah, uh, they're the, yes. they're the of course. Objective. Mm. I mean the schwamp. No, no, no. I, I was, I was agreeing with you. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean the other place I was thought was we could train bears, but I mean that's, um, <laughs> every bear does a Simba to yeah, a child like, when they're know, born, but like yuck. Every claw is kind of a tattoo gun. Sounds like a terrible grindhouse film. <laughs> Man, I think it could be one of the best things. That, 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 that's like a Rodriguez film that like didn't quite make the cut. Mm. Yeah, that sounds like one of the fake ads he makes before his real yeah. movies. Mm. Bears with tattoo guns. <laughs> <laughs> I learned about pizzly bears this way. What is, is that the opposite of a grizzly bear? Is that what the right called? <laughs> is that like the new <laughs> cuck? <laughs> it's when a polar bear and a grizzly bear have a baby. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I've heard of this. That just would yeah. hang on. Is that not just a panda? <laughs> <laughs> mm. I think that works. Yeah, and then they move to China. That, they live in China. Panda yeah, bears, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Whenever a panda is born in the Arctic, they have to go, go get it, move it to China. They're like, well, I'm not going to pick a side. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to start a new life. They move to China and become vegetarians. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's. I think it's kind of one of those things where, like, you know, your parents are, you know, are both smokers or something like that, and you become a non-smoker because you see how horrible it is. These are two of the two of the the, the worst kind of meat eaters in, mm. in nature, and so it, panda bears kind of re rebel, rebel, yeah, and yeah. then you know take a nice cap to uh, mm. to China, sail it all the way down, yeah, <laughs> sail it down. Mm, one of those glaciers across, catch it's, it's gonna be a glacier to China, there. could be. I don't think there's any land. Ice, though, is ice there? bridge, ice bridge. There's no, there's no, there's no land in, um, in the uh, in the Arctic. But there's ice. Right? There's Do you reckon ice? there might be a little bit of land <laughs> under there somewhere? There's got to be some. Yeah. Like in a couple of islands or no, something. Is it or do the magnets make water cold? Oh, wait. I know is... less about planets wait. than I thought <laughs> I did when I started this. Wait, 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 wait. Did you say magnets make water cold? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> They're on the axis of yeah. where the magnet is. The Earth magnet. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the axis. I know it's not real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know there's Some not a magnet yeah. <laughs> in the Earth, but one could perhaps do an o like yeah, uh, the opposite of a of a peg, transparent, a transparent layer. Of magnet over the planet Earth. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Science books. No, no. no. You yeah, know yeah. when you read science you books, read a science you're book. in year nine and you're <laughs> trying your the best. Thin layer of magnets okay. the world. So wait, there's transparent <laughs> magnets on, on each. So this pole. this globe is the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this no. Mic okay, we're starting again. Okay, okay, so you've got your beautiful planet Mandarin. <laughs> yeah. And your tasty, tasty magnet tail. Mm -hmm. 
And if you're looking at the Mandarin, so this yeah. is the Earth how we draw it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Twenty three degrees. Yeah. yeah. And then. Oh, now I don't know where this goes. <laughs> what is that? Is that the moon? This is this is the um the <laughs> axis <laughs> that the world spins on. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. So I'm just realizing now um that the axis the world spins on is not uh, the magnet. <laughs> <laughs> so the axis you were picturing- I'm still caught up on whether or not <laughs> magnets make things cold. <laughs> so okay, so my thoughts were yeah, yeah. Yes. my thoughts no, were I'm very interested. If you were drawing, so you know how you can draw the way magnetic force goes around the Earth? Yes. Mm-hmm. It would wrap around like a small colony of ants uh, all going home to the poles, right? Yeah. Mm. And my understanding mm-hmm. that's the was moment. that. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> is that why they call it the Antarctic? <laughs> One can only assume. <laughs> I didn't write the textbooks, but clearly I read them. <laughs> or I just looked at the pictures. So the ants are going toward the top and bottom of a magnet that has been superimposed on the earth because you just – am I confusing two classes? Because you know how you learn I don't about – You don't seem confused at all. <laughs> you, you learn about magnets yep. and you – you put the magnet maybe in some goo mm-hmm. and you put or just on a table yeah. with metal filings mm, and yeah. the magnets like ant try and go home to the poles yeah mm. and w- do are we all familiar with this visual concept yeah yeah, sort yeah, of the, yeah. the, the, the waves and, the waves yes, of waves the, and the magnetic pattern kind of thing now, the magnetic field lines magnetic is what we're field discussing. lines great thank you very much oh the voice you brought us back <laughs> no. Come, no. coming to us with the, with the, <laughs> the new show magnets <laughs> magnets <laughs> <laughs> so my uh, my thinking is that you could take that image mm. and pop it over a globe with the poles and yeah. all the ants would be going to the cold bits mm. now if the if the magnet the magnetic lines were ants, they would be going to the cold bits. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It would all be elves returning home for Christmas or sure. anti Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that's which is Christmas in July. Yes, yeah. Christmas in July. And that's in the south, which is why we have Christmas in July in the southern hemisphere. Is anti Christmas anti Christmas? <laughs> no, it's for the ants. Oh, okay. They're going right. home. Yes. Mm. Is the <laughs> anti Christ, is the devil made up of ants? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that is why we can't let ants grow any bigger. Mm. They will take us over. <laughs> That's They're right. too organized. Mm. We're They're not too strong. Mm. Yeah. They'll we don't get enough things done. Ants are waiting for their time. And as I as agree. as we see, like s- democracy doesn't really have the answers, I think. And it is those kind of quite tyrannical ant style societies that are on the ascent. Mm-hmm. Um China? Is that you suggesting China is <laughs> no, a sort of an ant like society? Yeah, yeah, maybe, and maybe, um, maybe Russia is more of a that, that kind of a thing. I think the ants' time and the ant model is um, yeah is proving itself. Are you saying the true answer is the ant, sir? It's yes. the answer. Yes, the ant, and, sir. <laughs> and those places where those. Places, you know, where we're like Russia and stuff, those are some of the coldest places. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because of all their magnets. Because of the magnet ants. Yes. <laughs> the magnets go there because it's I cold mean, and they want to Christmas. I, yeah. I like to picture a TV show that's called Things Magnets Could Do. <laughs> Hosted by the ICP. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, so the show is called, cool. yeah, Things Magnet Could Do, or is this because of magnets? <laughs> right? <laughs> and we investigate various different phenomena, sort of like, um, I guess, you know, uh, homelessness or um, mm. Mm. Uh, baldness, you know, and we find, try and work out if magnets have anything any effect on it at all? Mm. Yes. <laughs> the beauty of just having a roll of bald guys, <laughs> <laughs> and then in my mind they're the like horseshoe shaped magnets. Yeah, <laughs> no, on the head. But, uh, yeah, and then you have a, a room over there where you've got just a guy just taking like a piece of uh, like a sp- bit of stick and holding it near other a fi- another row of bald guys and just trying to see if that has any. Oh, you, know, it's like you need a control. Oh, it's a yeah, double yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It does turn out magnets make bald men very angry? <laughs> 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 I guess the magnet itself would be quite cold when it touched your head, mm. which could attract ants. <laughs> which, <laughs> which might look like hair yeah, if you get enough of them swarming on your head. That's now, the solution. Is this um, a solution to baldness? I yes. Mean, you train ants. Uh-huh. You cover your head in honey. All right. 
So it's this emergency situation. You're about to, I don't know, you're a, you're a secret agent. You're about to go into a, um, a, a fancy dinner, right? But, every, but, but you, 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 you're bald. Oh, no. You, oh, wig, no. you lose your wig. Everyone's right? going to know. Everyone's going to know your identity as the famous bald secret agent will be revealed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then you spot in the foyer a, a, a tray of honey. And you smear some of that onto your head and, and, a tr and you lure ants onto your head and they swarm onto your bald skull. Yeah. You, bring yeah. you bring out the magnets. You bring out the magnets. And suddenly now you pass incognito through the room as just another ant head magnet man. <laughs> wow, he's got such a thick head of hair. He couldn't be anyone I know. <laughs> well, well, we can rule out secret agent. <laughs> This man's too bold to be hidden. <laughs> too bold to be bold. Too I, bold. I will say on the the, um, the theory of the theory, the, sorry, mm. hypothesis. No. It's science of getting ants to replace your hair. When I was like 12, like when I was young enough to be like, I should shave, I'll be pretty then. Um, back in the childhood uh, days yep. of women. Mm, yeah. Um, mm. I was like. Is this a thing that child women think? Yeah. <laughs> So Hopefully it's getting better women? now. Yeah, like right. shave their faces? No, like legs. Like, like, okay, oh, yeah. oh, oh, no. I like, was picturing I'm the top of the head. Pretty down if you're as ethnic as I am. So. <laughs> sure, yeah. Mm. You're, like, you're like, brows, good. Maybe. We was touch and go there for the night. Oh, yeah. Sure. But, um, People but, were shaving brows? Well, they were, they were real thin. Did really? Yeah. Like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brows, like mm. of the early 2000s. This is all pre Cara de Levine. I know. And then she came along and then it was okay to have eyebrows again. Thank God. And women were like, oh, God. Oh god, we've been lasering so much of our body here. Yeah. Oh god, so many lasers. <laughs> I met a guy this week who told me he cut his leg hair, didn't shave it. Wow. He oh. trimmed his leg hair, and I was like, commit or don't. Like, don't <laughs> with, ask it. With scissors? Yeah. That's such an effort. Don't don't boys have the the ones that make the beard the nice length for I, the, mm. what they want? Was also being like, what's it that? Called? The, a, a, like a clipper. Yeah, right. A, like, <laughs> we don't get those. No. I'm so sorry you to hear. To they pull don't... the hair out at the root they, or get yeah. a big laser yeah. to, mm. to zap your hair out of your well, body. That was what I wanted as a child. I was like, what if I could train every ant to come along and just every ant gets one leg hair and they pull it out and then it's so cool. one bit of pain <laughs> And then I'm done. It was I was I was exhausted at twelve. <laughs> I was wow. like every oh no, this is no good. Yeah, it feels like that's something the ants could be trained to do. We're told mm. how strong they are. They have those little yeah. like uh, pulling heads. You uh, know? No, I think they, they swarm. Just, I think they'd cut their hair, which yeah, well, swings and roundabouts. Yeah. But yeah, well, it's like um, hmm. what's the third option? You can wax, you can shave, and then you can <gasps> silky mitt. Silky. I was going to say Apple. And oh, epilate. Not, yeah, I was about to say espadrilles, and I was like, that's not at all the word. I, I don't know. Even, I don't know what that word even is. Shoes. Um, epilate, where it's like this fucking heinous thing that oh, rolls it, around yeah. and pulls your hair I've out. I've heard about this. Your Sounds hair. awful. I did but use that, one of those ones. Does it hurt like nobody's business? Yeah, it, it was awful. My mom had one, and I just like tried it on my upper leg, Ooh. and I was like, no! <laughs> and she talks about like how, like, oh, you know, you get used to it, and you kind of just like, but you go, Oh, do God. you though? <laughs> uh, oh, you don't have to. Part, you part don't of you have dies. To. Yeah. I wonder uh, how long after the invention of the laser did p scientists look at it and say, maybe we could shoot this at women's faces. Maybe Ooh. we could use this to cut, <laughs> cut their hair out at the root. I'm just trying to think of other ap applications that it was. Okay, there's probably to think of other things lasers do, and then also remove air. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, I know for people who we have... can use it to tell how far away the moon is at all times. Mm. That's lasers. That's mm. lasers. Yeah. Yeah. Not that... lasers. <laughs> but why do you think the moon is bald? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no hands on the moon. Yeah. The moon. Oh my god. <laughs> Give the moon a little air to play. Mm. Oh, who is he? So fucky fresh. The man on yeah. the moon gets a little like, oh, the I, makeover. I is he young and someone else? Would be what a project for humanity. If if we if our time here is limited, mm. what a legacy to leave for like future alien races to come by. If we were to make a wig for the moon, <laughs> mm, a hairdo, a hairdo, a little toupee mm. for the moon, we fly it up there, we plop it on with our last resources. Okay, we salute the 
the brave astronauts who took it up there because we don't have enough fuel to bring them back. It was and then we all lie down and die and wait for aliens to come by. And we're mm. like, that's fucking weird. <laughs> we turn all the lights off, lie down on our backs and go, we did it. We did it, everyone. <laughs> Well, because we're m- most of the stuff that we've created will be destroyed by the elements and stuff over mm, the you know, hundreds true. of thousands of years yeah. until another intelligence li- life form mm. comes from. But the moon is not <laughs> affected by weather and things mm. like that, so we'll be able to leave our final traces. Maybe we could write something in the hair just to let them know who we were. Like sure. one of those sick like fades. One of those fades, <laughs> yeah, that has like Nike and a tick in it. We could get it sponsored by Nike. Maybe yeah. the company could be Big brought back by like the next humanity is flawed. Yeah. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> yeah. Such is life. I, I, oh. You know, I'm 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 almost worried that like as humanity, we wouldn't be able to agree on a hairstyle to give the moon. Oh, that would that's what go that's some iconic kill hairstyle. Like the yeah. Elvis. What? Yeah. Yeah, the Elvis. Yeah, everyone kind of have to go old. Yeah, you'd have to go old school because yeah. you couldn't you classic. Couldn't have, like, Something. A fade or a man bun at oh, the moment. Marilyn, though. Oh, mm. yeah. the Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the Jennifer. Uh, is that the uh, the, way, <laughs> the, the Rachel. Jennifer? The Rachel. Rachel. Yeah. Rachel. No, Rachel. We, knew, oh. we knew. We knew. We knew. We know. We know. We speak if, each if, other's if, dumb. Yeah. <laughs> if, um, if this had been done in the nineties. The, everyone would have been like, yeah. of course, the Rachel. It's never going to go out of style. <laughs> it's the perfect haircut. If it had been done in the in this sort of somewhere in the 2000s, it would have been the Beckham. Mm. That just oh, that thing yeah. where the, every, everything comes up to the it's middle there, kind of like a yeah. faux hawk. A faux, yeah, a faux hawk, hawk. Yes. I remember <laughs> when it was in style in Australia, it wasn't. Um, but Kyle Sanderlands had one, and that's mm. people like Kyle Sanderlands with his faux hawk. And I was like, that is what that is called. <laughs> Anyone who tries anything different will be Kyle Sanderlands with a faux hawk in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, maybe. I the, definitely um, wanted that haircut when I was like, a faux hawk. A faux hawk. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. It, it would have looked very weird on 10 year old me, but. I wonder if Kyle Sanderlands' head is where hairstyles go to, to die. You know, like the ones they've been there, it's. We sort we of. should be able to track this. When did he have the Rachel? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does kind of feel like he looks. I don't I, look. I'm I'm basing this off of some mental image of him, but he does kind of look like he has, in my mind at least, those kind of highlights that you would give like a 55 year old woman, like yeah. you know when she's yes. her, when she's getting her dude done. And there's like the little golden streaks and mm-hmm. the kind of like the the sort of lighter browns mixed in with the darker browns to kind of like, make the grays kind of. Mm, in a little yeah, bit. yeah, yeah. There's texture in there. This is a it's a luscious carpet. You know, it's a beautiful tapestry. Mm. Those always I've I've never personally been a fan of them. I know and I don't know that doing it, if you look at a person's hair mm. from like here down, it looks like regular hair. And regular hair fades with the sun, it'll fade in with the greys and the whites, it looks really lovely. But mm. up here is stripes. Yeah. And mm. my brain can't get past yeah. the stripes. So mm. I look at it and I'm like, no. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> yeah. I currently have stripes. It's an interesting, like, if I pull my hair, it's not, it's growing out bad. Because I got <laughs> half an ombre done and then was like, my hairdresser was like, come back in another month and we'll bleach it again. Mm. And that was six months ago. Yeah. And <laughs> I haven't done that. I, I can't see what I it have, is. I have, like, big chunks. Like, every now and then I'll find one. It's like a, just a big chunk of brown for, like, oh, no apparent What reason. is an ombre? An ombre is, like, when it fades into another oh color. yeah yeah, like yeah okay yeah it's like a gradient oh yeah right thing. right right right. oh yeah oh i got a belly arch. i got one of the fancy ones and i don't know like, the difference between an yeah, and she a belly was like arch. explain the difference and i was like i don't care and then she said i was blonde naturally and i was like this woman has no idea <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god i'm in the hands of an idiot <laughs> oh, no. i was like fuck it up was, oh, was oh. Shakira's uh, one of those, or was hers just a? Oh, she was a, ble- a blonde bleach with a, with a no, black I th- roots. I think it, I think that hairstyle was dark underneath. Oh. So you didn't have the stripes, but underneath was dark. Mm. I don't know what the head hairstyle was called, but it was. Um, I also had that high hairstyle as well. I want to call it a top deck because that's a nice chocolate. Of course, yeah. Before you like if th- that experience of having that hairdresser say you're a natural blonde just before they start cutting <laughs> your hair. Do you think that that's the equivalent of like you're in surgery and the surgeon leans over you and just before the <laughs> anesthetic kicks in, they say. You're a horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm in a vet. <laughs> yeah, you go, yeah, they go. This is my first time operating on a donkey. <laughs> oh no, that's why well, they thought the, that. <laughs> yeah, you know, with the anesthetic as well, you might convince yourself you're a donkey. Yeah, you go. Whoa, oh no, this- God, I've been wrong for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> That's your last thoughts I, on the, on the model wrong. coil. I think we've already said that on this podcast today, but 
y yesterday, Andy managed to very easily trick my brain by saying to me, are the shoes on the bed? And then I went, what? I don't know what that means. He goes, are the shoes on the bed? And I go, I, I, and he goes, are the shoes on the bed? Are the shoes on the bed? Like that. And then I went, oh, I should know what this means. And I don't understand. I have lost my mind. Like that. And, in, and I was driving. And I'm like, ah! like that. And I, yeah, it was a very scary moment. And that it, all it took was about six seconds of, uh, of gaslighting for me to entirely like lose my grip on reality. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's what is what, yeah that's that's sort of like intense micro gaslighting that like like mm. go from you know zero to hero. Yeah, I've I've had that happen before because it's just someone saying something so plainly to you and you can't comprehend it. And mm. I think that's the scary thing mm. is that it's not weird when it starts. Mm. Yeah, I think the most common I had one recently. It's not it's not too flash, but um my housemate's dog snuck into my bedroom and then snuck out of my bedroom. And of course, when my housemate saw this, she was like, oh. Don't do that. Oh my god, that's so rude to her dog who, mm. you know, said, I'm so sorry. Can I please <laughs> mm. don't cancel me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is something I can do to make up for my misfortune? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know, I will construct an apology, but I will also remedy my actions, which is the most important mm. part. And mm. I'm appreciative for that dog. Mm. <laughs> um yeah, no. So the dog jumps on my bed. I'm half asleep, well, half wake up, and I'm like, what's going on? I'm still a bit asleep, so I'm like, it's just the kids. <laughs> <laughs> then I wake up. I'm like, I don't have children. I wake up. There's a dog there. I'm like, oh, it's the dog. The dog jumps out. I'm like, how cute. She wanted to come see me. Adorable. Sneaks out of my room. And then my housemate's like, oh, my God, what are we doing in her room? And then my brain's like, but she wasn't in my room. <laughs> how did she know? And I went to sleep so confused. Yeah. It broke my brain. I'm like, she didn't see. I forgot about object permanence. <laughs> I was so tired. I'm like, she couldn't have known. <laughs> how? She all wasn't she, there. All she saw was the dog come out of the room. <laughs> how would she know that the dog was in the room when she saw it coming out? That's the opposite of being in a room. <laughs> <laughs> no! Where are my children? I've become quite infatuated with being just so confused and not having mm. any idea what's happening. I think it's a magical thing. Yeah, it's I think kind we, of a trend. Mm. It's letting go, you know, in a way of control. Yeah. And, mm. yeah. I had a moment like that with uh, with uh, the kid that I live with. So oh, my yes. roommate has a, a son who is five, and this is a very new experience for me because mm. I only moved in a month ago. Mm. Yeah. And last night, the five-year-old walked into my room at four in the morning and <laughs> crawled into bed with me, and I was like, oh, my, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let's put you back in your room, buddy. And he's like, I was babysitting him that night and his dad hadn't come home. Mm. And he was like, where's my dad? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and he was like crying. And I was like, don't cry. Oh, God. oh no. <laughs> and I was like, I, it's four in the morning, so I'm not going to call your dad because your dad's probably just drunk somewhere because mm. it's a Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> No, no, he'd ask me. He's like, I'm going night with the boys. Uh, <laughs> big night with the boys. You mind looking after the kid? And I was like, yeah, it's fine. Um, so, yeah, he cried. And then I had to read him the Jungle Book like three times. That's a big book. Mm. Yeah. Oh, God. Read that like three. And then I had to sit with him till he fell. Anyway, turns out I don't want kids because they are very mm. confusing for me. Well, sure. I four think in the morning, mm. terrifying. That kind yeah. of like instant parenthood, like you really were <laughs> dropped into, into it, it. Right? Yeah. at a very. <laughs> You know, mm. quite an advanced level. <laughs> that is the sort of thing that you 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 do build up to, like a a, a frog boiling in a pot, where you don't really notice mm. that, <laughs> that it's hell. That it's hell. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. And they they redefine your reality. Is there a, a sketch in the idea of surprise parenthood? Mm. Um, oh, absolutely. I think there yeah. is. There I mean, there's certainly the movie, movie Three Men and a Baby. I was going to say the movie Instant Family with Mark Wahlberg that came out last year. Right. A different that... level of you know <laughs> Wahlberg Gutenberg. Mm. Same kind of thing. Wait, so oh. what happened in that Both movie? Both Bergs. <laughs> we got the cover of the two big Bergs. Instant family, like somebody just shows up and goes, oh, this is your kid? I, I know. I think the, the premise is that <clears throat> um, Mark Wahlberg is married to Rose Byrne and they want to have kids and they go to adopt a baby because everyone wants a cute little baby. Mm. But then they find three siblings who are teenagers and preteens and they were like, I guess we'll take them. Yeah, it's, right. It's quite a nice. That's nice. It's premise. nice. It's a nice little premise of like yeah. foster and adopt mm. older children. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's like the trials and tribulation of just becoming an in an instant family. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You really yeah. pitched that film to me. I <laughs> love yeah, it. I want to see this. I don't normally want to go check out Mark Wahlberg, Wahlberg films. No, I, like... I mean, does he sort of run out of an exploding truck or something at any point? Just, I think he's trying to be a good dad the whole oh, film. Oh no! Nice. Yeah. I'll cry. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so then what about people who genuinely get surprised in the family? <laughs> They're know. not even planning it. Yeah. Oh, like when someone... Like, like a literal stalk, sorry. Oh, no, 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 that's the thing. Like when you're a kid and um, you're like, oh, I just really would like a guinea pig. I hope Santa brings me one. And mm-hmm. it's like... Bah, bah. And, you know, you... You know, yeah. you need to make sure your kid mm. really wants one. But what if you're one of those people who should be listening to the a pet is not for a pet is not just for Christmas? Mm, sure. It's like, here's a baby. What? You said that baby was cute the other day. Oh <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, all right. So we'll start. Like, I mean, it's like I just I don't I can't quite figure out the mm. exact reason why they would get it. But I I think a stork. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a stork. Sorry. When, when you first said that, I thought you meant a stalk. Like, so, like there's a stalker. Like, <laughs> like, like the baby's the baby's following you. He grew out of a cabbage patch. You're like, uh oh. Oh no. I didn't but know it was this all kind the of things we tell kids where babies come from. Actually, terrifying if in real life. You're very mm. right. Yeah, I've got. Okay. What if you're at home alone? Mm. It's at nighttime. You mm. get a phone call, and then it's somebody saying. I can't say who this is, but there's a baby crawling towards your house. And then if the baby touches you, you are its parent. <laughs> right? And so now you've got to somehow lock Try the house up. Avoid the baby. <laughs> and you gotta not and it, admits to not touch it. Like, yeah. They're they're just it's just this weird rule in society. Babies are born out of a of, out of an oven. Mm. Like an actual And you get a phone furnace. call from a stranger yeah. who can't say their name. Yeah. <laughs> Chooses the parent. Mm, like well, that. And, and, and it's, it's, it's follows, but for babies. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. Yes. That's really good. It's parenthood. It's a horror film um, it where follows. the whole true horror is responsibility and admitting that you are vulnerable to the idea of loving something outside of yourself. The true <laughs> horror. Um, it's genuinely not that difficult. To the, love yeah. or to parent? To, pa- to, to love and parent. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, time consuming. I feel like it's very similar. Mm. Like, I don't is. want to diminish parenthood. <laughs> it, no, no. <laughs> if anything, you're heightening it. Mm. Literally yesterday, as my roommate left, he was like, so you're all right looking after the kid. And I was trying to coax our cat out from under the truck. And I was mm. like, dude, I'm genuinely more worried about this cat getting hurt mm. right now. The <laughs> kid is five. He's pretty self-sufficient at this mm. point. Mm. So I'm just saying cats. Cannot understand you when you're like, hey, get out from under that fucking massive truck. Mm. It's, yeah, I haven't, I, this is exactly why I can't have animals. Um, because, I, first of all, I don't like having the responsibility, which seems like a strange thing from a person as a pet. But also, I just. As a, as a pet. child. As, as a child. <laughs> sorry, I'm an idiot. But also just having something that. <laughs> that something surgery. something that can't. I had too? it. Do you guys we heard? Have, we have the dog <laughs> brain surgery. Oh my god! So no, it's great. It's, it's great. You get the dog brain, and you're like, oh my god, am I as smart as a dog or as dumb as a dog? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone at, at Sans Pants is getting the dog brain surgery. It's, it's so thing. cool. <laughs> I'm trying to get on board with some. Um... I think that would be so good, kind of in a way. <laughs> Right, like, 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 if you could get a dog brain, like you're still you, but you now you have a dog brain, and people would, people would make so many excuses for you. You're like, like you do whatever dumb stuff, and people would be like, it's okay, they have a dog brain. I'm very sorry, I am hungry for microphone currently. <laughs> so you can still talk. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, I've but, got a human body. Dogs yeah. don't have the. The vocal I had yeah. the surgery to get a dog brain. Yeah, so you mm. were you'd already had yeah. developed language mm. skills and all that stuff. Mm. And then you got the yeah, dog it's brain. It's muscle just, memory. Yeah, to mm. get that excuse to be a dumbass. Mm. Yeah, and you're like, I love tearing up furniture, and how can I go about society mm. okaying this love of mine? Has anybody done a Freaky Friday type scenario movie situation where the dog brain goes into the owner? And then they're the shaggy like, dog. Tim Allen's the yeah. shaggy dog. Is that what that is? That is that. Really? Um, also, Greg Greg Larson. Um, he just, just had a tweet that was exactly that. <laughs> what yeah. do you mean? Greg Larson, he was like, um, it was basically so that you, Freaky Friday with you and a dog, and then now you can go fuck dogs. You know what? <laughs> I saw that tweet and I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The dog is happy because he can something, something. The man is happy because he can sit he on can, the couch or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> he can fuck dogs now. <laughs> yeah. No good, mm. but oh, comedy good gold. Good work, Greg Larson. 
God, I like so, that. So he knows the sketch has legs. <laughs> mm, yeah, four of them. I mean, the dog. The, <laughs> Wolf. I think. Yeah. Is, I mean. I mean. I know that. But this is your. Your. This is your outside dog brain idea. Are you okay with this oh, going please, down? Please oh, take the dog brain. I mean, it needs, it needs to. It needs, needs to, to get out of our dog brain and um, into the dog, dog brain world. surgery um, I think, for life improvements. Mm, I think uh, there might be a twist on the um the adopting a child thing we were talking about earlier. Adopting a man with a dog's brain. Mm. <laughs> Yes. I saw you hurt because you were like, that's not my idea, but we're going to have to talk about that now. Okay. I've been here for so long, but that's okay. I'm going to touch a banana now. How am I doing? Because you're in a monologue. Man, this is actually incredible. <laughs> you're, you're, you're saying what I'm all thinking. Um, <laughs> oh. so much. This, is a real uh, bad, this is a real bad top. Would you eat that? I don't like bananas. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you're um, such a brave man. Yeah. I can't be seen. Like, I'm under public <laughs> scrutiny. I can't be seen to be wasting food. That's one of the biggest environmental issues we have. For me, for me, that banana is, you know, really underdone. I, uh, for me, it would have to be, co you know, completely covered in brown, <laughs> mm. obviously, sort of, uh, you know, so there's not, none of that disgusting white. I think the skin shouldn't be as thick as that. It should be almost paper, <laughs> paper Ooh. thin where you're kind of like, you know, oh, you're right. That's that's something. Yeah. Like <laughs> so that. the stringiness has like stuck and adhered itself yeah. to the edible banana. Just yeah. to try to hold the mush mm. together. Yeah. And to be honest, you get to have the joy of peeling off the strings and almost just eating them by the, by themselves. That's oh, like one of the, 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 the <laughs> cheese strings. Like a cheese string. Stand me, shape me. Yeah. <laughs> I can never forget that theme song. <laughs> so what do you Oh, is that yeah. Biggest Stringers? Is that what they yeah. did? Me, Dip me any way you want Whoa. me. String me, stretch me any way you please. As long as you eat me, because <laughs> I'm all natural cheese. <laughs> I sing that all the time. I was, it does. I was living in that town when they were releasing that product. I was in I was you were in, in Bega? I was going I was going to high school in Bega at the very time. Oh, saying it wrong. I tell you that's what, where my parents you went remember? On really? That's where we would go summer as children. They, they, oh. they would go to Bega or to Tathra? They would go to Tathra but yeah. then I would have to my my mate like my yeah the one that lives there. Um he went to Bega High so we would just go and hang out in Bega all the Wait, time. Wait, what year did he graduate? <laughs> 2011? I want to say graduated. 2011. Oh, well that's Ten years, Ten years younger, than, younger you. than me. So <laughs> I reckon, yeah, I think that kid that was probably four when I was graduating. Um, <laughs> no, whatever. Saw him down at the milk eight. bar. Yeah, the yeah. cheese bar. I assume it is there. Yeah. Is it the, the, the cheese? Cheese. Yeah, that's right. They don't have a milk bar there. <laughs> yeah. They don't want people big... to know what happens pre-cheese. Hey, it's a right. huge conspiracy. You came down to Melbourne and you were like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> So it's like the cheese, cheese here is is like wet. Yeah, weird. you're drinking and wet cheese. Like a ricotta, Ugh. like you're drinking the ricotta juice. That's fucking yeah. gross. Okay. Mm. Can like, I ask a question about yeah. cheese from a man from the famous Bega? God, I, I've been hoping that this would happen, <laughs> and so hit me. Um, I would like to preface this with Wolf. <laughs> mm. Hit me. Is cheese just old milk? <laughs> um. Well. <laughs> is cheese milk and time? <laughs> No, it's funny. like it's like jokes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, gosh, I wish I knew. I just thought you whip you whip cream, it turns into butter, and then you whip butter, and it turns into cheese. But I'm also sure that that doesn't happen either. <laughs> so I think the answer is magnets. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, yeah. No, I'm glad I could be of some help. Now, I think Andy was going somewhere. Yes, he's with, sorry. Uh, please, please, please. Oh, no, that's okay. Everyone, thanks for including me. Um, <laughs> uh, no, the idea was that, that, that basically that either you, you, you you're 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 you know a grown person of about our age, mm. and then you get parents, right? Rather than you adopting a child, you you get your own parents, oh. right? And you get sort of to have older elderly parents, or you adopt a new set of elderly parents, or something like that, mm. or possibly, um, yeah, they they adopt you, or or or, or something like that. Okay, so there's like an older retired couple being like, yeah. I'm looking for a twenty something, you yeah, really have their life direction, mm. yeah. Mm. Or that would be nice. Maybe you and could even adopt someone your own age, but as your child, Ooh, right? Okay. So you get to s feel what it's like to be the much older parent of like a like an our age person, 
Were but you guys you being do... my dads? Yeah, exactly. So that kind of Wait, business. We could be one. We could <laughs> be your dads. Abs- dad. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, so we're excited to learn. And then when you come yeah. around. <laughs> Come around for family dinners and stuff, and we. I've just been using Velcro for twenty six years. <laughs> I I still use the bunny ears method <laughs> of one loop, two loops, and then you tie the loops in a knot like oh. that. Oh. So, I was I was shamed out of that. I reckon when I was about thirteen, I was mocked for doing the bunny ears method. What? It's still a like, very functional method. I, like I'm tying my shoes. My shoes look just like <laughs> your shoes. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean I'm doing it like a baby? <laughs> oh, did you ever um? When I was about 15, I used to wear Converse, and to make myself cooler, what I would do is I would Google interesting shoe tying yeah. methods, and there was this one particular mm. website that just had the dude saying it was like, Phil Baker's uh, shoe tying wizardry, <laughs> um, and he had a method for tying shoes that could be summarized in a GIF, and this was back when GIFs were short. Yeah. So it would you grab two pieces of shoelace, and mm. they wouldn't be pre-looped or anything, and you'd just go like that, and I mastered it, I think, twice. But it was very impressive. And, and it, it makes like, a knot. Yeah. He just went boom, boom, and it worked. That's insane. Do you know how to do it? I know or... how to find it online. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Baker's sh- uh, show like I, wizardry. I think it had wizard in there, but I don't know about the person's name. But it was just a, it was just a normal name. But mm. um, I used to tie my shoes up with like, so instead of having crisscross, crisscross, it would like loop around. So it would be like a circle and then a cross and then a circle and then cross. And then I'd tie my laces up with a noose. <laughs> Oh, Whoa. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You are so yeah. dark and deep and yeah. thoughtful probably about oh, stuff. Yeah, you know? um, I'll have you know I cried or teared up uh, reading the lyrics to Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge, the My Chemical Romance album, on the way home on a plane <laughs> <laughs> while I had an ear infection. The airport had a sanity and we stopped in and I was like, um, Mum, can I have this? And she was like, yeah, it's not expensive. <laughs> And you you teared up I was reading like, the lyrics. Wow, this is so sad. <laughs> wow, this, this this man who I later found out their band that band formed because of nine eleven, and I was like, this man understands my pain as a privileged white girl who's they, just a child. They formed because, because of nine eleven. <laughs> yeah, in yeah. what way? <laughs> Being like, we gotta let her finish. But yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be polite, but no. Um, so uh, I guess I guess maybe a friend of the show, Matt Stewart. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So he does primates. So I think this is a cooler fact. You know the Umbrella Academy. Mm-hmm. Yes. That only Same happened because of 9/11 in connection. So what had happened was um, Gerard Way, lead singer of My Chemical Romance, um, used to do like I used to be an artist and do animation and stuff. And he got he got like an internship at Cartoon Network, and he ended up pitching right. this show called The Breakfast Monkey, and it didn't get passed through or whatever. And then he was in New York when the Twin Towers fell, and he saw it happen, and he was sort of like, "Oh my god, this this is horrible. The world's mm. changed. I need to do something." And that something was forming a band. So their first album had an album. Look, he went from <laughs> he went from an artist it's such to a, a musician. Different artist. It's a different arc. <laughs> it's super good, like for nine eleven to happen, and then you'd be like. I need to like help the world yeah. with my music. Yeah. <laughs> they completely redefined a genre. Like, yeah, they look, did like, it's like it, it happened to be my chem, but like it could have just been some dude in a garage feeling mm. the exact same way. Mm. That is true. We don't know. Well, <laughs> I mean, there probably were a lot of bands that formed because of 9 yeah. 11. Surely. It, I got to follow my dream. Yeah. Well, we're going to die soon. We could be under attack. You know, we're a country mm. on, uh, mm. uh, at war. We need to bring music to the people. He was there like the Bob Dylan of the time, you know, getting them mm. through Vietnam or whatever Bob Dylan did. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, Bob Dylan, I was like, wow, I hope you offer some explanation. Yeah. Like, wow, yeah. that is not a touchstone I I'm have. I'm not sure what his... So, yeah, so he saw the Towers Fall, formed the band, they released their first album, and then the second album was Three Cheese for Sweet Revenge, which had like Helena and it like really propelled the whole... Three like, three cheese for Sweet Revenge? <laughs> yeah, bend me, shape me, anyway. <laughs> great, great. Um, <laughs> it, so that propelled them. It really redefined what it meant to be emo because emo existed before, but it was like that pop punk emo and it sort mm. of changed the like big direction emo was going. Then um, he ended up writing for, not illustrating, even though he was like an artist, mm. The Umbrella Academy, which was a comic book series. Mm. And I think it can be argued that he either only got the job because he was so well-known as a lyricist mm. and frontman, or it only did as well as it did because he was so famous. Uh, point in case, I bought the entire set <laughs> of those comics because the guy from my favourite band wrote them. Mm. And then um, he... And then they did the Umbrella Academy. It was, you know, popular enough or interesting enough that the right people saw it. That got its own Netflix show. 
And uh, I got onto primates by explaining to Matt Stewart that um, that monkey only exists because of 9-11. <laughs> because he tried pre-9-11 to get a monkey on TV and it mm, didn't work. The breakfast monkey. The breakfast monkey never got on television. Mm. It didn't work. You do have to explain as well that you hadn't spoken to Matt at this point. And I'd just never met Matt in my life. <laughs> an unprompted message to be like, Okay, just so you know, <laughs> this is a, like this it is as close a... as it gets to like a theory of everything. <laughs> like you're you're proving that everything truly is connected. Mm. Yeah, well, the monkeys are nine eleven. Well, mm. Matt does love to talk about pre and post nine eleven world because it does. is a different world. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like, did you know <laughs> you are right? <laughs> um, sorry. There's... No, I'm I'm. I mean, I I don't even remember what things were like now with monkeys or without monkeys pre nine eleven. Mm. I um. Our relationship to the apes. Um, relationship. Mm. <laughs> I think I'm not pleased with that. The dog brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, we might have more people coming in. Yes. Do we have more people coming in at 12? I think there is somebody coming in at 12. <sighs> we can um, shuffle out. Time to leave. Yeah, Thank you. Time to leave the this tank. This has been Thanks. amazing. Thanks Thank for having us. Thank you so, so much. For yeah, with it's us. been so great. Thank uh, you for helping us get us yes. closer to this uh to this, uh, well, it felt like an impossible goal, but we are That's approaching really it slowly. Okay? Yeah. We're getting, we're, yeah, we're 20 away from halfway. Mm. Oh, beautiful. So, I mean, a... but it has been six hours. Yeah. So it's still, <laughs> it's still a... okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, well, at the moment, we're still me, relatively it's okay. And itself. it's kind yeah. of insane that we are and that we've made it six hours in and we're feeling. You know, there's some. This it feels like there's some weight to like my frontal lobe. I'm like, feeling <laughs> like some pressure up here. I don't know if you've got that. The comedy's bulging. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I think it, maybe it's just that I'm not used to interacting with this many people. Yeah, <laughs> just being at home with the kids all the time, and now like it's almost the uh, it's the it's the weight of humanity that's the uh, the challenge. I think I'm. I think. Maybe I'm starting to crumble from from under eating a little bit. <laughs> mm. Wow! I did think I was like hmm, they've been at it for a while. What can I bring? And everything I thought of bringing was something that would stop you talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, good luck. That's, 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 what, that's what I'm doing right now. Yes, yeah. um, um, you're the best. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, thank you so, so much. For much. Having us. It, this was so it's, wonderful. Mm, good luck I, with wicked. the rest of the six the, the next six hours. And may I we? say the be the first to say wolf. Oh, yeah. well, you. you don't know how much that means. Yeah, I actually don't. No, don't. we do. I and that's big dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good luck, guys. Have a lovely day. Thank you. I think also adopting a, a guy, a dog with a dog brain, is, a, is actually an idea. <laughs> it's humanitarian. <laughs> <laughs> See, ya. See, ya. See ya. Thank you so, so much. So it's, like, it's like a crossover between the shaggy dog and instant family. Right, mm. you 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 get an instant instant ch dog brain child, or or, I, or sure a, I think it's a male. Mm. Um, you get a dog brain. Did you write down adopting somebody your own age? No. So wait. Well, so what? What was the idea? Well, the idea is that you adopt someone your own age mm -hmm. so that you can see what it's like to be the parent of an adult, um, you know, a child. Right. Yeah. So basically, you're seeing what it's like for your parents. So. Mm -hmm. you know you're trying to maybe you're trying to get a bit of an insight into what the experience is like for mm -hmm. them trying to prepare yourself for later in your life so it makes you closer to your parents yeah it brings you closer because you, you can you can go to them and be like yeah tell me about it you know it's tough mm -hmm. um having a having a kid who's making bad choices like the one like it is tough for you to have me who is making this choice of having a child mm. who's my own age like i can see why you're frustrated by that because i'm also frustrated by things that mm -hmm. my adult child does that i have that is my own age also mm. i think this is a thing that actually might happen in uh, i've heard in maybe in japan something weird to do with like a, uh, it, inheritance rules to do with businesses or maybe China, somewhere, where like people are adopting people so that they can inherit, so, so that they can then pass on a business or, or something or other to someone else. I think I think the idea that um, that maybe once this becomes a thing is that people start adopting younger and younger children and start to adopt you know kids their own age. Yeah, because at a younger age they want to be able to relate to their parents. Mm. But then over time they kind of realize that. Now they're actually parenting somebody, but then they're also being parented. So in a way, they have they don't quite have the same uh, experience as their parents because their mm. parents are taking care of mm. sort of in a way a person who's also taking care of somebody. Mm. So they then get their kid 
their adopted kid to adopt someone so that they can know what it's like to take care of somebody yeah, who right. can't who quite is... take care of themselves 100% and is also taking care of of, of, of some of kid and so then it kind of uh it kind of gets a bit more recursive, recursive. and then they keep adding more, more yes. kids to it. it iterates infinitely mm. everybody ends up adopting everybody else mm -hmm. until eventually there's only one family yeah. and then we realize they actually didn't need to adopt we've been connected all together the whole time in the great you know the the, the great fraternity of humanity that we right. were all already part of and why couldn't we treat each other like that to begin with and exactly. then we realize that families don't get along all that well and we start a war. Yeah. <laughs> and parent versus child. Yes. Turning the parents against the children. Just gonna check who's coming. Who's who joining us next in the in the yeah. in the tank? God, the tank is running hot today, isn't it? Yeah. It's pretty exciting. I don't know if I need to check any kind of messages or anything like that. Gosh, I've got some messages though. Is this really obnoxious? Should I not be doing this? Um I think maybe let's all do one. Yeah. Okay, I was gonna be like, I think one of us has to be continuing to talk. Mm. Um, do you do you mind if I do check one more thing? Yeah, no, you go right ahead okay. and check one more thing, Alistair. I can. I mean, I'm perfectly capable of coming up with with things on my own. Like, like, how about this? Right, coffee. Right, we get the we get the bean of the coffee, and we make drink from the coffee. I know, I know I've talked a lot about drinks and solids and liquids on this show, but, you know, the states of matter are very much the fertile ground for, for, for a lot of our comedy and I think uh, probably some of the funniest topics in the world are the states of matter. But like The states of matter? The states of matter, right? Oh. But I, what I want to know is like... That's very us. What other, what other, what other, other foods can you, could, you, could you sort of roast and then turn into a drink? Like, like we could surely go through every, every sort of all the foods that are in the kitchen Try drying, drying them out, roasting them like coffee beans. Mm -hmm. Grind them, put them into a coffee machine, yeah. and then just see what we get out. Yeah, that's you know, true. Have yeah, we okay. got? Have we gone through all of this? Have we looked into it? I mean, we. I don't. I've I don't think we've barely gone through most of the plants in our backyard. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of weeds. We just pull them out and toss them aside, mm. allow them to rot in our backyard until eventually they're all dry and brown. We go. I should probably put that in the green bin. But like then that. we don't. But then, then we, we move house. Exactly. Now, what if instead of doing that, we when mm. they dry out, we sort of break them apart, dust some of that dirt off, and then put it into a pot, and then add some hot water and just see what flavor see what it creates. It JP. Oh, my God. This is also a first for the podcast, <laughs> which has never had ever before. Jess Perkins. Hello. Hello, Jess Perkins. I'm so worried about both of you. Ah, no, we're, we're, what, what, right. we're, we're, I don't know, we're 81 in. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 we're fine. Oh, well, we're good. Hey, hey, <laughs> what do you think of this idea? Drying out weeds and drinking them. Come on. <laughs> no, because That's I, comedy. I mean, I think it's a, look, Andy's talking about how we haven't taken that many foods from our cupboard. And dried them out and roasted them like coffee beans, and then put water through them to see what kind of drink they make. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the carrot. You know, you've eaten carrot, but have you tried carrot coffee? Have you tried drying mm -hmm. carrots and then roasting them? Uh huh. And then making carrot and then grinding drink? them up. Yes, grinding very, them very up. Fine. Yeah, very fine into a, a powder. Yeah, mm -hmm. essentially. Powder? Sure, mm. sure, sure. Powder. powder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's oh, a I'm jet. So <laughs> <laughs> now you're getting it. <laughs> I'm so so worried about both of you. But okay. We we've tried so many times to get you onto the regular podcast, but it never works out because of scheduling issues, yes. and we never ask you until the last possible second. <laughs> so we thought the only way for for it to make it work yeah. scheduling wise would be for us to just continuously be doing a yeah. podcast, and then you just come when you're available. I'd be guilted into you, it. You you dip in because it's going to be like like. Well, we're do we're going to be doing it nonstop. So, what do you mean you're busy? <laughs> you're you're right? busy for the full for, twenty-four hours. Forever, Cut. forever. Really? Because we'll keep going until you're free. <laughs> and All even right? then, even then, I was like, hmm, I've got plans in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I could come in around midday. Yeah, I could do like a fifteen minutes, and then I can go. But I gotta. <laughs> but I really, I must stress, I do have plans. The room in here is starting to smell a little bit <laughs> strange. You guys are just eating random veggie sausages uh, like this. Mm. I get a bit stir crazy if we do two back to back episodes of Do Go On. Mm. Oh, we get unbelievably tired. We yeah. get unbelievably tired after two, but we but, started really early and got less sleep. Yeah, <laughs> and, so in, in order to get around that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Smart, 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 smart. Mm, sleep you. not necessary. I don't think so. No, no. 
Um, I think, uh, yeah, we, 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 what we might be learning is that probably one of the reasons that we are always tired when we do the podcast regularly is because we do it in the evening. Yes. And that's one of the tired times. Yes. Of, Traditionally, yes, yeah, I agree. Know, it's a, the, the, the sleep, very much the sleepy end of the day. But there can be a nice kind of like I'm very tired and that's when you go a bit loopy and some oh, of your sure. best ideas, some mm-hmm. of my best jokes have been mm. when I've been over to, mm. well, not best. But, so are you, no. Wait, are you telling us where you get your crazy ideas from? No. <laughs> <laughs> how do you come up with all your jokes? I'm sleep deprived <laughs> most of the time. But also how do you write, where do you get your ideas for reports? <laughs> That you do on Do Go On, the podcast that she's on. <laughs> hey, I'm a step. Where nice. do you get your ideas for plugs? Hey, Don't worry I about it. often look at the person and I think, what is it about them that I most want to brag about? Mm, like other that. people okay. to know. And, the, and I mean, for I me, it's. Things about you. No, there's no, no, so no. many. There's yeah. so many things you could brag about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just um, knowing me is a thrill. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Isn't it? It is. It's really. I'm, I'm enjoying it. What you thing, you now, might what know you Jess think? from the best thing about her, our friendship. <laughs> her yeah. relationship to me. And the memories we've shared. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tilt. <laughs> Now, Jess, you, yes, you what, might. Sorry, what, I just got to finish this thought. You might know her from where I know her from, which is my subjective experience <laughs> of interacting with her in my life. <laughs> Please welcome. <laughs> it's the most confusing. You probably know her best from inside of my head, where I see her through my eye holes and hear her in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> See, Al, it was worth letting him finish. Right, and I agree. And mm. I, and you know what? And I just look impatient when I'm holding my face, but I actually am enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. That's my enjoying face. Mm. Like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like my face every time Matt interrupts me on our podcast. It mm. looks like I'm saying, fuck you, you dumb fuck. <laughs> Shut up and let me finish a fucking sentence. This but is what the- women have been talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but on the inside, I'm going, ha, 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 ha. This is actually quite good. Very I know good. why we, we built a whole podcast around the idea of people interrupting someone while they're speaking. Mm. <laughs> now, continue. <laughs> and and that's obviously, called, called now continue. Yes, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, obviously I agree with that as a general principle and as an overall project, that is the basis of what we do. But every single specific <laughs> incident <laughs> fills me with rage. <laughs> I've thought about slicing your head off. <laughs> slicing. Just, just I, I enjoy the beauty mm. of like how like sharp your knife yeah. would have to be to just go. Because a slice yeah. is pretty quick, right? Yeah. I mean, heads are traditionally hacked, aren't they? Like Ooh, I mentioned, there's a fair bit of hacking that's got to go. Yeah. It's the, I reckon it's that bone bit in the back. It's the bone. That, that, that in yeah. the back of the neck. Mm. Imagine how sharp the blade was on guillotines. Back mm, in the beheading mm, days, you know? Yeah. Both sharp and heavy. Because I yeah. reckon that's, it's the heaviness that's doing a lot of the work yeah, as well, Yeah, I think right? you're right. And just like, you know, but I mean, it'd be so easy. You know, mm. it's like you, once you find that formula of heaviness mm. to sharpness. Yeah. yeah. Doing yeah. a lot of the heavy dropping was the heaviness, wasn't it? <laughs> Everyone talks about the heavy lifting. Yeah. What are the heavy dropping? <laughs> you know? I mean, without the heavy dropping, there wouldn't be anything to lift. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I what? guess, well, you're right. I guess. Except, let, for that, except for that first time, mm, yeah, when you first put it on there, yeah, I imagine you don't put it on down the bottom and then have to lift it up. Mm, yeah, you yeah. put it on up the top. Oh well, that's what you're. Yeah, that's what you're picturing to make his thing work. I yeah. was trying to make it not work. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know whose side oh, I'm on. You obviously um, don't understand how this goes here. This we undermine each other yeah. on this podcast. Oh. We're here to take each other down by putting them up there. Putting them up there. Yeah. Well, you can't put and bring them down without putting it up first. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. It's an alley-oop. I'm here to build you up mm. and just fill you with praise and compliments. Thank and then you. you two can just cut each other down again. Oh, I love that about yeah, you. And time. I hate that about Alan. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, but, what food yeah. would be good to dry out no. and grind up? So no, can, I, can, make I, a can I suggest something just on what we were talking about just Absolutely. then? Right? This idea of, um, of, of putting things up and putting things down. What if there was no entropy? So we're imagining a universe where there's no entropy. So nothing ever falls down, basically, right? That mm. means that, like, early in human civilization, mm. we would have, we probably would have lifted everything up and things had mm. already, everything had already be up by now, right? There wouldn't be mm. any more lifting to do because yeah, nothing ever falls down. Yeah. Is that interesting? <laughs> I mean, look, that's interesting. So, so wait, entropy is things falling down? Well, entropy is things um, going to from a state of sort of high potential energy mm-hmm. uh, to low potential energy, I believe, yeah, right? right, and a state of 
basically uh, order to disorder. And so I think like that's mm. why like you know this this pen like that is uh, if it, if I could balance it like that, maybe I'm getting entropy wrong. No, but that's okay. Look, I'm sure that's got to be part of it, right? Yeah, or you know, like it's got to like, be a big part. Like surely balancing. Surely, surely. <laughs> I'm I, zoned out. If I could balance my pen like that, and it would stand up right, upright like bit. that, right? That's high entropy, mm -hmm. right? And then if it falls over like that, oh, you know, it's a mess now. Yeah, that it's, was it's, so it's, ordered like oh, that. Oh. Now this disorder. Oh. Yeah, I can't handle it. Oh, universe, why oh. do you hate beauty? <laughs> Okay. And I'm it's a Virgo, a, so I just like order, you know? Sure. Yeah. I'm, sure. And I like Virgos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's ordered because yeah. we're, we're hanging out mm. and mm. so there's no conflict. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, what, are, what are you that likes Virgos? Hey? What are you? To, what, what about you makes you like Virgos? Oh, Vir that's because I'm a Virgo liker. Right. Yeah, sure. So that's kind of an attribute I was born with. <laughs> because of science and genetics. Because of science and <laughs> yeah, genetics. Yeah, yeah. For a genetic reason, I like these uh, things that are pseudoscience. Wouldn't that be a beautiful intersection of science and bullshit? If we could find the genetic basis on which people like Virgos. Mm. You know, there's a gene for liking Virgos. Now, Virgos themselves, that whole category is bullshit. But there is a scientific basis for the people who think they're pretty cool. <laughs> Who get along with it really well? The group that we can, we've been able to identify the the specific gene <laughs> that causes people to get along very well with Virgos. Virgos, of which course, which is a thing that doesn't really yeah. have any meaning. <laughs> it's complete bullshit. Yeah, but there is a group of people mm. who believe wholeheartedly mm. in Virgos, mm. and mm. they like them. Mm. Yeah. They're not bad. Yeah, <laughs> they believe in them, and they reckon they're all right. Not too bad. Not too bad. We had it. We were on the topic. Oh, was it? Was it? Was it? Was it, was it something about grinding up? No, no, no. That's right. No, no. This was your thing about the the, the disorder thing. I wanted to see where you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, so just the idea that you put everything up and then it stays there. Well, I say I don't know whether it'd be because this is what what I find amazing about the universe. Right? Mm. Okay. Is that when you pick up um, stones near a lake mm -hmm. to throw it onto or, or any body of water? To, you're Does right. it have to be a lake? But it's good if it's a lake because it's they're flatter. Okay, sure. You know, mm. and the and but but a river does work. I think. Yeah. I think you're right. A river does work. Same. And so maybe an ocean a, wants to get skimmed a flat every rock. now and then. Yeah, yeah. Right. really, really. I've tried to skim an ocean once, but those waves. <laughs> but yeah. sometimes, sometimes the ocean is flat. Sometimes it's very sometimes. glassy. You know what? I was being. If you're in a bay, I was being. It can be I was quite generalizing flat. so much mm. about the about mm. the ocean. I feel you were so bad. You were body of water shaming, weren't you? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I apologize for every, everything I said up until this point. Great. Um, Great. Now we can move on, finally. <laughs> now, from a nice base level of apology, the build, you build a solid, solid platform mm. out of um, regret, mm -hmm. right? And then mm -hmm. that's what you can build an idea on. Alistair, go ahead. Okay. So, you know, when you skim those things, mm. it's been, what, like millions of years mm. that the Earth has existed? A couple yeah. of million? Yeah, sure. Three million? Five billion? Something, Something like, like that, that. Like, mm. right? Somewhere in, right? in, that, in that order of things. And we've been picking up things. We've mm. been throwing them like that. Mm. Yet there's still good rocks available. Mm. Good flat rocks. People have been picking up these rocks, chucking them into the Chucking rivers. them into the ocean. Like that. There's still some great Thousands rocks of years. available. <laughs> good top quality, perfect skimming rocks that no one's ever picked up before. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I look, I don't know what that means, but it just <laughs> if that's not magic or something, you know, like, what if the ocean is, or the lake, or the body of water, mm -hmm. is Thank you. identifying the best rocks that have been thrown in it, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. somehow, I mean, obviously using tides, if it is an ocean, mm -hmm. do lakes still have tides? I reckon some of them probably do. Right, mm -hmm. so it sort of like pushes those good rocks back out so that mm -hmm. people can have Mate, Are you saying fun. that the ocean likes having rocks skimmed across it? It just likes other people having fun. But do you think it would be satisfying to have that rock bounce along the surface? If you bounce like? it properly, it probably feels kind of nice. I think mm. it would make feel like nice. A, ooh, ooh, you know, yeah. <laughs> somebody like you know when like somebody like lightly runs their finger down your back, and it's yeah. somewhere between a tickle and a scratch. Yeah, like, and you're yeah. like, oh, oh, this is nice. Yeah, it's like that. that. Yeah, I think the ocean likes it. No, yeah. your body yeah. now. But 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 is this a miracle? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like millions of yeah. years. You know, or do you think good rocks are always coming up through the earth? Working their way up from the volcanoes underneath. I, I I wonder if it was. I wonder if it was. It would have been that just any any kind of rock 
that was like we, we might be sort of looking at this from the our anthropocentric point of view, but like any kind of rock mm. that 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 was the one that wound up on the beaches would have been the kind of rock that we found something fun to do with. So, for example, oh. if the natural processes of erosion, etc., had made rocks that are shaped like crucifixes or something mm -hmm. like that, and so those came up onto the beach, maybe the fun thing that we'd all do when we went to the beach would be to, like, pick up the crucifix and, like, point it at the ocean and mm. say, back, back, <laughs> or something like that, you yeah. know, and pretend like it was a vampire. Mm. Something fun like something that. Fun. <laughs> or, or say, like, Dear Jesus, you sacrificed everything for us. Yeah, and uh, yeah. we love you. You know, we, we, we worship like that. Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. Or finding know. some sort of insect or lizard or something and using uh, so that it matched the size of the crucifix mm. and crucifying <laughs> oh, that little like lizard. A, something fun. Like fun. To fun. Do fun the a pr stuff. praying mantises. Just crucifying them. Yeah, and it's hard to nail down their little mm -hmm. weird arms. You had those ones like that. <laughs> And so it takes time. It's like a fun all day activity. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so I think you're oh, right. Oh, kids, can't you just go down to the lake and crucify some lizard Christs <laughs> or something? Get out of mum's hair. <laughs> Skimming. So School holidays, they kill me. <laughs> just go down to the lake and crucify some lizards. <laughs> Don't come back until the sun sets. It was a different time. It was a, it was a different time. You can't do that anymore. Can't do that. <laughs> You, you, you can't just tell your kids, don't come back until it's dark. Yeah. What yeah. a weird thing to have done ever. Mm. You know? Do you think it was a thing that people did? Well, yeah, I mean, or our parents are lying to us because mm. my parents definitely would tell stories like that. That they'd be out They'd just disappear, until, like, yeah. yeah. They'd what? go and hang out with their friends and then they'd come back when it was dark. I do I do got to be honest. I did a fair bit of that with my friend James when I was did uh, you? a young boy. Where did you go? Oh, well, well, what yeah. did you crucify? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a guilty laugh. You crucified something at some point. And I, I, I mean, look, I gotta look back. We did some we probably did some stuff. It was, you know, that kind of stuff of like getting some ants, putting them in a jar, mm. getting some snails, put them in with the ants, we'll look and see what happens. Oh, the snails went all bubbly. Oh, the ants are dead. <laughs> oh well, science. Science. Yeah. yeah. Wow, okay. Um, but then, what did you? There's a big eel. Let's throw rocks at it. You know. Yeah, that I think that's stuff. kind of kids. Did stuff. you kill any eels? Do you think? I don't think we killed this eel, but we might have injured it. Mm. I, I, I feel bad about that often. You think about that eel? Yeah. Do you think there was just one eel. who lived in the in the creek or whatever the lake? Or it was. It was. It was in the ocean. It was a this weird, huge <laughs> eel. You you ran down to the ocean. We were we were at an ocean. But like we were at an ocean. Like your parents would take you to the ocean and then leave you there for the day. No, this was an occasion where we just walked away from the family group at a, at a you know beach barbecue type situation. Yeah, it was a right. big eel amongst the rocks. More, you know, more moray? Do you think it was a moray? I wonder if it was a moray. Ah, that's a moray. Oh, oh, oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Al looked at me. I, I, I mean, like, I was I was going there. Yeah, I, was I feel like, like oh, he was boy, saying, we've... "Do you want it or shall I?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciated when you throw rocks at eels, <laughs> and it gives you the feels that's a moray. <laughs> <laughs> then it snaps at your hand and it tears off the gland of shore. That's some already. <laughs> well, uh, the alarm bells go ring. ring. It is in the d ding. Doing things that, <laughs> per that denote psychopathy. <laughs> Like people are trying to contact us, but then obviously I shouldn't be checking this for that. I got But I did try to contact you to say, "Do you need coffee?" Oh, okay, thank, thank you, you so me. much. Yeah, we've, Evan we've brought us one and then brought we, us coffee. Okay, and we, had, we, we had some, uh, thank some you so delightful okay, McDonald's so coffee at five thirty this morning. Yeah. We've, had, we've we've meant, made more plugs about. This McDonald's on this show than we've ever had for any product. Look, I don't know if the first bit of communication about the McDonald's could be considered a plug. There was a communication breakdown between me and the server there. Yeah. Right. But if that's the kind of thing that you're into, if you want to go and experience, like, total confusion. Andy like, broke almost... down because he didn't know how to order at McDonald's. And so they said, would you like to make that a meal? And he goes... I don't know. Is it, I mean, is it, <laughs> isn't this a meal? Is this? I mean, I got to think there's a meal, you know? And it's like... 
<laughs> and you hadn't even started recording yeah. yet. I think that I think that was the problem. I was just nervous about getting to the podcast on time. Yeah. That sort of thing. I'm like, I don't think we we have time now to get to the bottom of what it what, what it constitutes a meal. meal. What yeah. Is, yeah, this philosophical question. Mm, yeah. Question. question. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, that is like. Is there a sketch in somebody are, are, talking with the people from um, McDonald's mm. about, well, I mean, it's like I, I've already got a burger and a fry. Mm. I would say that that is a meal. Yeah. Mm. And so you are offering me mm. another. Mm. I mean, is this is this too dumb to just kind of go like this is shit? Man. Well, I mean, it's probably a <laughs> it's probably a meal, a meal deal. Right. And the meal is, is it a meal deal? Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know if they call it that. They don't call it. They just call it a meal. They just call it a meal. But it's a meal deal. It is a meal deal. Yeah, yeah. But But they say they want to make it a meal. I was going to say, is the meal, is the meal just an abbreviation of meal deal? Uh, Do you want to make that a meal deal? uh, No, I mean, yeah. I don't know if they would ever say that. Make it a meal. You know. I mean, if we make it a but, meal, then surely you and I will have to sit down, you know, and yes. talk about our days and that sort of thing. I mean, that to me is making it a meal. <laughs> you know, I want to, I want to eat it with a, you know, lay out some, mm. you know, some good silver really cutlery here. Yeah, I yeah. don't have time for a meal right now. You don't need a meal in the car. You know? No, no, no. No. That's a snack. You mean you or mean a shame meal in my case? Mm. You mean grind it down into a fine powder? <laughs> Hey, and then make bread from it? I don't know if that would work. A meat bread? Who's ever heard of a meat loaf? <laughs> never. Am I going crazy here? No, Come never on. once in my life, huh? <laughs> Come on! You know what? I think this this, this has is got not... it across the line for yeah. me. That this, yeah, yeah, yeah. This meal conversation <laughs> <laughs> that I quite genuinely had earlier in the day has now, I mean, seamlessly via some sort of process mm. become it's become a sketch yeah by some bizarre alchemy you did it yeah you're you, you sound like a nightmare customer for that person oh i i, I dare say i dare say i was <laughs> they're I telling think, their colleagues about it I still think she, i think she felt a bit of fear yeah <laughs> no it's okay just a moment just a sliver just a, mo- just, a moment of fear. fear just like is like, he gonna oh, kill me? Oh, no, probably not. And it's like yeah, it's like mm. oh no, this is oh, this is what the night shift is um, yes. at, on, on, uh, at McDonald's. You know, I've heard about this and I just had never experienced it. Yeah, before, but, most yeah. of the customers they tell I have, stories of this. Yeah. <laughs> most of the customers understand the concept of McDonald's, <laughs> but every now and then one comes along. Mm. I, I I reckon I this is where my training kicks in. <laughs> this is probably going on, but I reckon I haven't been in like eaten ordered inside a McDonald's. More than ten times in my life, probably. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Like, and 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 there are, you know, it's it's like any sort of pro- profession. You need to know the technical jargon to be able to make it. And totally. I, I'm, what I'm saying is that I, as a result of that, I've sort of been locked out of the yeah. McDonald's experience. I've been discriminated against. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I think that there needs to be some kind of assistance, something to sort of support people like should me. Be like, there really should be really like there should be like a there should be a course that they do for kids in primary sure, school. Sure. Sure. So that you can just get that all locked down. I actually, what, what's a meal? Yeah. <laughs> what do they mean when they say a meal? <laughs> Man, I mean, this is bloody, you know, you, you're joking, Alistair, but this is probably where we're bloody headed these days. Yeah. You know, they'll just, <laughs> you know, what are they teaching kids in schools these days? You know, they'll, there'll be a class that's yes. just McDonald's. Yeah. Teach yeah. you how to eat McDonald's and order McDonald's and sit on your ass, mm, you know, yeah. and then, and then, and then, and then, uh, Chips. Probably chips. Probably yeah. they yeah. do an elective in chips. Yeah, probably. Drink. Oh, 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 had a drink from the cup. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's the it's um, the it's the nanny state. I, oh, what about getting your stroll through that that plastic thing? Yeah, without uh, any of it coming up. Yeah, mm. getting coming up, and don't put your finger in there because then that's like a Get finger stuck. trap. Because <laughs> all those the, the plastic's very sharp. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts unbelievably. So the only you can't pull it back through. So the only way to get the finger out is to keep going keep all going. the way. And actually, that's quite a valuable lesson. So, yeah, do do that, actually, because yeah. sometimes once you start something, you've got to finish it, right? And so, go all, look, all I know this seems stupid, through. but I'm going to write down McDonald's McDonald's class. class. <laughs> right? It sounds like hell. It sounds like the world's gone in a bad mm. place, but it's actually a really good thing for well, no, when you think about a lot it, of people right. getting hurt. Yeah. I've just so. been talking about it in a tone of voice like it's a bad thing. But, yeah. You know what? I actually think it would probably be, um, yeah. Probably a good idea. Yeah, the sooner we get it um, 
the body better already. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all for nanny states, actually. Yeah? Yeah. If if that's the nanny. Is that where it is? Yes. (laughs) The state was working in a bridal shop. (laughs) Flushing Queens. Victoria. Yeah. Victoria was working in a bridal flop and flushing Queens. Mm. Ah. Mm. Um, That's how it became the nanny state. Yeah. Yes. No word, I guess, that the state we described. Well, just exactly what the totalitarian regime prescribed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So, is this anything? I, <laughs> the uh, nanny state. I mean, it feels like satire we could do if we were on some kind of satire show. Yeah. You know, I'm actually satire. thinking it was done on. Well, uh, you know, we, yes. Tonightly did do Tonightly a version, did. a parody, but it was about the au pairs. The um, that's right. I worked on the, it. Uh, the, yes. you, uh, that's right. I worked on it. No, 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 no. Oh. I was going to say that worked on a on a different level. Mm. <laughs> oh, a, that's that right. On... I wrote that. Mm. That's, <laughs> right. that's why I thought of it. That's, right. that's my work. <laughs> yeah. And let me go. And let me just mention a few other things I've created yeah. over the years that you can buy online. <laughs> and then I thought I was hearing about this uh, this podcast. <laughs> this is that so I do go on. Yeah. Something. Oh. Something. 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 Been doing a doing been doing a bit of radio. Yeah, I was up for 24 hours just the other day. Oh, so. no, be- uh, no, really? Yeah. I almost called you Beth, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we're all the same. <laughs> oh, my God. He's such a dog, this guy. Oh, no, such a dog. Sorry, Jess, for like a hot minute. I've yeah. parked him in, and no. they're doing... I managed to reverse my car in such a way that it is kissing Jess's car. Nice. Yes. If I move in any way, I will scratch it. Yeah. It's like, if you move your car forward a bit, mm-hmm. then it's, it's no, no, thank you. I'll be back. Is- these are the kinds of dramas and that sort of thing that you That's get. Right. You only get with a live podcast. Exactly. You know? This is this is this is the the joys of live podcasting. It's stuff, real stuff like that happens. The little car kisses. Mm. You know, a little bit of car. That's right. Most podcasts, okay. none none of the no mechanical things that are mentioned usually in podcasts are ever touching lips mm. or any body parts, whatever. Mm. I mean, you know, the, the lips, I guess, I, you know, they could be anything mm-hmm. in this. They could be bumpers, bumper mm. lips, which are car lips. Mm. Yeah, the lips of the car. I yeah. mean, they should make them sort of fleshy and plump mm. so that when you do bump against a car, another car, even if it's, you know, a crash that still does some quite, some damage, it makes a noise like. Oh, yeah, I like mm. that. Or when, so they're, maybe, when they're pulled apart maybe, by yeah. the tow trucks. Maybe something. there could just be like a little bit of air in there. Right, mm. that's inside the thing. Inside the inflated bumper. Yeah, inside the inflated bumper. And then near the place where the air would get out, it's just kind of rubbery mm-hmm. and like the... flaps. And they just kind of, they just, you know, they kind of vibrate as the mm. as the mm. air goes through it. And it makes a <laughs> kind of sound or like mm. a, or whatever. Like a kiss, you know, the, yeah. the, the <laughs> sounds that kisses make. The... <laughs> yeah. The... Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a little set there's of headphones sl- that come, mm. the the sound comes back through. Yeah, there's a slight delay, and we are able to hear our our mouth noises moments after they come out of our mouth. Um, um play back to us. All right, Andy, we we need some yeah. more. We Here we go. More. Here we go. Well, this yeah. is what it, this is what it, this is what it's really about. Now you know? we're is, getting into it. Yes. You know the bits where we got nothing. Yeah, that's that's real podcasting. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now, okay. So what's what's um you know I'm a I'm a I'm a man. I have mm. a, I have a um mm. you know I can't fly mm. unaided. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know what about mm. when you go to the garage? Yeah, and you're yeah, and you're and you're uh, mm. your mechanic mm. is looking at your car. Mm. And he, you know, <laughs> you know that thing where yeah. they look at and they're like, oh, you know, they look in the car and they're like, oh, there's no engine in here. You're like, oh, mm, there you right. go. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. There's no that's engine. That's the problem. <laughs> do you, do you, I that's mean, what, I mean, why I had to get towed here. Do you think, like, 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 it is, a, it is a bit of a trope. The idea of that, like, going to going to a mechanic, and um, you. Uh, you 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 don't know if they're what they're telling you is real 
right? True mm-hmm. problems that your car is having, right? That's that's a, that's a, that's a sort of a field for comedy mm-hmm. that's been discussed. But uh, you know, what about the idea of you 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 go to uh, you go to a mechanic and they you you say, oh, you know, I don't know what's on. They say, oh, well, let's pop the boot, and they uh, they open it up and they look in. And they say, well, oh, here's your problem. There's no engine in here. Mm. And you look, you look, and you see the engine, but you're too embarrassed to sort of make it seem like, um, well, maybe that's like, not the yeah, maybe that's not an engine. Mm. Maybe that's something else. So you're like, oh, you sure that? Uh, mm. I mean, there's, there's there's some stuff in there, and they're like, no, no, there isn't. You like, go, oh. my... <laughs> okay, cool. Um, all right, well then, I mean, you're the you're the mechanic, and they're like, yeah, yeah, I am. I know about this stuff, and like. Oh, it's these modern cars. It's hard to tell about maybe, that sort of stuff. Maybe like, you take a photo really... of it, and then while you're like, you're like, okay, go. You start, you start fixing it, mm. and then while you're waiting for them to fix yeah, it, yeah, I'll post... fix it. I'll put an engine in there. Yeah, and then you sort of you post this on Facebook too. Is there any car people experts? Yeah, <laughs> people who know about cars. Is there an engine in this? <laughs> and then they're like, yes. <laughs> and then so while he's fixing it, you're like having to build build up the courage to mm. confront him. That. Mm. Um, you know, he's done the wrong thing here. Mm. And um, you go over and say, well, I actually asked some people online and, um, oh, you, you know, there's all sorts of stuff online, isn't there? Mm. You know, people say all oh, sorts yeah. of things. Yeah. So you don't really yeah. know if any you of that's on real. That Google. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like being sick and you start Googling symptoms and, you know, you'll always find something. Mm-hmm. You go, so, oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Oh. Um, cause, cause a lot of people seem pretty confident there is an engine in do, there. Do you think this sketch sort of ends with a fist fight? <laughs> Or do sure. You, or do you yeah. think you I just, mean, but I think it's definitely. I think it's definitely a sketch. Yeah. Right. It, you. You. You are being. You. You've got a sort of a. a you, it is a kind of a gaslighting thing again. Like that you're being. It's just being flat out denied to you. That, but because you're you're embarrassed and you don't want to you don't want to cause a scene and that sort of thing. Not mm-hmm. wanting to cause a scene, I reckon, is a big part of it. Yeah. You know. I mean, not wanting to cause a scene really. Or given that we're here to come up with sketch ideas, all we're trying to do is cause scenes. <laughs> Absolutely. But you know, I think I could play. You know, if ever like you know, I've never really imagined a role that I could play in a. Am I making too much sound? No, it's not. Really? No. Uh, I've never really pictured a role I could play. Now in it's a, all I can hear in a film <laughs> or in a, a sitcom. But the pathetic guy who gets tricked out of his, uh, you know, by his mechanic. Who tells him there's no engine in there, <laughs> and then just pays for it, even though he's pretty sure there was an engine. That I think that that's I could definitely play that role. Mm. Yeah, I'd believe that from you. Yeah, a little little empty shell. You know, uh, really, um, the when you the, the director, the okay. the director of a film who says action mm. in a film, right? There, there, that's causing a scene, isn't it? I, I mean, that's that's, that's all they're there for. Mm. Especially it's, if uh, what he's directing is a drama, mm. and then he says a- action. Yes, and, go, and then people start fighting or something yeah. like that. Go, that's really, not, that's not what we're making here. Really causing a scene. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's not a sketch. That good. That that's good <laughs> stuff. That's good stuff. But you, 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 you bring um perspective from the world. Mm. Is, it, is this what's considered good out there? We don't know how much things have changed mm. since we came in. Right, and we need sort of up to date takes on sort of where people are at in terms of what they think is yeah. good. Mm. It might have fundamentally shifted, so that th- is, that might be great, great, mm. the, I, the best thing ever. I'm so delighted to be the one to let you know that it has actually been a lot of changes out there. Even just yeah. when I popped out mm. to move oh, my to, car, to move your car, came back in, and I was like, I walked out, I was like, oh, what's going on out here? Mm. Oh, something's changed, and then I come back in, and I'm thrilled to tell you that is great. Yes, it was really yes. great. Yes. There was just a shift in the universe, yeah. and you felt it. You know, like yeah. like when um that planet gets blown up in Star Wars, yeah. you feel the great disturbance in the comic sensibility of yes. the universe. Mm. Yes, and suddenly, what's good is different. Do you think it was like the 9/11 of comedy? Mm. Yes, that's what happened. Like when that. Yeah. Sort of like the the great pillars of comedy kind yeah. of came down. I, again, yeah. my dad was watching it on TV and said, "This is the day the world changed." Is uh, that, but is that it, really what your dad said? Yeah, it was quite profound. That is quite profound from my dad. It's a little bit <laughs> suspicious, really. Yeah, like it's almost like he knew. I don't know, mm. like he'd prepared that in advance or something to like that. Fair, like have had, a line like that. He had been away a lot mm. leading up to that day. Mm. Hmm. Oh, well. Does he ever does terrorist he, dad? Is that a thing? Is that a sketch? Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Did 
Did I, did I do it feels comedy? It like, feels like a whole movie. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm pretty sure my dad might be a terrorist. Yeah. Like spy kids. When they find out their parents oh. are spies, it's kind of cool. And they can get a packet, put it in the microwave, and uh, put it on for, the I don't know, however long it says on the instructions, and then it comes out as a full meal. Did you did you guys see Spy Kids? It's funny. We talked about something exactly like that, that. in the fifth element? In the fifth element oh. earlier today. In wow. this very day. This very day. We talked about it with Jack Druce, I believe. Do you what? know him? I do know. Is oh, he I still do. alive? We don't know what's going on outside mm. the... I haven't the... heard from him, so yeah, I can okay. only assume no. Sure. Because oh. he does usually message me every five minutes. Yeah, with proof of life, holding a newspaper <laughs> with <laughs> yeah, the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Different holding... newspapers every time. <laughs> holding a newspaper with the exact time of yeah. day. <laughs> It's quite time. Eleven fifty-seven. Okay. All right. Good to hear, Jack. Speak to yeah. him in five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think terrorist dad. I don't know why I find that funny. Mm. No, because <laughs> it's great. That's yeah, no, why. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but like. Oh, I don't know why that's funny. Because it's comedy. <laughs> no, no, but. I... <laughs> That's it's why. Do you understand? Unfiltered. Do you understand what it is you're trying to come up yeah, with? Two hundred. I, know. I actually, don't know. Somethings. I'm feeling the beginnings of crumbling. <laughs> <laughs> this 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 comic premise that you've given to me, Beck. Uh, Beck yeah. Fucking hell, Jess, a comedian. I don't know why I find it funny. <laughs> I don't know why it amuses me. You're but, probably as surprised by this as I am. <laughs> is this new for you as well? Mm. I don't know. I don't know why I find it funny. See, my me doing an impression of you is you doing your Australian accent. Mm. I don't know why. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I just did that. Oh, I don't I'm know just, why. And I'm just I'm being now. Hey, oh, I don't know why I find it so funny. God, you are good actually. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was me. <laughs> okay, but what? Um, so is it just this dad's like, yeah, I'm going back mm. to the baker's where I work. Mm. Like that and he's got like. Bombs. You know, yeah, like the bombs. Exactly. He's not even concealing them in <laughs> bread. He's just like, now, nah, okay, phone, wallet, keys, explosives. Mm. I think but, I'm good to go. What do you mean if he was concealing that. it in bread? Why is he Why is he... bread to the bakers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a kid. I don't know. Yeah, no, no. Kids like, don't know. He's, like, he's got a couple of loaves of bread. In there. <laughs> that, he go bricked, that he bricks from home. That he gets... <laughs> From home? I think this is All right, kids, got to go make bread. Yeah, go, go back <laughs> Dad, to the you've bakery. got some right there. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, what, this this is, is the, my bread. This is the model that we where do, use. Where do you, where do you <laughs> think they get off. the bakers get the bread from? The bakers bring it from home. That, that's the bread yeah. that we've got there. In mm. the shelves, I, I'm getting a couple out there. there. Uh, maybe I, maybe we don't have a full loaf, but someone else at work will bring a bit of a loaf and we'll mm. piece together a loaf. What's yeah. that long thing with the... Missile thing that goes in the neck. A so, bazooka. <laughs> <laughs> it's for mixing <laughs> dough. I oh, know I prefer when he just says it's a bazooka. It's lie. a personal short range <laughs> missile launcher. <laughs> And that's the thing. He won't lie to his kids. No, I mean, if yeah, his, kid, if his kids are just little, so they don't know what a terrorist is. When they become oh, teenagers, what a baker is. and they go, Daddy, are you a terrorist? He'd be like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course I am. And then he'll call over his wife and be like, he just asked me if I'm a terrorist. Isn't yeah. that cute? Well, why do you go? Why do you say you're going to go baking? He goes, that's the front that I use. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so that so you that don't know. <laughs> don't you do his kid like his kids are here? Like, Jesus. It's like when your kids find out that you have a name other than mm. dad or mum. Oh, yeah. I remember figuring out mum's name. Are you serious? Yeah. I was like, your name's Annie. <laughs> she was like, uh huh. <laughs> I mean, I was 14 at the time. She was yeah, surprised by sure. it. Um, you've had this the whole time yeah. and you've kept it from me? I felt betrayed. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I can imagine. So we haven't really spoken since. Mm. Otis already knows my, my name. Really? Yeah. Are you one of those, are you like one of those dads who is like, call me Al? Yeah, you know? call me. <laughs> Just call me buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to think of me as no. a dad, really. No. Yeah, I want you to call me Scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> Cool dad. Uh, I mean, we got terrorist dad. Can we have cool dad? Cool dad. Yeah. 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 But by the sounds of that, can. he's a, a dropkick dad. He's a dead no, dad. No, no, no. He's actually so. a cool dad. Wait, is this a. I, I've started remembering. Is there a thing that's like a, a um, Carl Chandler thing that's like cool dad? I have absolutely no idea. Have you heard that? I've, I've never, I mean, I've never heard of it. No. All right. I'm gonna write but cool um, dad. sorry, Carl. Carl. Sorry, Carl. Maybe he, he might have a thing called Carl Dad. Yeah, that makes the most sense. Mm. Carl's dad. Carl Carl's has a dad. Da Carl has a dad. Is that what you're thinking mm. of? Carl's dad. Mm. 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, no, that'd yeah. be fine. It's very different to cool down. <laughs> Um, yeah, and he doesn't ask his kid to call him Scorpion. Yeah. And ice, ice. Can you call me Ice? Yeah. Oh, yeah, ice. big guy. Can you call me big guy? Yeah. Have a puff hey. of this, kiddo. Yeah. Like that. What's that? Oh, it's ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. That is sad. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I wish my dad gave me ice. <laughs> yeah. Where's his sunglasses? Yeah. <laughs> Upside down. Backwards. Kid, do you want to come out and watch me rev my car <laughs> for like? 45, <laughs> two hours. Just in the driveway. <laughs> hey, your mum said that she saw whales out by the headland. You want to go throw rocks at them? <laughs> <laughs> cool, Dad. <laughs> cool, Dad. Yeah, I do. <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> Say fuck yeah. Go on. Go on, fuck yeah. Say fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, Dad. Yeah, oh, that's my boy. <laughs> cool, Dad. <laughs> Yeah, cool, man. Tell the neighbour to go fuck himself. Yeah. I'll hold you up and you shit in his mailbox. <laughs> the, ro- the, the whales are so far away. So <laughs> they're like kilometres out to sea. They can barely see the yeah. spouts. Yeah. Or they're chucking rocks at <laughs> like that, you mongrel. Oh, I nearly got him that time. I nearly got him. So that's but that's the dad that's saying the dad. It to the kid. And the kid's like, Dad, they are kilometers away. <laughs> Cause that's a very it's a short it's a short time when you get to be that cool dad because mm. then the kid grows up, realizes you're a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> those rocks weren't anywhere near those the, whales. The power dynamic really changes in that relationship. <laughs> when they realize you're you're sad and a fraud. Sad man. dad. <laughs> sad dad. That's the that's the motion. So it's a guy who realizes that there's so maybe some guy t- says to him. You know, there's only a short while where they're gonna mm. think that you're cool. Yeah. And you gotta make the most of it. And he goes, mm. oh, You're right. <laughs> yeah. I do. I oh, do. Because you know, eventually they'll start questioning you, he goes, I gotta make the most of it. And he goes, All oh. right. And that's why he changes his life around. Mm. <laughs> so he's just quite a regular guy. Yeah. Oh, he's like genuinely a good dad, but mm. then he realizes he only has a short window to be a dickhead dad. To be a yeah. cool dad. Or maybe he sees another dad. Another kid saying to his dad, "You're so cool, dad." Yeah. And then the uh, and then he, he was then his son. He says, "Will you have anything to say to me?" And then you didn't think I'm you didn't think I'm cool. What's cool, dad? All right. Oh yeah, I'll show you what's cool. I'll show yeah. you what's cool. Yeah. So how do you get your kid to think you're so cool? <laughs> and then he goes up to that guy. Mm. Mm. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Gets a leather jacket. Yeah. yeah. Leather pants. Yeah. <laughs> Leather underpants. Yes. yes. Leather socks. Leather face gift mask. <laughs> cool daddy. <Yeah. laughs> oh, leather like chest thing with the nipples. The <laughs> nipples coming out and rings yeah. on them. Yeah. Want to pull on daddy's chain? <laughs> oh. That's what everyone wanted their dad to be. When we were kids, when that's what we wanted. Kid, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My dad wore a suit and took a briefcase to work. Ugh. Disappointing. Ugh. My dad, but then you could get him. You, if you had a dad dressed all in leather, you could get him to. You could ride him like a horse. You know, like how kids, like you know, you, you get on all fours. Your kid sits on your back and you ride him like a horse. So fun. But now you're actually you're you're really a cow because mm. you're covered in <laughs> leather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like actually, a cow is. Yeah. I really miss that feeling of. I was going to say riding an adult. Yeah. <laughs> But you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, we do. Like yeah. that was sex, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I miss that. Yeah. Oh um, God, I miss it was. Sex. Good. It was good when it lasted, wasn't it? Uh, you know, I sex. love those first few years of relationships yeah. where you uh, climb onto their back, <laughs> ride around. Yeah. Well, oh, I but, miss it. But I mean, if it would, it, is it is it a, is it a good enough reason to genetically engineer humans so they become giants so I that we so. can ride around on their back? It's very fun. It's absolutely something that's got to be on the cards. Right? Yeah. Piggyback. Mm, piggyback, sure. But yeah, because I mean, nobody's actually, strong you know, enough to piggy, piggyback me for Nobody longer than a few steps. Me. Yeah. Mm. You know, they kind of go, I can lift you, and they walk a bit, and they go, this is dumb. Mm. And we get older and our backs go, and you don't want to, mm. you know, yeah. carry a friend. I want someone who can just confidently carry me for quite a distance mm. when yeah. I'm tired, which is often. Mm. And I would say, I would say it's like we would have to breed an underclass. Like they're sort of they're bigger and stronger than us, but mm. we treat them worse, and they can only do that job. Yeah. Mm, yeah. But <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but they've got to be a bit dumb, yeah. so they don't know that yeah. they're being mistreated. Well, because they're, like, they're bigger and stronger than us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but unless, unless instead we kind of do it like it's a a nicer 
you know, like, like it's a really prestigious job that like, you know, it's kind of mm. like sumo wrestlers, you know, they're kind of treated like yeah. gods. And then you're so lucky to finally get a piggyback your turn. You know, you got to go on a waiting list for three months and then yes. and finally they come to your door and they've got their own little step ladder that they, mm. you know, they unfold that they keep in their vests. Oh, the giants here, the yeah. giants here. And then they take and you, you run out and you get block. to pretend to be a little kid. Mm. Ah, this is beautiful. Actually. This is <laughs> yeah, really, really, really like nice. this. Yeah. We can call then, them kings. Mm, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Kings. Cause they, you know, kings have no power these days. So yeah. yeah. It's just a title thing. Piggy Kings. Mm. Piggy Kings. <laughs> mm. Oh, I want a Piggy King. I just want to be, you know, like when you're a kid and you get home from some sort of family function at night and your dad carried you from the car. The car yeah. I remember faking being asleep. Yeah, oh, yeah. And he'd still carry me. But then there was that cutoff time when I got too big and they'd wake me up instead. Mm. And it was like, goodbye, childhood. Yeah, it's that over. Was it. I have to walk into the house now. Uh, what I want is a is a piggy king who'll come here, rip the roof off the car. <laughs> <laughs> one giant here, yeah. pick me up. But very one gently. hand, but one hand. Yeah, but especially they would have to do it when you've driven yourself home. <laughs> <laughs> And then I wait. And then I pretend to be asleep <laughs> in the front seat. <laughs> and they just have piggy kings patrolling the street at the <laughs> time. <laughs> no! And they, <laughs> they, 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 they smash the front of the house aside with one giant hand. Jessica! <laughs> drop your dad into the bed and they pat you like that. And they read you a story. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me a story, Piggy King. But in a big voice like that, <laughs> they're reading you a fairy tale. Pig was a punk, and <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Uh, mm. So soothing. Mm. Thanks. Well, I think, you know, so that thing with the, those giants have, they do actually have much deeper voices. Mm. Yeah. I'm a giant. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they say, too. Yeah, I'm a giant. <laughs> well, that's what I'm told. <laughs> When I was growing up, my daddy and mommy were very big, so I didn't know I was different. It's actually really nice. Yeah. That's so sweet. I really <laughs> like this child. <laughs> I didn't know he was different. But think... when we came into the city... <laughs> you all pointed and said, fuck! Yeah. And that's when I did. I said, fuck, there's a piggy king. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew what my new role had to be. <laughs> And this is him being interviewed on Parkinson or something yeah. like that, I imagine. Yeah. Being one of the best piggy kings mm. that, uh, that the world had seen. <laughs> piggy king. <laughs> piggy king. <laughs> I love piggy king. Yeah, and, you know, maybe maybe some, maybe they can have a role as, like, public transport where 10 or 20 of us climb up onto their shoulders and their big strong backs have got, like, handles all up their back and they mm. run us. To work. You could hire them for bucks parties and mm. hens weekends. You know how you get like oh, mini this buses? This sounds a little demeaning. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So wait, public transport's wait, we okay? Could, we could just sit on different parts of their body and drink. You know? <laughs> and they've got a camel pack filled with beer. Yeah. And we all get a mm. straw. Are you saying yeah. that the hiring of them mm. for hens parties is is not okay, but but public transport is? Yes. I actually think there's a difference. <laughs> I would hate to be a bus and be a party bus, but I'd love to be a regular bus. You're so useful. <laughs> <laughs> you make better money from a party, 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 party than a party yeah, bus. Sure, but there's lots of things that you can do to earn better money that aren't necessarily good for yourself. Not as a piggy king. Not as a piggy king, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Limited options. It's party bus or regular bus. One of the problems about being like like when you're a kid, right, <laughs> You're you're little and your parents can pick you up and look after you. But when you're a kid, you don't get drunk and really need that stuff. Yeah. Right? When you're an adult, you get drunk, you get messy, you know, you 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 know, whatever. And that's when you need someone who's bigger than you to pick you up and like put you look after you and that yeah. sort of stuff. Where's that? Right? Mm. Yeah, well, I guess or you or you just get neat because I mean, right now kid of three years old mm. his getting drunk is either spinning until he's dizzy yeah. or t getting tickled until he's like stop mm. and then go and then stop <laughs> again and then go and then stop like that yeah right now if we had that kind of fun available to us maybe booze wouldn't seem so desirable yeah mm. right if we could still spin around yeah well but then but then i worry that people would get addicted to the piggy king 
Yeah, mm. but that's fine. That's more money for the Piggy King. That's true. Yeah. You know, they're getting, remember, we're saying that they're getting. You're right. Very... Just in the way that people being addicted to heroin is fine, that's more money for the drug deal. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hadn't thought about it I that way. Know, but it's like saying, well, you become addicted to Uber. You're never concerned that somebody is catching too many Ubers, are you? Sure. I don't know. I, I, no. No. Because it's just a way of getting around. What if they've got nowhere to go? They're oh. just Uber, doing Uber to Uber. You know, well, I'm sure there's a way you could be concerned for somebody who catches Uber, <laughs> but if they were just but it's catching, it's not about the Uber. It's about the fact they've got nothing else on. Mm. Yeah, that's the right. real problem. Mm. Yeah, mm. and by putting really the problem on there. Uber, you're avoiding the problem behind it, and that's why you're not a good mm. friend to this person. Mm. Really, they're addicted to having nothing else on, and that's the mm. worst thing of all. Yeah. Mm. On not great. So wait, are you saying they're bringing their own problems uh, upon themselves? Yes, I'm v- blaming them for oh, that. God. I, I got to go to the loo, guys. Okay. We'll. Right. Um, it's going to be hard to move beyond Piggy King because <laughs> it's so much fun. Yeah, it is fun. I love that idea. I love. I just want someone to carry me around. Yeah. What about a big moth that could fly you? Oh, around? I hate moths though. Oh, what about a butterfly? Okay. <laughs> Weirdly, I'm. I feel better about butterflies than I do about moths. I think up close they're both equally as disgusting. Yeah, they're really gross. Mm. But just like they're so, it feels, moths look like they have more than just like a set of wings. Do you know what I mean? They look like they've got, they're just, they're fluffy. They're and fluffy they're, and they look like they've got a dust And they them. just, yeah, they just do this mm. and they're very unpredictable and you can't tell which way they're going to mm. go. So you can't. That's also butterflies though. They're Butterflies are very unpredictable. I think once we had a mo- mm. like a bird sized moth in our bedroom, and that's what one of those like it's almost an ethical question there because you wouldn't kill a bird in your room, but but then it's a moth, and so you go, do I value it? Like, but then you go, oh, do I value its life more because it's bigger? I don't value a big spider more. No, but it feels like it's got more going on upstairs, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. probably got more of a life that rather than those stupid little spiders. Mm. How could killing animals be a sketch? Hmm. hmm. When does it become, I mean, it's okay, it's okay to kill bacteria. Maybe if the animals are just like a real dick. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, I see. I, yeah, like if but we don't animals, like them. Yeah, if they just have a bad attitude. And I, th- and I think that should be the same thing for people. Yes. You know? Like, bad attitude, three strikes and you're out, I hmm. reckon. There should be a personal prison that you could put people in. Yeah. You know, like why should the state mm-hmm. have a monopoly on prisons. Yeah. There should be like, you should be allowed to detain people. Absolutely. For a bit if they're a jerk to you. Especially if you have a basement. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yes. if that's something that you want in your future, firstly, there's steps you have to go through. You have to obviously purchase or rent property with a basement. Mm, that's right. Yeah. You got to um, rent, uh, probably rent in our case. Like, yes, bloody oh, I love avocado that. too yeah. much. <laughs> so. Yum, 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 yum. But you know, like, yeah, like, I mean, th- there should just be a legal precedent for jailing yes. your fellow man. Yeah. That you should be allowed. Like as in the, the state shouldn't have a monopoly on being able to jail people. Oh, very interesting. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Like a little startup jail. Yeah. You yes. know, like a new tech jail kind mm. of thing. Like yeah. maybe a little portable jail or like a like a like a jail mm. that comes around on a drone, drops a little jail on top of someone. Yes. You know? And that's the sure. sort of the opposite of like a like a ride share or something like that or an Uber type thing where that helps you get from one place to another. This helps you stay exactly where you are. Mm. Until, is that a thing that people learn? Until need? you've learned your lesson. Well, mm. sometimes you want somebody else to stay where they are. Yes, them. Yeah, you're right. You don't jail yourself. Although, you know, you can. You know? Yeah. You know, maybe you, say, you think you need a little time out, right? And it'll come around and it'll just drop a little cage on top mm. of you. Drills down into the ground. Maybe the way it could work is that it's kind of everybody is on this this app sort of thing, right? Mm. It's an app. So mm-hmm. it's a startup, I guess. Yep. And then when you want to jail somebody, you can, but money starts flowing from you to them, right? Oh. So you can keep them in their place, whatever, but you're paying them their rate, their current rate oh. of getting jailed. Yeah. Now, does that, not that is, this incentivize people to be sort of like quite threatening and unpleasant <laughs> to their fellow man <laughs> in the hope that they'll be jailed and then be able to get all their money off them? Yeah, mm. I'd just have a backpack with me at all times filled with snacks and I'd be like, jail me? Mm. Yeah. Mm. I've got a week's worth of food. I'll be I'm fine. fine. I've got a good book. 
I'm mm-hmm. good. But it's one of the only ways that we're going to get. Do you want a sausage? I don't. No? It's one of the only ways that we're going to get more, you know, address inequality, I think. So mm. we'll we'll okay. all start marching on the sort of the mansions of the the uber rich mm-hmm. like that, and then they'll, you know, as long as long as they don't have a personal police force, um, just drop prisons on us, mm-hmm. and then we'll start getting their money. Yep. and eat snacks. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Is this a sketch? Mm. Think, Absolutely, it's a sketch. <laughs> but remember, Alistair, nothing that we've said today has been more a sketch than this. <laughs> I mean, it was, yeah, it's just a bad precedent to set. Mm. Until Sketch recently, wise. until recently, the only way you could have someone imprisoned was by going through the legal system. Mm. But that hellscape is now mm. over. Mm-hmm. Introducing <laughs> the name of the startup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's P R S N. Prison. Mm. Prison. Prison. Yeah, mm. or prism. You mm. know, C prism. Yeah. C P R I S O M. Prism. 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 Yeah, because they and their their logo is a little prism with light going into a a, a mm. prism, obviously, <laughs> and then getting trapped in there and it can't get out. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> doesn't doesn't split up into oh, different right. colors yeah. or nothing yeah, and annoy you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that rainbow up there. Mm. Yuck! Getting on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's a way for conservative people to stop rainbows? Here you know, maybe they could try Here to find a way. Like, like mm. you know, I'm trying to find a few more like right wing comedy sketches. Yeah, and then right. it's them. They've figured out a way to stop rain to stop light from refracting. Maybe they, mm. when there's clouds and rain during the day, mm. they they go they and put up a little wall between the clouds. They block and, the sun yeah. so yeah. that the light can't get in there and cause the. The rainbow. I mean, yeah, it is. It is. It, like choosing the rainbow as your your symbol of your movement is good because God puts them in the sky all the time. Yeah, and you're like, there you go. See, we did that. And we didn't even have to pay for any airplanes mm. or anything like that. But you know, or, or maybe you know, maybe when you see one go up, you could send an airplane up and sort of cross it out or something. With yeah. A, with a, I'm not. I'm not really quite sure if that works. Like, probably right. just with like um, spray paint. Or with spray yeah, paint, spray, probably. Like yeah. A, like, yeah, a or, skull and crossbones. Like a, <laughs> like Good, a black yeah. Nice smoke. conservative yeah. skull and crossbones. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. The opposite of a rainbow. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else would be the opposite of a rainbow? Yeah. No, you're right. Um, just a black I guess line. A square. Yeah. A, a, like you know, like that. You know that black rectangle that you put over bits when somebody's nude in, in on TV yeah. during on the news? By bits, you mean genitals. Uh-huh. Genitals. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> genitals. <laughs> duh, duh. Um, yeah, you put that over a rainbow because that's like that's like the that's you're like redacting the a rainbow. Yeah, you're redacting mm. something that's gross to look at. Yeah, yeah, for them. It's, it should be it's, shame. it's their equivalent of genitals. So, so yeah. Well, I mean, I think I, th- I think this is good. Maybe you could just fly a big black flag behind a behind a um a helicopter or an airplane mm. or something like that, and you you can then redact um yeah you know anything you want from the sky. Yeah, I don't like the look at that cloud. Mm. Get up there, George. Yeah, well, it, it could be a rude looking cloud. Yeah, That's one of the things about clouds. What, what they can could sort it of look, look like? Any- Genitals. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Genitals. <laughs> um, I don't know if you're in for this, Alistair. Yeah. But when you stand up, when I stood up before, my legs really hurt real bad. Yeah. And walking was painful. Mm. So, You've got like the non plane so the land equivalent of mm. like deep vein thrombosis. Yeah. I said that there were Leah said it was gonna be a risk we're gonna get deep vein yeah. thrombosis. You gotta get up, keep moving your ankles around. I think I think it's out. just because I have been concentrating so much on the conversation that I have let the rest of me atrophy. Right. And mm. um yeah. It's starting to show, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. See. <laughs> yeah you're wasting away. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, I was clean shaven and thin at the beginning <laughs> of today. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> well, then. So sorry to bring you into our our temple of doom goblet or whatever that thing is that they drink and makes them old fast. Mm. Temple. Uh, yeah. The, 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 the Indiana Jones last crusade. Champions of fire. The chariots of fire. <laughs> the um, goblet of fire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I think I know. So what's crazy is that the the 
Chariots of Fire. I was also trying to make a joke on that because the song is different to that. It's the yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Okay, so that was one of the elements that confused me. Yeah. Like, but it doesn't help that I have shoes on the so. bed. Shoes on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> shoes on the bed. I heard it. Yeah, I heard that. Great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. great. So, oh, you're 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 getting references from when you saw the podcast on the stream. Yeah. Sick. Oh, thanks, which is thanks for watching. Oh, look, I was asleep for a lot of it, mm. um, which you definitely weren't. But um. Yeah. I've been mean, checking in. Yeah. Checking in. Oh, man. Thanks. And it, look, and, and congrats to anybody who's hanging in there and is, mm. you know, is, yeah. especially if there's somebody who's been watching from the beginning. I can't imagine but who I that mean, would be. No. <laughs> Wait, Brian is Brian probably watching. Be there, yeah. Yeah. Brian's been watching for a while now. Yeah. Um, he was comment? definitely watching before I got here. Yeah. I might have been the thing that he. Oh, Brian was here before all of us got here, and he'll yeah. be here long after we got <laughs> yeah. all gone. <Yeah. laughs> Brian is a, the, one of the. He's one eternal. Of, yeah, He's one, one of the, the eternal. Eternal things. Yeah. yeah, it's him. It's rocks. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and the flame, the eternal flame. Yeah, and the sure. eternal flame from sure, the that goblet burns of, inside the goblet all of, of fire. <laughs> Still don't quite know what, what how the reference works, but anyway. Um, um, uh, what about it's it's one o'clock? Did we have someone else coming in at one o'clock, um, or did we did we not oh, have it? I think I might have. I think I might have asked somebody, but then they they didn't get back to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Not not that. Not that we. It was just so that. No, you it's fine, Eddie. But, it's was fine. it was it Naomi? I think it was going to be Naomi, but she didn't get oh. back to me, and it's fine. Yeah, that's not fine. No, all right, but you know, but I also said, I also monster. said, I was like, it's it's no pressure. It's it's a craziness that anybody would come here. You're mm. you're being crazy right now. Mm. That's me it. though. That's my mm. brand. Yes, but no, and that's why we got you on. <laughs> I'm crazy. Mm. One thing we could do, right, is now that you're here, we could we could like send you out and say, you go, you find Naomi. You get her and you force her to tell you a sketch idea and you bring it back and you say <laughs> it on the podcast. <laughs> yes. Like today? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, ideally I'm, before you I'd, finish ideally, up. But you're already sure. at what, 90? What are you up to? Sorry, oh, not to jump man. ahead. I didn't We're on 92. 92. That's great. <sighs> yeah, sure. But my legs are giving out. So, I mean, you're, you're on the microphone that moves the most. You can just stand up. <gasps> I might actually have to do that at some do point. Do that. Yeah. I do. If I still can, if I still have the gift of stand. Mm. Yeah. Hey, mm. what about this? It's new boomers. So we all know about baby mm. boomers. Yeah. Mm. But these baby boomers, they're they're a new generation, and what they do is they blow up babies. <laughs> so you know they're like a, they're you know it's new baby boomers. Yeah. It's like alt baby boomers. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like having a newborn is already a bit stressful. You don't know what like yeah what's going on. You don't, you don't know what you're doing. Mm. But then add the element mm. that any moment someone could turn up and blow, <laughs> blow up, up your, your baby. baby. Yes. Well, okay, Just so, explode your baby. But it's like that thing you know. It's like like, like a lot of people who are kind of getting into retirement age these days. Mm. They're they're going, fuck it. I'm going to spend all the money that I built up throughout my mm. life. I don't need to leave inheritance for my kids. Mm. Like that, yeah. right? So they're doing that. But now they're going to the next level. Is they're going, fuck it. I don't need to have to take care of my kids' children. That's mm. insane. I did my time. Mm. I did my time. and I, I paid escaped. my taxes all my life. I've paid my taxes. I, I've spent all their inheritance. Mm. Now it's time to blow up their <laughs> babies. I mean, they've... What else? Where else is there for for them to go in terms of like destroying our lives? You know, they've got <laughs> they've they've got all the property. Yeah, they've got all the wealth. Right, mm -hmm. they keep voting in people who are destroying the planet with climate change. Mm -hmm. Yep, and now we're gonna and blow. It's this. part of their plan. And when they march, they go like this: last generation, last generation. <laughs> oh, they want to be the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. Last generation because they're like standing. well they're the best and they, they think well we may, may as well be the last mm -hmm. and so that what they, what they have to do is they have to outlive everybody else yeah and yeah. they can only do that by blowing up the babies first and so you get the helpless because people mm. would be like well I'm not a baby so I'm not going to worry too much mm, I did. yeah I, when they came for the babies I said nothing because yeah. I was not a baby <laughs> <laughs> or I was a grown man or woman <laughs> I didn't think this was relevant to yeah. me <laughs> they were only killing the babies yeah. And as a uh, toddler, I saw nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was over the threshold. I sh but I should have killed them when I had the chance as a toddler. They were still giving us access to them. Mm, and yeah. I had access to knives. 
Don't give your toddlers access to knives. Yeah, that's good advice. Yeah. Why is there a knife up there? Well, when we finish, when we get to You're 200 kill episodes, <laughs> when we get to 200 episodes and I start um, start reading out all the sketch ideas, Andy's going to start carving a block of cheese into two cheese goblets. <laughs> And, and then we're, we're going to drink, drink wine, wine from the, the cheese, cheese goblet. goblet. That sounds disgusting. Uh, mm. Okay. But I'm, yeah. I'm okay, excited well, to watch that mm, on the yeah. live stream. Yes. Good luck leading a happy life then <laughs> if you think that's disgusting. Mm -hmm. eh? mm. Good luck ever pleasing a man. <laughs> oh. This is what I, this is, I like this. I like this. I enjoyed it already, but then your reaction to it made it even better. Good luck ever pleasing a man. That's all they want is, is a, a cheese, cheese goblet. goblet. Mm, so sorry. No. Okay, what, what about this though? Like the idea of before you make love to someone, in your life, <laughs> yeah. right? Remember you both that? look. You both. Oh, oh man, it was so like. good. I don't recall. You, you both look each other in the eye and you say, "Good luck." Yeah, isn't that nice? <laughs> you wish each other luck before yeah. you you. Like I hope this goes well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but know. also it's not really in our hands. No, it would no, kind of be an good. accident. Mm. So you, you kind of let you know. Would kill the mood. You think really fast. <laughs> putting it in the hands of the gods like that. Oh, good luck. Fingers crossed. Oh, hope you're you know, about this alive. Could be something. What are you planning on doing? <laughs> Just the regular stuff, no. but I'm, you know. I I know that you know we we're not always in control of all all the way things everything mm. plays out. It just sometimes you know you got to admit that you've got what you've got through nothing but good luck. I mean, we're we're privileged <laughs> to even be in this situation. I'm sort of saying I'm acknowledging that you and me being here and having the opportunity to do that is as much a product of of um you know the the country we were born in and the option options we were given by virtue of you know the, you know, the, 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 the an impossible sequence of events and i'm just saying that i hope that the next you know 5 to 30 minutes you know, <laughs> lays out you know well enough okay but by this stage i've put all of my clothes back on and i've gone oh, and i guess i guess the gods weren't smiling on me today yeah. pop yeah. the kettle on oh that's a that's a okay. bummer well, this is this is how you could do it just to kind of ease it you know because mm. it's you know it's the good mm. luck and then kind of thing it could it could scare the, mm. the you know your partner so what i think is you get you get into kissing and mm. then you get you, you know, whisper good luck to the bed. <laughs> <laughs> or you could I mean obviously you could just whisper it to something that's not their ears. Sure. So that whisper you it into mm. their mouth while you're yeah. kissing them. That's good. Good. <laughs> <Like> that, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, What was that? You're like, Nothing. You go, <laughs> just I'm kissing you. Having a good time. <laughs> and I probably will continue. Uh -huh. <laughs> although it's out of our head. <laughs> <laughs> um, but or instead you kind of get to kissing, you kind of get you know a little bit deep mm. in. To kissing, mm. and then, and then you say, "Should we say grace?" <laughs> <laughs> I think you know. I think it would be great to just yes. have the Lord bless this, mm. bless this experience for what we are about to receive, yeah, <laughs> or give. May but, uh, and then and then the you Lord take a moment, and you both you both kneel and look mm. to the heavens. Yeah. Mm. What if you could teach your genitals to say "good luck"? Oh. <laughs> That they could just say good luck to each other, and then the, up here you don't mm. have to think about it. Doesn't ruin the mood. Yeah. Oh, I mean, how would you do that? Would, <laughs> you, would you be sort of through squeezing and kind yeah, of like it would air be kegels. passing through different bits? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Would you say kegels? Kegels, yeah. What's kegels? Like pelvic floor muscle oh, exercises. That's what you do before you have a baby. You got to do and some after. of those, and after, yeah. and, and during, always, and you put, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And even and if forever. you're not, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna mm -hmm. start doing them. Yeah, I mean, is it is that one of those things where, like, if we'd still been living in the fields doing lots of squatting to pluck yams, that Kegels would take care of themselves? But now, because we of, sit at desks, we sit at desks, and we and work for the man. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, <laughs> coming up with sketch ideas yeah. for the oh, man. man. Oh, the man. Um, I've written yeah. down good luck sex and yep. saying pre-sex grace. Mm. Because right. I think it's a fun scenario. You know, we don't do a lot of like real life, like mm. just a couple, you know, and what what's what's it like being a regular couple? Mm. And then what is it like? What is it That's like? That's what I want to know. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Um, and we'll find out by coming up with sketches. <laughs> what about this? Right? People who don't like to swear, but still want to sort of exclaim, you know, don't like blasphemy and stuff and still want to exclaim, mm. do exclamations of yes. sort of 
a passion passion during sex mm-hmm. i mean what have, what have you got you've got you've got uh, cripes yeah and, fiddlesticks yeah, you wouldn't read about it yeah. um <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> good heavens! Could good heavens! Oh. Good heavens! Yeah, um, I golly. mean, heaven, heavens might be a little golly, golly, yeah, golly. <laughs> golly gosh! Oh, raspberries! Oh, yeah, it could be really anything, to be honest. Mm. It could be, you could exclaim anything oh. if you if you have the right attitude. Oh, that's tremendous! Yeah, <laughs> I mean, maybe it, maybe yeah. I mean, that's, that's good. I'd love to hear that. Yeah, but we, 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 we could. We if could I ever have sex again. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, maybe, maybe we're, get, we're we getting a bit old, though. <laughs> yeah. Long. Maybe we will like come up with a new. Well, maybe we could do a list of all the words that are the sexiest without being rude. Yes. You know? And then go through them all and say these. These are some. If you don't want to be a potty mouth while you're doing the business, you know, then here are some other options that you could just throw in there that we've we've discovered. We've ke- through testing are uh, sexy words to mm. say, even though they contain no dirty connotations whatsoever. <laughs> sort of things like a rhombus. Oh. Strike me lucky. Yeah, or strike <laughs> me lucky. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, just like rhombus. <laughs> strike me lucky is very sexy. Um, mm. What was the other one you said um, that was? You wouldn't read about it. <laughs> and you wouldn't. What are the chances? Well, yeah. Unless you were reading smut. <laughs> mm, that's true. Yeah, maybe that one's actually a little close to the line if it could be interpreted as reading smut. That one. Mm. Oh, but yeah. they wouldn't be aware of smut. That's true. Yeah. Mm. That's mm. how clean a life they lead. Squeaky. <laughs> mm. Not everything's smut. Easy. Something that's Smut's very clean. Smut's kind of sexy. Smut. Smut's a sexy word, you think? Smut. Smut. Mm, well, it's got I the word know. mutt in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little too close to slut. That's yeah. True. Which can be sexy, but probably mm. not to these. Not to not these. Not to these people. sensitive ears. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> um, snut. Sluck. Well, oh, that's different. Uh, it's not even. Sluck. Not, sluck. Oh, I don't like that at all. That's. Yeah. Mm. No, a sluck feels like it could be it's, something. Uh, it's the opposite of sexy. Oh, and sexy luck. You know? Oh. Now Maybe I'm that's that's if you're trying to conceive a child or something, you yeah. might need sluck, sluck to you mm. and sluck to you. Mm. Let the fornication begin. Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah, formal. So well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's how you like. You know, I, guess, I guess the praying part is probably what some people do when they want to conceive. Mm. And, yeah, and wishing each other luck. Yeah, we haven't fornication. We could really just be using the like we. That feels like a word that we might shorten and just use fawn. Mm. You know. Well, and then it's very close to porn, isn't it? Oh. Pornication. Pornication. Mm. <laughs> Calipornication. <laughs> yes. California. Mm-hmm. Knows how, anyway, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, oh, look, Alistair, none of us know what we're doing. Yeah. No. And none of us would ever claim um, to have a goddamn clue. God, you drank a that lot of water. That was a big gulp. Then. Well done. Yeah. No, that's how I drink. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, no. That's every you time. can't sip. Wish I could. Yeah. My mouth is too... I don't know how to make my mouth smaller. Wine must be a nightmare for you then. No, it's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> every time. Well, Out of my cheese goblet. <laughs> I do want to watch that, but mm. I might be vomiting on my computer <laughs> when I see it. Yeah, and how disgusting we are. <laughs> Yuck. Mm. Um, Wait, what? What did we just mention? We just mentioned wait, Californication. Yeah, I don't, I don't no, know if no, there's anything after in that. that. Do you mind if I go pee? Sure. No, I don't mind I at all. Apologize. I, 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 I'd love for you to go pee. Oh, thanks, oh, Jess, what are you doing? What are you doing? Come on, there's still an audio feed. You know, oh, it's, it's nice to be seen, though, isn't it? You it's know, a nice to of, be seen. Bit of a bloody visual For a medium, angle, you know. When are we gonna? When are we? When are we gonna finish with all these visual mediums and finally get a visual maximum? That's what <laughs> I want to know. Hey, come on! Uh, <sighs> what would that be? Um, I guess, I guess they're colours, uh-huh. but they probably press against your eyes yeah. in some way as well. You know, they, they come out of the. It actually physically hurts to look at them. It hurts to look at you them. You feel like you feel them, mm. but you also sense them. Mm. But through. Pressure on your eyes, like yes. you know, like it's touch, but it's eye touch. Yeah, which is like the eye not really designed for touching. The eye doesn't seem to 
I think the eye thinks it's probably a bit above touching, which mm. is why when you do touch your eye, your eye goes, oh, oh, no, oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> stop I, did, it, stop I, did, it. I don't I don't touch mm. things. I look at things. Mm. I'm, you know. Um, Our eyes are very posh. They are a bit posh, mm. you know. I think they probably think they're above mm. things because, you know, statistically speaking, they are above a lot of the body, just sort of, you know, by virtue of where they are. And I think that maybe the eyes need to be sort of surgically moved so they're down sort of around here, just around the waist or sort of maybe in the knees just so that they can see what it's like. But would they um, be able to see up? Because now the, your eyes can't see like the top of your head. So no. according to your eyes. They it, don't know. It doesn't know there's anything above them. Yes, but they but they also don't know that there isn't. Like they don't. Oh. True. But if they were down lower, would you be able to see up like because there'd be more up there right well then we've got to take the eyes off turn them upside down mm. and put them on the feet mm -hmm. yes but then if they're turned upside down they probably still think they're on the top god these god. eyes <laughs> god they're good <laughs> oh. they've got us they've got us coming and going <laughs> maybe um, you put them on your hands yeah so then you can actually properly look at yourself mm. and be like oh there's heaps of me Mm. You know? <laughs> not just the eyes. The eyes aren't so special. Ah. And then they, then the eyes would have to do lots of touching of things as well oh, as part of their yeah. role of being on the hand. Just give and them a suddenly, lesson. suddenly they don't think they're so special anymore. Yeah, they'll learn. Yeah. When you're talking about moving the eyes <laughs> yeah. so that they don't think they're so good and they don't think they're above touching things because eyes hate touching things. They've even got their own little eyelids so that, like, if anything even mm. tries to touch them, they go, oh, no. Oh, oh, no, don't, I went to, yeah, don't. Yeah. Oh, they're like a squid or something. Yeah. They, just like keep, they always run away, mm -hmm. hide mm -hmm. behind a rock or something. Mm. Eyes or are an just eyelid. little sooks, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. Don't. Oh, don't. They're like your, mm. your little sibling. Oh, and when don't. you even get, get a little me. bit of no. dust in them, they're like, oh, I'm irritated. That <laughs> irritated me. They're, they're like, snowflakes. Oh, I'm crying. Yeah. Snowflakes, exactly. There's, there's dust all over the rest of the body. The feet are like... It, <laughs> Covered in grit at all times. I mean, the skin is literally un is just unflaked mm. dust. Mm. Yes, yeah. exactly. And then and, then, and it's but, pre -dust. but the 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 the, 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 the eyes, right? You draw you draw something's coming towards the eyes. The eyes will close the eye eyelids and be like, oh no, the eyelids will there, but they don't have any problem with the eyelids getting touched or mm. poked or whatever it is. Oh, it's double mind. standard. That's right. And so how are we oh, we're going to move them and put them on the, our hands. On the tips of the fingers? So the eyes have to get the hands dirty a little bit. You know, oh, the you, eyes are making the hands dirty. No, the eyes get their hands dirty oh, by yeah. being on the hands and yeah. sort of being involved in yeah. sort of manual labor and that sort of thing. And then, you know, it'd be sort of like a movie where like a princess has to go and live sort of with a street boy mm. or urchin or something like that. And now they lose some of their their aloofness and stop thinking they're so special. So it's a beautiful feel good sort of ultimately film. She and she at the end the eyes get to go back into the head, but it's with a new they see the world through new eyes, really. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. they and you know and maybe they'll try harder through to new eyes, their, hands. Ha, through mm -hmm. their hands, exactly. Mm -hmm. The new the hands of the arm. Um, mm -hmm. Right? And they'll stop ignoring the nose. You know how mm -hmm. eyes can't see your nose? Yeah. They'll be like, oh, I've been so blind to yeah, your yeah. nose. They're kind I, of I have nose blindness. I have nose blindness. And then they'll start seeing the nose and checking in. Like, yeah. Hey, how are you, how you doing? going down there? Yeah. We're so close. Mm. Yet we've been so disconnected. Mm -hmm. They're like a modern community. Yeah. Even yeah. though the nose was under their nose the entire time. <laughs> mm. That is the tagline. The tagline. Yes. Correct. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> the great. nose is like Aladdin. Mm. And the eyes are Princess Jasmine. Mm. In a way? Yeah, I don't think Princess Jasmine, I mean, she already seemed pretty down to earth at the start, didn't she? she really? Yeah. Like, she didn't, it's not like, really. I she mean, was a bit spoiled, but she was aware that she was spoiled. Yeah, and she was up for stuff. Whereas I think, in a way, like, it was Aladdin himself who had the sort of mm. the more limited view of what royalty meant or what, you know. It was sort of more his journey to realising that he was, he was enough. Mm. You're enough, Aladdin. They should have put that line in there. Yes. You know? Maybe he could have wished to just be enough. But oh. he already knew parkour. Yeah. And if you know it's parkour, true. you're That's a hot. Yes, so hot. You can at least mm. get a pretty good YouTube channel going mm. these days, at least. Maybe oh, um, yeah. I mean, get your validation that way. Mm. If Aladdin was around the, now, mm. he'd, he'd, he'd have a parkour. He'd have a GoPro. But I mean, yeah. if you could do parkour <laughs> with a big Sultan's hat. Yeah. And a yep. monkey. 
and a monkey. Yeah, mm. absolutely. I mean, like that hat could be the nest for the monkey. Mm. Easily, yeah. And so then you could be like a you could be a caravan for that monkey. Yeah. But a, like a caravan that can leap through the air. M- monkeys are basically parkour, right? That's just what they are. Mm. They are. Sort of, they're yes. living. They're living a parkour life style. Yeah. Style, you know, and we're sort of. Well, that's what we used to do before. That's what we lived like before the society man. came and the man <laughs> mm. and things like that. And we've forgotten our roots. Before the man, we were little parkour monkeys. Yeah. And we were happy. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. were happier. Now, now we don't know we what's have, up. We didn't know what depression was. Yeah, there was we no just depression. just had parkour. There was no depression. Mm. Well, I mean, we say that, but we don't know. The monkeys might be depressed. Oh, well, the ones that we... You're such a the, killjoy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they the look ones it. that we put in cages are probably pretty sad. Yeah, yeah. Do mm. Do you think it would be worse, right, for the monkeys in the cages if we then played them videos of humans doing parkour? Ah, oh, <laughs> just to remind them what they're missing out on. Not only are you basically now stuck in an office, but we're out there jumping up things mm. and swinging around on yeah. buildings and different things. Like that. Or do you think? What if we? Played them videos of monkeys that are free. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> would that make them happier? Maybe make them feel like they're part of something, or mm, no, it make them know. feel like they're apart from something. Mm. Happiness, yeah, but maybe they feel like they're a part of something, and that something is being apart from things. Okay, mm. I mean, at least it's something. You take <laughs> what you can get, really, when you're a monkey in a cage. Yeah, true. Well, what's what could you show monkeys in a cage that would make them the happiest of all? Uh, easy, mm. a YouTube video on how to break out of a cage. Mm. Oh, you see, some break out of the yeah. Planet of the Apes, Apes, uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, did they show them? Did they show them? Probably. YouTube in that. Oh no, no. But I'm, <laughs> okay. so you could show them show that. Show them that movie. Yeah, you know, right. Get some ideas. Did they show them YouTube? Did they? <laughs> Are they, streaming? Are they streaming? I guess like Caesar would have had to. Was his name Caesar? Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. Caesar. And he had to like teach. He had to teach other monkeys new stuff, right? Don't know because he was like smart. And then unless they they just gave him a chemical or whatever. I, can't I think they might have got it on chemical. I don't think he taught like just regular monkeys how to be yeah. smart. Yeah, I he think... set up a monkey university, and <laughs> it took him forty five years <laughs> and several generations of monkeys yeah. to get everyone up to scratch. But it was so beautiful in that first graduation day when the first like. <laughs> batch of monkeys go through monkey university <laughs> they all come- monkey <laughs> university i can't believe i'm saying these words monkey university yeah. and then like they they all like they all applaud to him and he's all old right mm. and he stands up there and they're clapping and yeah uh, mm. that's right yeah, he gets, out, he gets, out, he gets out of his wheelchair mm. like that just for a second and he stands mm. up and he yeah. shakes and then he sits back down and that's when they all stand up yeah and, Woo! like that because i mean i think Oh, those whooping monkeys. I feel, well, the bonobos. Mm. And they clap like... But I think there's actually a, a type of monkey called a whooping monkey. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, I mean, I think we're due for for sort of a reboot of the... Yeah. The Planet of the, the Apes. The Planet of the right? Apes, one with the titles. Like, where, you know, maybe maybe if they're so smart, they're not going to go to war. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Because why? That's that's a bad thing. War is bad. And sure. I think something, okay. something smart. Right. Well, maybe, maybe then uh, rather than sort of uh in killing all humans they sort of decide to go down the route of like just establishing a, a, a trade relationship with the humans yeah yes. you know and, and where the monkeys that will way. teach you parkour yeah sure yeah because <laughs> that's the only lessons. thing we want <laughs> we they know that's what we want and, and we can't have you it. had the opportunity to be able to do parkour mm. and be you'd fun. take it oh yeah. sure and if i were to study under anyone it would be a monkey obviously you know uh, probably the um that, oh, yeah. fr- that French guy, of what he is to clowning, yes. monkeys are to parkour. Uh, yes. Um, that Golier. French guy. Golier. Golier. Yeah. Golier, but then this would be like Caesar-y. Yes, Caesar-y. Mm. Caesar-y. The French C- version of Caesar. caesar <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said fridge version for a second. I was like, yeah, the what's fridge that version? got to do? French. Mm, that would be freezery. Freezery, yes. <sighs> anyway, I have plans. Oh, remember? Sure. Thank you. I mean, I've yeah. got places to be. Well, then go then. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm going to go. But um, Jess, thank you so much. Jess, you've done a really good thing here today. Are you guys all right? Yes. Yes. Can yes, I get yes, you anything? Yes. 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 Yes.
My bo- like water. They, been, bought water. Your bought <laughs> water. Can I have your bought water? Bought. Can I have your bought water? Can I have your bot water? Bot. Bot. Yeah. Bot. Yeah, bot. You can't leave That's us gross. like this, shit. <laughs> bot. 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 That's not crazy. Bot? That's not crazy. <laughs> That's a normal thing to say, but it's that's a, a normal good, thing to say, and, and a, that's how you say it, and that's really normal and a, way to say and that a nice thing. Neutral accent. Mm. Yeah, you know, as we all know, Alistair doesn't have an accent. Yeah, he's got one of those non-accent accents. Yeah. Um, okay. We've been going, Alistair, for seven and a half hours. Really? How good's that? That's pretty good. It's pretty good. It doesn't feel that long. You know? No, it hasn't felt that long. So. We're so far. Where I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not unhappy. Yeah, just yeah. checking in wise. Yeah. Um, you know, we, this this might be well, okay. Well, some, something big happens in in sort of three more. Yeah, stages. I did look down and I saw. I yeah. actually checked in at the pad and. Yeah. Uh, so we just scares gonna... me a little bit. And well, I love you holding that like a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Thank you Thank so much, Jess. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Jess. Do go on. Lisa, I think something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, we are. are. Mm-hmm. Disgustingly, we, we are. penis foods before while they were sitting in front of you. I know. It's disgraceful, isn't it? Yeah, we call ourselves comedians. <laughs> mm-hmm. you're not. Bye. Um, so we are. Um, Okay. But uh, I, th- I thought there was, some, but 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 I think the idea of um, locking up monkeys and showing them videos of humans doing parkour is something, right? I think that might be a sketch, mm-hmm. right? I like like um, very often, like some of the some of the things that I have heard about experiments that have been done on monkeys really do seem to be the extent of them seems to be well, let's let's see how cruel this is to do to monkeys. Mm. All right, like some of them just unnecessarily being like, "This, this is this sounds like a bad thing to do. Let's see if it is." Well, we have proven it. It was a really, really bad thing to do. But interestingly, it might have even been worse than we thought it was going to be. <laughs> so we learned something new, mm. and science moves forward. You could see a sort of um, an emptiness enter their eyes. Mm. If monkeys ever do rise up. Mm. And you know, and and try and take over us. Assuming they don't win, we're going to have a lot of experience in knowing how to punish them for trying to overthrow humanity, mm. right? Like, we're, really, all that research is finally going to pay off because we're going to be able to, you know, we're going to be so we, the, the, we've laid the groundwork uh, of ways to just be real dickheads to monkeys. This makes them quite sad. Mm. Um, there was an uprising. They would just need to be so numerous. And I think I think the numbers are against them. But I think in the movies, have you seen any of the Planet of the Apes: Rise of the Planet? I've seen the first one. I think. Mm. Don't most of don't most humans end up getting wiped out by um, a disease or something like that? Right, a monkey disease. Um. Well, that's what I thought, but I mean, I'm asking you because I haven't seen it. But no, I've seen the first one. I don't think that happens in, the in Rise of the Planet of the Apes with Caesar and stuff. Mm-hmm. With no disease? I think so. I think there's a disease. I think the disease, I think that whatever it is that they've done that makes Caesar smart, mm. doesn't that also kill people, kill lots of people? Maybe. Doesn't ring a bell? Not right now. Mm. Okay. Mm. I think maybe his dad, his dad's sick or something like that. Yeah, but... his dad's got Alzheimer's, right, and he's trying to come up with a cure to help him, mm. and I think he does come up with one. But then, and it works on him for a while, yeah. but then it goes bad and maybe kills him, but it makes the gorilla real smart. But then I think it also then kills off, like it gets out and it kills off lots of people, I think, mm. somehow, maybe. But maybe not. Maybe that's maybe that's in the second one mm. or the third one yeah, or the fourth one or maybe one that hasn't come out yet, that they haven't even started planning. <laughs> maybe it's in that one. Either way, I'm right. Yeah, no, I think you're right. About this important topic. You're you going for another sausage. Well, I just thought... I keep feeling a little bit weird because I think I'm a little bit undereaten. Mm-hmm. So you're just going back to back on the. I mean, I think I, so far our like our choices of food I think have worked out great, right? Like yeah. I feel like I'm almost having a better diet than I normally do. Mm-hmm. Where like you know got a nice balance of different fruits and this this sausage, which as I understand it contains all things, you know, averaged out. Mm-hmm. It is it it, it is it is it's like one that. of the healthiest options we've ever had. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Where's the carbs? Probably in there, but. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We're not wrapping it in carbs like you do when you eat it with a slice That's of right. bread or something. And it looks so good. Mm. Mm. Um, Correct. All right. So um, yeah. we've, um, we're showing monkeys park footage of humans doing parkour mm. to see if it makes them sad so that mm. if ever they do rise up, mm. we know what to do against them. Yeah, to make them sad. To make them sad. But also, yeah, also it's, it's, it's a... It's an experiment in finding ways to, to make monkeys sad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't feel like the best of all possible comedies, mm. but it's one of all possible comedies, Alistair. It's one of them. Just to see what will happen. Mm. Isn't that enough? Mm. I mean, we might at some point have run out of all the good science to do, right? And then, But then there's going to be all these scientists who still need jobs, and we'll give them little... little We'll, we'll give them little jobs to do. We'll give them little things. Oh, what? If, can you go away and do some research? Oh, yeah, no, we still need you, scientists, obviously. We need you to do lots of important research. Could you um, help me with a, ooh, a mm. science to mm. find out what happens when you put the cu a cup mm. um, and you put lots and lots of like the pens and bananas in it mm. and um, whether that, you know, whether that can um, help. The, the point where we've kind of reached mm. most of the important knowledge. Mm. It's this, but you go, oh, scientists, could you? Yes, we need you. Mm. Uh, could you move that chest of drawers <laughs> into the garage <laughs> and uh, see what happens if, observe what happens if you uh, go through all the documents and get, rid of, them and it, get yeah. rid of all the ones that are not important? <laughs> it's an experiment. My hypothesis mm. is that it'll be it'll be easier to find the ones that I need when I need them. Mm. Thank and, you, scientists. Thank and, you, Nobel laureate. Mm, and as a you know, as a uh, double blind, mm. you can also move this other mm. chest of drawers <laughs> and that's already been cleaned out. <laughs> yes, move that see, there. That, what that's like. What happens? I think that's I think that's a really good idea, Alistair. Um, I, I like the idea that there's sort of just lots of scientists milling around. They're all wearing. Their, you know, their white coats and that sort of thing, and they've got, you know, pens and calculators, but they don't. The sort of they're sort of just looking aimless and sort of kicking the dirt, and maybe they go around knocking door to door. It's like, hey, anyone need any sort of science? So we could this. Could, oh, Alistair, this could be part of our right wing comedy thing, <laughs> because I think a lot of the a lot of the criticisms that people have of climate change on the uh, climate science on the, uh, on the on the right is, it to, is to do with the fact that oh well you gotta you gotta say it so that you can get the research funding you know that's because oh, that's what they all they're doing it for because that's you know when you know you, mm -hmm. when you want when all you care about is getting money what you do is you go into atmospheric right si science research that's the main motivation for getting into that particular field keeping that alive but um. Uh, yeah, but but then also, you know, maybe maybe that gets cl that loophole gets closed up. Right? Yes, we finally people finally realise that there's no truth to the fact that we'll all be dead in ten years because of climate change, and um, and then all the all the scientists are sort of out on the streets having to earn a crust. That's right. Like the rest of us, but for some reason we're still polite to them and give them little jobs to do around the place, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. um, I guess like what we just described with the. Yeah. Moving the mm -hmm. chest of drawers yes, from one place to another and, place, and do, and, but calling it an experiment. Mm. Oh yes, it is a one. Yes, it is an right. experiment. Oh. Definitely, very mm. good. important experiment for me to find out. Stand on the that. back of this truck and mm. pick up. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you pick up all the rubbish <laughs> along the path? Like that that Ooh. particular tone of delivery is yeah. crucial to yeah. that sketch. And, oh, and uh, oh, what would it be like <laughs> if you took care of this old person? Mm. Yes, and oh, and this one over here. But this one, I want you to give them this medication. Mm. But oh, what would happen to this one if you gave them this, this medication? medication? So. Mm. Would you do that for the next year? Year or five. Well, it's a big study. Yes, mm. it goes for five years. Mm. Oh, it's going to take a lot of sciencing. <laughs> but sometimes these longitudinal studies, mm. huh? M maybe it's a, it's a meta-analysis of what is, mm. what do they like to eat the mush on the tray in the mornings? Oh, yes. I've got a list of things you need to check if they can mm. do the every day. Apparatus, et cetera, et cetera. And, oh, at the end of it, there could be an opportunity to publish. Mm. 
and then they have some fake website where they set yeah. up <laughs> publication. I mean, I suppose it could be a real website, Alistair. I mean, I mean one of the no, things I think fake. one of the things that we've learned. One of the things that we've learned recently is that there is almost no difference between a fake <laughs> website and a real website. Mm. Wait a second, this is a fake website. <laughs> it's, it's like it's just stuck on the screen. <laughs> That's the real fake it's fake like, news. There's actually like, you know, there's, there, he's got a mouse and what, all he's done is like to, to make it seem like it's moving around is there's the guy standing behind him with a like, white laser pointer and he's moving the thing around like that and he's making things. It's actually way more work. Can you write that down somehow? Yeah. A fake new, yeah, like it, like maybe maybe this is a way that you could you could trick I don't know someone if you had a cynical view of the president say. Mm. And you wanted to make him think he was looking at stuff on the internet, mm. but really he wasn't connected to the internet yeah. at all. Um, and and you thought he was kind of the kind of fool that maybe you could you could pull this this kind of a ruse on, you know. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, you know, my mind drifted off to the idea of kangaroos, which is a so I guess a trick. I mean, a lot of people think that um, Australia. Is, is, have you heard this conspiracy mm. theory that Australia isn't real? Australia isn't re re real. Mm. Um, I guess that would be considered a kangaroo. Thank you. That's true. Yeah, you're right. Um, how how do they explain kangaroos if if they um, if they don't think Australia is real? Like, do they think that that's CGI or something like that when they see the videos, or do they think that kangaroos exist somewhere else? And we've just said that. We found these all these marsupials, mm. and we said, "Oh, this will be great for that pretend country we want to create. Let's just pretend all, they're all there." As we all know, kangaroos are just adult rabbits. That is true. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy, I need to announce that we have reached one hundred sketches. Uh, um, somehow, uh, in how long? Um. Uh. uh <laughs> You have to just look at the thing. <laughs> Seven hours and forty-three minutes. How do we beat our time I by like four hours? I don't. I don't know, Alistair, but I, it's 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 good. It's good. I mean, the what the amount of time it took me to work out what the concept of time was. Sure. I mean, like obviously, we're starting to degrade starting now. Starting to degrade. Sure. I, hey, I got a. Uh, we need a word. Uh, we we need a, this is a safe word for people who've listened to this far into the mm -hmm. pobble pobble thrush. Oh, pobble pobble thrush, like the pobble yeah. bonk. The, like the bubble bonk, the frog. Yeah, the frog? frog. It's a type of frog. They go bubble bonk, bubble bonk, mm. bubble bonk. Yeah. Like that. So they're saying their name. But it's weird. Yeah, like a Pokemon. Like a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bubble bonk Pokemon. Yeah. Um. So this is bubble thrush. Mm. Bubble thrush. Bubble thrush. So if you've been listening, bubble thrush. Thank you. Keep that. Thank you. Yeah. Um. And uh, uh, feel free to also listen to the rest of the comedy, uh, the two in the think tank podcast. If for some reason you're a person who's never listened before, mm. but you're, you're introducing yourself to this just as so, so for anyone who does has never listened, mm. the episodes are normally shorter. Mm. Um, usually oh, they yeah. go for about an hour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a long one. This is a this long, is what one, we call yeah. a long one. On yeah. The show. yeah. This is not how we spend all our weekends, mm. starting, getting up at five. But, I mean, this might be a great way to introduce yourself to the podcast. Like the best way to learn a language is just to immerse yourself in That's it. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. you know, if, if, you, if you want to get started on the podcast, and it's, it's bad for me to be telling you this now here in the middle of the podcast where you presumably already got this far. Mm -hmm. But if you did want to get started on the podcast, I think this would be a great place to start. You just full immersion, just sit yourself down of a weekend and listen to, you know, however long, 12, 14, 15 hours of the podcast is a way to sort of get into the mindset and see what it's like, decide if it's for you. That's right. Before you commit to however much of the other podcast there is. That's right. <laughs> Touching my nose a lot while I was saying that. That's okay, Andy. Look, I'm also starting to do slightly weirder things and starting to like mm. just lose a little bit like with what I feel is like my full connection to reality. Mm. Mm. You know, um, so my full hundred percent regular connection. You ever go fishing, Alistair? Um, look, I used to go squidding a bit. Really? Yeah. Like with the squid jig? Yeah, squid jig. <sighs> Whenever I look at a squid jig, I'm always scared that I'll put it down my throat yeah. and it'll get stuck in there and mm. be so horrible because they've got like just it's just endless. So many spikes all pointing up like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just you know. How do you get a squid off a squid jig? Do you got to 
tear the squid apart. Up. Yeah. Oh, I mean, like, I think it's probably often their tentacles and stuff that get caught. Yeah. In there. I mean, now remembering back, it feels like it must be pretty cruel it's and awful. It's pretty for them. visceral kind of thing mm. to rip. Rip. Yeah, I but mean, I also I, don't know what what you put on there that attracts them. I can't remember. I think it's just the thing, isn't it? Aren't they just they just like look at it and they there? go like, oh, that's good. I'll grab that. Yeah, I'll eat that. Oh, so that'll that that looks useful. Maybe mm. I could, I don't know, find yeah. someone who likes that color or something like that. It would be a good gift. No, it could be a very mm. nice. Yeah, and oh, I like those spikes at the bottom. I could mm. use those as a weapon, maybe mm. for you know for catching other squid to eat them. Or, yeah, that would be uh, perfect for catching squid. I'll grab it. Yeah. <laughs> And then, oh, oh, the older, no. is, is, I wonder if, imagine if we could somehow do some analysis of the squid brain, maybe with MRIs mm. or that sort of thing, and we find out that's actually what they're thinking. You know, they're, they're, they're smart enough to look at it, it, deduce the concept of squid fishing from this isolated example, work out that this would be good for that um, that pursuit of squid fishing, but not make the mental leap. Every time they fail to make the mental leap that, if they grab it, they themselves, the squid, will could well be fished. Yes, that's right. Um, because they... Squids in an MRI? Is that a sketch? <laughs> oh, I mean, look, I mean, it could definitely be... I think that's, that's part of this this sketch here, mm. you know? Because, I mean, how, how are you going to talk about this thing, you know, about the psychology of the squid and getting mm. caught? And I think maybe you're going to need an MRI. I don't think sure. this can be done without an MRI, Andy. Mm. And, you mm. know, seeing that squid just laying sort of limp on a... On a flat thing, maybe mm. with its head strapped in. Yep. <laughs> and then going in slowly. Yeah. And then you show it various things and you analyze its thoughts. I don't I don't know if there's any way ever ever going to be any way to analyze the thoughts of a squid. I mean they hmm. I mean, I guess even when you could show it different sorts of images, the sorts of things that a squid already would see underwater, and then you yeah, like a rock. There you go. Yeah, yeah. See, and then you see which part of the squid brain lights up there mm, when you show never, it a rock. You know, we think that this is the part of the brain that means that it could be a good place to hide behind. Mm. And then you show them a squid jig, you know, and they think, oh, you know, I don't know. You show them that. Maybe you'd have to find something else that looks like maybe something that they used for attacking mm. other squid. You know, maybe a maybe their own beak. But then maybe they've never seen their own beak. So they, right. wouldn't they, wouldn't they, look, they wouldn't know what they're looking at. But they would look at they might have seen other squid attacking other squid with their beaks. So mm. they might know about squid beaks and that way. Maybe their parents told you know, them about they're, it they're, well, their parents, you know, would would spend a lot of time naked in front of them, maybe opening yeah. up their legs and stuff like okay. that. <laughs> yes. You know, so then that way they would learn maybe about squids beaks and their squid and, parents. Yeah. Oh, squid families. What do you think of gift shops? Yeah. Right? Just that they sell things that you wouldn't really want to give get for you, anybody else. Yeah, they, they sell things that you wouldn't want to receive, mm. but look like good things to give. It's a very good observation, Andy. Um, yeah, I mean, what 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 is the what is the ultimate? Um, I mean, imagine you. What's the end game here, bro? I wonder if gift shops give out gift certificates. Like, because, because in a way, that would be even like, because getting a gift certificate sometimes feels like it's what's a gift it, certificate again? Like a like a voucher? A voucher? Okay, yeah, um, <laughs> that's all right, Alice. There, oh. we're in we're in dark and dim waters, yeah. right? Um, but the the idea that because it, it, it already feels like people are making minimum effort when they give you a gift certificate, mm -hmm. but if they could give you a gift certificate to a gift shop, yeah, it feels like all they've really thought is the word gift. Mm. You know, which is the minimum thought to yeah. re re required to give somebody a gift. And I guess what they're also giving you is the opportunity to just buy a gift that you could give to somebody else. That's true. And that is going to be something that you're like, you're going to have to do at some point. And so they are giving the gift of the greatest gift of all, which is giving gifts, giving gifts. Mm. Yeah. You know, maybe Can maybe it's a really wonderful thing to do is give someone a gift to a gift shop. And maybe then you, but then, but then really the best gift that you can give somebody is just a gift to another gift shop. So I wonder if you can go into a gift shop and ask to have it exchanged for, a, 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 ask your, your, your gift certificate to be exchanged for another gift certificate, maybe one with a yeah. longer expiry date. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's one way that you could make it not mm. uh, expire. Um, you, and then you also, if the, the name is written on there, I don't know if the name, write names on there. Oh yeah. They rewrite it with a different name. Yeah. <laughs> probably they do. Yes. But you know yeah, what? Maybe for a small fee, hopefully. And then what you discover. Is that is that 
if someone goes into the shop and they realize that all the products on the shelves are all super glued to the shelves. Nobody's ever bought anything. None of these are real gifts. Oh, right? I like this. It's one of those sketches where the people start losing their minds. Mm, you know? yeah, yeah, I can really relate to that. Oh, I actually just got a pain in my back. Yeah, I had a pain right deep on the inside of my torso before. And I was like, oh, that's just like it feels like a mm. s small heart attack or something like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah it's just it's... a sketch muscle that you're uh, yeah, that that you're hyperextending. <laughs> I think um, it is. It, I am in that thing of like where you don't realize that you're holding tension in certain places. Mm. And when you don't move for long enough, like then something is actually there's some pain there in the upper the upper back, the backer, the upper back, backle, backle region. <laughs> backle? The upper backle? Um, so I think the I dorsal. Think this, the sketch itself is just about the sketch shop owner, and it's a person who think, talks about the psychology of them mm. you know, starting this gift thing, and then in the end they're not – really they're a psychologist because, mm. you know, they're just – it's just about – But the question is, of course, how do they make money? And maybe they just sell people's data. Maybe that's all it is. It's a data mining exercise because you've got to wonder, mm. right? If you can't see how they're, what they're selling, you can't see the product, mate, you're the product, right? That's right. You're being sold. But then you can also see lots of the products. Yeah, you can. So it's going to be hard to see through that to see that you that yourself are the product but until you realise that you're super glued to the shelf. Yeah. <laughs> Ah! Yeah, that's where all the figurines come from. They're all mm. those little figurines. They were they mm -hmm. were all once people. That's correct. Anyway, this sounds like a Goosebumps book. Um, I mean, I think that's a. I think it, it's a very valid Goosebumps book. It's a very goose, valid goose, one. Goosebumps book. Um, yeah. Um, Are they probably the only um, the only the only animal that has its own bump? You know yeah, the goose. Chicken, oh, chicken pox. Chicken pox. Oh, yeah. they got a pox, but they don't have no bump. I always assumed that, that the pox was the bump that you get when you get chicken pox, but it's a pox is actually just means like disease, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah. You see, but pox kind of sounds like it could mean bump. Mm. You know, little bump with a red bump with a red sort of scar on it or a red mm. scab. I've got the hots for what's in the box with the pox. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't know what that means. No, but <clears throat> we're gonna have to go through having kids that get chicken, chicken pox. All yeah, the time. I'm actually sort of wondering when that's gonna happen. I think there were chicken pox at the daycare center recently, and um, I was like, oh, what's this gonna be like? Because mm. I think I have a very vague memory of having chicken pox when I was young. Do you remember it? Yeah, I sort of remember it. I remember yeah. not really going out much. And... Yeah, and being itchy. Do you remember being itchy? I think I was itchy. Yeah, I think I was itchy. Yeah. And I think maybe getting... I was allowed to hang out with one girl because she she was also having it at the same time. Yeah, right. Mm. And that's a good. Um, I was going to say that's a good premise for like a an adult friendship or something that you both have the chicken pox. Mm. So you you can what's you the can adult hang chicken out. pox called? Um, I don't know. Oh, there should be an app for this mm. for people <laughs> that have chicken pox. You know, just like. <laughs> what do you got? You got a, what, what a week or something like that? It's like shingles or something. I can't remember. Yeah, shingles. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. maybe that is adult chicken pox. Something like that. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it, it sounds weird. It doesn't sound like a disease. Mm. All right. Come up with a better name. I sounds like a you, band. chicken pox doesn't much sound like a disease. Oh, that sounds shingles, like a band as well. Shingles would be a good name for your brother's band. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's irritating and um, you don't get it. Or something. You don't get it, all right? No, no, no. Well, I don't get it. Sounds like something that you do get. Yeah. Or maybe right. you, you only get it if you if you mm. or you don't you know, I forget it. <laughs> um <laughs> an app. Um yeah, so it's it's um yeah, it's an app. It, it's an app you're feeling lonely there. But it but it also it does put me in mind of I think there's a movie out right now about mm. two people who have got who are, who've got some kind of disease and they're in quarantine. Have you seen any trailers for this? Mm, no. They're, they're like teens or something and they sort of form a relationship or friendship or something to, because they're both in quarantine and can't <laughs> come into contact with anyone else. Yeah, but is there an app? They're quarantines. Man, they should have called <laughs> it that. Where the quarantines? Yeah, this is a good. This is a um, this is a a good sort of group that goes school to school, mm. teaching kids about um, cleanliness, right? Sure. Or teaching kids how to be germaphobes. Yeah. Or 
these kids who were like bright young geniuses in primary school mm-hmm. who then went into sort of uh, bio biosecurity mm-hmm. and you know they they stop lizards and stuff from getting into the country <laughs> at the airports and they just work at the airport yeah okay so it's sort of like oh it's kind of like a teen border force mm. oh, this would be great yeah teen like teen, border. teen re- reboots of like of, of shows and everybody loved press gang press gang of course that was teen journalists Right. Oh, is this is the was. quarantines. This is the teen border force. That's right. Everybody loves a teen. Yeah, and they and they've got those dogs. You know, border border secure, mm. security sniffer dogs. They got a puppy. See, yes, everything's right. younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, and uh, they um, and then they still go through people's cavities mm. and things like that. Sure. sure. <laughs> You know, and you know they find lizards in there and eggs and stuff. And... <laughs> the eggs and lizards in their cavities. Sure, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. People leaving the country with lizards and mm-hmm. and they call aquatines. Mm. Is that what these called? No. <laughs> aquatine is that, oh. that that is that an actual show? Oh, the there's, a, there's a show I think that was called Aquatine Hunger Force. Oh, sure, sure. Well, this is totally different. I think one of those characters was a packet of chips. So, I mean, we're not doing anything stupid no, like that. No, 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 no. That Teenage. feels embarrassing. I can't believe they got that idea up on TV. You would have been embarrassed to pitch that idea. No, but this would be great for, like, you know, ABC Kids or something like that. And it's kids that just have real jobs where they mm. work for more Kids more. with real jobs. <laughs> That's what I want to see. You know? And I, like, think, I think they should actually have to shoot some people. <laughs> Really? Yeah, they've got oh, maybe guns. Maybe they could have like long, those long tasers, like a cattle prod. No, guns, <laughs> bullets, killing, yeah. killing. And then they got to go and talk to their psychologist about like the stuff they've seen and that sort of thing. <laughs> so not, they're, not, they're not child w- soldiers. No, 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 no. no. They're no. Like, like they're put in a, they're put they're in a scenario. <laughs> they're put in a scenario where somebody is, you know, refusing to mm. put their hands on their head or whatever mm. like that. And then they have to sort of make a decision for the Take safety the of shot. everybody. Yeah. Um, and maybe they find always find a way to to do it where they like give people wedgie or something instead. You know. Well, that's what they they're about to shoot the person. Mm. You know, and then another uh, quarantine comes around the back and yeah. gives them on a, a motorbike. Oh no, that was holding the. Uh, you were no, doing yeah, a, a gesture with your hand. They get the wedgie bit. like that, and then they pull it up like that, and they mm. go. Psych or something like that, or, or you know what's something young people say these days? Psych. I'm pretty sure psych. they're all saying psych. Yeah, <laughs> and then that's because that person was actually the the person who worked for the mm-hmm. psychiatric department mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of and, Border Force and the administering um, medical grade wedgies. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, I, it sort of makes me want to go through all the words that end in teen and find a teen based show. Um, yeah. But uh, are there that many uh, things that end in teen? Um, oval teen. Oval teen. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, what's a quarantine? I mean, oval that teens. That's really what they should call Auskick, that youth mm. AFL thing. Mm. They should name it after that brand of chocolate drink. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> um, like there's um, Steen, Lowenstein. <laughs> <laughs> The Lowensteins, <laughs> and they're just people from the the Lowenstein family yeah. who were between <laughs> twelve and nineteen. Well, are they from the Lowenstein family, or are they from the Lowens family? No, no, <laughs> Lowensteins. Okay, yeah. Um, sure, write it down. No, I, I know, no. Alistair. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I kid. I kid. Mm. I, um, I like those those. Eight-year-olds that do drag racing. Oh man! Um, but like, without without about? talking about you know like something bad happening to them, is, yeah. there, is there fun stuff that can happen to them? Sure. Well, I mean, it feels it's like funny. something that a cool dad would get them into. <laughs> <laughs> ah, don't worry about it. It's just a rocket-powered car. Mm. I mean, I wonder if um. I mean, this is this is a bit horrific. This is taking it in a bad direction. Mm. But there is the idea that, like, pr- presumably below a certain age, you can't be um, a, you can't be convicted of a crime. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. So I think, like, you know, we laugh at the Spy Kids franchise, mm-hmm. but you'd think that if you were 
a uh, a government looking to do some extrajudicial ki- killings on, in foreign territory, mm-hmm. you'd s- you'd create a squad of a, to- a, a, a assassin, yeah, assass- pr- you know, assassin kids, or assassin, assassin toddlers, even like whatever the mm. below whatever kind of age threshold, and ones that can fit in small gaps. They yeah, can fit in small gaps. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I just find toddlers don't have quite the ability to be quiet for long enough. <laughs> I think quiet being quiet is probably I mean you w- I wouldn't be at all surprised if you know as somewhere in the cold war one mm. of the various superpowers had been trying to do this like they were trying to get mm. dolphins to plant mines on the bottom of That's ships. True. I think they would have been trying to get toddlers. You'd be silly not to raid orphanages and things like mm. that for for their most sort of ruthless and skilled yes. toddlers. Yes. Um because then you can have them running around marketplaces and things like that and sniffing out, uh, you know, troublemakers. I mean, like, but but what about also just spy, like, no, no, so like, uh, pardon me, um, mm. like a kid criminal heist movie, like heists, you, know, mm. you get like a team of heist. But I do mm. like it's the government that runs them. Yeah, but 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 it's well, I mean, there's no reason that some of them can't have gone rogue as well mm. and be put, you know. Be, right. be be sort of basically acting as, as sort of a, a mercenaries or, or doing this kind of stuff because they you know because they're obviously addicted to the adrenaline mm. and that sort of thing. yeah and i guess some of it could be like you know it's like born identity where you know one of them they mm. feel got away and mm. i mean like i guess to the to the people who were part of the government agency they thought he was bad mm. even though they seem pretty bad this government agency well i but i think it's important as well that nothing bad happens to these little children like for the purposes mm. of this film nothing bad happens to the little children it's them doing the horrific things to other people mm. see so nothing bad happens to them yeah they just have to kill and kill again yeah yeah, yeah. but they're fine forever yeah no, absolutely mm. i think it's called the todd squad and the Todd yeah. is for toddler. Oh, right. Not, or not, maybe not they're, they're all called Todd. No, they could also be called Todd. Is there a female version of Todd? Mm, Todina? Tod- <laughs> or they're either, they're either called Todd Squad or they're called Squadlers. Um, both very... What about very, Todd Squadlers? Todd Squadlers. Todd Squadlers. The Todd Squadlers. Um, sounds like another safe word. Dude. I've written down the word Rugrats because I wanted to say out loud this embarrassing phrase. Rugrats, I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The toddlers who um, are, are, work for the government work. doing extrajudicial killings. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, they're, uh, you got to learn to walk before you can kill. That's one of the taglines. Um uh, you've um, got a dead man crawling. Dead man crawling. Yes. Um, that's that's when one of them has shot somebody in the Achilles tendons <laughs> and the, he's crawling away as they stand over him. No, that's one of them a... that gets caught by the foreign in the in a foreign nation, mm. and he's been put on death row. Mm, okay, sure. Yeah, and that's what this current mission is death to time out. to save to <clears> save <throat> that one. Yeah, we don't leave our. Dead man crawling. It feels like more as like a signal, uh, not a signal, a sequel. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's a, a great signal sequel. to the the audience that we're gonna. There's a sequel. There's coming. a sequel coming. Mm. It's a sequel. Sequel. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. Um, what about like you know? Uh, I mean, they already had that movie in New Zealand where it was like sheep go bad. You know, and they black sheep, black sheep, black sheep, and they kind of get evil. Mm. What Turn about into a kind of a zombie sheep of some kind? I mm. imagine. Yeah. What about like that, but in Australia, and the shepherds go bad. <laughs> we call black shepherd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, or bad shepherd. Bad it's shepherd. Just obviously, the good shepherd is um, mm. what we call Jesus or God mm. or one of one of them. Yeah, and a bad shepherd. I mean, like you know, obviously he's not turning into a zombie or something. But but we haven't had like a. We've a had movie. a bad Santa. We've had bad mums. Mm. We've had bad teacher. Now, what other what other jobs or or roles in life mm. could but, be bad? And we don't see shepherds very much, but mm. they travel along the rural open mm. land, and mm. and they could get to any town mm. that is connected sure. through you know sure, agricultural sure, sure. land. Yeah, and they've got a flock. They've got a right. flock yeah, who yeah, might yeah. work for them, or you know they might have guns hidden in their wool, mm. or 
sort of other sticks. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what you know? What kind of like are, are they? They're not. They're not, they're not just a mercenary. They're I think. Almost... It's, I think it's interesting to to come to explore the concept of a bad shepherd because because I don't think that traditionally they've been the the role of shepherd has been one like apart from the good mm. shepherd obviously the, the our lord mm. um we haven't really ascribed positive or negative characteristics to shepherds in mm. any particular way to be able to do, even define what a bad shepherd would look like relative to a good shepherd but mm. um but i think uh i think that would be part of it what about you know, you know like this is just an example of what they do mm. um you know a, you know your good shepherd protects uh, sheep from the wolves, mm. but a bad shepherd hires the wolves, mm -hmm. and you know they protect all of them. You know, mm. like that. So he's like he's willing to work with the wolves, yeah, and so it's a kind sacrifice, of a, type sacrifice thing. a few sheep. You know, to to just to pay the wolves. Wow, this actually sounds quite horrible. Mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I mean, you know, that in nature, oh, it's not a comedy in nature. In, you know, you're right. It's not really a sketch at the moment, is it? Mm. Um, um, I mean, you know, but I, I think I think it could. Mm, what about this? It's a shepherd, but he loves tunneling. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it's like that's his. Dream. That is a bad thing for yeah. a shepherd to love. Yeah, he's always digging down into the ground. Into there. the ground, he's you, burrowing. You turn around, his feet are disappearing into a hole. He's got this. You know, he's got yeah. the urge to burrow. He's got the urge to burrow, and he's losing quite a few sheep who are trying to follow him and. Then they have like the you know the the ground collapses on them mm. and he's like God damn it you sheep, I said stay out here. This isn't for you. This isn't for you. Get away. Um, <laughs> the burrowing shepherd. I think I think Alistair, we could make a parody of an Australian outback feel good film mm. which has a burrowing shepherd in it. It feels like one of those ones where you just piece together enough key shots. Mm. Right. <laughs> of, <laughs> what of he sort of he wants to get rusty like... fences and people sitting down in sort of old bars <laughs> and that sort of thing. <laughs> and you see him dunnily under the ground and say, like, oh, that's the, you know, that's the burrowing shepherd. You know, he's been doing that for years. Mm. He's crazy or something like that. But then we see that after all, he wasn't that crazy or something. And then he saves the town. Mm, the burrowing yeah. shepherd. And then one day he does get to go into the big city and works for like a, like, you know, like a, you know, a railway thing that mm. creates tunnels and stuff. That sure. was maybe his dream. I don't. I don't know, but I think he realizes that he feels connected to the land That's and true. the burrowing. He did it for the passion of it, and he'd lost mm. sight of that when he'd gone to work in the big smoke as an industrial boring machine. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm there's write... a big burrowing competition coming up. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner of the burrowing competition gets mm -hmm. gets you know a a boring contract with um with a, with a big boring company doing the 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 metro tunnel mm -hmm. right and that's and it's after he's been and he wins right at the last second because yeah. no one else enters but then mm. he uh he, after working in the town he realizes that's not what it's about it's not what it's about you know? it's about more than just Winning digging holes and winning and digging and things mm. like that. It's about the connection to the land. Mm. It's about having sheep or hanging out with sheep. Mm. Um, uh, it's about creating an escape route as well as an entry route. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's about making a home. It's know. true. Um, maybe Does you he... could go live in a town called Burrawong. That feels like a place in Australia. I think it might be. The road to Burrawong or the road to... Gundagai? Yeah. Yeah, that might be the one. There's, there's another one, but maybe it is that one. Is that, is that a is that Banjo Patterson poem? <laughs> I don't know. Me neither do I. I don't know. I don't, don't want to know. Yeah? Sounds dumb. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Borrowing Shepherd. I mean, look, I, I don't know about you, but there's something about the, the, the reason, the way in which it's not a clear... <laughs> Well, it's not a clear sketch idea. <laughs> so so far, it's made it my favorite sketch idea. He's always got dirt in his, under his fingernails. Oh man, so so it'd be so awful. Mm. He's just doing it all with his bare hands. Yeah. Mm, man, I mean, maybe someone brings a, a boring machine to town, and he he competes with it, like in that um, Joe Henry does in that in that folk song about you know hammering steel 
in the railway, faster right, on the railway. The real, he real. beats the steam steam drill. Mm. Like that, but we're burrowing. Mm. It was a, yeah, there was a similar thing when I went tree planting. They were talking about there are there were machines that could plant trees, but don't have. They can do it faster, but don't quite have the success strike rate of really of um of people planting. Mm. And we still need people for something. Yeah, we need people for planting trees to replace all those trees that people <laughs> cut down. See, <laughs> we mm. still need us to clean up the mess we've made. Until robots can, we can invent robots that can to clean up the mess we've made. Probably making robots. Then there'll always be jobs for humans, Alistair. That's right. Um, um, is there, like, I mean, what will I mean? I, I guess I always say this: that what, like, the last the last job will be robot repairman. Mm. I'm, I'm pretty much always saying this. I don't think it will be though. No, you don't think? No, I think repairing robots is absolutely something you could get robots to do. Mm. Right? There's a lot of like complicated stuff. Like, what if a screw falls off and it goes all the way down? Hmm. Mm. And then the bottom, and you got to go looking for it. Or... <laughs> yeah, you're right. I think robots are very good at going looking for rummaging through things. You're right, and you think that the job that involves the most rummaging through things is going to be that of robot repair man, because you could sometimes drop a screw that goes down into a thing. No, I think a, a screw could just pop off of um, a robot. Maybe we just won't repair robots. Maybe we'll just throw them all away. Maybe they'll be disposable, single-use robots, mm. and fuck them. It'd be great yeah. if you could just like if the robots that stop working, if they can just easily be made into the like a rung of a ladder. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and as the and as the robots kind of start to um you know break down, we just get a higher and higher ladder until eventually we've built a ladder to this to space. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then and then we can sort of use a few other broken down robots to create an elevator to go up there mm -hmm. and then we've got our space elevator and it's all just through recycled garbage great you know yeah good on us mm. right and then we can and go then... up into space <laughs> <laughs> um first god i don't know i mean i don't know why we're doing anything at this point seem to have a society geared towards making rung rung bots that then break down. I don't know why, because the repair <laughs> rung bots don't repair them well. Us lose the screws and can't rummage around and find them. But then we clip them all together, and like like sort of like the reverse of a transformer or a Voltron or something yeah. like that. The robots that clip together to make some regular <laughs> functional other thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, we could just build a regular ladder, but then that will be expensive. Yes, and that's hard to get funding. But it's hard to get funding to build a ladder. But you can get funding to build a bunch of clippy ro robots with clips that, again, you know, sockets at the end and that sort of thing. Mm. But, I mean, you know, it'll be easier to get to space. You won't need, like, lots of fuel and things like that. You just need mm. to t climb one step at a time. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's great. Can the, Is this a sketch idea? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, could you, <laughs> could you then – I mean, I guess it could just be you're creating a um... – <laughs> You know, not maybe an alternative to satellites or something. Or... <laughs> okay, yeah, you have a, a rung bot to the stars. Mm. Um. Yeah, I mean, what could we be doing with the garbage instead of? I mean, I, I, I genuinely think it would be cool if all garbage had some other like like was built in such a way like like packets for for biscuits or something like that it was built in such a way that you could then you when you're finished with the packet you just clip it together in some way, and it turns into something. It doesn't have to be something super useful, but if mm. it all contributes towards something, like, big and cool, mm. right, then as long as it's not becoming rubbish, oh, good. I do, and, and I do. Even uh, if you just made bricks. Yeah, right. Well, like I think it, that's like what it, they're trying to do with a lot of, like, plastic waste is turn it into building materials. Is that what mm. you mean? Or? Yeah, like, I guess, but if, like, you just made it at your house mm. and then, like, you just had the the – the brick making thing, you know, in your bin and keeps compressing all the plastic. This Especially is, for the soft I think this plastic. This is my dad's idea. My dad's definitely talked about this. And then, like having a little machine in the house that turns all the pla plastic waste into Yeah, then it makes it all into a brick. Yeah. And then, you know, at the end of the month you just put your pallet of bricks out mm -hmm. on the thing and then the truck comes along and then they build I a school. Think this is a pretty good idea. Mm. Yeah. Or a ladder to the stars. Yeah, or a ladder to the I mean there's gotta be a right. They come down the 
they, they, they come down the street ringing a bell saying, Star letter man, star letter man. Mm. You bring out your bricks. Mm. You know how you make letters out of bricks? Yeah. Anyway, no, nah, they rungs. They make rungs. It I mean, squirts every month. Your plastic machine squirts out a rung. I mean, if it was making just like, you know, the, the, the building blocks of scaffolding, mm. you know, what's that? It's just like a, a joint and a rung, mm -hmm. right? Joint mm -hmm. and rung. Mm -hmm. And then you could make any any old structure. Yeah. To get to get to any old place. To get anywhere place that's high up. Yes. Which will be good for when the sea levels rise. Or I you, do wonder, like, mm. is is plastic obviously plastic is bad as pollution, but is plastic bad and you know it's it's bad that it doesn't break down or whatever. But is plastic bad in and of itself? Like like if you're turning taking because you make it from oil, right? Mm. That's right. You get you get oil and you treat it in some way and you get mm. plastic out of it. If we're making it from oil, that's I mean, at least that carbon isn't going into the atmosphere or something like that. Like, like, I know I'm clutching at straws mm. here, literal plastic straws. Mm -hmm. But um, but is it is it so bad that, that oil gets turned into, into plastic? I think maybe the bad part is that that oil, might we might find some really good use for it later on. That, right. you know, the easily accessible kind of energy-filled um, liquid. Um, that can turn into carbo carbohydrates. Oh, mm. oh my God, um, hydrocarbons mm. and stuff like that, and that we could, um, yeah, like right now we're just not making the most of it. We're burning it and we're doing this kind of stuff. Mm. And that, that later on we might not have it, but then we'll be like, oh, this would have been really useful for for this new thing that we've discovered that you can make quite easily using just oil. Yeah, but you know, but, but maybe uh, that <clears> thing <throat> is plastic. Maybe we discovered the thing. Yeah, you're right. No, I don't doubt there'll be any new. <laughs> I don't um, think there'll be anything better you can do with this magical liquid in the future. Well, probably the best thing is keeping chips in it. We probably <laughs> peaked when we decided we could put chips in there. Mm. This was it. No, yeah. God comes down at the end and says, and we say, God, did we get it right with the oil? Was that what you wanted us to do with it? And he says, Yeah, yes. no, I wanted yes. you to keep chips in it. Yeah. Now, good on you for being able to see through that one because I thought that one was a bit cryptic yeah. when I put it as like a sort of a brown, brown uh, sludge under the bottom of the ocean. But, yeah, I was like, oh, do you think they'll know what I mean with this? This is from putting chips in. Mm. Doesn't see like it's. I think there's a bit, a few steps that they're missing. But anyway, um, you did so well done. God, yeah. you're good. Oh, God, you're good. Is that something? Yeah. Is that a sketch? I think so. I think, yeah. <laughs> what did God want us to use oil for? At the end, like <laughs> after we've kind of. Um, do you think it's like this happens after we've sort of wiped ourselves out? Uh, oh, no, I think just the rapture one happens mm. one day and God comes down and, you know, bestrides the earth like a, some kind of colossus of some kind and we shout up to him, shouting up his legs or whatever or, mm. or shouting into one of his toes. He has a little ear on a toe, one of his toes um, for, you know, for so he can take comments. Or he bends all the way down. Because he's very flexible at the waist, and he puts his <laughs> head down near the ground. Mm -hmm. We climb into his ear and we yeah. whisper, whisper to him. What you want us? Or her? Um, yes, the Lord. Um, um, great. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't want people to misinterpret what I just said and so and think that I somehow think that plastic is good because oh, I, yeah, I, well, be... I don't necessarily think that it is. But I was just like, I, oh, think, man, I think all the, the ecologists the spectrum think you're... of all the things that we're doing wrong. Maybe mm. things being in plastic form isn't mm. necessarily the worst. I don't know. No. But then, of course, all the microplastics are somehow ending up. Where did microplastics come from? Like, how are they getting around? Are they? Yeah. Are they? Oh, are they breaking off? Of are they breaking of off? Or are they just breaking off of plastics? Yeah, I guess that's probably. Part, part and they're of getting it, right? carried away by the wind mm. and wind and up in the Arctic and, and the, the currents. And they're just getting carried around my body. Mm. Yep. I guess, so do you think the the, the the quantities in the air? I mean, maybe that's going to be a good thing. All the plastic in the air? Yeah. Oh, maybe. maybe. Maybe it'll become, make the air indestructible. That'd be good. Do you think it's like a greenhouse solid? You know, that maybe could, like, lower the... I don't, I don't know of any situation where putting mm. a whole lot of plastic over the top of something has helped it to become cooler. Mm. I mean, that does yeah. sound like actually just we're describing just a greenhouse now, mm. which is... Yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, it's not, it's not sealed. It's it. not sealed plastic, mm. maybe. Yeah. Eh, no, nah, it's probably bad. It's one of those mm. ones where you can be, no, nah, that'll probably be But maybe there'll, there'll be like an airborne bacteria. Mm. Yes. That, that will eat plastic and oh. will really thrive. 
but it's never good. had the chance to, because that's like ecological niche was so tiny. I, I I always think that if we if we ever do come up with a bacteria that will eat plastic, mm. um, it and we'll probably put a whole lot of it out there. I feel like it'll mutate really quickly to eat human flesh. Sure. It'll be like one of those things where we're like we got the we got the cane toads to eat the cane beetles, mm. and then they got here and they were like. We don't look. I mean, we've only just eaten cane beetles because that's all there was. But mm. it turns out what we really love is native Australian insects and mm. small mammals. Yeah, we just never realised we're virtuosos at eating those. Yeah, and uh, I, I think that's probably what will happen that with the bacteria with that they, eats plastic. They didn't. Um, they yeah. just didn't have access to any other things. I mean, I don't know. I'm speculating to a certain extent, but all I know is that when they did get here, they found other things that they enjoyed eating as much, if not more, mm. um, all just around the place. Yeah, cool. It um, is cool. Yeah. I mean, we don't ever say, "God, they're adaptable." God, they did a good job. They made it, made a really made a go of it in a new country. Good on them. Mm. That's the kind of can-do attitude, yeah. attitude, and they never relied on anybody oh, and need any welfare or anything like that. No, no, no. You know, the I mean, cane toad. I guess they had breeding programs and stuff like that, which would have been just for them to have sex and things like that. Which... Sure, sure, initially, right? Mm. But that's just a small initial investment. And now you look at a cane toad and you can say, you, look, at you're doing it. Mm, they've done it by yeah. themselves, yeah. They are absolutely, um, I guess they're, they're sort of a, they're a testament to, multiculturalism and how mm, Australia yes. can thrive with yes. all different types of uh, Correct. They uh, should people. be on the flag. Mm. Uh, you know, or at least they force were, themselves call upon them, it. Call them a cane toad. I call them a can toad. Yeah. You know, because of their attitude. Mm -hmm. The can toad. Mm. Um, I call them the cane toad. Mm. No, that's just... I, that's a pet name. That's a play on can toad, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I realise it comes back to yeah. the, the original name cane toad, but I... I, mm. But it is actually when I say it, it's a reference to can toad. Mm. It's not necessarily yeah. Yeah, I, I call them can e toads because mm. no. they're canning. Got it? No, they're electronic toads. I thought. Oh, no. okay. Oh, I'm all right, Andy. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's somehow just gotten a bit hard. But do you think that uh, the idea of like a, the the cane toad being mm -hmm. a um a respected Australia, like, like in some mm. way being our, like, you know, maybe yeah. just by default it will eventually have eaten everything and it will be the only animal in the country. Mm. And then we will have to, we'll have to recognise it. It feels like what yeah. it is, the cane toad will be like syndrome, that um, that uh, the, 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 bad, the bad guy from The Incredibles who, like, we initially rejected, mm -hmm. right? And, and then it went, well, you know what? I'm going to take over everything, and then you'll have no choice but for everyone to accept me. And now mm. the cane toad is slowly, you know, in the ultimate mm. origin slash redemption slash revenge story, yeah. eating everything we ever loved, mm. and then it'll be the only thing that's left. No, right? just it and the fire ants. Oh, that and the fire ants, and then actual fire, obviously, mm. which yeah. we'll have. And, uh, you no, know. I mean, then you can change it, and then it'll be like a really different kind of um coat of arms or whatever you mm, just have sure the cane toad the fire ants and then the, the standing mm. on the either side of a burning flame a big fire mm. yeah um i wonder i wonder what happens when cane toads meet fire ants mm. i, it I like think fire ants would attack them a lot yeah i think i think i think probably the the fire ants would win they really do feel like they are mm. they're going to win mm. yeah yeah <gasps> i don't know if they're gonna lose yeah i do like i think like I mean, maybe you could use fire in their holes or poison or something like that. But even that it seems hard to beat ants. Yeah, because they're all over the place, mm. right? And they're they're so small; it's hard to get every single last one. And then I don't know how many ants mm. you need to just sort of start a new, mm. get a new thing going. Probably not not many. Well, you know that thing we were talking about earlier about sort of squirting foam into a like the prime minister's anus. <laughs> yes, uh, I mean it feels like a like eons a lifetime. Ago. Yeah, mm. but um. Eons. I think I've seen that happen with an ant nest, mm. and then so that they could dig it out and see what they're how big they are. What the and what shape they look was like. like. What if we just just for a second? Then Alistair, my eyes unfocused, and as they refocused, I saw all the spots all over your shirt, mm -hmm. and my mind went ants. <laughs> he's covered in ants. He's yeah. talking about ants. He's covered in ants. <laughs> His hair is all ants. Um. <laughs> um, yeah, when they make those, um, yeah, those molds of those underground yeah. ant. Well, couldn't we just do that, to, that to, sort of to wipe out the ants? 
but I, again, I think that they're just too many of them. I don't well, like what what's involved in doing that and going around and trying to wipe out every single colony in such a way that they then don't go on and make more colonies straight in, away. In a way, there's too much land. There is, yes. Mm. We need to flood a big part of the country mm. just to sort of break it up, make it two countries. Yeah. I mean, is that a problem that flooding the country would sort of probably kill a lot of the things we were trying to protect anyway? Mm, no, oh, but we could put two of every animal on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could put multiple versions mm. of, of everything on there. We could create bridges and things like that. Mm. Yeah. Two bridges on there so the two. bridges can breed, obviously. And they can, uh, yeah, yeah, and then that way they'll that we we don't have to build them all the way up and down the mm. country. This um, is this is an interesting uh, uh, sort of idea of like people who are preparing for some kind of a disaster, mm. but rather than th they don't understand really how anything gets made, but rather than um, you know stockpile a whole lot of like um, information about how to m make say a. Um, uh, Trangia stove. They just put two Trangia stoves together <laughs> in a little box and hope that they reproduce to make more Trangia mm -hmm. stoves. Yeah. They're um, reproductive absolutists who believe that everything is capable of reproducing, <laughs> given the given the right circumstances. And then, in a great comic twist at the end of the sketch, Alistair, it turns out mm -hmm. that they're right, and they have lots of. Ba like we laughing at them all the way through the sketch, and then we see after the collapse of civilization, yeah. we see them there. They come out at of their, their camp. hole in the ground. Yeah, and then all these little baby trangia stoves scamper mm. out there and start frolicking in the in the blasted wasteland mm -hmm. that once was civilization. And cans we got, of oh, beans and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, heaps of little cans of beans mm. there, playing with their parent cans of beans, mm -hmm. and it's a happy ending, really. Throwing because frisbees, so throwing care. frisbees, yeah, mm. and baby frisbees. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Um, yeah, this whole this like yeah, reproductive absolutists. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's that's a that's a really good. Uh, idea. And, and you know, we'll have a lot of lot of fun there, Alistair, working out what the various genital components are of every single object mm. that they choose to reproduce, and then showing in great detail <laughs> how they yeah, mate. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> idea. Yeah, and I, I mean, yeah, we could do a lot of very long extended mm. sort of mating scenes. Sure, drawn out, um, sure. You know, and show what the courting <laughs> process would look mm. like oh, between love two to see that. You imagine the, the trangia stoves flare their flames mm. sort of in unison or something like that <laughs> like to what? attract yeah, to a mate. Wait, is it one of those? Is that just like a, ca a camping stove? Yeah, a little, ca little camping stove. Well, the, the, the trangia is the one that we used to have when we went camping, which would be, be use uh, methylated spirits in a mm. little sort of, a dish? Dish in the middle, mm. and it has uh, sort of holes around the side, and somehow that yeah, yeah, yeah. takes quite a long time to cook things. Mm. But, uh, but yeah. I mean, you could picture, you know, because often those things have like a little a little arm that comes off of the mm. side there. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, like that, and then you could see that rubbing along the edge of mm. the other. Oh, scraping, stove. scraping. Scraping, like, a, like that, and it kind of. Does you know maybe moves away, plays a little bit hard to get, does a little spin mm. like that, mm -hmm. and looks back, mm. flashes its flames again. Mm. Um, uh, scraping, not a word that you hear often applied in lovemaking. No, <laughs> no, strangely, like I maybe maybe turtles might scrape against each other. Turtle, yeah, turtles. I mean, because they're tiled. You know, they are a tiled yeah. animal. Yeah. You're right. There's a few tiled animals. Mm. I guess that maybe crabs, you could say it. You know, they might have one tile on the top and on the bottom. Sure. You know, or at least they're, they're just... a little tile sandwich there. Mm. I mean, maybe certain uh, uh, shellfish, maybe a scallop mm. you could think of being tiled. In yeah. fact, I've seen tiles made in the shape of scallops. So, I mean, really? that, I guess that checks out. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. you used to go to people's bathrooms and there'd be like some scallop tiles there mm. because people were trying to sort of make sort you think of, that maybe you're maybe a, think you're about a, water you're and that sort of thing, you know, try and get a theme going on. Mm. Um, uh, well, obviously yeah. the bathroom is wet. Um, we better put uh, images of other mm. things that are wet here in tile form. What else Similar, is wet? Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess sort of the... Uh, the head, the top of the head of mm. like a a priest in a you know 
in a tropical country um <laughs> maybe <laughs> Same thing with the kitchen. There's like you know, it's fire. So it's still kind of fire like nice, imagery you know, like, there. Yeah, like like tiles made out of burnt wood. Mm. And what are things that are hot? I don't know. Um, on the top of the head of, of a priest, priest in a, a tropical, tropical country. country. <laughs> um, yeah, like a, uh, I don't know. A, um, a sort of some sand at the beach. Hello, I'm going to use this opportunity. Wait, we got Angus Gordon here. I got a pee so bad. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, man. Hello. Welcome. How are you doing? Great. Can, can you move you? your chair around a little like bit? This? So, like, people on the live stream might want to see your uh, face course, and that sort of, of thing, you know? I mean, yes. That's what we're doing all this for. I only, I only sit where the chair is, where it lands. Oh, no, of course. I don't want to move the chair. I mean, no, no one could uh, could could blame you for sort of trying to just play the field as 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 it, as it well, that's not the expression. I'm Play the lie. Yeah. You know, like in golf, like in um, Happy Gilmore. That's that, my, my that, only golf reference. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. And um, I think it's I think it's considered canon at this point. I think golf would be more fun if all men who played it only had one hand. Mm. <laughs> you know what? I think the two handers have had are like a. I mean, it would certainly give new meaning to the term. What's your handicap? It would. And how um, many hands do you like? You have to play one handed if you get particularly good. Okay. At golf, to make yeah. it more fun, more even playing field. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. One hand behind your back. Okay. Um, or if you're so good, they like permanently remove it. Per great. Well, I mean, I think that would show uh, once they introduce the one hand behind your back rule. I think a great way to show commitment to the the craft of golf would be to get the hand surgically removed because you say that's that's your way of saying, well, I don't actually have a fallback plan. No, it's right? it's like don't go to uni if mm. you want to be a musician. You just got to commit exactly don't have that degree to fall back on yes mm -hmm. yeah absolutely if you want to be a golf player cut your hand off early um, <laughs> maybe 12 maybe, yeah, you maybe know 12, 12 you know. before they even Ooh. introduce this only one handed golf rule yeah you know because it feels like that's the way it's got to go eventually because we've more or less done everything we can with two-handed golf yeah i think they're doing it to like very ambitious parents are doing it to newborns, like mm. a male circumcision. You know, yes. they, they won't notice. They don't <laughs> well, even know true. if you cut off their arm. <laughs> yeah, at that point, their suffering kind of doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah, and I guess you could get rid of everything else that a golfer doesn't need. They don't really need their sense of smell. Mm. No, take um, that out. You know, hair was gonna, only going to get in the way, so you could scalp them pretty early. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Even what's the point? We want of it to be. Is it wrong for me to want my child to be <laughs> successful? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what is even the point of back skin? You're putting a lot of energy into kind of mm. keeping that the, the upkeep of that but i think you, you need you need baskin so that the the, the, the golf <laughs> oh, shirt okay okay the golf shirt lays flat against it you don't want it sticking all day to oh, the, the, to the, the flesh. Flesh. Yeah, yeah yeah i guess if, you're, okay. if it's constantly well, weeping it's glad we've got a voice of reason in yeah. here finally. it's part of the so, sport of golf all right <laughs> what, what is the initial idea here is that you just cut off <laughs> that, that that eventually golf will but we were talking about Adam Sandler's uh, the one golf, hand, yeah, the one-handed golfer, and that, um, that uh, eventually, just to make golf more interesting, everyone will only be allowed to use one hand. Mm. And then, you know, to show true commitment to the craft of golf, you would have to mm. you could remove a hand. So, see, I'm not, I, I don't even, I'm not even gonna, even, I'm not even gonna look back from one-handed golf mm. as a okay, as great. a calling and a and a cause for that matter. Yeah. And um, then, you know, people will look back at the, like the castrati of uh, the mm. Renaissance. People are like beautiful, the way they played golf with one hand. It just can't be replicated today. Mm. So people will look back on it as it, because we will have moved past this. Eventually, at some point. eventually, people will be like, "This is too far." <laughs> <laughs> at one, at some point in the future, down the track, with the benefit of hindsight, <laughs> we'll realize it was cruel. cruel. Um, <laughs> I mean, but it was a different time. I mean, now will have been a different time. And mm. so we we can't now be expected to do it because we, like every time is a different time. Now is a different time. So if, if we know that things in different times are acceptable, mm -hmm. knowing that now is a different time, we must there must be some things that are acceptable. Let's go out and find out what they are. And it turns <laughs> out it's one-handed golf. <laughs> Oh, yeah, good. I mean the one-handed golf is kind of fine in itself. I think it's the the preparation that you do, right, sure. for to make people. In, yeah? yeah, but you need, I think truly to be a gifted one-handed golf player, you would have to live an entirely one-handed life. Mm. You yeah, have the, right. the, the same level of grace mm. with the single hand. Mm. Mm. If you've always, if you're trying to adapt from two hands to one hand, yeah. you're never gonna be. Yeah. You're never gonna be a great. But what if you've never just picked up a catch up the whole time. you've never picked up a golf club maybe without with two hands you know? Okay, you know. Yeah. 
But I still think you're, you're thinking this second hand should be involved. Yeah, that's mm. true. I mean, you, you're trying to put it behind your back, yeah, and already that's kind of like it's a mistake. Putting your balance, you know. Yeah. Mm. You know, you're right. Maybe so. So I guess, yeah, to, to make a purist. I guess you would want to just. I mean, why even keep any of the arm? And that's how that's how competition no works. In cap, if once one person succeeds with just mm. having the one hand, they've that's removed true. the second hand. Mm. Yeah, you, you, to keep up, you have to do it as well. It's not your preference. No, no, you'd no. love that second hand oh, sure. for everyday life. Mm. But if everybody's doing, doing it, it, you know, yeah. it's it's like it's like taking drugs right. in elite cycling. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. What what are you supposed to do? Everyone else has chopped off their hands. Mm. You know, it's it's there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. You you yeah. want to be the best. What's the point of dedicating all that time? I honestly and, think that I probably would use performance enhancing drugs if I was in elite cycling because it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, but because I'd be because, doing it out of peer pressure. Yeah, yeah. I just want to fit in, mm. not even yeah. for the yeah. performance. Plus, right. I reckon <laughs> just I reckon. For the social benefits. No one thinks I'm a narc. Mm. I want to just be cool. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, you want to head out and do some EPO after? Yeah. This? Who, yeah. Who wants to be the? <laughs> who wants to be the guy who's excluded from the group? You're spending all your time. These are your work mm. colleagues. No, the the, the peloton. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Of course, the peloton. That, you're, that, you're that, be that bird with the big beak. Yes. Right? <laughs> He's flying above. Yeah. He, that's how they get the drugs in. The peloton delivers it mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to the team buses. Mm -hmm. And then just fill up your, I guess, if you just had a wound in your back, that would be a great oh, way of getting Alistair, it in there instead of. Stop trying to get back wounds <laughs> into the podcast. How many back wound references? Oh, have I don't know. I went, back I went to, to back, back wounds. Back to and the backs have healed together. To heal over the back wound, which Alistair obviously didn't like. Mm, no, uh -huh. not at all. Mm. You love it when someone has a compromised immune system. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I just like it man. Like when there's some body modification involved. Mm. Is, your, is your favorite film Passion of the Christ, the scene where he's getting whipped on the back? Yeah, I mean, I like the, just the part afterwards when the back is wounded. Mm. But you know, it doesn't, I don't necessarily like to see, enjoy the see the, the oh, creation of the wound. But are you annoyed when he's on the cross and the back? You know it's wounded, mm, but, but it's facing away from the camera. You mm. can't see the wound. Yeah, show yeah. us the and, good and, stuff. Come and on. even when you see the back, you kind of it's mostly obscured by the pole. Yeah, mm. the pole that he got put on. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess a glass glass crucifix would have been sort of more has shown more foresight. Great, but you you'd shatter the. You'd have to oh, drill with the hammering the, the nails. nails. Yeah. So you can't... yeah, but then they they would have been able to sell more tickets to the to like to the viewing of these <laughs> yeah, things. Yeah, three sixty. Yeah. Crucifixion in the round. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the new stage production. Um, <laughs> I don't know if this is um, a sketch idea. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it's. I mean, is it? I mean, selling selling tickets to the to the crucifixion, obviously. Um, you winding up with one of the seats where your view is obscured by the pole, like a partially obstructed view is is less desirable, so you pay less for that. Obviously, you can do that or do the comedian approach and just have like a little platform that rotates slowly with the crucifix. Mm. So he's like constantly. That also, I think, adds to the, the torture of it. Because yeah. not only are you struggling to breathe, your hands are broken and nailed, you're also slightly dizzy. Yes. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> oh, wait, you're saying it's spinning? <laughs> yeah, it's oh. spinning. Like a microwave. I guess I guess oh, you could sort of throw stuff at him and if it if it was his his suffering mm. that sort of absolved us of sins, it's it's, it's it, it would be interesting to know how many more not many, but a couple more sins we might have been absolved of if he'd also been dizzy. Like if mm. we could have added to that in some way. I think you get absolved for yeah, like small sins, like maybe mm. the second cake you have, mm. you know what I mean? Sure. Like a, a little sure. bit of gluttony. Yeah, mm. they always he he did you know, there there was more that could have been done, more that could have been absolved. And so we would have um yeah, felt a little like got something extra out of it to this day. But also less guilt. If if he's absolved us of our sins, does that mean that our sins aren't you know they don't affect us as badly? Is that right? Or uh, you know, or or is it just that we get forgiven for them? Or because I mean, it'd be great if like maybe if like because he was dizzy, we wouldn't feel as much dizziness. I don't know enough about the. Mm. I'm, I'm the not religion. a theologist, but mm. it seems to me yes, if the dizziness thing doesn't quite work, because I have had like nails through my skin and it is still hurt. Despite the suffering of Christ. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, okay, so it wasn't those specific <laughs> things. Yeah, he yeah. didn't absolve us of feeling a nail through our skin. Yeah, no, right. No, the sin of feeling, feeling pain, pain when a nail goes it. through your skin. Sure. But I mean, uh, <laughs> but was it, was it, I mean, and, and I'm, apologies uh, to anyone who still knows. Feel it. <laughs> so apologies to anyone who does know these things and is probably offended by everything we've said. But um, was it, was it sort of like a, just kind of like a hard reset when Jesus, and was it just all the sins up until that point that we that were reset, and then like any new sins after that 
are now still accumulating again? I think part of it was we were still. I'm I'm going out on a limb. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. But I think we were st- we were still in in the in the red from that uh, eating the apple, getting kicked out of paradise. Thing. Sure. And sure, I think yeah. he was like, no more original sin for everyone. Get right. baptized. And then you've got a be... choice. It's up to you now. Okay. Rather than everyone be... before everyone, pfft, uh-huh. we were just in trouble. Uh-huh. It's um, yeah, right. it's like sort of a uh, Marvel sort of Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, resetting all of the the history of all of the stories, so that it's just easy, easier and more manageable. And from now on, there's a new continuity. Yeah, right. So we're in we're in a new continuity since Christ. I think it's like when you get a debt forgiven. Mm. That's not like you can just keep borrowing money and that's forgiven as yeah, well. Yeah, okay. Debt's <laughs> not gonna. De- de- debt doesn't apply to you anymore. You yeah. can still uh, you can still get debts, but I don't think that they didn't abolish the concept of debt. Mm. Maybe it was a bankruptcy then, like a kind of yeah. a uh, mm. yeah. too big to fail. I that's guess that's cr- kind of, humanity's mm. too big to fail. I think that's what the cross was about. God, what about I, I got. I hope so. Um, what about like a similar thing, like if like Trump was to get pardoned after his presidency? Do yeah. you think that would sort of absolve him for like? any future crimes or any kind of cu- crimes that he was kind of currently doing mm, ongoing. Yeah. Like do ongoing you, ones. Where do you think the cutoff point, like if he's strangling the person, pardoning him mm. and their final breath is you are pardoned. Okay. And mm. then with his tiny hands, he takes it off the throat. Amazing. He can do it. Yeah. 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 You know, with his, <laughs> with the get his hands all the way around. Hands, but, you know, I guess if you can just get your, but incredible people say this about Trump, small hands, but incredibly powerful. Right. Yeah. yeah just what, crushes the windpipe. Yeah. One yeah. swift mm. motion. Wow. Which is, same amount of force oh, over a smaller surface area. And yeah, you so it's actually it's, it's, it's like a sword. Yeah. It's like using a sword to the mm, neck. Yeah, you know, the uh, the, yeah, the the the, the pinprick. Um, but okay, like but, acupuncture. You can actually yeah. just do it through pressure points. Mm. But um, but then he he's pardoned. Well, I think I think if you've um, up until that point, it's still just attempted murder, right? So, but, but, but once you, if you then complete the murder, that's a separate thing, right? Mm. I mean, is any, is everybody who gets convicted from, for murder, are they also convicted for attempted murder? Is that like a kind of a bundle? Because presumably Mm. if you do the murder, you've also attempted murder. So you, you you should get both. Mm. It's like when buffering's at 90% and then you get it to a hundred, you still did the 90%. Yes. It's like, it just doesn't show you. Yeah. Yeah. But I wonder like, you know, but is it. Can you can you be absolved of the crime of attempted murder by murdering somebody? Well, you're definitely. I think that's it. You're not guilty of attempted murder anymore. Mm. Okay, so but you so, are. I mean, so that's you got that going for you. <laughs> you know? Okay, on yeah. the plus side. <laughs> yeah. So you did murder someone, but you didn't. But the attempted murder, which was an element, which was so really, you're only ten percent guilty. Like if the murder is the final ten percent. Uh, then, then, then you only you, you would only do a fra- fraction of because a lot of it is the attempted. Yeah, or it, you could put it this way: it is an attempted and successful murder because mm. you did attempt and you did succeed. Rather mm. than well, attempted murder just means attempted and unsuccessful murder. Do you mm. get do you get a lower sentence for attempted murder I, than you yeah, do for actual murder? I think so because they're like you're less danger to the community <laughs> of your because incompetence. You- <laughs> <laughs> Not mental incompetence, <laughs> just regular yeah, incompetence. incompetence. But I guess when when you when you sort of finish somebody off, then a lot of the time you're the, the, that was probably the only person you really wanted to kill. Maybe you know, there's probably often mm. personal reasons for it. So then you are still you're probably more of a danger to, to the community if you haven't finished, finished the murder. Finished the murder because that's the one person you wanted to murder, right? You, so you think the person people who commit attempted murders, they just really want to murder. Well, there's Some a chance, probably. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. yeah. But just anyone in general. Well, mm. sometimes they, sometimes it's, it's that they wanted to murder that person and they they didn't achieve it. Oh, so, so they're they, going to try again. They, yeah. yeah, they would definitely, you know, probably still. I, I mean, I, I'm sure, I'm sure, getting in trouble for trying to murder this person hasn't made them less angry at them. But mm. it might have put up a roadblock of like this was a. You know, there were some hurdles, additional hurdles put mm. in front of me. Like everyone knows that I tried to attempted murder them. Yeah. Right. There might be a little bit of scrutiny <laughs> on you. And yeah. and you you'd probably <laughs> be more aware that there are, there's a higher chance of you being at least investigated for any subsequent murders of the person that you tried to murder earlier. Yeah. Uh-huh. But if but if that's all you wanted to, you had left to achieve. Mm. You know, you're like, ah, I just, I'll, you know what? I won't come back as a ghost, as an unfinished business. I might just get this done mm. before I go and pass on. I like the idea of a prosecutor, uh, like sort of arguing for mitigating circumstances, and not that the defend defendant 
isn't going to try another murder. Mm. They, they will attempt more murders, mm. but there is no way they could possibly succeed because of their incompetence. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> For this so- loser has no chance. <laughs> it's no threat. <laughs> Come on, look at that. Seriously? You're scared of that? <laughs> the planning is terrible. <laughs> A little weakly. <laughs> terrible shot. Uh, um, so we promise you he won't go to any shooting ranges. We promise you he won't do any weight training. Mm. Um, you know, there'll, there'll be lots of stuff, but, you know, just, what, two years tops? To me, that's basically what Coyote is. A you coyote? Know, coyote and Roadrunner. Oh, and Wiley he's, Coyote. He's always a Not just Coyote. You can't just call him Coyote. I'm not <laughs> intimate. <laughs> you know, he's... Mr. Coyote. Yeah, Mr. Coyote. Sensei. Mm. That sounds like a... He's always attempting murder. Mm. But he's never succeeding. Right. And, and that's, that's why, why we kind of love him almost. He's not punished in that universe, is he? No. No one they never take him to I jail. I mean, except except for the like I mean, in in, in, in in many ways, like his punishment is you look at him and you're like, Oh, he's suffered enough because yeah. the anvil always ends up falling on his own head or something That's like it. that. He's more mm. dangerous to himself than the roadrunner. Mm. Yeah. So it's like it's so it's a story about justice. Like he teaches you about the f- futility of like even the justice system and things like that. There's no point when Often, you know, the universe will just provide the, its own justice. Is it karma? Is that a story about karma? I don't know because he seems like he gets more than he deserves. But <laughs> is it ever? Well, you, you think he gets more than he deserves? Yeah, you know, <laughs> all he wants to do is kill this one roadrunner, and yet over and over and over again mm. he is pounded and pummeled. It just like this guy cannot catch a break. He wants to do one thing, and yet he has to have unlimited bad sure. things happen to him yeah but but he doesn't cause that much uh, suffering to the to the roadrunner <laughs> none, you know? none pretty much none in, so in many ways roadrunner almost seems oblivious to him in many of the mm-hmm. cartoons like roadrunner is <laughs> unaware that mm. wily coyote is even attempting yeah that's interesting i think maybe wily coyote is sentient then and roadrunner is non not. is not sentient mm. and therefore roadrunner would be considered just livestock Talk. Yeah, and and then Wiley Coyote is just trying to eat what looks like a, like a like an animal that has very little meat on it. Mm. So lean for all that running. Yeah, yeah, and but then it's probably the kind of animal that we would be happy. Like a society is probably accepting of killing. The the, the the bird, mm. the poultry. Yeah, yeah, I that agree. kind of bird. You know, because it's like it doesn't it doesn't show any kind of signs of extended consciousness or anything like mm. that. Whereas some something like the coyote, who seems very smart, mm. you know, uh, he, despite all the failed, attempts despite all the failed mm. attempts, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a wily bird. Oh, you know? but, he's, but he's got that perseverance. He always picks himself up and tries mm. again. He know, he's a real success story. You know, despite <laughs> despite the fact for you know, of, of, like it's about the enjoyment well, of the process. The only real failure comes when you quit, Alistair. Well, he knows how to order. Um, anvils. <laughs> yeah. he, does. He, he does. But why does he not just order food? Mm. He should have yeah. if, if, if it's about <laughs> hunger. <laughs> I guess food delivery services didn't really come in. You know, but, like, I mean, but, uh, but you could get an anvil <laughs> to the middle of the Colorado <laughs> desert. I know, but he lives like, like, like that. All this machinery, so many cogs. He lives in like, like this springs. is the kind of place where it's like this is where you would put sort of like uh, military complexes and mm. and, you know, military bases and stuff like that. So so there, there's already infrastructure for delivering that kind of stuff but there. You test sure. nuclear bombs and kind of things He's there. tapping into the Area 51 <laughs> supply chain. Yeah. <laughs> but surely the, the men need to eat. They get maybe dehydration ration packs delivered. Mm. Yeah, that's true. He probably could think like that if he was... <laughs> but maybe he doesn't like dehydrated bread. Do you you know? also, no one mentions this, but I think uh, Roadrunner would be a new... On the highways. Because, again, he lives in clear, a human-dominated area. Yeah, there's you're highways. Right. You're right. You're driving. You're just driving your car on the highway, mm. and then a, a road runner appears mm. out of nowhere. You're going to have a massive, at an incredible speed. At inc- it's going to a, a huge bird is going to collide mm. with your Nissan Hyundai. I don't know if it's a, if a road runner is huge. How they, big is a road runner? It looks they, like an than, emu or something. It looks like it compared to the coyote. Yeah. Yeah, it's about a coyote size, isn't it? I think it's bigger. It's bigger. I don't think it's bigger than the coyote. In the show, it looks bigger. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Maybe, they they kind of look like they're about the same a, height. <laughs> I think in real life a road runner is pretty small, but but are they you, a real I mean, But but I mean, I guess I guess this entire discussion is taking place in the reality of the Wiley Coyote. Because it feels like everything, everybody in the you know, except for Tweety Bird, everybody in the Warner Brothers world is about the same height. Mm, that's Aren't interesting, they? isn't it? Yeah, 
Mm. Maybe there's a little mouse Bugs Bunny, well. Donald Duck, Sylvester. Mm, yeah. You know, like a funny, obviously, apart from like the, the ones that are small, mm. like the the regular sized ones, they're all anthropomorphic. A, lot of, a and, lot of my children's books as well, we have this sort of situation where the cats and the mice and the dogs and the cows are all sort of the same size. And it is, it, it does feel a little bit strange when I'm pointing to the one, like, you know, that's the mouse and that's the, the cat, and the, you know. Yeah, you could show them real f- photos of mice. Have they ever seen a real photo of a mouse? They've seen real mice. Yeah? In yeah. your house? Yeah, see them running around the house. Yeah, right. So the, the real problem is the infestation, not yeah. the children's <laughs> books. <laughs> sure, yeah, I should be maybe focusing more on the abject squalor in which we live. Now, yeah. is, there, is there a, a Stop sketch leaving cheese everywhere. with this coyote? Um, well, I think I think the the argument that um, Wally Coyote is sentient, while um, while uh, Roadrunner is not, uh, mm. is 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 valid. Um, like, and I'm not I'm just wondering what sort of context you can eat that man. No, I just wanted like, to play with it. But like a okay. conservative view of this thing, and like that that the despite you know his his failed attempts, he is mm. he's a better image of a of a, of a, of a citizen than. Mm. Than the Roadrunner, like yeah. somebody you oh. want to have around. Yeah, I mean, if not a sketch, then at least a think piece, mm. you know, for um something like a Quadrant magazine or something like that. That, um, yeah, that contends that that the attitude of Wiley Coyote is is absolutely the sort of thing that we should be fostering more of. Um, yeah, and by the way, what, what uh, like manufacturing, like that, that, the kind of stuff he is willing to spend the time building you don't get those kinds of skills very often anymore i mean he's an old school engineer he is yeah absolutely getting out there doing stuff I, that does that is kind of how i i think engineering sort of once it computer engineering really are you really engineering are you sure <laughs> no i think i think engineering stopped when you stopped like having steam basically and then it was something else then it was just sort of tinkering with stuff no i think as long as you're like you're doing a little bit of screwing you, do you think twisting do you think yeah there's got to be it? some twisting there's got to be a little bit of banging metal mm. you know or like trying to hide rivets or whatever mm, okay you know putting like you know trying to make things smooth so that the wind doesn't catch on them as much mm. and i think that's all that's all engineering that's engineering right? yeah. yeah i mean i think um, you're basically saying the same thing as me no 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 you said he said steam that's where it stopped okay well so he thinks the combustion engine is a legitimate engineer yeah i still think that, i disagree yeah. no, no, no. I, I disagree mean, i'd even i'd even go so far as to say you know the attempts at fusion power mm. even though the unsuccessful so would be regarded by some there are ma- in I many suppose. ways what you would call the wily coyotes of engineering in that mm. they are they are yes. who, what you want to be attempting rather yeah. than you know let's say uh, and- Always having their reactors blow up in their faces, leaving them blackened. Mm-hmm. But then their white eyes blink in the darkness, and you see, ah, oh, they're still alive. Yeah. Maybe their beak is on the back of their head now. Yeah. Um, classic. What kind of duck is black? Are you know, there black ducks? There's probably heaps of black ducks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think we'd be fools to go out and, on a limb and say that there aren't any black ducks. Yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. It was, always felt like a weird angle to go on. Yeah, you know, um, I mean, we we tried it with swans. We were like, there are no black swans. Yeah, famous. And then, and then, then, and then it turned out that there were some. But, yeah. But no, look, fuck it. Let's just say there are no black ducks. Right? There you go. Yeah. So it feels yeah, good. Adopt a strong position. What I'm country? Happy to be wrong. Yeah. What country would even have black ducks? Would allow, you know, just like a duck that can hide in the dark mm. so easily. I, I imagine uh, that Warner Brothers or somebody has done a parody of Black Swan called The Black Duck. Mm. And um, I mean, I imagine it's, it's, it's similarly sort of graphic and, um, and Are you looking up Black dark. Ducks? Did you see yeah. any Black Ducks? Yeah, but it's on the internet, so anyone can publish anything. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. <laughs> anyone can edit a picture of a duck and yeah. it look black. That's probably the first thing you would think of if you were trying to put some well, fake yeah, stuff on the internet. Let's check yeah. up some black ducks. Change the lyrics to some like Aladdin songs to make them about penises and sex. Mm. And then uh, after that, you would sort of change the colors of ducks. Was the Aladdin thing a reference to something you No, I don't no, know. That's, Why did that come up? Because that's one of the first things I ever encountered on the internet whenever I went there in mm. 1996. Were or something you like Googling that. Aladdin sex? No, my mom put me on, let me go on the internet at her computer at, at, at um, her work and I don't know how I found stuff. I just kind of found things and and one of the things w- that I printed off was... You <laughs> printed and, it off? Yeah, and I, don't, I didn't know what it was 
But then I was reading it to my mom in the car afterwards, and she was like, well, that's not nice. <laughs> oh, Stan, that's so beautiful. I guess I was like, I'm not going to have access to this. <laughs> How is you know? I don't know what this is, but it feels mm. feels like it has power. Mm. Right? But I, I didn't know it was a parody song. I didn't even know what a parody song was. I think I thought it was the lyrics to the Aladdin Mm. Um, song. Did, did you sing it to the tune of the Aladdin? Song? It was I can show you my penis. <laughs> no, really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shining, shimmering, splendid. I, I, I don't remember beyond that. I wonder um, if I can a, still find that. What a what a sort of a a bad introduction to both sort of people's sexual sort of <laughs> obsessions, but also parody songs in general, because the rhythm of that whole thing is way off. Right, the number mm. of syllables in yeah. penis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess you kind of do world, world, penis, penis. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can show you the world. That is how they do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was telling you, Alistair, that my first experience seeing pornography was when I was searching for pictures on the internet, and I just searched the word pictures and saw a link that was that said teen porn and thought, well, I'm a teen. This <laughs> presumably will be pornography that is appropriate for teenagers. I'll <laughs> click on this and was, um, yeah, really quite shocked. Um, didn't feel appropriate for teenagers at all. You know, this idea like that, you know, there's you know, obviously that there's teen porn. Then these are obviously people that have to be of legal age. Sure. Is this a weird question? But like, do you think that, some you know these people are often not teens, and is that something that you should be upset about, <laughs> <laughs> like, or or you should be happy about? Oh, I mean, I I'd be really interested to see you take this to the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. Yeah. I mean, r technically, I think you might have a case under yeah. sort of um, false advertising. Rod, talk to mm. Rod Sims. Yeah, because um, then, because yeah, on the one hand, you go. Well, I'm glad that you know so somebody is more of a sort of a more mature age to be making the decision to do this kind of thing. So I'm happy about that. But then, at the, on the second, on the other hand, you did promise me <laughs> some teens here. Mm. Yeah, and they could use the defense of it's it's fantasy role playing of being a teen. Yeah. Well, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not even interested in. Yeah. I just don't like being. I like. I'm not even interested in looking at teens. I'm just. I just. It's, I yeah, just don't like sure. being lied to. Sure, 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 sure. I mean, I think technically you're not allowed to call it a teen unless it's actually from the teen region of France. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Or they're all time travelers from the 1920s. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Teen. Mm. I guess it could be teen porn. I guess it could just be born like in the, the 2000 and between 2011 and 2000. Oh, yeah, that, no, sounds 2012. Bad. that sounds worse. Wait, no, no, no. So, did I say born? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, so I meant, I mean, <laughs> sorry, I did not mean that. I meant porn that was made between mm. 2012 oh, and 2019. You know what? I think they've got a case. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we saved it, guys. It was defensible. Another another lawsuit thwarted by our brilliant lawyer <laughs> who explained how we did it. Well, it was actually we filmed it between uh, October 13 and October mm. 19. That's very good. Porn lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know what? I, I, I think you're absolutely right. Arguing these cases brought by brought by very sad, yeah. lonely men who are like horny but pedantic. Yeah. Um, obviously, pedantic and horny. You combine those, you get porny, and they're that as well. Um, mm. Yeah. Um, you I know. Rest my case. Do you when you scratch a dog's belly? Do you try to avoid its nipples? This is a thing I've thought about in the past. I don't scratch the belly. You don't scratch the stay belly? stay on the back. But they lie on their back so that you will scratch They're trying to belly. hide their back from you, almost in a way of telling you, please don't touch my back. Pretend my back has no skin on it whatsoever. <laughs> and it's just exploded <laughs> fish. Oh, let them around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said yeah, keep, no. You, you, I, got, I got my dog in like a self-writing gimbal. <laughs> it is never able to roll over. <laughs> It remains upright at all times, and I am exclusively able to scratch its back. I've got a third, like, you know, when you're a kid, you've got the training wheels. I've got mm. two 
training legs on each side of my dog. <laughs> training <laughs> legs. Okay. <laughs> it tries to tries to go down and even having little trampolines on the elbows. And boom. Mm. Mm, yeah. I don't know if trampolines on the elbows really works, but. Uh, um. I mean, you could, you could, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think, I think you were pretty close to it, actually, Angus, with just the sticks poking out each side, sort of like the, um, like on a what's what's that kind of a, a canoe with an an outrigger on a canoe? Mm. A lot of the Polynesian canoes will have that sort of second smaller hull out yeah. the side, so they don't tip over. That, but for a dog. Um, yeah, 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 smaller canoe, so like a catamaran or a catamaran dog. Yeah, <laughs> a dog of a ram. Like, good try, Alistair. <laughs> but it should be more like that. It should be two smaller dogs on each side. <laughs> two smaller dogs. Great. But in, for infinity, and then they have two smaller dogs. For dog infinity, <laughs> yes. What? Yes. What? He's, he's, he's got two smaller dogs out each other's side, but then for infinity, <laughs> there's more dogs. <laughs> Yes, come on. We were talking earlier about. I, I about think he was watching. I was yeah. not. No, no, you weren't. You just, you just that, saw the excitement in my eyes. It's just that kind of, instead of, you know, such a technically a punchline, which obviously we're not coming up with punchlines for all these, but that instead we just have a, a, a an, an, in, an iteration that continues for a, a recursion that occurs. Yeah, a recur to, to recursion. Infinity. Yeah. Um, is this a sketch? Yeah, I think I think so. A self riding dog, a dog so, with two smaller dogs so wait, strapped but, to either side but so it can't tip over. But it's dogs that so you you, you never have to decide whether belly, or not to scrap right? their bellies or, or nipples or mm. avoid their penises and things like that. Sure, 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 absolutely. Um I I mean what what is what is the alternative? That you do allow the dog to roll over. And then you, you know, the thing is, do you scratch in the middle? Do you scratch between the nipples? Do you, how far down do you go? When do, do you know, do you know when you've scratched into a dog's erogenous zone? Right? Yeah, I think Presu you can just presumably you don't want to do that. Don't worry. The dog will tell you. <laughs> yeah, the dog will let you know. But also I think, I think you can just, you know, any place that's kind of more hair free, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You think that's yeah. a risky. Yeah. That's a risky area. Um, and then also. I think you can just sort of feel the the fog of the fog of sort of you know like genital moisture. You know? Wow! I mean, it, it, I, I, I mean, it, look, it, it might be an imagined thing, but I you think, know, I think there'll just be a change in the mood. I think there's a cloud. I think there's a cloud of area, and that, that you kind of can imagine in your mind where it's maybe mm. it's a cloud of acceptability. Yeah, and okay. that you just sort of stay away from any of those areas. Yeah. Yeah, and unacceptability does feel a bit moist in the mind, mm. right? The body, the body detects damp. that as moisture. Damp. Yeah. yeah, you crossed a damp line there. Um, yeah. Um, well, I mean, then is is there a sketch then in in sort of uh, a, a, a government and advertising or a um well one of those old sort of ah Jimmy kind of uh, educational videos about which bits of a dog you are safe to. To scratch you before you are actually delivering the dog sexual pleasure, which is not considered acceptable in modern society. Okay, wait. What 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 is it? It's a video that just tells you not mm. to do it. Oh, just which areas of the dog you can mm. you can scratch. Yeah, maybe you know various animals because we don't we don't know necessarily where they're. I mean, are their nipples sensitive to sort of? Um, are their nipples considered erogenous mm. on a dog? I mean, I feel like it's very like. I guess unless this thing has more surprises as to what it's like, he's like, don't touch the butthole or the genitals. Mm. And then, <laughs> and then maybe, you know, I mean, don't put your finger in your, in their mouth, <laughs> Okay, uh, you know, and, uh, and then sort of everything is mostly okay after that. Yeah. Well, you don't know. I mean, like what, what about that region sort of like, okay, let's get into this. All right? <laughs> <laughs> the way that dogs mate, as we've discussed, mm. is doggy style, yeah, right? Which might suggest to me that they might like above their like because the above the tail sort of mm. area will be part of like what's rubbing and touching on mm. the dog, right? So that could be actually like a bit where if you scratch the dog there, it gets a sexual pleasure, and sometimes they do like scratching just above the tail, right? Yeah. So maybe that's what's going on. I don't know. Mm. I've, I've never thought about it before, but now I feel like I need to know before I can good in good conscience go out there and scratch dogs. I think if if the top of a dog's back right near the tail is enjoyable for those kind of reasons from an evolutionary point of view, I still think uh, it's not sex. But the dog is getting sexual pleasure. Well, I mean, it's not 
it's not sexual pleasure in the way that you would ref- to talk about sex. It's getting pleasure. an erection. No, that's not, I don't, I'm not saying that that's happening. You're, you're like, but it if, could be. If you're saying it's getting an erection, well, then maybe then you can stop. It's contributing to the circuit. Well, but then you've got to flip the dog over to check if it's getting an erection. Well, so then, is this the world you want to live in? Well, where you've I got mean, to constantly be looking at a dog's penis to know if it's okay? Is that also an additionally confusing thing for a dog to be on its back and to be aroused? Mm, that like would if be you, weird. If you do touch a dog and it gets too, and the dog is like, what? This is the wrong position mm. for this to be happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But maybe in the, uh, I imagine the dogs look. I think we're going too deep into sure dirty dog stuff. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> that's fine. I mean, I'm actually trying to get us out of dirty dog stuff. That's the whole. That's my whole contention. So, uh, so well, I you mean, know, you did bring us back into it though, because we could have finished the sketch on infinite dogs not tipping over. Yeah, you're right. like, yeah. Mm, and, then, and then you said, "Let's get you... into it." <laughs> and then you said, "Then you started saying, I'm, I'm staring at a dog erection." <laughs> and then I said, "I'm trying to get us out of this, and it doesn't seem like I am." No. I mean, um, you, you've definitely no. I was going to say something about it. you brought a rocket into it, but you, it wasn't the the, the the rocket ship out of the the topic anyway. Mm, I'm sorry. Um, <sighs> yeah, well, last time I was on this podcast, we discussed um, a sketch where it's like, you know, they all of us normal people are going to get like, oh, we're going to Mars. Then we get on Mars, and we realize the spaceship is mm. like they can just blow that up in space, and the rich people are going to keep living here. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What about that for dogs? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> we, we, we shoot all the dogs to Mars. <laughs> we tell all the mm. dogs yes. and all the cattle because the cattle are a big problem. We tell them they're going to space. Mm. Okay. <sighs> do you think it's one and of then the... it can rain stinks? Mm. Do you which think it'll be good mm. for environmentalists because we'll be less CO two in the atmosphere mm. and, and good for steak eaters <laughs> because <laughs> they love steak. Mm. Yeah, so everyone sort of wins. That this, except for the cows. Th- yeah, that might be kind of the only way that we can sell it to the meat eaters, right? That like like. They're they're gonna the the some of the meat eaters are so sort of obsessive and evangelical about it that they like really feel like it is is an affront to the suggestion that we would stop breeding cows. But there maybe the only way that we could make it appealing enough to them is say that like okay, we're gonna get rid of the cows, but as a one off treat, we will make it rain rain steaks. Is that worth it for you? You like the meat lovers pizzas? What about a meat lovers atmosphere? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You seen the movie but, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? The question is exactly, exactly that. that. Exactly that. But it, it, the question is, do you need to convince a cow that it's going into space? <laughs> yes. To yes, get it is. onto a get it onto a ship. Well, I think that the other reason that people don't feel good about um, killing, uh, like, about stopping breeding cattle, etc., is because they feel bad about breaking it to the cows. Well, this way we can let them down gently mm, by blasting them off true. violently. But I think it'd be like you would be you wouldn't be convincing. The cow, you're also convincing people who like love cows. In the same way, when, mm. when the dog dies when you're a kid, your parents are like, oh, he went to the farm. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, the cows have just gone to space. <laughs> <laughs> and we already have the technology because a lot of the first animals in space were dogs and monkeys. Mm. And, if, and you then, a, if you can put a monkey in space, you mm. can put a cow in you space. You put a cow in space. Well, I think we might have talked about putting a horse in space on the podcast not too long ago. Mm. I can't remember what the what the objective there was, but yeah, it'd just be you know, I guess just the idea of intro being interesting. But I mean if you were telling maybe people that that we're creating a new place where you can go and it's just you and the cows. Mm. I mean, maybe they'll could be into that, you know, yeah, rather than okay. sort of blow it up. Like we're just gonna, we got to take it off Earth. We can't. Like, could you just, could we just get some turf and and do the moon up? Mm, that's you know? interesting. What, why don't we build us like a huge um, station, cattle station in the sky? Mm. So the we international know this, space cattle, cattle station. We know that the CO two is the problem, mm. and so we're like, all right, that's the problem. We put them up mm. there. They're emitting the CO two directly into space outside of the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then when you want a steak, they just fire the cow down. <laughs> but it cooks on re-entry. It cooks on re-entry. Yeah. Perfectly medium rare. Yes. Mm. Hits the ground, the ground explodes. explodes. Then everyone can just, you just got to grab it out of the air. Yeah, or pull it out of trees, trees or whatever. Yeah. Okay, cool. And that's how you can get meat. And it's, it's very expensive. But now it's like a luxury commodity. So people can still have it if they want it. But it's like a more of like a family, a, cake, a big treat, mm, a or celebration it, to have a cow hurdle into your neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be cheaper and you could just work up on the station and then you could go up there and you can just eat beef 
for you know as long as you like. Mm. You could have a you could have a week of beef. You could be up there for a month or whatever. You could mm. you know, on holidays and stuff like that. So it's just a big it's a big ranch, mm. you know. And it's like Disneyland, but it, all it does is just ca- it's just cow stuff like that. And that way you can it's cheaper mm. to you know have an you know per meal you know like sure. you still have to go up there. Maybe we could use my ladder idea to for getting up into space there okay. from earlier. Yes. Um, and then, you know, and then you meet meet lovers. Sort of, still, you know, the option is always there. And then, mm. but but you know, the Earth is a bit safer. It'd be tough when you you go up into space. Obviously, you're in a weightless environment. You're gorging on beef every single day. Mm. When you do come back to Earth, and you feel both the shock of the the Earth's gravity and mm. also the weight that you've gained in space. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's all part of the experience. I well, imagine. I mean, if you're just eating beef, you know, that's actually paleo. And so you probably, you might actually oh, be up sure. there and lose weight. I wonder if it's still considered paleo if you're doing it in space. I mean, isn't paleo sort of trying to get back to some sort of older style? Oh, of- well, I have, I never followed that. Uh, that element. Yeah, I think that, that weird element, which makes it sound really ridiculous. I always felt like I should just not think like that. Right. Oh, yeah, that's quite a good idea. Yeah. Not thinking like that. Not thinking in the way that seems ridiculous. Yeah. And think in a way that sort of makes sense and you know, is better. I was more just like, look, this is a thing in which you're not eating as much bread. Mm. That's kind of what I was thinking about it like that. Yeah. Well, that's good too. Yeah. But you could think about it, you know, with bread. You could also, you know, with eating less bread, you could just think about it like more like you could find other idiotic ways of thinking mm. about it. You go, oh, it's because you hate bakers and bakers are bad people. And um, and so if you touch something that they touch, um, you consider them to be unclean. And yeah, they're, unclean. Touch they're, an under. Touched they're like the hands a, of a baker. lower caste in society. Yeah, mm, the like that. And then now, uh, oh. so, so now at least I'm not believing this dumb paleo thing. Did yeah. you ever do? Did you ever try my pay Leo joke? Uh, yeah, I think so. On stage, yeah, I, pay Leo. No, I'm doing pay Leo. I. Uh, what is it you want to... Uh, Leo's the guy who runs the fish and chip shop at the end of my street, yeah. and I pay him to buy fish and chips. I think it's going to kill. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Pay Leo. <laughs> Why are uh, old people always feeding birds bread? I feel like you can go anywhere in the world and there'll be like an old person. Mm. Do, they, do they love the birds? Or is it like they are, are fearful of the birds and have to keep giving them the bread? Like what... Mm. What relationship do you think I old think people... I think it's probably quite a complicated relationship. Yeah. And there have could they... be a bit of both. Um, and why don't they have access to the information that bread is, seems to be bad for birds? Mm. If it's if bread is bad for humans mm. who do eat grains, mm. surely it is bad for birds. Who birds, eat, birds who don't eat, eat grains. grains. Birds eating grains? Well, they don't a lot of them eat like... Like a seagull doesn't traditionally eat grain. Well, maybe a seagull, but I think a lot of birds eat grains. You've got me there. <laughs> they also eat like a lot of insects. Eat a lot of seeds and things like that. Seeds, yeah, yeah. yeah in many ways considered to be a grain. Is, is it a seed? I yeah. don't think it is. I think a grain is. Yeah, a well, seed. I, I can seed. I, I can seed. Uh-huh. <laughs> I reckon a grain, a seed isn't a grain. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't say that a seed is a grain. I said that grains are seeds. Grains are seeds, are they? Yeah. What do you? What else would they be? Well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> They'd just be a bit that the plant makes for fun. General husks. Mm. Mm. I just thought it was might be part of it. It's just another part. No, it's a seed. Mm. They grow it as the seed so that they can grow more of the plant. You know, when it goes in the go. ground or something like that. Yeah. Do they make potato seeds? I, I wish humans. I think work you can like make. That. I think you can get potatoes. You think where you should the, the, there be parts of you that's just like a seed, mm. and then when you die and they put you on the ground, like then another version of you comes out mm. of mm. comes out of the coffin, sort of like as the zombie, but that's just normal. Well, certainly the testicles could be seen that way. I mean, and it, and it makes sense that you've got two of them so that you can produce, you know, an equal. You know, you you, you can sustain the population or grow the population. Even you think you think the each testicle, testicle is will, one child. Yeah, I think one mm. testicle, one child. And you yeah. have three children. Yeah, I have so three. an additional yeah. testicle. That, sure. Well, I mean, this yeah. is this is if you're using them by planting them in the dirt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not <laughs> exactly. We're not talking it. about exactly the world. This mm. isn't me necessarily. No, I, I, I hope that is how you had your children <laughs> and you lopped it and you put it in the backyard. I mean, it's just a secondary. Pre- like I think we we were related to plants at one point. I think mm. you know way way back. So, um, you know, way way back. I think mm. before they were plants, maybe. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I think I think the fact that we have the mammalian breeding system, I think we still 
retain our our sort of our dirt breeding system mm. in which we can bury our our like just bury one testicle and then and then have a child be born that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A dirt, a dirt can I, baby. Can I write dirt breeding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. You, I mean, the, the thing is that the then watering you could have a society is always the watering. You could, yeah, because you're using the yeah. testicle as the egg. Finally, I mean, everyone, <laughs> everyone's, everyone's talking about how we're not going to need men in the future because we will be able to reproduce via IVF and all that sort of stuff. But I mean, I think it's time that the men started pushing back on that idea and mm. say, "Well, actually, what if we cut off our oh. balls and pr- plant them in the ground? Maybe that'll grow a baby." Yeah. Yeah, two can play at this game, or one, you know, probably and is all you need. Beautiful singing voices. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> As we sing lullabies to our sea, uh, our sapling babies. And they come up, they're, the, the young men, they're with, still with two testicles, they're all mm. viral and masculine because of the testosterone. Mm. Mm. But then when you get older, you, you, mellow, you start to mellow down, you cut off your one of your testicles, you mm. put it in the ground. You're a bit more relaxed. You're a wiser. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You got less of that poison, you know, yeah, affecting Poison you. rushing through you, you yeah, know, your veins. Fe- yeah, making you yeah. want to go sort of, uh, you know, what's that gliding thing with the triangle? Hang gliding. Hang gliding. Yeah. Mm. Or put 10 people in your car when you're on your pee plates. Mm-hmm. I, I used to be obsessed with hang gliding. Yeah. I really, really wanted to go hang gliding when I was about sort of, probably from about six to about 13. I think it was like, I don't think I've ever really had like a, a life ambition, but I think I, that, that at that point I was like, one day I'm going to go hang gliding. Now I can't think of something I would like to do less than, mm. than that. It seems insane. But maybe you could do it through fiction, you know? But, or do you not want to do it in fiction? I either? don't even want to do it in fiction, Alistair. That's crazy. My character might fall from the air and die. Yeah. But I mean, it does. It does seem like a terrible way of mm. flying. Do you think, um, like, because you never got to live out your childhood dream of hang gliding, mm-hmm. that you'll push that through your children, like some people do with sports, like you really mm. push them into hang gliding? Yeah, I'll, um, I'll, 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 I'll drive them to the, yeah, to the skies, force my children in, up into the air into a head strong headwind, and yeah, to the nearest cliff, updrafts, etc. Mm. Yes. What do you think is the best kind of hang gliding? Do you think freestyle sort of performative kind of hang gliding? <sighs> Does that exist? There must be like sort of stunt hang gliding, right? I guess there must be. I mean, I if when I was picturing it as a kid, it was always that you run, you have the thing on, you run down quite a gentle slope of a hill and then take to the air. I don't know if it works that way. You probably need something pretty steep to jump off to be able to get mm. enough speed to get the lift and what about one of those um just one of those parachutes with the fan on your back and then you just take up off take off off the ground oh yeah one of those would you do that you can get lift that way you can get up there and like the, i think i saw how, a youtube you video get, of a guy doing get... it from his paddock and then flying to the nearest mcdonald's and then landing outside of it then going in and then flying back how do you get your your, your wing up into the air right because you, you just run a little bit maybe or do you turn on your fan you turn on your fan, and then what happens to you? You sort of get blasted along at ground level, and then the ropes pull your thing up into the air. You and know you... this thing, like this kind of maybe it's like this, you know, so it's behind you, and then you got. So it gets lit. Oh, with the fan gives it the gives it the lift. Yeah, that's good, Alice. I have never actually seen that. But that's a good yeah, demonstration. You Did you know you could do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just blow over the sheet, and then it gives it lift. That's really cool. I, yeah. That's with the benefit of the people on the stream. I, I mean, what if everybody what, has I, seen it? I, I you think know, they just... probably could could glimpse it. And that's a demonstration of how wings work, Alistair. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. I think I'm just coming out of like an hour of being really confused and dizzy and stuff. Oh, okay. Well, you're coming out though. That's good. Yeah. I mean, that's I'm, something. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's going to be the end of spells of that kind of nature. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you're not completely out necessarily. Yeah. I think, um, I think there's more trouble on the horizon. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Um, 
I'm just trying to think of other forms of transport that we could um, we could explore. Is there a thing that you could push your kids into that actually involves pushing? Is that too dumb? Swings. Yeah, pushing right. my kids into swings. I, mean, that's, I guess in a way it's kind of too simple. I mean, we don't want that. Kind in of a job. way, it almost feels like a like nothing at all. Yeah. <laughs> um. Um. You know, I mean, well, it is an okay. T- it's just the only 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 okay time. It's okay to be a pushy parent. Right. And again, I'm not saying there's anything there, but I'm just no, saying no, that no, that was a thing that was okay to. It's kind say. of like a, it's almost like a yeah. yeah. You know, now now that I I look back on it, I think well, this kind of like a tweet that we would not send. Mm, you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's not true. it's bad just to push your kids into lots of things. You know, what I mean? like pushing them too hard at school, maybe mm. even pushing them in sports, mm. pushing them into traffic. That's a big no-no. Yeah, yeah, it is a big no-no. no-no. Sure, sure. Ravines, yeah. yes. Um, tar pits, <laughs> presumably. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the tar pit's going to help their dandruff. All that tar. Is it is that is that good for dandruff? Is it tar? Yeah. Do you use tar? Do you ever use it? I've used the, a tar-based shampoo for dandruff. I've, really? I've definitely sm- smelled a, a tar-based shampoo before. I think Indiana yeah. might have one. It's pretty. It's pretty. You know, it's like it's it smells strong. a lot like tar. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Is it black? It's black. Black mm. tar-based shampoo. Mm-hmm. Wow. And how does it work? Do you know? Does it? I think it just fossilizes the dandruff. And then mm, you, can, you can look sure. at it in the future. Future generations <laughs> are able to sort of mm. piece together, imagine what your flaky scalp would have looked like, yeah. um, or at least what the individual flakes would have looked like. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, that's and then they might even be able to resurrect your dandruff and um, in the, some kind of dandruff park. But they get it wrong and they get you. It's like you, your whole body is made out of dandruff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. All they've got from your body is the dandruff and they hypothesize that you must have been some kind of flake beast mm. yeah. who um, just floated in the wind mm. yeah. and then oh, they switch. these future aliens do make a uh well they don't have to be future aliens but they do make a, a theme park based around these sort of f- flake creatures and then we get to see a bit of what that looks like uh, as they sort of blow across the they would have reproduced one of the flake beasts when he when it was ready to reproduce it would have got up to him and gone like like on a dandelion, it goes, <laughs> <laughs> and the flake is spread across the plains. It's beautiful. Yeah, maybe, maybe mm. this is the way that men could reproduce without women, right? And one another man comes up behind you, and blows through your hair, and all your flakes of dandruff go out into the wind, and where they land, new men are formed. Wait, so wait, was it this aliens find your dandruff and imagine that you looked like some kind of sail being, just like a big flake? Sure, yeah, a big was? flake, and then they make a sort of Jurassic Park mm. with big flakes. <laughs> 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 and uh, you know, and you're, you're filming all of these sketches, aren't you? Yeah, mm-hmm. every single one. <laughs> what mm-hmm. number are you up to now? Mm. Uh, 118. 118. 118. Of flakes. Who's been the uh, the best contributor? Oh my god, it's been Andy by a long shot. I, no, like, I, I mean, don't know. Out of the two from the think tank, the and, additional because you've had other special guests on. You've had mm, Jack, I know. You had mm, Beck. Mm, you know, every, every when Beck was on. But every, you you want to know who of the guests that have been on? Who's yeah. been the best? Who's, who's been, been our who's favorite? Been Maybe not, but who's been helping the numbers just racking up? Right, numbers. whether or not we like them. <laughs> yeah, it's, this isn't a this isn't no, a no, not a ju- personal value judgment. Ju- value judgment. I think probably just in the sheer number of sketches that we got out, we probably got out the most when Jack was here. But that was also when we were the freshest, mm. right? And we had the most um, to contribute. And it obviously, was... we don't like to say anything positive about any of our guests. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it so... breaks my heart to. Mm. Not that I want to have favourites, but I'd like them all to be my least favourite, and yeah. it's hard for me to pick one who's any good at all. Mm, but yeah. I mean, obvious. Oh, I forgot. You, Angus, you've been the best guest. No, absolutely. Save no. that. That was tough. Mm, no, 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 no. Very no, close. I just to... hope nobody's watching. Yeah. <laughs> oh, to yeah. find out. Um, um. All right. I mean, look. I think. I think this. What this is flake a... being thing is. I mm. think it's, it's, it's a real. Sure. We're, we're coming back in. Well, but but also, I mean, and I know that this isn't really necessarily mm. a separate sketch to the one before where the men plant their testicles in the ground. But I think the idea of men Dirt re- breeding. reproducing from their of their dandruff flakes being blown by another man. Mm. Uh, that's a very funny nice. way for a certain kind of man to disappear, like a very greasy. It's like how. 
how do these kind of men keep being around? You know, mm. who's reproducing with them? And it's like, well, mm. they asexually reproduce. But I don't think greasy greasiness doesn't seem well, like a, it would go well with that it's kind a dry, of. It's, it's a very it's dry, dry, dry grease. It's, yeah, a dry grease. The world's dry as grease. <laughs> <laughs> it barely works as a lubricant. Oh. <laughs> if anything, it makes the axle grind more. <laughs> well, no, no, it's just close. It almost <laughs> does. It almost, it almost it makes it worse, work. but it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> it's still, it's still, it's marginally better than nothing. Yeah. Right? The world's so dry. Ad for the world's <laughs> dry as grease. I'll tell you what it won't do. It won't, it won't run away like an oil. You know, you say if you're on an incline and you have this bit of grease that just falls on the incline, it's staying exactly where it landed. That's a selling point, right? Yeah. It's yep. better than dirt getting sand in your gears because that sand would blow away with the wind, whereas this has got a stickiness to it. Mm. <laughs> and so it doesn't blow away with the wind. <laughs> they keep coming back to this idea. And then the, 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 the sort of the advertising consultants are coming out, or the marketing research people are saying, well, look, we're sort of really not hearing back that this is a problem that people are having <laughs> flying away, the grease flying away. That we're like, look, if you can find anything else that is a good selling point for this grease, I'd love to hear it. But until that point, I'm working with what I've got here. Oh, well, we can say it's a cooking grease, you know? Everybody's spilled the oil once or twice, you know? This oil's not going anywhere. It's not going to spill. You don't even need a pan. You just spread a sort of a, a wadge of this over the hot plate and lay your sausages into that. Right? That's not going anywhere. It doesn't matter how hot it gets. It doesn't go soft. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm actually thinking this could well be a valuable property for a grease to have. I think that the repetition has, <laughs> has so sort of reshaped by reality. You know, you repeat a lie long enough and it becomes the truth. And uh, I'm starting to worry about that my grease is going to blow away. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. Um, what about a, a bananas with a resealable skin? Mm. Because there's often you like you, you open up the banana and you realize it's not ready. But yes. you've, you've you've cracked the skin. Yes. Sure. They should genetically engineer a skin that's got mm -hmm. like a little zipper in it. Well, so you mm. can just go back up and down. I think you could you mm. could definitely and you should do this make a a skin a banana skin out of like with that silicone stuff that plastic stuff that you can even put in the oven and it's fine, right? And just give it. Give it zippers on, on the th the three main separating points of the banana skin or whatever, and then when you get a banana, you take it out of its natural skin, you throw that on the ground or whatever, and you put the banana in its new sort of reusable skin. This is the great thing; it's reducing yeah. waste because we're now giving you a reusable banana skin. Well, yeah, it's like it's like a kind of like an, an ad, but an eco ad for mm. this thing that's the reusable banana skin. But then it goes to well. Look at all the wastage of traditional bananas. <laughs> Look at this. Hey, this is a banana mm. tree. There's almost more skin than there is banana. Well, these days, we could do it this way. And then it shows this hugely elaborate way. Mm, we, we drill down into the earth and we extract the oil, which takes the uh, we make the plastic in this factory. Mm. And then when the banana season comes, we put the seed in here and then the seed grows there and plant comes up now. When the se se seedling... Oh, whatever. Mm, mm. I don't know how it fruity would work. component of the banana grows within the 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 resealable banana packet, and then that banana packet, after it's been used, if you send that back to us at the factory, that can be reused two more times, reducing the wastage in banana skins, which are only going to go onto the ground and cause people to slip, comically or, um, I don't know, fucking something. <laughs> like, you, said that, you, said, you said the word skin quite a lot then. You know in a, the, we sure the movie Silence of the Lambs where it's like mm. there's that uh the killer and he, he makes the woman rub the lotion on her skin. Mm. I think it'd be quite funny if the woman's just like, obviously she hates this scenario, but mm. a bit of her mind's like, well, my skin has never been better. Mm. <laughs> all, this, all the lotion. I'm, like, if I get out of this, I'm glowing. God, mm. that, God she's got a positive <laughs> attitude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love she's really, that. She's really like, oh, I really do look great. Mm. But, like, I'm getting all this lotion, these moisturizers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the all this time work. in the dark <laughs> down a no. hole, I'm not, I'm not getting... The sun, the, the harmful yeah. ra UV rays. And you, you'd think the stress would be really aging me, but I actually have an even more stressful job. This has been a nice, relaxing mm -hmm. holiday. I mean, I'm a paramedic. I haven't had to enter a single, single email down here. 
just being so, free. So this is this is somebody who's watched the Silence of the Lambs movie, seen that scene, and been like, "Yeah, this looks bad, but but actually, I can see this scenario. Take away the serial killer, and what we've got here is almost a kind of a retreat, right? right? She's got a she's she's got a she's got a help retreat, and then they set it up basically as a thing where it's the you know the basement pit, Silence of the Lambs, mm. um, uh, skincare." Uh, <laughs> Skincare re- retreat experience, and um, you, 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 I mean, another great element is that there's somebody does come down and reminds you to put the lotion on because I imagine you forget very often. But they lowered in the basket, basket. Yeah. yeah, and you get a cold, basket cold showers sometimes, which is very revigorating. <laughs> yeah. the skin. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what the Ice Man <laughs> does. You know, what's his name there? Uh, the Ice Man. Yeah, Ice Man. What's do you know him? Who's the Ice Man? No, somebody Hoff. Wim Hof or something like that. Who's the yeah, Iceman that like, That's who climbed to the top of Everest in his boxer shorts or whatever? Whoa! And he did it because of the cold showers. Because he, because he, his whole thing is that he's like he says that you can control your body temperature and you know and, and all these kind of. But other did he things. seriously go? I think so. Yeah. <coughs> in, in shorts, I think. Yeah, well, like no shirt. But because boxes is kind of like it's impressive, but also you can imagine the shirt is just like put some pants on. Yeah, yeah, like, this is uncomfortable. yeah. <laughs> he, I think he he swims in Arctic water or something. Anyway, I'm retreat. Wim Hof, something like that. That sounds like a name that could blow away in the wind. Mm. And then those <laughs> uh, those flakes <laughs> could create mm. more um, fads. Correct. Yes. Retreat. Um. Um, but yeah, I think the idea that they could, they could lower a dog down there occasionally for you to pat. You know, by the way, nice. the basket is a wicker basket. Yeah, you know, it's just nice. It's, it feels classier, right? When they mm. lower. Well, what kind of basket does, does she get? In I the, don't know. Yeah. I don't know what kind of a basket. I go into it. Yeah. Do you that have would any... be a, a more a, a, an interesting part of the movie for, for for a long time. He talks about the different qualities of baskets. Mm. Mm. You're like, ah, <laughs> not really necessary for the exposition. <laughs> but <laughs> interesting. Put the, <laughs> put the lotion in the fucking ba- wicker basket. <laughs> And the beautifully weaved Ethiopian bot w- basket. Mm. Yeah, the director's cut, I imagine. Yeah, and she's like, a lot oh, more baskets. Well, she's like, a, lot basket. de- a lot of detail in this basket. And he's like, yeah, there is a lot of detail in the basket. And it's like, well, they just kind of connect mm. on that level. It's like, maybe you can come out of the pit. Like, I can see it would have been real. a very, very different film, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that actually be. happened very, quite recently where a lady was kidnapped somewhere in. Scandinavia or something like that, and by a guy, and he was a very, uh, you know, fucked up guy. But she saw some orchids in his pl- in his place, and then she like started connecting with him on the orchids, oh, and managed hell. to convince him after they connected that she needs to let him let her go, and she won't tell anybody, and and then, and eventually she did get out. And did she tell him? That? Yeah. Do you think part in his mind is like, see, you can't trust women. Like he'd still spin it. Like she was lying. Yeah, mm. yeah but it's important, I think, <laughs> that you get these people off, uh, you know, out of should... society. Oh, I think in this case, <laughs> lying is the right. Yeah. <laughs> you know right. what? No, I don't agree with lying. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. First of all, let's focus on the lying is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you should. Um, far out. <laughs> well, that's a very sad story. Yeah. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh kids, oh kids, do you want do you want to go and get some potted plants? Oh kids, and that's when the, how people f- wind up thinking that their partner wants kids, but uh, and so they have them, but then they realise down the track that they just wanted um, uh, a specific type of potted plant. Thank you. Well, imagine let's say that your orchids pun seriously. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And then it's like a play, and the play is set twenty years in the future, and there's this this sort of young woman and she she sort of feels a bit lost and she she trying to doesn't really connect with her family mm. and then she mm-hmm. learns maybe one night that the whole reason she was born was because of miscommunication mm. based on the word all kids mm. <laughs> and okay all right and, yes. and she, she decides to try and mm. give meaning to her life by starting a nursery so mm. she's also like oh but a nursery, nursery for, for children. children yeah That's sure a, because of a misunderstanding <laughs> So he's like, I like children orchids. Mm. Like ch- tulip orchids, no, or ghost orchids. So this is like, then the person thought, oh, she either wants a ghost or kids. And then you go, well, ghost doesn't sound like that good a thing to have. And maybe it'd be better if we went with kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there is a, 
think I think I think now that we've introduced the extra nursery double <laughs> meaning, I mean, this feels like it has enough to 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 get across the line as a sketch idea. <laughs> <laughs> For those just listening to this on an audio form, Angus is violently <laughs> nodding his head in agreement. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing. I've never heard of a better sketch. <laughs> um, um, what about positive uses for axes? You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So All that right. we could get axes back into regular society. Mm. Not many people carry an axe with them day to day mm-hmm. anymore. Not even a tomahawk. Okay. Mm. <laughs> which you you would think when they invented the tomahawk they probably were like well this will be an axe that people will buy yeah. you know it's much less threatening than a regular axe mm-hmm. it's more it's more portable i mean what do we got to do to get an a, an axe into the hands of you know well this was the, the axe that you could bring into town yeah. you know mm. like you could do it you know you could bring into work bring to the market a, po- a little pocket axe you know i mean I mean, how small Hip could axe. an axe be before it's functional and you know like like sort of like it feels like a handle of of about six inches is probably mm. like as small as you can go. I think early humans, they weren't even smaller. They were big fans of the hand axe. Right. Yeah. Where you didn't have a handle. You that you just mm. grabbed the, the end and you mm. just the hit. sharp rock. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they were big fans of it. I I mean I think it, Well, why did they make <laughs> so many? <laughs> yeah, oh good one, Andy. Check the archaeological records, Andy. I think they disagree <laughs> well, with oh, you. Oh, so what they hated them. Is that your theory? <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, these weird truths are coming out nine hours and 35 minutes into this recording. Mm-hmm. There's definitely no evidence of them hating it. All right. And he's too confused. Uh, and he's too, and he's too beaten to, to, to uh, argue like, this one. I like to imagine that there's heaps of like a cave paintings of men just looking at hand axes <laughs> and just going, <laughs> shaking like their heads or crosses over their crosses drawing. through them. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> If only there was another way. Well, you know, if you if you had invented the hand axe and then you did want to pass that information the, 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 and you'd been disappointed and angry at the hand axe and you did want to sort of pass, leave that message for future, you know, future societies, that sort of thing, like much like we might end up doing with nuclear weapons, right? If we get to the point where nuclear weapons are going to destroy us all, we might try and leave, like, draw a nuclear weapon on the wall of a cave somewhere, put a big cross through it so that people down the track know not to use nuclear weapons. Also, that we, like, so they know what we're talking about. It's not just like a bomb shape. We, we no, we have to we, do a full diagram. We, we outline the physics behind it, too. Mm. They could. They never have to look at that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I guess if we draw the atoms being split, we do the equi- e equals mc. Mm. You know, but then we draw a really clear, clear drawing of somebody shaking their yeah, head, yeah. which really will come across well, I think, in a two-dimensional drawing, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And 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 our message will come across. And presumably, these future civilizations shaking of the head will mean the same thing as it does <laughs> to us today. That I wonder, I wonder, are there different? I was about to say, are there different societies that have different <laughs> a, a different meaning for the shaking of the head versus the nodding of the head? But I think that might very well be a plot point from the gods must be crazy too. That there's a um, culture there's where a shaking tribe, your head means tribe, yes. Yeah, shaking your head means yes, and nodding, um, or 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 a, or a, 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 a similar film. To the gods must be crazy. Similar film to the similar. gods must be crazy. Yeah. It's such a well, unique film to me. Well, well the, the gods must be crazy, crazy too. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, is this the Coke bottle one? Uh, I think that was number one. I think the second one was the one with the shaking of the heads. Well, look, I don't know. Speaking of how, I, really I think what you were getting at was maybe they didn't love the hand axe. They just mm. didn't know that you could get a handle on it. Yet. Mm. I was mm. uh, looking up mm. the invention of the wheel recently. Sure, oh, yeah. I thought, I thought that was something funny about them. And apparently, the wheel was originally invented for pottery. The pottery wheel is the first wheel. Oh, so the wheel, the horizontal, the horiz- and then it took an additional three hundred years mm. to invent wheel for trans. Because the wheel is part of transportation. Because you have to come up with the axle, then, right? Mm. So I guess there's, a, but to me, that's very funny. That all these pottery, these potters making these huge vases, and be like, I guess we'll have to carry this for market for three hundred mm. years. <laughs> but uh, but I mean, uh, but then also the people who then took the took a, took say four potters' wheels, put them on their sides, and then and then you know connected them up and said, I'm going to ride around on these. Would be to, like us today seeing somebody. You know, lashing some paintbrushes together and saying, "I'm gonna take to the skies." We would think they were insane. Yeah, like like a, like it's a broom. 
Um, do you think to me the I feel like the first one because that's like you're taking a huge leap four wheels. That's a shape we know is good. Sure. I'm thinking one wheel like a wheelbarrow would have been the first. Yeah. That's, a, that's a very reasonable, reasonable thing to think. Mm. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Or the unicycle. You just like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll go, oh, you get. I think. I think this works. You can just figure it out. Well, oh, yeah. Okay. No, there. I got it. Yeah. Got it. But, but already at that point, people are like, "Look at this fucking yeah. guy. He's yeah. a unicycle. Quick. Hand me the vase, quick. Oh. Look. And like that, and he take off. He can't go. Mm. It would have. Been, it feels unlikely that they would have called it a unicycle, though. Probably they probably would have just called it a cycle or something. No, because wheel. they wouldn't have anything to compare it to. The wheel. The wheel mm. car. Yeah, look at me. I'm riding around on one wheel. Oh, but in a wheelchair. A wheelchair, yeah. Probably. Yeah, I guess you'd sit on it or you'd push it. Mm. Or do you think it'd be I a unicycle you... that you just put your pot on and you walk your pot on top? Yeah, probably a pot wheelchair. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't come up with anything for no, a few minutes. No, no, Alistair, it's okay. But 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 do, I think that I think that the f the invention of the first we wheeled thing, and they invent a unicycle, mm. and people are already taking the piss out of oh, him yeah. for being some pretentious guy, and he he's already wearing a fedora, by the way, and has a rat on his shoulder, and um, <laughs> <laughs> <What? laughs> I'm just piecing together elements of a character who feels like the kind of person who would ride a unicycle <laughs> yeah. through Brunswick, you know. He's, he's got a pet rat. Is you it, know? Does he know that the rat's there? Or that's the kind <laughs> of squalor that he lives in. I mean, at, at this, I guess at this period of time, you probably didn't have a lot of control over re where rats chose to be. Although maybe mm. maybe your shoulder, you would have hoped, would be one of the few areas where you could exclude rats from, but maybe not. In that think, kind of situation. Do you think back then people were... Um happier to just eat rats as well like if you had a rat in your shoulder you would have been just like well this is just i'm just basically farming this is early farm mm, mm, allowing yeah. this rat to be on my shoulder because at any point on how i can just be kind of one of the benefits of your bad smell is that yeah. you'd probably be attracting rats and then, mm. then and you'd be like this is sweet man i can't believe i've become I, like i've just become a rat farm yeah mm. I, I genuinely think that like for a huge part of human history having a rat to eat would have been you would have felt so good about that. Like, I don't mm. know at what point we were like, oh, rats, yeah, yuck. But that, I mean, that's that's a kind of privilege that, you know, becomes pretty late in the evolution of a of a society. Or a, I think it's about time a, a, ca a cafe is bring back eating rats. Yeah, I absolutely I mean, agree. Mm. <laughs> It'll it it, it 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 could it could very well be a, be a delicacy, and it's great for when the health inspectors come around. Right, and they're like, "There's rats here," and you're like, "Yes, uh, heaps." Rats. Would you like one? Uh, that's an interesting. Question. So like, there's rats here, and then you're like, "Yes, of course." It's like, "No, I'm not talking about your d properly refrigerated rats. Mm. I'm talking about these little gross ones you've got running around." And then you're in trouble again. No, no but no. then it's you still say, "And it still applied to the rat meat." No, then, then, but then you say, "Oh, but the, no, those rats that are running around—that's like when you go to one of those restaurants and they've got an aquarium, and you get to pick your lobster These or whatever." Free like, range free rats. Free range rats. But the difference between that and the fr oh. in the, in the aquarium is they're so the fish are safely in the aquarium. <laughs> they're not just <laughs> roaming the floor. On the, yeah. yeah, there's like about three inches of water oh, on the this ground. Is, yeah. well, this is, I think, this is quite a good a good idea for a restaurant. Well, that I you, mean, he could definitely do that for the next the next room along. And he goes, "Well, no, yeah, we're not the way that we keep." Something like that, and then he showed them there's some snappers yeah. swimming around in the second kitchen. And like, you know, the floor, because it's at a restaurant, and you got like three inches of water, and the, the fish are going through it, but also just all the crumbs. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. But the fish are eating those. There you go. Really good. So that's that it's a you reduce all waste because mm. all the leftover crumbs and stuff mm -hmm. is just food for the fish. Yeah. Well, you're turning you're turning it into an ecosystem. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a it's a, it's a restaurant called Rock Pools or something like that, and everyone just sort of sits in their own rat pool. Rat as well. pool. <laughs> you get some of those fish that nibble at your toes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. you're getting you're getting all the bad stuff. They're getting you know. something to eat. You're getting something to eat. Yeah. You know, right. I think I think I think that's something. Right. You've got bare feet on. I'm not sure if you're like individually spearing your own fish when you see them um, uh, swim past your 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 table. But um, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's something. Um, I think it'd be quite uh, quite pleasant. And um, and, <laughs> and 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 yeah, and you wouldn't have a problem with rats. Um, they can swim though. 
Rats can swim? Yeah. But not forever. You know, and there's nowhere for them to rest. I mean, on the tables like, during the night. They can... Oh, they got to come up the tables, do they? Yeah. Um, the tables all hang from the roof. Where do you sit? You sit. Uh, you sit on a pole that is lashed to your butt, right? So you 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 have like a sort of a like a like a stiff tail that comes out as a single shaft, much like the the outrigger for the dog, so that you don't have to rub its belly. Mm. You um you have this thing that sort of a, a curved <laughs> seat with a single pole that pokes down and you sit on on that and then you hang that up at the door as you leave. Any further questions? I think this is now officially a perfect restaurant concept. Yeah. Yeah. One of the one of the staples of the two in the think tank podcast <laughs> is us coming up with different restaurant, restaurant concepts. <laughs> mm-hmm. And how it could work and maybe how you could make it work financially. Yes. Ah, oh, you could sell some of that water later back to the ocean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll help the, the... Well, it, it, when um, sea level's rising, yes. restaurants More are going to have to do this. Yeah. I think Take it out of the ocean, put it in restaurants, is what I say. I mm-hmm. think maybe one of the things that we could do to solve the problem of rising sea levels is that we make we allocate like a certain volume of water to every single person and say it's your responsibility to find something to do with this much ocean water. Mm-hmm. The only thing you can't do is put it back in the ocean or put it somewhere where it's going to go back into the ocean. And then, like, now we've got this resource. And the, the the impetus is on all of us to get creative and start thinking, what can we do with this extra water? What are you going to do with your water? What are you going to do That's with great. your water? There's That's a signs on every street, street corner. corner. Yeah. Yes. And then they, they can say, okay, well, look, we're, there was going to be uh, $200 billion we were going to spend on – water right like rising mitigation things yeah but we'd rather give it to you guys yeah. if you guys can each find a place to put mm. 1000 liters of ocean water <laughs> yeah it's sort of like the adopt a highway program okay. yeah. you it's it's adopt a, an olympic sized <laughs> swimming pools worth of ocean <laughs> and it, yeah that you know that's your that's your thing maybe even right we could calculate how much your carbon emissions produce every year in terms of sea level rise and then that's the amount that you've got to then take out of the ocean. It's not offsetting carbon. Um, it's not offsetting the amount of, like, not reducing the amount of carbon in the atmosphere, but it is offsetting the amount of water in the ocean mm-hmm. um, by, yeah. Has anyone thought, what was it? We've got all this extra water now. Mm-hmm. And we also don't talk about, we've got a magma core. Mm-hmm. Why don't we try yes. and finally cool the core? <laughs> finally! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, are we getting any benefits from this hot core? No, I don't, I'm not getting any benefits. Occasionally a volcano erupts or an earthquake happens or something. It's, yeah, it's, like it's, it's just negatives. <laughs> All I see is negatives. Mm-hmm. Let's cool the, the core. core. Cool the core, then we can colonize yeah, it. Yeah, well, then we, yeah. we can at least mine it, and pour some water in there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hard core, that's what we'd have. Yeah. Yeah. People love things that so are hardcore, hard core. right? <laughs> yeah, we hate soft core. And also, <laughs> that, if we cool the core... That's going to have a fl- that's going to cool the atmosphere. Got it. Oh. It's got it. Well, because it's, <laughs> it's raining. You mean all that hot steam coming up from the core? And, mm-hmm. Well, in the short term. In the short, sure, yeah. sure. 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 For about a thousand years. Yeah. yeah. No. We'll be broiled alive. <laughs> yes. But in the long term, entropy is going to move from the atmosphere into the core and try and create like a stable level of heat. Mm. Still feels like <laughs> the average would wind out to be hotter than the atmosphere is at the moment. But but maybe if we could get some of the, if we could then vent the gas, gas into, into space. space. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's not a bad look. So wait, we're going maybe to keep the cows warm. Well, I feel like there's two different sketches in this. Oh, one sketch okay. Is, what do you What do you do with your water? Sure. And yes, the and the other one is cool, 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 cool. Yeah, and then you, you you know someone runs for president or whatever of the one world government with this slogan of like yeah you know I'm a a hard man for a hard core and like uh you know drill you know drill drill something drill baby drill. No. Drill, drill baby drill, drill baby drill. Yeah. I, want my, yeah, I want to drill a I got Finally, nothing to say. Cool. It's been warm for thousands of millions of it's years. It's going on. I think as soon as you put finally in front of any every sentence, it's, mm. you're already creating, you're framing the debate around, like, you're right, this has been going on for a long time. As soon as mm. people are thinking that way, they're already in your mindset. Finally, a lizard in every home. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's been too long. There haven't been any lizards in any homes. Um. And you, uh, yeah, will defeat that um, that core that's been sort of holding it over us. I think for a really stopping long time. us from going in there. Yeah, yeah. 
What's what's it's in very there? hostile. Mm, and also, it's probably full of great resources. I think it probably is, though. Mm. Like, I mean, I I don't think we'll ever get down and get them, but it would be would be pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. Mm. Like, we, like if you could if you could just get a drill somehow all the way down into the core and just get the liquid iron and nickel core of the earth and you just vent that out onto the surface and just get straight iron or nickel or whatever it is. Yeah. Then yeah. well for surely the big iron players, the, the mining magnates, they're gonna hate that. They're gonna yeah. hate you because mm, you're gonna sure. drop the they're price sure. of iron. You got yeah. you got iron on tap. I'll have a little um one of those little pop up ads on some some weird website that like um, this this uh, suburban house dad um, found a way to get free iron ore. Mm -hmm. BHP hates it. Yeah, or free this pure, one pure iron. Pure iron. Uh, you know, uh, find out what it is before the big um, conglomerate shut it down. Mm -hmm. it turns um, out it's a big, like, it's a sort of... Maybe a laser? 1,000-meter... Uh, thin drill straw that goes mm. in and just sucks it up slowly yeah. and then just pulls it into like cups, some bricks. Yeah. Some bricks. You make steel bricks, then you just mm -hmm. go and sell it at the recy local I'm recycling I'm place. I'm doing it at home. I'm just doing it in like a muffin tray or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Or one of, those, one of those rubber ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to do it. China's on speed. To, oh, trying to get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, and technically, even though it is like a, you know, thousand kilometer um, drill, it is. A, only still one weird trick you know yeah. i think it's yeah. a, like like it's a, it's a complicated one it's big and stuff but it's only technically one trick and um i think that's the important not the elaborate nature of the trick but the quantity the total quantity of tricks involved in the trick and as long as it's only one that's something people can get their heads around do you think the thing with the core is as well it's like in terms of space it's not an efficient use of mm. of, of, a, of a sphere mm -hmm. because with the amount of tension the surface is producing could be you know sustained by like a much hollower sphere you don't need all that core in there do you think well you, you could just have some beams across okay. i don't think you yeah. need i don't necessarily oh, but, but maybe you're right maybe structurally speaking it could be totally hollow it doesn't need any kind of internal structure like balls and stuff but what, what we've got all this wasted space in the core mm. Mm. And then we could we could use all that to build up Away mm. from the ocean. Are, yeah. are we just inventing the the show Magma? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. yeah. I love it. <laughs> that was one of my favorite hypothetical shows. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. We hypothetical um, magma mining shows. In that category, I think we did pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Hypothetical comedy is sort of strongly becoming our our um, our strength. Mm. Hypothetical comedy. I don't think let's strongly, let's not strongly. call it hypothetical mm. comedy because that makes it sound like it's not actual comedy. Yeah, just comedy that might well, exist if it's proven to. Some people, some people might argue that. You know what? I think all comedy is probably hypothetical comedy yeah. until you get the laugh. Mm. So um, yeah, all right, I'll take that. The laugh is the peer review of mm. the comedy world. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And yeah. the stage <laughs> is new scientist. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. A famous journal, New Scientist. That's that's it's um the pop you know it's the it's the it's the pop science version of saying that's a journal because it's not really a journal. Is science, it? science is a journal. Yeah, the, science. Yeah. Okay. But what about New Scientist? Yeah. It's yeah. Not. But you could. Mm. You, but we, you know, you're so kind of, But then also, just saying science doesn't sound like you know you're saying. You know what I mean? Like you know, if, if especially if an audience is listening, they go science. Yeah, that's the journal, and they go, well, come on, bro. <laughs> I saw it written down in science. Yeah, sure you did. Mm -hmm. In science. In like science. Well, that's a concept, science. bro. Yeah, good one. I think to me, speaking. in my mind, um, New Scientist sort of feels like the LinkedIn of, uh, of science journals. And that might just be for me because I was subscribing to it for a while and then just have received constant emails from them ever since. Mm. Um, never read it, though. I don't know what I was thinking. At that period, I signed up, signed up to new scientists, getting magazines about science delivered to my house. Never read them. You never read a single one. You didn't think that you could mine it for jokes. There was going to be all this like. Oh, science this was in my pre-joke lifestyle. Oh, this, this was before you. This is when I was an engineer, I think, probably, and had uh, some disposable income and nothing else in my life. And thought, yeah, all right. Well, I may as well be this guy who gets that thing. And. Uh, yeah, got to tell you, wasn't a good investment, really, to be honest. No, but I mean, think about all the other th other things you could have done with those magazines. Mm. Mm. You know, fire, 
mm. and telling me that's not a valuable thing. Uh, cut out the letters. Then you've got your own hostage template. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and that's not traceable. It's not like printing up paper. You know, apparently the printer always puts some little information in there so the FBI can... Is that true? I think so, yeah. Is this true? I think. Wow. It's crazy. How did the FBI convince the big printer companies to get on board with this? They said, do it. Yeah. And then they went, yeah, right. Yeah. I guess it would be good if we could trace. Yeah. Do it or we'll frame you for something. Yeah, that's good. Maybe. See? See, he knows how to do it. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think uh, a new scientist, though, might be feels like that's the sort of thing they'd probably be able to trace that back to be like, well, this is someone. With There's only shit. six people <laughs> still you know, buying you know, it. Yeah, there can't be that many idiots who are, who are paying for this hard copy magazine to come mm. to their house. Um, oh, I had something there. Getting uh, as a new scientist. Uh, oh, it's nothing. Yeah, is there anything that you would still buy a magazine for if the magazine had something I, I every time i go to the airport i'm tempted by like some magazine that has a picture of a, like a like a like a person standing next to an old steel bicycle on the front cover like there it feels like there's always at least six of those now and it's called something like um um barber shop or it's called like quarter quarter main or something like that and i'm like oh yeah all right and then you open you leave through and there's an article about tiny houses and there's another thing about a man who makes his own wheat or you yeah. know he's uh, he's you know he's brought he's bringing gruel back gruel yeah, yeah. a restaurant that only serves gruel oh that's yes. a that's a sketch right there yeah a oh. restaurant concept yeah. hello yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> and um, it's called uh copperfields yes <laughs> <laughs> copperfields new gruel yeah. New gruel Can restaurant. I have another, please? Mm. Um, <laughs> so not Oliver Twist? I've got him wrong. Who cares? Who knows? And not, not please, sir, can I have some more? Can I have another, please? Well, you can't that famous line from... You can't infringe upon the copyright. <laughs> no, that's right. Oh, I don't, it. We, don't, Dickens. we don't want Dickens coming after us. Probably was for the public use, though. I think you might be right, bloody. In, in the domain. So you can... Do the real quote mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you want, but you know, if you're a coward. Another, please. Yeah. <laughs> Another one, if that, uh, if you don't mind. You know, well, Dickens famously said that uh, brevity is the soul of wit. And you, I think. <laughs> I mean, Dickens once said that keeping your sentences short is one of the best things for being humorous and smart sounding. <laughs> yeah. So, another please really just gets to the heart of the matter. Mm. <laughs> nice one, Dickens. Um... <laughs> I mean, that's a quote from Oscar Wilde, but I think it would be better in oh, Dickens' yeah. mouth at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If Dickens said it, it um, I think uh, I think one of the one of I think one of the real selling points would be because it, like like it's it's so, by by getting it deliberately wrong like that, right? If that's what we're doing, getting it, our quotes deliberately long, wrong on the thing, that's that's like a a form of trolling that people do a lot on 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 Twitter and that sort of thing now is you know get things deliberately wrong just so that people will like pile on them and correct them and that sort of thing and it could actually be you know a kind of like a a, a marketing strategy for our restaurant that like we have a lot of like sort of incorrectly attributed or misstated literary mm -hmm. quotes all over our, our posters and advertising material on the outside and then once you've got people's attention you know they're coming all the pedants are coming in to sort of correct you they're already in the shop. I mean, you can't buy that kind of publicity. <laughs> and they're hungry. <laughs> and they're hungry because they get up a good hunger from their pedantry. So wait, this is a bookshop that gets things wrong? No, no it's, it's, it's still the, the restaurant it's... where all oh, the their... Gruel, the gruel restaurant? Yeah, but they use a lot of misstated literary mm, okay, quotes great. as a sort of a marketing strategy. It's the uh, gruel restaurant trying to make, like, delicious, nice gruel? Or are they mm. trying to make increasingly disgusting gruel? Like I think they've like got. I think hardcore. Are you at gruel? I think they've got mm. original gruel, which is disgusting. But you know, in some way, they say, "Oh, it's great for you" or whatever. Mm. But then they got new gruel as well. So you know, they got the old world and the new world, and they got misquotes for getting people in. I mean, the temptation is really to call it "goodbye gruel world," isn't it? Or, mm. or, or, or combine it with our previous um, restaurant where everyone's up to their ankles in water and call it the Gruel Sea. Yeah, is there is there a place called the Cruel Sea? Oh, there's a band, there's, mm, um, yeah, right. Tex Perkins, I believe, called the Cruel Sea. What I mean, about, I don't actually know. What about Cruel? Mm. <laughs> and it's you know, you only play music from um, David Gruel. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? that was, uh, Dave Grohl. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the Food Fighters. Yeah. 
Um, um, I I'm think sure that have... pun is, if you Googled that, that pun will have been done online. Dave oh, Gr- Gruel and the Food Fighters is, is, is all over the internet. Probably, it's probably 90% of the internet, I reckon, if you were to do it statistically. It's that pun. And the Aladdin parody skills. <laughs> I can show you my penis. <laughs> it's another sketch. It's uh, the Sex Pistols, but they're French. Mm. So instead of Johnny Ron, it's like Pierre Ennui. <laughs> I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I, I think that that's, there's something interesting there. <laughs> I just think it's, I think it's very fun to come up with your own, try and come up with like a, a Sex Pistols name. Like, yeah. Like Johnny mm. Rotten. What would you, like, a, it could be like Tim Violence. Mm. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a, like a common mm. first name. Steven Bastard. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. Peter No Good. Mm. There you go. Okay. Just yeah. like, you know, I think. Uh, Nick Mason will be here in about five minutes. Oh, just let just me get ready to go. So it's just yeah. you know, I want you to be ready to know. <laughs> but who's going to take my train? Who's the phone? You t- take your train. Uh, well, there'll be other there'll be other trams. I guess he he doesn't drive all the trains. That's true. Yeah. Oh. yeah. It's a Nick Mason joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it didn't land. It's and okay. I didn't deliver it well. It's fine. It's uh, hard to do this for an hour, let alone ten. Mm, so, well. Um, I'm I'm only just discovering. It's, that, emer- that's it's emerging that yeah, that is absolutely. Good. We are ten hours in, Alistair. So this is pretty close to where we were last time, and we're t- definitely way further ahead. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I'll take that. And we're on one six. I was wondering seven, if we could wrong. come up with different forms of like if you because we were talking about you know doing the peer the, the laughter is the peer review of of comedy, mm. but um. I mean, I, I guess it would be good if there were other sort of mouth sounds that 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 correspond to different forms of approval. Like if there was a mouth sound that was made to correspond to an to a well, you know, executed mathematical proof or something. Like if if all forms of um, not creativity or expression, but if all forms of endeavor were mm. performed on a stage for an audience. So, like, scientific and mathematical endeavor. Yes. Well, I just like that you, in this world, that the body knows truths Mm. and you just have to Mm. present it to the body and then the body will correctly display, Uh, will react. uh, And it it sort of vibrates and makes a noise at a certain frequency. (laughs) And and that's how you know that you have come to a real proof. Well, I yeah, I suppose... Everybody starts harmonizing. I suppose this is a, um, a world in which all... Um, all truths are subjective in the same way that comedy is, right? That yeah. so, like your what your, what what passes for science is what you can convince the audience is <laughs> science. And so there might be scientists who get a lot of their scientific approval just from sort of doing a lot of nostalgic references and you know uh, <laughs> callbacks <laughs> and that sort of thing, and get get the same amount of like plaudits from their scientific peers mm. as do scientists who get theirs through years of, of research all conducted on stage mm. obviously in front of remember the how false <laughs> is equal to mass times acceleration <laughs> 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 oh, oh, i do, I, do. I, mean, I, that, I was just doing laughter like a fucking idiot but that still is true <laughs> mm. you, your body would make the same it wouldn't have to be new proofs so there'd be heaps of ha- like you said, heaps of hacks just doing like old forms, mm, and you're like, you're right, <laughs> still getting the same response. <laughs> it is a truth. The body still vibrates involuntarily mm. and makes the oh. Sound. So it's, so we're picturing a sort of an open mic symposium um, type uh, scene where where uh, scientists just starting out can go and try out their gear in front of audiences of science fans and see what sort of strikes the audience audiences as, as as constituting like a, a fundamental insight into the nature of the universe um and and then and then hope you know try it they try and hone get closer to what is you know the pure kind of science they want to be doing by modifying what they're doing and trying it in different ways does that mean that you're trying it at home and when you're writing it you kind of feel yourself going oh, you go, I, think, yeah. I think that might be true yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know when i when i wrote this down i <laughs> to myself so i mean i think that's I hope that's something. It feels like something. Is there different levels of this truth as well? Because you can have different like degrees of laughter, like little titters or like you know, mm. a chuckle, or where people like absolutely losing them. Like people are just like their eyes roll to the back of their head mm. and like they start mm. like levitating. <laughs> yeah, and the crowd like creates a pu- like a beautiful mm. symphony because it is like if you get the like the single like formula for mm. the universe, if you create that, 
then and the crowd forms a quantum, quantum superposition of states and they or, or bose einstein condensate or something like that and they behave as exactly <laughs> like the audience behaves as as one when you've got a good comedy bit going right and they're almost like a beast of, the, of their own so too does the scientific audience become a bose einstein condensate a superposition of waves mm -hmm. they can then behave like a single electron passing through a you know, a superconductor or something. Oh God, I love a superconductor reference. Oh no, yeah. yeah. Well, I think I think maybe if you find the ultimate truth, and everybody all interlocks together, mm. and then we, uh, and then a white light comes from behind them, and then they open up like a door, and then it takes us to the other side of the universe, the good <laughs> side, <laughs> like that. And we go in there, we go, oh, oh this is God. what it's all been about, and then we get there, and we're like, ah, oh. everybody's. Laughing, dancing, dancing and laughing, and it's like the '60s. It's like the mm. end of uh, of that movie with the, that guy. <laughs> and then, then you realize that that wasn't true. That that was just how the rich people were getting us off the planet. No, <laughs> and no. The and then the door slams, slams behind us. Yeah. Ah! And it's dark, and then it's just cold, and you're just on <laughs> a single flat plane. <laughs> There's not enough dips at this party mm. that everyone was at. Everybody has to huddle together for mm. warmth until we all die of starvation. But the the, the advantage would do if you're living purely on a two dimensional Cartesian plane. Yes, it's easy to get around. You can't get lost, can you? Um, no. boy, is it, is it, is it a Cartesian plane that goes for infinity? The, the, <laughs> yeah, but you still know the has the grid one. markings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got the markings. Yeah, well, that's good. That's yeah, well, I guess yeah. if it's a classical, if, if, if uh, you know, you know the x and y coordinates. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's only if the axis is close enough to see, right? Unless it's written on there, or unless it's like sort of like New York City, City and it's just yeah. a grid. Yeah, it was. I was doing a sort of New York grid-based joke. <laughs> <laughs> But on an infinite Cartesian plane. <laughs> <laughs> Say what you like about living in the infinite Cartesian plane. It's easy to get around. <laughs> easy to find your way. Yeah. I mean, okay, there wouldn't be any... Two X's no up and three Y's across and you're there. I wonder if the absence of any landmarks, like any visible landmarks, would perhaps in some way like counterbalance <laughs> the obvious benefits that you're at so right to describe of living in this scenario. Um you know, you you, know, you might want a little bit of height or something, but then I guess you just point out various tall people and sort of navigate by them as one would the stars. I think I, I see this as like they a... they don't move. It's sort of like a real estate ad, you know, like for like... They go like, <laughs> well, this suburb's on the up and up, and they go, well, this... A lot of people are moving to the infinite Cartesian plane. <laughs> Ever since I moved to the infinite Cartesian planes, it's been so good for me and the family and that, you know... and. <laughs> And it's great for the old folks because there's no stairs for them to fall down and they're opening a bistro. It's so congested in the city, but the good thing about the infinite plane is mm. there's just more of it to share. Mm. <laughs> and it's not built up, you know, it's not built up like on the city. Oh, it's, it creates wind tunnels. Whereas here, there is no weather because yeah. because it's sort of, it's, it's a mathematical concept on which we all live that has no friction or smoothness or anything. The, the, the reason that there's the, the, there's no weather is because if a, if wind were to form in any particular point of the infinite Cartesian plane, well, there's an infinite distance between me and that point, and so it would take the wind an infinite amount of time to get here, and so it's impossible for anything to ever reach any, anywhere else, mm -hmm. which does make commuting a bit of a nightmare. Mm, but, but at least you know where you uh, are relative to other points. Yes. Uh, the, this is a sort of separate... Uh, Play on that. I imagine congestion's gone so bad here since I have moved to Zeno's paradox of movement. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I try to approach a point, I first have to uh, uh, reach the point in between these two <laughs> points. But then to reach that point, I have to reach the point in between those two points. And it just seems strange that I'm never actually going to reach any of those points. And I've been trying explaining this to my boss, but he doesn't see it as a valid excuse. Yeah, all right. So this is a this is sort of a town hall meeting. <laughs> of like Zeno's Paradoxville, where people are standing up to complain to the mayor about the about what a nightmare it is getting around. Because, I mean, the question is, one has to ask, how did they all make it to the... But I, I, does it... Does Zeno's, My boss keeps firing me. Does, it, does Zeno's Paradox only apply... Does it apply if you're approaching a stationary point or does it only apply if it's like... If it is the, 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 the arrow fired at the tortoise because the tortoise is moving away and so even even in any interval of time the tortoise has already moved away even if it's a very small amount i want to po point this out and people have um there's you know there's been problems with xeno's paradox of movement but sure the, i think history has proven that there are some issues with it let's go with the one that no one addresses though why are you shooting an arrow at a tortoise <laughs> <laughs> you can really just walk over <laughs> all the ways <laughs> 
So you who is it? The god it's the god Apollo. You're the god Apollo. <laughs> trying to kill a tortoise. I mean, what are you doing, Apollo? It what are you fucking if, doing if with you were your trying life? Trying to shoot a hare. They're fast. Yes. yes. But a tortoise just walk over and pick it up. But I would argue that even <laughs> even if it is a hair, as the god Apollo, like to why not just manifest <laughs> yourself at the point where the hair already <laughs> is, rather than you know fifty meters behind the hair. Um, can you write down Zeno's Zeno's paradox paradox uh, <laughs> where we <laughs> we criticize maybe uh, and you know I wonder if that actually constitutes a disproof of Zeno's paradox. <laughs> Before they discovered limiting sums, uh, was, was it, it Apollo? Sums? Converging series? I can't. What? What is it? Is, what? Uh, what is it? Uh, something. Uh, something or other. It's not limiting sum. It's limits. The idea yeah. of in, 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 mm, yeah, something, it is limits. Something you keep asymptotic. Moving, something keep going down. Something. It creates that um, that thing there. That 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 waveform that you get when you cube something. I think. Right. Point of yeah. inflection? The quad. Yeah. Uh, quadratic? Quadratic. I don't know. Bloody hell. Yeah, I should know some of this. But um look, I'll take I'll take uh yeah, look. I'll take ignorance of that. Um in exchange for uh, another sketch idea of some kind. All right. Um Zeno's paradox. All right. Yeah. I mean, look, we've already done Zen We've already done two of Zeno's paradox. Yeah, no, no. Sorry, I was just trying to have a, a starting point from which to move on to something else. But I realised the starting point being the place I was trying to get away from is kind of an, you know, self defeating in some ways, Alastair. Yeah, no, I, I apologise for you know for taking what you were saying as a starting point seriously as mm. an excuse. Um, all right, so uh, you know, um, look at my skin pile. No, that's a that's beautiful. The carcasses of the fallen. As long as they're yeah. just fruit skins, you're fine. Yeah. You know oh. I mean? As long as you like, look at my skin pile and you're like, oh, there's some people I knew. In that. Mm, yeah. I recognize some of those tones <laughs> and uh, distinctive markings on that skin pile. I think, I think, um, yeah, the, the, the moles on the body. Yeah. It's a shame that they don't, they don't offer anything of value. Like it's a shame that you can't then join them up in some way to make a, Make an interesting pattern or learn something well, about you yourself can. or your life. I think you can. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, we don't know whether or not it doesn't. It's not telling us something more interesting about us. You know, there there might be some, you know, in, in information there that you could get out of it. it might mm. say something about your DNA. It might say something about uh, your exposure to sunlight. Mm. I mean, know. I think it definitely says something about your exposure to sunlight. Mm. <laughs> do, you, do you? Okay, how about this scenario, right? You go. Has, has this been done as a sketch? You go to someone to look at your moles, a uh, uh, um, a, a a mole expert, right? Mm -hmm. and you're lying down, I imagine, on your front with your shirt off. You're on the bench there, and uh, this mole expert expert, she's examining your back, right? Mm -hmm. And and then after a while, she says, "Oh, that doesn't look good." And you go, "Oh, what?" You know? And she says, "Oh, well, I think it's supposed to be a rabbit, but it doesn't look quite right." And then you and then you see in a mirror or something like that, she's been joining up the ones on your back, trying to make a dot to dot thing. Mm. And uh, yeah, she's just drawn a bad version of a rabbit or something. You know, it feels like a like a, I'm not saying like a good sketch, but maybe you could get that up on a, like Comedy Inc or something <laughs> like that. In about 2002. What about mm. instead of like doing like the the drawing you know, like, instead of surgery we just got to get them all in line and that unlocks your true potential <laughs> <laughs> like they all just move into the onto your spine <gasps> that's well that's it that's that's that the, the, that sound of that door opening is you know when one door opens <laughs> another door uh, the, the same door, door the same door opens again, again <laughs> when somebody else leaves Guys, how am i going to compare the whirling tasmanian devil that is I think I think you're gonna be you're gonna be just fine. Hey, don't worry, we don't have the energy either. Yeah, um, Nicholas Mason, how so are wonderful you? to see you. It's been a, quite a while. It's been a, well, it's such a long time. It's great to be here. Absolute joy. You are you. you're just looking so sharp. Thank you. I feel good. Yeah, you have, you have so much hair on your head. <laughs> yeah, right. Have you recently he, become a millionaire or something? Yeah. yeah. So look, what I what I do like is that you've got the camera here, so I can check for my bald spot every every six months. Yeah. I like to check. Yeah, and just make sure. In fact, what I've done here is I the time is about ten four, thirteen minutes. There. Four years mm -hmm. ago, I socially engineered both of you 
mm. uh, to start a podcast about sketch ideas, hoping yes. that by the 200th, you'd have set up some sort of streaming YouTube situation. Yeah. So now I can check. You so can am actually, I doing? Yeah. Am I doing all right? Got an opportunity to reflect. Well, you won't know until you look on the stream or and the see comments. What people have written That's true. In the yeah. comments. Know, but yeah. yeah. Like but somewhere around the 10 minutes, 14 uh -huh. minutes mark, yeah. so if you go back and check there, that's when you <laughs> tilted your head. So uh, uh, you guys were very kind to ask if I'd like to be on the podcast. Yeah. And I said, when would be a good time to provide emotional support? Mm. It's at about four o'clock. So how are you guys feeling? I think this is exactly the time that we need <laughs> emotional support. <laughs> yeah. I think, we, you know, being 10 hours in yeah. is, um, is sort of devastating, really, <laughs> in a way. And <laughs> I should have yeah. taken some photos of outside just to prove there still is an outside world. <laughs> yeah, well, we've heard, we've heard, and people seem to be coming from somewhere. Yeah. So we assume that this isn't sort of floating through space uh -huh. like that, like that sequel to Jumanji. You know that one with the with the Zara Zarathustra. Zathura. Zathura. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. I thought you know where. So uh -huh. anyway, you're also not people... you're also not in like a saw universe where if you if you leave mm. if you don't come up with sketch ideas you'll be cut torn to pieces so well we don't know that i mean we're we'll tear ourselves to pieces That's in true, some yeah. emotional but it, way but also and also it is a little bit like a saw universe in that the key to us actually being able to get out is inside ourselves <laughs> in that true. we have to get the ideas yeah. out of mm -hmm. us uh -huh. um and we have discussed doing that physically with surgery there's a knife there's a knife just resting on the top uh, of emergency the thing. knife just in case yeah, yeah. yeah. but also that, that's mostly so that we can um at the end once we finish while I'm reading out the sketches, Andy's going to carve out a uh, two goblets out of a block, a kilo block of um, cheese, and we're going to drink wine out Incredible. of cheese goblets. Oh, so decadent! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. And nibble on the goblet, obviously, yeah. as you go yeah. down. You're um, the first person who's having a positive response yeah. to this idea. <laughs> People, wow. <laughs> I well, think the only other person we mentioned it to was maybe Jess Perkins. She thought she might have thought it was disgusting. Although yeah, well, maybe that was maybe I was uh, I made that up. I don't I don't remember. I don't know mm. what's real, and um, <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, if if we were in sort of a fictional, in some sort of simulation or some sort of trapped in some sort of uh, terrible mind game where there was no world outside and we'd actually been here forever trying to come up with, <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, like I feel like one of the tricks our captors would play on us would be sending in people who seem like we recognize them mm, you know to true, occasionally yeah. say oh there is a world outside i would and, say hello mm, alan andy but maybe yeah. i'm not looking at the right person yeah i don't really know <laughs> they're just like there's two guys called alan andy you're gonna go in there <laughs> and say they're doing really well yeah, yeah. and that the people are watching on the stream and yeah, yeah. um so, fuck <laughs> um I mean, look, I, I think you're ahead I, of schedule though as far as yeah. i can tell I've been, yeah i've been watching the stream i've been eyeing off the last banana Mm. You want that banana? You, I you can have, definitely just came in here to take the banana. <laughs> I leave. Goodbye, everyone. To be honest, you can have the banana. I feel, but I also feel like I. Here's the thing: I only recently saw myself eating for the first time, like quite, quite recently. <laughs> oh, that's mm. really interesting. Because, I don't know if I've ever seen myself see, eating. See, that's the thing because I never had. And then there's there's sort of a famous diner in Melbourne called Pellegrini's. Mm. The walls are mirrored. Mm. I guess so. You can talk to your mm. your work friend or what have you. Mm. And I just had, and I got a big bowl of pasta. I'm like, this is going to be a real treat. And then I just took a bite in the mirror. And I'm yeah. like, is that normal? That's not natural. <laughs> that's, I, I, I mean, I've seen that's what it looks like when other people do it. But I always assumed that when I did it, all the little the tendrils of the spaghetti sort of curled themselves up into little balls and leapt into my exactly. mouth without hanging down with like no. chunks and flakes of red flesh-like stuff hanging not the off case. them. Not the case, not the at, case all. at all. Yeah, um, I think I think knowing what you look like eating is 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 pretty. Is, is is really interesting like because of course one of the things that always undoes politicians is when they uh, when when you see photos of them eating yeah and, right and you know you see you remember the way that uh bill shorten ate a sand uh, ate a, a sausage in a in bread yes, by did. biting right into the middle rather yeah, than biting right. in the end or something like it's that it's like they're so out of touch they don't understand like i mean there's tony abbott eating the onion mm. and there's you mm -hmm. know and there's there was one of many years ago i think president when it, when it was Bill Clinton versus John mm. Kerry, uh, John Kerry ate a, a cheese steak and he and he ate he put the wrong cheese on it and then he ate it with such disgust. It was like it was the first time we'd ever eaten yeah, a cheese right. a combination of anything. And <laughs> I mean, just... I don't know if I have eaten a cheese steak. I don't know. I mean, I can imagine what that is, but mm. I don't. Have, have you had, have you had oh, a cheese steak? Oh, oh. I'd be eating one right now if I could. Yeah, right. so good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is is it sort of like it's just a regular? It's just like it's just like a sandwich with sort of meat, meat in and it, then yes. cheese on top, Correct, right? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. so it's kind of like so an open sandwich. 
It's not like it's not a flat piece of bread. It's like a hot dog bun, yeah, filled with like strips of meat and then cheese, and then they just melt. That's it off. a cheese steak. That's a cheese steak. So, but it's no actual st- like it's not a steak steak. No, there's no actual steak in it. No, no. but I mean, the, the, it's probably beef or something like that. Right? Mm. Like, this is insane. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I was. I mean, I'm, what I was picturing isn't any better, which is just like, yeah, like a lump of steak that has had a cheese, like, like a, a slice, steak sandwich a with a slice, slice of, of cheese, you know, cheese craft on it, single yeah. on placed on uh-huh. top and then melted <laughs> into yeah. <laughs> the things I mean, we learn as adults, right? Yeah, <laughs> but what I think, we look like eating what foods are. Well, mm. I think what happens to the politicians though is that they're just like us they've never seen themselves eating and the first time they see themselves eating is probably in a photograph and like the front page of a newspaper or something like what a Uh horrific way to learn or there's like a monitor they're like they're they're Mm -hmm. eating on camera like part of an interview or something he's just a regular guy and they catch a glimpse of themselves and they're like how do i how do i do this (laughs) how do normal people do this Uh, yeah yeah Yeah. whenever you try like when you try and um like uh, you, you see yourself on camera and you try and like fix your hair or something, you always sh- shape it the push it the wrong way yeah, and right. you're like trying to guide now looking at the monitor, <laughs> trying to guide the sausage into your mouth, but you can't you keep going the wrong way or up and down and mm. why doesn't why don't why doesn't uh, why don't mirrors reverse things in the up and down direction? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> But oh, imagine no, the world a, in which they did. I mean, that's. I mean, that is a bit crazy. <laughs> Why doesn't that happen? Like a spoon would. Yeah, yeah. like a spoon. <laughs> but why? Yeah, why does? Wait, I don't understand. Andy, why you're they, the scientist here. Why not? Is it because we have two eyes and they and, and they're on those sides? No, I think what it is is that mirrors don't actually reverse things, right? They just oh, reflect things yeah. straight back to you, <laughs> and we're used to seeing people like around oh, facing the other way. I'm and sorry, and that's why it's like no. But 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 when I asked the question, I hadn't thought it through to this point where I hadn't really worked it out myself. I mean, it'd be crazy if you walked toward the thing and your your heads met up, but your feet were up there, <laughs> and then your hands would be like this. But I think I think I think this could be a sketch idea. Look, yeah. Right? Why don't mirrors reverse things in the top to bottom mm. thing as well, <laughs> and the ramifications on society <laughs> if they did? Mm. And maybe maybe we discover how to fix mirrors so that they do their proper mirrors that do show. They, they flip. On both axes equally, <laughs> just to be, you know, I'm just sick, to be consistent. I'm sick, to, sick of X getting mm. getting <laughs> advantages that Y doesn't have. Mm. And side car mirrors, instead of saying objects in mirror maybe closer than mm-hmm. they appear, it just mm. says objects in mirror. We don't know. Well, mm. what about objects in mirror exactly the the si- same size that you were, they're supposed to be? But they're who knows. Make a better mirror. Here's, here's an idea for make, make the mirror bigger so that the things everything's the same size. Make the <laughs> mirror instead of small, make it life size. <laughs> like I got a full life size mirror out the side of each side of your car, mm-hmm. just like a big wing. Yeah, like it's already called a wing mirror. Make it a wing the size of a wing. Thank you. You're Good welcome. night. <laughs> um, I, uh, uh, is, is that something? Well, See, feels, this is this is my greatest fear yeah. is that I just send you pinwheeling but into these the thing is, dead ends. Is that like like with not shows all, that we did like all. like magma? It kind of is somebody who just takes who finds some minor injustice in the world and goes, <laughs> yeah, why are things smaller than they should? Be? Why don't you just make a mirror that makes them the right size? And then suddenly you've got three minutes of material <laughs> while a dumb guy is arguing about the. Uh, about trying to fix some minor thing. Why is it that things do feel further away? Is it the effect that you get? Like, you know how you go to the optometrist and you l- they have a mirror on that wall and then the thing that you're looking at is actually on the wall behind you. That's because they want to get it actually 20 feet away because that's how they measure 20-20 vision, right? I see. But is, is, it, is the reason that things appear further away in the mirror because there's also that extra distance from your eyes to the mirror and then back to the thing? So you're actually seeing further than it is the distance away from, from just the mirror to the, to the car? I won't, I won't lie to you, Andy. The first measure of distance you provided to me, I got lost at that point. Okay. So I don't really sure. know. <laughs> when you said 2020, I was like, oh, What's I remember that word, those words. 20, 2020 vision. <laughs> 2020 vision is, is something to do with your ability to see something that is 20 feet away. Mm. Right? And so I think I think that optometrists 20 things? I think op, <laughs> I think that optometrist <laughs> offices are built to be 10 feet wide or 20, 10 feet distance from where your head is mm. in when you're doing the test to the to the wall. And then and then so then you have a mirror there and mm. then you have 
the, the the thing that you're actually looking at on the wall up, up like behind you, and mm -hmm. then it's it's twenty feet from there back to there. Yeah, right. And then you can um, see all twenty things. Then, then all twenty things up here. Yeah, if them. you can count all twenty of them, you get twenty twenty. Uh huh. So uh -huh. it's like the world's worst mirrored fun house essentially yeah it's just, you've got two options you're terrified that way no you're terrified that way <laughs> no uh, well but, see you later yeah we'll bulk bill this for you so and don't then, worry and if you don't get it like and it's kind of like a carnival game in some way as well it feels like <laughs> if you get it like if you get them all you should get like a stuffed toy mm. maybe all right i think uh <laughs> i think a, 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 a carnival mirror where the only distorting effect that the mirror has is that it makes things look slightly further away. Like they just, it's just all wing mirrors, and it <laughs> makes things look further away than they appear. Look for appear further, further away, away than, than they, they are. And there's just a guy there going like, terrifying, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty scary. <laughs> If you were to change lanes right now, you'd be at risk of colliding with yeah. something. If this was in a car and if there were other cars around. Imagine we're in a car. We're not in a car. But imagine <laughs> yeah, okay. if we were in that car. I'm legally obliged to tell you that we're not in a car. We've so, had some complaints people. from people for false advertising. One guy, one of y'all said, oh, no, you are in a car. <laughs> and he said, what? And then I said, nah, I'm just joking. He said, I'm. I don't angry. think that's very funny. No. <laughs> <laughs> and we're about scares, not funny. Yeah. So, so we had to take it out. Yeah. But okay, so this is my idea for politicians for part of their media training. Mm -hmm. Before before you're um, allowed to be like the candidate of of, um, of a party, mm -hmm. you have to spend a full week living in something called the mirror cube, right? Oh, yes. Which is where mm -hmm. they put you in there totally naked. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. and you have to um, go about your life in the mirror cube, seeing yourself reflected back to yourself at all times. Mm -hmm. Right, so you have to watch yourself eat. You have to watch yourself scullabeer, yeah. scullabeer, yeah. whatever it is. Okay, and that way, when the media gets a picture of you shitting yeah, that's <laughs> down right. the track, Invariably. you know if you're doing it in a weird way, <laughs> and you're able to correct yourself. Exactly. Okay. That, look, I do like this. And when the tabloids publish that photo, you're like. Six weeks ago, I would have done that standing up. Yeah. <laughs> but now I've had my training. I Lovely. know you sit down to do that. Obviously, so. squatting above yeah. the puddle. That's right. The puddle. <laughs> um, the mirror cube. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. If, I don't cube. know if the media has ever got a photograph of a politician shitting. <laughs> well, like, we, what would that do? What was the? Who was that? The, the who was that? That street shitter guy. The, the, poo, the, the, poo jogger. the poo jogger. I mean, yeah. Yeah, he, he looked like somebody who could have gone into politics. Absolutely looked like like there was no reason he couldn't have been a politician, right? Like absolutely, he had that look. He, he had, had the that look, look of a man, yeah. Who would have been like a like a pillar of the community in some way? For, does was this, did this become a worldwide story? I, feel I like don't know. It may have, but for for anybody who it doesn't know, it was just a. There were just poos were mysteriously appearing on people's doorsteps mm -hmm. in a particular region of the Gold Coast. Or yeah, some like some quite well-to-do place, and mm. people were like, "What is happening here? Is there some loose animal?" But it mm. just turned out to be a middle-class man <laughs> jogging. <laughs> and then doing it on people's doorsteps for no no reason. Just I, I think he was taking toilet paper with him as well. Like he yeah. was, so he wasn't was, a, he knew that this was what he did. And then someone took a photo of him. There's yeah. a great picture of him mid shit in the politician turning stance. to look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just just it wasn't a it clearly wasn't a well this is an emergency situation. I have to do what I I, I can't no. believe I've done this again. Because I've just I'm making this decision mm. for some reason. Yeah, and then the the photo is kind of him going. Ah, well, here's the end of this. <laughs> I had a good run. Yeah, I had yeah. a good run. There's an acceptance on his face. Fair play, uh, you. Yeah. But it was worth it. i got to tell you, I, if I had my, my druthers, I'd do it all again. That's right. Well, I mean, it would have been such a rush. I mean, I, I, I hope I hope he was enjoying it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd hate the idea that he was having a bad time doing that to everyone. Again, but maybe, felt compelled. Maybe it's some sort of another sore kind of scenario. You know, they've got his family locked up. And they're like, oh, no. Well, look, we're gonna. Would you like to play a game? Would you? I th I think really. And then we discover that really the ones who were um, being watched and judged were us, the ones who were judging the poo jogger, oh, because no. we didn't exactly. type, take the time to think about why he might be. We all really <laughs> we took a shit all over him. That's mm, very true, know, isn't it? Yeah. In a manner of speaking. Mm. Yeah, and in many ways, we're yeah. So we are the joggers. You know, I guess. Mm. We're running with our laughs. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. Yeah. And it's 
and it's our it's our judgments that are the poos. Are the poos on, the, him, the, right? yeah, on him? Yeah, on him, is a him door, who is the doorstep. doorstep. Yeah, okay. yeah, right. yeah, We've oh. treated him like a doormat. So, so on that doorstep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, um, and and he was probably you know he probably had a hot, tough childhood or something. Maybe. Think, no, maybe. Or a very privileged child. Yeah, His very... parents just walked mm. around neighborhoods and were like, whenever you want, just yeah. go for it. Mm. Oh, yeah, I see that would be beautiful, I guess, in a way. I guess it's nice when, when you're a kid and you can oh, do it. And... So it came from a place of love. Yeah, and the parents would just pick it up, I guess, like it's a dog. This one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what in about way, this? In you know, a way, is the phrase spirit there is, but yes, go ahead. <laughs> I guess he, he was just, he was probably just, he lived a little bit too far from Byron. Mm. Right, which just feels like the place where you could it would almost be acceptable to do that, right. you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> like I know there's a lot of billionaires who live there now, but I feel like you know it's it'd be mostly accepted that you could just poo. <laughs> but freely. also, I feel like if it was if you were like an original citizen of Byron, right, someone who lived there who was now being priced out of your own suburb by billionaires, I feel like if people found out that you'd been running around and shitting on the steps of billionaires. That actually, you would probably get public opinion behind you on that one. Street become a folk hero. I yeah. think you could. Yeah, they'd <laughs> yeah. probably sing songs. Mm, the, right. well, yeah, the, you'd be like the Bob Dylan of of yeah. Byron. Yeah, so. and then then we end up in a sort of a Dexter situation where maybe he realised at a young age that he had this procl proclivity to to shit on people's doorsteps, but just decided that he would only shit on the doorsteps of billionaires. His 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 parents trained him for good. Exactly. You know? They were like, well, he's going to do it no matter what we do. Yes. So we'd better. So are we, we better are we, make him a vigilante. Is this a, a sketch poo, idea? I think it think is. So, yeah. The poo jogging Dexter. <laughs> yes, I think yes. Hey. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 Dexter only killed other serial killers. Mm, so yeah. is this is this man only <laughs> pooing on, on the, on other on the, on the poo do, doorsteps of other serial defecators? Is that uh, what he's doing? I mean, I guess they. He's, he's done it twice he, now. He's, so, yeah. he's suspect. He's suggesting that people who. You know, come here and and fuck up Byron with their high mm. prices. Are taking a shit on Byron? Okay, like, so yeah. it's a metaphor more than anything. It's a metaphor, yeah, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. but right. it's it, you know, it's still in the it's same a pretty dirty metaphor. Yeah, yeah, but it's still in the same you know essence of a Dexter. You know, he could yeah. still he could still call himself Dexter yeah. or I think they could get or, seven seasons out of this. Yeah, yeah. Or he could also call himself the poop. You know, the Byron Bay poo jogging Banksy if he wants. He could find a way to make that work. As I well. feel like if a if a, if if, if, if 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 it's a metaphor, if the poo is a metaphor, then he's not a poo jogger. He's a poet. You he's know? a poo po poet. He's a poo poet. He's a poet. <laughs> <laughs> should I write that down? You should definitely write po write poet down. Yes. <laughs> poo it. Um. I also I also have come in and out of the stream because I've been running some errands today, oh, look, and I'm I'm wondering I if understand. this is in fact the lowest bar that has been. Oh, we did have a long chat about. Poo earlier. Okay, well really? that's all right then. Okay. Yeah. And this is gonna this is gonna be like the previous one where like I actually remember nothing. Mm. Yeah, um, for sure. Like mm -hmm. it is it's, it is one of those ones where like the brain is moving on so quickly that it there I don't think there is an opportunity to form actual proper memories, probably. Of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just it's just a blur and, and at the end you'll have results and you'll be like, where did any of this come from? Yeah. And is it like when you you know, I know a lot of stand-up comics will have a they'll they'll dream of a comic premise or like a really funny punchline, mm. and they'll wake up at three a.m. and they'll scribble it down, mm. and then they'll come back to it and they'll in the morning and they'll be like, I don't, these are just unconnected words. I okay. wish I knew what that meant. Every every chance that that's <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of like the opposite, and that we keep writing down comic premises and then occasionally just fall into a dream for a second <laughs> <laughs> and then we wake up and we go ah, okay quick you gotta keep writing yeah. you need some sort of uh you need somebody outside i think and I've, as soon as you've done with the page you rip it out you hand it to them you go and they just go does this make any sense at all look it won't because <laughs> no. like the, the way the you know the words the way the words are written down it says my boss won't accept that i'm late because of xeno's paradox you know things like mm. that. i guess that does make enough sense sure like i remember on the on the hundredth episode reading through them afterwards and i was like no, these are ideas. These yeah. are definitely like they're an idea. They're there. coherent. They're not, it's yeah, not they're like, not just exactly. It's not like soup pants. Yeah. Well, a third word. You know. You taking a call, Andy? Yeah. yeah that's oh, okay. All right. This is this is I think this is our first call we've ever taken. This is very exciting. Yeah, I mean I think like look if we're ahead of schedule, you take know, as many calls as you want. Do you exactly. Want, do you want to make a call? We were thinking we were going to be here till four a.m. And why why not do that? 
<laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, if you, if, let's say, look, I mean, there was a part of my brain that's like, what if they somehow cracked 200 before I got here? And would I, would, would you continue or would you just be like, when you're not needed, go, no, go back to, I would. Live. Yeah. I think, I think we'll probably still be here till at least nine or 10, uh-huh. but um, look, I'm not sure. I think it would be, it would be amazing if we could do, you know, another 65 in a shorter period of time. I think it's, it's been a real dream come true. Cause I had nightmares all night yeah. of like this, taking so much longer because in my mind it's like you go well an hour we normally do five sketch ideas that's true and so you go well then that should take it's like you go 10 hours that's 50 yeah <laughs> and you go you go well 20 oh, so hours 40 hours it's yeah, like you go, a 40 hour famine <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah except where you're constantly eating soft foods it's mm-hmm. like some weird um you know country where they don't allow hard foods oh actually you just reminded me of one of our sketch ideas which is where it's like you know like uh blankets where um i'm aware of blankets sure. yeah you know blankets right yes I'm you know and they're blankets. soft yes yeah and they're really soft but what about like you know with food sometimes it's nice when you're having something soft have something crunchy so it's like a blanket mm. that's soft but also filled with doritos I was you know, say, like, like, a, a, like a yogurt filled with cornflakes or something exactly like that. Yeah, yeah something like that so you know and that's not technically a new sketch idea we came up with that earlier yeah but you know maybe we could come up with something in that vein i don't know yeah. like a, or like a helicopter for for un, for going underground. Oh my god! Like a reverse helicopter. <laughs> mm, I don't know. Yeah, I mean that's probably just what a tunneling machine is. Just write reverse helicopter down, and when Andy comes back, we'll we'll tell him we came yeah. up with a new sketch. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean no, it's just you and me here. There's no one else here, so yeah. there's no one to say that that this is a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, I guess okay. we. I mean, we both no, have to live with ourselves. No, I would not. I but, would. But I mean, how, what way could we make a, a reverse helicopter work? Because there's the propellers on the bottom. Yes. <laughs> okay. And so it's kind of like a. You know, like a like a like like a car where you don't want people to approach it. You know, <laughs> you know. So it's like it goes and it trips people. It's like a you know, like for skipping rope. Oh, it's a skipping rope. Sure, kind of a skipping rope car. <laughs> yeah. Um, we all played that childhood game at school where yeah. we tip a helicopter upside down <laughs> and then all jump and then <laughs> jump. Yeah, and then watch out for its whirring blades of death. Yeah, yeah unless it's that. just like unless the motor would just be forcing just the cabin to sort of spin. Yeah, right. The, I guess the the yeah. grinding of the blades would. Um, is something happened? No, no. Oh, oh hello. Hey, Hi, how folks. are you doing? Um, we're, we're here for uh, technical reasons. Yeah. Uh, we just want to swap over the stream. Okay. Because you're at 10 hours. We're, we're going to get, because yeah. we're going to hit 12 hours. Yeah. And oh, YouTube, is that going to be the end? Uh, well, YouTube won't save it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, can I jump in? Yeah, there? no problem. Sorry. Have we stopped at a bad point? No, I no, was. I was I mean, we were, we were, we've created the best sketch of all time. We're, we're in the middle of the sketch reverse helicopter. But mm-hmm. we don't, I mean, beyond that, we don't really have anything. I think we need to there. find a way to make reverse helicopter work. I could just write it down and then we have <laughs> no. to give it meaning. No, no, I guess that's true. Yeah. Okay, look, yeah. helicopter takes you up. Correct. On, on joy rides. Yes. <laughs> all right. A reverse helicopter takes you down on a sad ride. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, or it's something that you take it on a joy, <laughs> on, on ride. A joy ride. Right, because the helicopter is spending all of its time. It's yeah. like going to work for helicopters. Yeah, it was to have air. fun. Yeah, but if it's so, down on the ground, so it's yeah. like, oh boy. Yeah, and but they, but I guess maybe for a helicopter, being sad is fun. Evan, if you're going <laughs> to cut the stream, tell us before so we can stop the guy. Right, well, I'm going to do it now. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Man, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Beck, would you like to be? Would you like to be in here? Or? Sunday movie yeah. said, "Get the fuck out of here, Evan." Gee, that's a bit harsh. Oh. Wow. Oh, well, well, I don't think that's the real Mister Sunday movies. No. Yeah. Oh, well, He's much more cruel. He would have. Yeah. He would have put a racial this, slur uh, in there let's, somehow. But this this is going to be the end of part one, everybody. You're going to have to jump over to the part two stream, which will come up very soon. Okay. <laughs> very soon. And now we're in a post.